to watch it to be considered a viewer? I don't think so. That would be interesting, though. Just... Yeah. Yeah. Well, because you get those statistics on like YouTube. For yeah, they videos. do. They do on other places, but I don't think Amazon oh, does dude. that. Uh, well, they, they will know it. It's just they're not going to make it. Oh public. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. exactly. They were just hyper honest about it all, and they and they had like you know sixty percent of viewers are people who have left the Amazon app on idle or whatever, and someone's like, "That's that terrible," and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad." <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, well, that's pretty bad. That's that, I suppose. It's like, I mean, that's like a combined one million viewers just be, be, between us here in this call. So we're trying to keep it alive. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. have to check some things in between. It's like you have to watch like ten seconds of the show to be considered a viewer. It's like, oh man, I'm like seventeen viewers per episode. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, here we are. We're live once again. The next two episodes, and so people are like, is this one going to be double the length of last episode? It's like, why would you say yeah. that? Yes. What, what in the world? Yeah. Crazy. What? But uh, <laughs> on the be note here of forever length. <laughs> I think that we should probably get started <laughs> as soon as possible. For That's our right. Wonderful boy, friends we love here rings of power. who would like to sleep at some point. No. Apparently, you're no low Only volume usually. Um, and yeah. I'm loud. Oh boy. Wait, my we audio can, is uh... low. Is it the... Apparently, you're low and I'm loud. God damn Stop it! Screaming metal. All right, there you go. I should be back to normal now. Oh, Everything you're louder. No, you're, no, you're very louder loud for everybody. Oh, well, yeah. I'm only comparatively <laughs> louder. This is how I, should, I am ah, always. We'll, we'll just turn you down. You probably turn me. Yeah, system. you got to turn me back. If ever, if ever oh, I'm God, quieter than usual, you got to tell me because that means I haven't changed my audio back from Streamyards, which I visit. I mean, I thought it sounded the same. Mm. Well, it, it almost is, right? It's, it's that power setting, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Let's talk. <laughs> rings my power settings always of the maximum. Lord of the power of the rings <laughs> of the of the ring maximum. of power. Rings. Lord of Ring power I mean, of guys ding -a quit. Quit keep you need to treat this seriously. No, right. A lot of wanna. people spent a lot of money in some amount of effort at making this show. We can confirm the money. We're waiting on the science team very, to confirm the effort. Very <laughs> seriously. <laughs> You'll see very soon how seriously they took this. All mm -hmm. right. Episode three. <gasps> the Eagle Ooh. and the what do those things mean? What I don't know. Happen? Let's find out <laughs> together. Sweet. Episode three. Ooh, we are so that. back, baby. We are so back. And by back, <laughs> I mean flashback. It's flashback time. You know every Again. Rings of Power episode begins with a flashback. Name Obviously. one bad Rings of Power episode that started with All a flashback. That one. You can't. Exactly, you can't. <laughs> so... Damn it. We got go back there. in time. Yeah, he's got us. We go back, we fly through time, and we fly through space. Mm. Back to... The Southlands. No, this, no. Is, this is pre Waldrig. <laughs> uh, well, actually, it's era. during Waldrig. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's during Waldrig. It's a bad time. Um, oh, Waldrig's still alive at this point. It's 180. Pre, it pre is and A W. Is, is how we look at it. <laughs> B W and A W. Yeah. It is currently zero A dubs in the timeline <laughs> of the Second Age, just as Tolkien wanted it written down. Alendil. Is talking to one of my favorite characters, Beric, the horse. <laughs> because Beric, he doesn't speak. Beric is a Sildur's horse. A Sildur. Too. Wait, I know that name. Wow, I love a Sildur. He, oh. he's great. He's a great character. He's awesome. Um, now, is Sildur know something that a lot of us may have forgotten? It's that Beric, the Numenorian war horse, has formed an unbreakable bond. With the person that it rides into mm -hmm. battle with, which do you in this know, case would um, be his son. Do you know how? Oh, yeah, because I was going to say that like, that's how he knows that Elendil has completely forgotten that he taught us the lesson about the like the psychic horse bond. <laughs> and so when he thinks he's he's lost his son. Oh shit! His horse sure seems to want to get away somewhere though. I wonder where at once. Oh, he's, he's dead. There's no point following the horse. Just let it go. So he just lets the fucking horse go. The psychic bond is such that if you follow it, the magic's broken. All right, it's <laughs> everyone it does like, that. Yeah. If everyone forgot that this is a thing that Numenorean warhorses have, I don't blame you because I think I probably forgot too. It's just sort of like mentioned casually, and then it's just a thing now. I and... just find it. I find it weird in general that the sea fog all of a sudden have like these horse mechanics. I guess like they it don't feels in the lore. 
It feels very much uh, wish.com Rohirrim to me because I feel like that's like a <laughs> Rohirrim thing, like with all the horse things. But we started in the season, it's like, oh, the sea is always right. Da, da, da. Now, horses. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Lord, had, uh, they're way more like infantry based. Uh, yeah, are they too tall horses? to ride horses, right? Because in the lore, they're massive. Well, they do uh, yeah. have special horses. Like, their horses are the descendants of the horses of the Adain. So, like, they do have slightly special horses, but they're not, like, Ooh. psychically special horses. But yes. the Ring, Rings of Power has established that these horses are special, though, because, they, you know, they can be elevated on cranes and they can be flat packed into boats uh, to, a, to, like, a, you know, 500 to a square feet of two. Like, all those mad horse mechanics that come into it. So, like, they've set this up very well, I think. Yeah, like, the fact, because when I watched season one, I was kind of thinking, like, maybe off, because when you watch Rings of Power, you have to understand that when something happens off screen, firstly, it doesn't exist. But also, when they show up with a load of horses, it's like, well, maybe important storytelling beats did, in fact, happen off screen. So I was kind of <laughs> thinking, did they go somewhere and get these horses whilst crossing into the in, into uh, into Mordor? And the fact that we get this scene where he's like, well, no, this horse is psychic and all the rest of it, it means that it is normal for these horses to behave in this way, which means they did mm -hmm. come with them. So they absolutely flat packed them into the boats. The horses arrived no, on those three no, boats. No, no, not the boats. I think they only had, wait, did they have three? I think two. It so was initially three and then one exploded. It was no, five they, and three. There were five. Five, there five and then two blew yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, what you said. Yeah. So they had to pack them in there like... <laughs> Well, I'm not allowed to say what on YouTube, but they packed him in there really tight to cross the ocean. <laughs> so uh, next. OK, so we have got psychic. But this is our we're already off to a good start. OK, Pretty good. Yeah. Psychic bonds with war horses. Isildur's out there. And Beric is uh, he, he's set free by Elendil because Elendil's like, oh, you're just an uppity horse. And um, off you go. So he sets him free. And Beric runs off across the wilderness, makes a beeline for Mordor, hmm. because I think he senses that Isildur might be alive. He can smell oh, his yeah. fear. He saw Lord of the Rings. He knows <laughs> that Isildur has to be alive. He has important things to do. I thought you were he about to, to say he can smell his feet. <laughs> also, like sure. we have to assume at this point sure. that he, Elendil thinks that Isildur is dead, which means he has just released a Beric into Mordor to starve <laughs> mm -hmm. to death, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, Beric can eat the orcs. There you go. <laughs> Beric knows how to survive. Yes. Actually, plot twist: the orcs want to eat Beric. No, no. Who could have seen this coming? <laughs> Beric runs into the spooky Mordor woods, and then from behind a tree, it's actually quite funny. Two orcs just like appear as if by magic from behind I, this tree like, where they've I got been you standing. Yeah, yeah. That that shit is funny. They were waiting for to come Look at that shot. The they were fucking around. <laughs> they were so. They were also, just waiting. They were just waiting. Seems waiting like it was a bad a idea, like making Mordor if it meant that you have permanent food insecurity as well. <laughs> you go away from random horses to stroll in from well, elsewhere. It, it, the orcs can say, like, I get the whole sun thing. I do. Like, okay, we, we burn in it, so we need that to go. But did you have to salt the earth? <laughs> that is that kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah. Salt the earth? They love salty food. Grow. The orcs yeah. are famous for having salty yeah. food. Now I'm, just imagining, now I'm just imagining Homer dress like as an yeah. orc and then <laughs> walking oh, around dude. salting the entirety of Mordor. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I get we're evil and everything guys. too, so we need everything dark and blah blah blah. But it's like, God, I can't even grow a potato, dude. Yeah, <laughs> like, just Galag really talking bad. to Adar is like, was it was it was the whole burning earth necessary? Like, really? <laughs> My mind is so poisoned by memes that I thought that this is a Trump meme. <laughs> that Gogur posted. I thought there's like, who is Trump talking to? What's what? what, what's going Who's... on here? I don't even know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's our Farrison and Sauron surrendering to him. That's, uh, after that's... A battle. no, that's Trump. No, um... it's not. What? All oh, right, <laughs> so, doesn't even look yeah, remotely like. We gotta like stop Trump. talking about Trump. We gotta stop talking about. Trump. <laughs> so back in Mordor, we have to go to Mordor. Leave Trump behind. Um, so the orcs that pop out from behind this tree because they're just oh they're just waiting. They're just waiting for an ambush. Um, they pop out and they say, oh, we're going to eat you, horse. Actually, actually, we're not going to, but actually we are going to later. Ha ha ha. No. But it turns out that Beric is um, Beric's like one of those like video game horses where they're <laughs> they're shockingly dangerous. Yeah. 
um like like a horse you find in an mmo zone that's way too over leveled and you're like you know that's that's fine i'm the chosen one i'm a warrior i i'll fuck this horse up and then you're like oh god holy <laughs> shit its numbers are so big and mine are not um Barak like kicks one across the county into a tree <laughs> and impales it on a limb yeah. and he fucking runs away it's actually it's quite harrowing um, yeah. Do you like kills... the way that they had to one up the, the scene in Two Towers when Aragorn's horse is all heroic and it comes and saves him? And they looked at that and they thought, yeah, that's good, but how can we make this better? Mm. So, if I can horse foo, that will do. We'll horse do that. Foo. Horse foo, he can actually fight the orcs as opposed to just running away from them. Yeah, no twisting and gutting is uh, involved. Just just a spike. I can Very effective. The, uh... The nature of this, like the orcs being like, oh, wrap the robe around, oh, we'll get him. Yeah, and then it kicks one and impales him, and one of goes, oh, oh, what, oh, what the like, fuck? Holy, it's like, holy shit, we were on horse duty. This was supposed to be easy, and now one of us is dead. Like, one the of them... supervisor comes in, and he's like, how did this happen? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> By the way, it's very oh, likely Lord. that one or two other orcs was also killed. Because Damn. what they they like rope around it, they put a rope around its neck, and then the horse runs away. Probably because it's surrounded by actors wearing the most <laughs> terrifying imagery possible. Oh my god! And then it runs away, and it drags them into a stump, and they pry their heads for explode or something. I don't know. Total carnage. Total yeah. orc carnage. And what's also funny is if you want another good visual here, that when Barak runs away, and the orcs explaining to the other orc survivor, no, 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 <laughs> don't chase him. Because, yeah, he might have killed, like, all of our friends somehow, but he's mm. running into the Black Forest. <laughs> and as we all know about the Black Forest, the nothing Black comes forest. out of there alive. How hilarious. And then How you see in the background the little orc. And he's just still spiked, impaled yeah. to the tree, just <laughs> hand he's hanging out back there. Yeah. And I go... <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Actually. Isn't isn't it great how Mordor uh, is like exists for like a week or something? It has they're more. like this is this is the Black Forest. <laughs> Nobody comes out yeah. of there alive. It's like what are you talking yeah. about? Okay, yeah. This, so, this, is, this is also like long? right next to the village that they attacked, right? Yeah, so, this is. You can see the building, or maybe this is just ran, some random village. I I don't know, but probably, I could be. But yeah, the Sildur is like right next to this place, isn't it? Well, so, maybe uh, he can, pretty yeah, much has to be. Someone. Barry gallops Apparently away. Could be. There's a black forest, and it has yeah. a reputation with the orcs already, <laughs> even though it's been like a several days since Waldrick created days. Mordor. Uh, at most, yes. And already <laughs> the orcs are like, oh, nothing comes out of the black forest alive. Now, like, no one mentioned the black forest before. <laughs> None of the Southlanders <laughs> were like, oh, that's the black forest. Don't go in there. Yeah. Isn't the, the Rick and Morty microverse episode when they go down and he says, well, don't stay out past nighttime because, you know, the trees will eat you. And he's like, no, that's a myth. Why are you making a myth? <laughs> like that's basically what's going on here. I think they've just like they've decided because they don't have any mythology of their yeah, own. They, like, well, sure. One dude went in and never came back, so that's the forest where no one comes out alive anymore. Yeah. They're all in their uh, yesterday. They're all in town <laughs> meeting. And they've all got to do it right. It's like that's like the order. It's just some guy stands up. He's like, "So I've got the cave of forgotten destiny. If you go in, <laughs> you, you sort of forget your purpose for a bit, and you have to fight a spider." I put a bunch of spiders in there. <laughs> They're like, oh, that's great, Jeremy. And he's like, yeah, one of them's really big, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Weirdly big. It's yeah, terrifying. I know, R Random, have, have you have still to tried to bucket? catch up on the uh, on the timelines? Because I'm, I started to give up. I have, I don't know what's happening anymore in terms of timelines. You mean how so... like, Isildur's lifespan fits in with all of this insanity? Oh, Isildur could be there, for, as far as I'm concerned, could be between two and three days, or... Two and three years? Six, six <laughs> seven weeks. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> like, like, you mean like have... how uh, this particular plot line, whether or not it's meant to be running concurrently with what we've been seeing up until this point, because I don't really see how it could be. Oh, the, him being no, in there is yeah. insane one way or another. I just find yeah. it sometimes interesting going back. So, like, okay, what what could possibly line up here? And the more they add to it, it's like this just doesn't work. <laughs> no I matter which they time. I want us to believe that it's all essentially happening at the same time. But again, I don't see how that's possible. Yeah, pretty much. Like, it, surely, it's surely this could be set way earlier than a lot I, of the stuff that we've seen. Yeah, yeah. I, I just see it as its own little individual universes. You know, you have one scene <laughs> here, and then you have one scene over here, and then just have no relation <laughs> to each other. Water universe. This is the yeah. Yeah. Every scene, yeah. Yeah. Every scene like is its universe. little little pocket <laughs> like, dimension. You know, characters can jump in between universes, happen. but you know, they have no like real connection to each other. Like we mm. have reason oh. to believe from later in it's either this episode or episode four that it has been weeks, plural. 
but I don't yeah. know if that's actually what the writers want us to think, which we'll get to later. But <laughs> I'm no the, idea. Yeah, the longer it has been, the more absurd it is that Isildur is still alive. Like either way, it's really, really, really lucky that the horse finds him before he's killed. But, but the longer it is, the more ridiculous that that gets. But the more funny it is. It's very funny. Yeah, true. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> um. Yeah. So Barak walks into this spooky cave in the Black Forest from You've which Dunder's turn. Huh? Wait. What? It's a cave of forgotten destiny. Oh, sorry. <laughs> There's an orc outside with a I... sign that he's uh, hitting him with a hammer. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I named it! Been here That's for 17 generations? Like, oh, come on now. The Cave of Forgotten Destiny. Oh, this is such a great scene. Boy, uh, yes, I love it. Very, uh, uh, Beric, Beric finds a silder, <laughs> and he's all how, webbed up by spooky spider webs. Oh, how no. in the fuck did he get here? He oh, fell. It's he walked. He, now, so he was underneath a collapsing building, and then he wakes up in a cave. What? <laughs> what I think we're meant to infer, which doesn't make any sense, is uh, <laughs> he got he got squashed by the burning building, and was obviously still alive because of um, how like heat and smoke works. He must have escaped very, very, very quickly. Otherwise, he's dead. Which means he wasn't knocked unconscious. By the time he gets uh -huh. out from under the burning building. All of the other Numenorians are gone because they just <laughs> sprinted off camera and they're just, they're gone. They're out of here. They're not coming back. You're like, quick, quick, yeah. before he wakes up, yeah. let's go. Yeah, yeah exactly. Works. He then, yeah, like, everyone knows he's just... an asshole. He's a whiny little fucking <laughs> prick. So he then, he then survives. He then survives for an unspecified amount of time, which we can speculate on, gets captured by spiders and ends up here. I, that's what I think. I, I think the writers, by spiders. Sure. The writers um, would tell you personally that he was unconscious there and he woke up here. That's that's like his yeah. journey. And he's been unconscious for rescued five weeks. by Shelob. And Shelob is the most misunderstood character in all of <laughs> yeah. the Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. Shelob, like, Shelob actually she really went Wolverine. into Mordor and looked for survivors and brought them lovingly to her cave oh, and to revive she... them with the web of life. She... And she Shelob made him some yeah. milk in the cave. The web will, the chicken help. soup, right? The web is soft, keeps Hold them on. warm. That, yeah. that would mean that the, fuck it, the building where he got squashed underneath was part of the Black Forest. No, yes. it wouldn't. Because he walked a distance there, and oh, so did Sheila. She, she took it. Sheila dragged she, him into the forest. Apparently, she went out looking for people to save. Yeah, yeah Sheila was out there like with a berry basket, just, just living think... a good life. And then she's like, "Oh, dear, we're sort of casually throwing around Sheila, Sheila, Sheila's name." Shalom. Um, just, just to be clear for everyone watching who hasn't watched this incredible TV show, um, if you remember in the Lord of the Rings and in the lore and stuff. There's a cave of spiders in Mordor. Um, well, here we are in Mordor now, so we need to have a cave full of spiders. Obviously. And yes, it's only been a couple days, maybe, um, since Waldreg created Mordor. But, well, it's Mordor now, and every <laughs> Mordor children. needs a spi spider. These are Waldrigs. <laughs> all of it. All the spider Waldrigs. And the spiders are Waldrigs <laughs> children. Well, I have to assume that fucking spider cave was there before, I guess. We have to, because it can <laughs> Right yeah. next to the spider fucking cave village. doesn't happen in a couple days. Yeah, just no one ever mentioned. Don't go into yeah. the super evil spider cave in the super evil forest called the Black like Forest. Ten from meters which away from the fucking forest. Unless Sauron <laughs> walked past here with his evil wand or whatever he does, and is like spiders, whatever and then he, he walks away. <laughs> yeah. and we must we must assume that in the first season of Rings of Power, um, the Black Forest is not the forest that um, Arondir. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, Theo returned from when they went out looking for. But it was still green back then, so. Yeah, but a green forest. Yeah, like it. <laughs> it's just, it's this very, is it's, a green it forest. Nobody green comes forest, out of their yeah. life. Waldrick turned into <laughs> the black forest. Uh, we've race swapped uh, the forest. Interesting, uh, <laughs> Um All right. Isildur's no all webbed sense. up. He's sitting here and he's sitting there in his web. Oh no, he's been captured by spiders or saved and kept warm. We don't know yet. <laughs> it's um, hard to say. Now, the we what now when Barrett gets close, Isildur starts to kind of wake up, and it is at this point that the spiders decide, oh well, now we should consume him. Uh, we should eat his flesh at this point because yeah. he's woken up. Yeah, we, you shouldn't yeah. have done it during all the time uh, that he was just sort of incapacitated. Uh, and right next to Isildur, there, there's another orc, and this orc is webbed up too. And Isildur takes the knife from the the webbed up orc, and he wow, well, lucky. And they have a yep. struggle, and he, uh, but and they cut off their little webs, 
And then yeah, Shelob, we can only assume it's Shelob. It's a big spider. It's bigger than the rest, and it means business. The it jumps it, right? on the orc. We we know it's Shelob from an interview. It's yeah. It's not oh, stated really? in the sh it's not stated in the show, but apparently it, it's meant yeah. to be Shelob. Yeah. Oh, oh, right. yeah. 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 I wasn't yeah. even thinking about that because oh, no yeah. way there would oh, be that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> fuck this show. Shelob. <laughs> Shelob. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be meaningful if it wasn't head. a character that you recognize. She Shelobed all over the place. It was great. Uh -huh. He did exactly. Shelob she all over all over specifically that orcs face and head mm. uh she love jumps on the orc and like crushes or bites its skull doesn't insta kill it's very unfair i thought it was Rebalance very funny now yeah. um, well, the head exploded <laughs> uh, this and... also means that or does it it might mean that on gulliam was in the area and you should probably notice a fucking i don't, I don't know, know any of those words 15 mean. foot spider uh it's a <laughs> big giant spider that ate the trees in the in yeah, but they, they the cut trees. that out of season. Yeah, in season yeah. one, they cut Ungoliant out. So trees. Shelob can't actually exist because Shelob doesn't have a mother in Rings of Power. But Ungoliant is the one who kills you the tree, kills the trees of Valinor. Uh, Morgoth yeah. like opens them up and then has Ungoliant, like the biggest giantest spider who ever spidered, comes in, steals the essence of the trees, and they die. I but then Ungoliant the gets so massively it's fat so on all the life from the trees that she attacks Morgoth later, and he has to be saved by Balrogs. Yeah. Fucking hell. <laughs> Tolkien Pretty lore much. sounds That's a big really spider. awesome. And, uh, I can't wait to hear more of this. That sounds great. That sounds great. When the Balrogs turn um, up, they're like, Mor Morgoth, is, is that a spider? And he's like, I can explain. I, it spider got out of or something. <laughs> Listen, I'm Tolkien. It's fine. All right. All right. No, Sheila just insta-kill finishers the, the orc. Didn't stand a chance. Get good. We got um, to uh, pour one out for this orc, because this, uh, this, was, this was Glug's... What did I say? Friends? What? Is this one of Glug's friends? No, I was I was going to say that this was Glug's uh, daughter's bus driver. Oh. Uh, to take her to school, yeah. Because yeah. The, they have public school to, for the orcs where they learn how to <laughs> chase horses and count to four and make... Make merry. Shivs. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, orc school. All of a sudden, he, drives the, he drives the man-drawn cart around and picks up all the little orc children. <laughs> oh Wait my god, we see that we see that later in the season. They have a little cart that they carry someone around in. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shelob jumps on Isildur, but Shelob knows that Isildur is very important to the story, so she does not crush his head and Isildur <laughs> escapes. <laughs> Those were oh. a couple of things that happened very conveniently and inconveniently at the same time. Uh yeah. Um, yeah, what uh so apparently uh what we can only assume happened is several days have passed since Waldrig created Mordor. Um Isildur was he he survived the volcanic pyroclastic flow like like a uh, everyone else. Like everyone else. <laughs> um he escaped the burning building that collapsed in the village. Uh no Numenorians found him, saw him, rescued him. And instead, we can only, I, I assume he just wandered around. Fool didn't even know that this is the Black Forest from which none returned. He didn't even <laughs> what know. He walked yeah, right knows. into he the Black Forest. He walked, walked into the right spider into cave a, and fell asleep. Right into the spider cave. <laughs> Maybe it looked appealing at the time. And then he got webbed up. But luckily, he was able to get out just in the nick of time because yeah. Barak came by and found him. And uh, they made sure to put a knife a right next to him so that he could cut his way out. That's cause... right. Well, yeah. orc, orcs have knives, and there was an orc there, so, you know. Well, that's and then he grabs the, the knife, which loosens yeah. the web, and look, then he look. falls over, and then he wakes up very inconveniently so they can have a scuffle. The because spiders, wouldn't intense. Have, spiders wouldn't have brought just one person. They would have brought everyone they could. So that would include orcs. This all makes sense. All right. There's an orc next to Why did to you him. chuckle while you said that, Rex? Because Are you not believing what you're so saying, Rex? I do. It this is great. This is yeah. good. I think Rex is so lying back, to us. Baby. We're so We're back. So baby. back. <laughs> not only fire, bro. Not only are we so back, we we are back to Numenor. Oh, oh my goodness. My favorite uh, island kingdom in Rings of Power. It's so good. Uh, arguably Arguably my favorite island think, kingdom. Just really in retrospect, good. though, at the end of season one, when we knew what happened to Isildur, and, and we were like, so how is this going to work? Because he's obviously not allowed to die. 
it didn't work is the, is the key is is <laughs> it didn't work. The, the way he they just got rescued was insane the amount of variables yeah. that had there to protect him to stop him from dying were, were, were nuts you know Molo, i was really shocked that it, this didn't work you know i thought they were gonna hammer out some really like you know good plot uh, plot device here to have him escape and yeah I just, I'm still so confused that they decided to bait Isildur's death, like of any mm -hmm. of the other characters. I know that it kind of, I mean, the, it, it goes somewhere, it goes somewhere really bad, but it does go somewhere. But they could have swapped Isildur with like any of the other unnamed characters from Numenor, mm -hmm. just random Numenorean soldier, yeah. whoever you want. Yeah. But we but, need his dad to be sad though. So they get the big reunite uh, in season three. <laughs> no, we just need him to cry. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of crying, it's a funeral. <laughs> Oh. You can't spell funeral without fun. That's right. Ooh. Or Errol. The first of two so, funerals in this episode. <laughs> Errol is Back the in name Numenor, of the it's the funeral for the King Tar Palantir. He died because he was old. And that's mm. what happens when you get old and you're a king. You die in your tower. Mm -hmm. So Elendil is there with his daughter, Aarian. You remember Aarian? I, I do. Yep. That's right. And we all, we love our AR and she's been great. very characterized. And... Yeah, she wanted yeah. to be a builder, and then she um, convinced her boyfriend to blow up a bunch of military boats, and that's kind of it. Yeah, well, interesting. Then she got the promoted, so, like, so she joins the Builders Guild, and we the see her, um, the Guilders, that's what they're called, yeah. And we see her <laughs> mopping up suds and complaining about her lowly station, and then by the end of season one, like two episodes after this thing's been introduced, she's one of the apprentices who's been brought in to draft like a sculpture for the king's tomb because like they have a really really strong internship program and they want people to be invested. This, like, you are a random intern these... who mops up suds. So also, no, you can design the eternal tomb of the of the uh, of the king. Arian isn't random. She is Elendil's daughter, and her boyfriend is the son of Farazan. So mm -hmm. she's making connections. She's... One of them was chosen for her because she's been moved around the dad, board, right? The by Farazan. She's she is she yeah. is. I strategically don't... something happens. I think that's what they were going for. So like in, in season one, there's no real point to her moving around the board because she doesn't do anything. And it's not until like the very end of the very final episode that like she's she's uh like drawing the king's sculpture, and then as old people do, he suddenly wakes up and says, Oh uh, my god, the world's gonna end. And mm -hmm. unless you go upstairs and look don't at this check vision, but don't look Someone's at it. Someone's never been around no, old people. Like, all right. That's I've got the something final in my head scene you. that she has, and that's the point at which she becomes in some way useful. So yeah, she's yeah, been yeah. moving <laughs> around in anticipation of her later being useful before she's actually become useful, because the king wakes up and gives her all the most plot relevant information. No, yeah, just to be clear, for all, for all those watching right now who are, this is an 18 plus stream. This is not for children. This is Rings of Power. All right. But if you are very young, then please remember if an old man invites you into his tower and says the world's going to end, come check out the magic <laughs> orb in my attic. Don't go. <laughs> Don't go in. Come and ponder my orbs with me. No. Don't do it. You have more than one orb? Oui. But yeah. It is almost <laughs> almost certainly a trap. What gives but her an edge real, so. of yeah. plot relevance is something that Farazon and herself couldn't possibly have accounted for, which is her stumbling across <laughs> the Palantir, you're right. But it is interesting yeah. if, if Farazon is the one that's been moving her around since the beginning, because I think it's mentioned, right, that it's like, oh, you know, you should just resubmit. And it's like, they accepted this time. It's like, oh, that's that's crazy and then she's kept in a in a station where she can't do anything it's like oh is that it's like putting it in a in a pocket sort of thing but at the uh, same time you'd think that um Farazan would focus on more important political players than someone like her no, he's just waiting yeah. for the eagles he doesn't need to actually do politics all of that <laughs> Uh, oh, his uh, fingers like please this time please please well when she I talks figured... about the magic orb that was being pondered by the king he fires up probably was like what <laughs> like, what are you even <laughs> talking about what the fuck yeah like during that scene that it, it happens in a few minutes i don't think there's any reason to believe that farazon even knew about the palantir at that point i don't think so no that, that that's what i mean it's, it's what platoon was talking about she her biggest like wedge into this story was just random luck yeah, like because in season one, I don't think that there is any reason to believe that Farazon made all of this happen, hoping that she would become useful later. I was kind of figuring because like she's barely a character, and mm -hmm. her relationship with his son is barely a relationship. It just kind of happens off screen, and then she convinces him to blow up some boats. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I I don't think that he could have known that. 
But as against that, because like the world building for Numenor massively treads on itself several times over, mm-hmm. like across seasons one and already in season two, because I mean, you that only have to tread when you're the king. Kingdom. Yeah, but like, I guess you have to be careful because you might fall off. But like the, the king mm-hmm. is he's deposed because he was too nice to the elves, except that he isn't deposed because he is still the king, and that's why he gets this nice little funeral to him, and they all called him a king, except that he was deposed because his daughter is the queen, except that she's not the queen because she hasn't yet been coronated, except that she is the queen because that's what they all call her. And he was deposed for being nice to the elves, and yet they're all surprised in this episode when it turns out they really like the elves. And it's just like, I, I could never figure that out in season one. Like, like what exactly is the king? Because you keep telling me he's deposed, but also he's not. And he, like, you either hate the elves or you don't. But you know this about him, and that's why you deposed him. So why is it such a shock now to find, oh my goodness, he has a giant elf testicle thing in his attic. Like, why is that surprising? <laughs> I mean, what we're told is that there, this is why I don't understand how the political system in Numenor works, and it might be like, oh, you don't really need to know that, but they keep kind of implying things that just contradict each other, because mm. with a king or queen, a monarchy, you don't elect the next one, but they also directly imply in this episode that Farazon nearly won the previous election, which would have been against Muriel, because it can't have been against you Muriel's can, father. Well, you, you can, can elect, elect kings. King. Yeah. You can you have can, elective monarchies, they, have, they do exist. Yeah, they have they a do? democratic monarchy. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's they, they, chose, they, they chose uh, Muriel to replace him. But that, again, another world building cock up because they, if you depose a king because he's not too nice to the elves, you don't then vote yeah. for his daughter who's really nice to the <laughs> elves. That doesn't make very much sense. Yeah. yeah, I assumed that that happened purely because she was next in line and they just kind of yeah. sped up the process because they didn't like him. Yeah. Like the, the Polish Commonwealth had the similar system uh, okay. where the no- nobles basically elected the, the next king of the, of the Poles. So did uh, Naboo come to that. They Naboo. elected Amagala. True. <laughs> we got a Phantom Menace reference, mm. boys. Where are we? Oh, yeah, we're cooking with gas now. All right, bust out the mood juice. But it was always a so- problem with season one as well, in that if you choose the, ki- if you choose the queen, but Farazan is more popular than the queen, which we're always led to believe that he is because he's the demagogue who controls the population because he knows how to whip up, you know, anti-elven immigration that sentiment means only and all one that of shit. His- so um, only that means one of his parents was a gog, but the other one wasn't, right? Yes. Okay. Question I was just checking. I was just checking to make it sure. <laughs> okay, but if um if I that's the case, then why I'm did back. he not become the king anyway? Because he was already more popular. Like, like all the stuff that's happening here should have happened ages ago before season one mm-hmm. started. It only didn't because they weren't ready for it to happen. But the rules they've established mean that it really should have done. Yeah. yeah, because uh, Farazon. I mean, do we want to jump ahead to the end of the episode? I, d- I don't want no, to do that. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. You're upsetting rags. Not. We can't do that. Okay, I'm sorry, rags. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you weren't here last week. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is some. This is so some excited. I mean, I'm excited. To get rule lawless society where you could just skip to the end of the episode yes, this is, we're not we're not with we've we're barely hard begun folks. we have so much we have to do this chronomagically yeah we're like five minutes in or something oh, okay <laughs> i'll make a note and i'll i'll bring it up later when we get to the end please make a note fun. we gotta tackle this one at a time all right so um what the fuck's happened oh yeah there's a funeral of king tar palantir he died in his tower because he's old um alendil is there with his daughter Arian. And she says, no, Elendil says, as king, he always protected the faithful. I shall miss him. Now, the faithful, someone's going to have to help me out here. Because uh, the faithful the, in the subtitles, they're, it's capitalized, proper noun, yeah. the yeah. faithful, like it's a, like it's a group. They However, if you group. didn't have the uh, if you they didn't are. have the subtitles on the words "the faithful," nothing is implied that that's like the name of an actual group of people. Just mm-hmm. in general, people who <laughs> have the trait of faithfulness. Mm. Yeah. Um, it, they shouldn't be really be a thing yet, but you know the the show is kind of all over the place with the timeline. Uh, so, but the faithful are basically the ones who are faithful to to the elves and the and the gods. Yeah, so to and... clarify, in season one, there are two references to the faithful, and both of them, again, without book knowledge, you're just going to be like, oh, you're just referring to people who are faithful. Because uh, the two lines you get are, the faithful believe that when the petals of the white tree fall, it is no idle thing but the tears of the valor, and the way of the faithful is committing to pay the price, even if the cost cannot be known. Both of those are very generic things that you might have faith in, and like the idea that the faithful are an established political group, it just doesn't, no. that's, that's not a thing. Yeah. 
Um, we don't even see any evidence of that until I think episode five. So. Yeah. And that's like a problem because it's integral to understanding where five is going and where the Numenorean story is going. So you have the, the faithful who are faithful to the, the elves, the elvish ways and the Valar, and they uphold the ban of the Valar. They are wary of death. They don't like the fact that men have to die, but they accept, as the elves tell them, it is a gift. And so they are content to abide by the laws like do not sail too far west of Numenor, because if you That's do, right. God will smite you. As against them, you have the King's Men, which this season is going to try and make into Farazan's faction. And these are the people who say, no, fuck the Valar, fuck the Elves, we don't want to die. We don't see why we should be denied immortality that the Elves have. We're special too. And they are the ones who will eventually sail west of Numenor, and then they will attack Valinor itself, and then the Valar will ask God to smite them, and he will do that. Um, but yeah. because, like, episode five, which we haven't got to yet, but that will introduce the concept as though it's already established by them looking out over and seeing this tower and just mentioning it. And it's like, that's so important that we need now already in this episode to understand mm -hmm. exactly what is meant when the word faithful is used. Well, we they, don't. well, they don't even do that because you wouldn't no. know if you didn't have the subtitles and saw that be capitalized, which even is like the first clue on this magical journey through what mm -hmm. is supposed to be important or isn't in the lore. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I mean with the faithful shouldn't really exist yet, right? Because we don't really have the Kingsmen yet. They're not really a thing. So I want to clarify, sorry, the Farazon in the in the source material, the Kingsmen are not Farazon's faction? No, they are. Kind of. Like like they're they're faithful to the kings of Numenor and like more yeah. more to him directly than the than the Valor. And uh, yeah, they also get slowly corrupt they also get slowly corrupted by, by Sauron, who gets captured by the King of Numenor. Uh, oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> The important, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> it's a big conspiracy, and the men know it, because yeah. the men are like, well, oh, the elves say that we're so lucky because we get to die. Isn't it great that we get to die? And yet, elves aren't going around killing themselves all the time. Interesting. All I'm saying yeah. is interesting. Very yeah. interesting. Hmm. Uh, that, that's what's happening in the picture I sent. That's uh, fires on capturing Sauron and that's bringing Trump. him back to... That's no, that's, that's <laughs> Trump. Okay, it's Trump. This. It's Trump capturing Sauron and bringing yes. him back to Numenor <laughs> to to have Man, him in prison and be get slowly, slowly getting corrupted. And Sauron ends up being his like closest advisor uh, and uh, like turning him to like worship, uh, worshiping Melkor and shit. Ah, uh, Trump is on. Trump yeah, Trump is on. Trump is on. Our Trump is on. God damn it! No. Um. Yeah, uh, Elendil says as king, he always protected the faithful. I shall miss him. And Aiarian says, you speak so freely of dead, of, of, of dead kings, yet you refuse to utter your own son's name. Ooh. You blame yourself, but you needn't. True blame belongs to another. And Elendil asks, what are you trying to say? What do you say? Aiarian. Aiarian is implying that there is someone else to blame. Oh my god. But does Might she mean... Um, Galadriel or Muriel? Muriel? Or the writer? Could be both. Either, yeah. the, writer. the writer. <laughs> or maybe the, the, you know, the volcano. <laughs> maybe it's the volcano. Maybe she's referring yeah. to Waldreg. Yeah, Waldreg. Oh, the one to blame, him, obviously. <laughs> this is Waldreg's fault. Iarian says Waldrig's name at the funeral, and the entire room <laughs> grows yes. silent. She says, Do not speak the name of the cursed one here. This is a time of mourning. <laughs> well, well, she says, like, have you noticed how everything's gotten worse since his death, though? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't have killed Waldrake. Yeah. We shouldn't have killed Waldrake. The warg. It wasn't. It was Sauron's fault. It wasn't the warg's fault. The yeah. warg was just a. He was just doing what he was, was enchanted slave. magically to do. It wasn't his fault. Mm -hmm. He's a good yeah. guy, really. Um, yeah. He's just misunderstood. Sure. Um, let's see. So I think we are uh, also supposed to believe that when she says this when she's trying to imply that you know, muriel or gladriel's to blame uh for sending numenorians over to middle earth to get fucking killed and exploded by a volcano uh this is uh she's leaning into this magical information she's been getting from the palantir mm. uh because that gives you spooky visions of of weird shit is that um, what it is the fall it of is. numenor and that flower was... petals yeah, that was what I kind of thought, but then by the time you get later in the episode, I don't know if we can thought, say that she ever actually used it. Because yeah, I thought she's like ideologically opposed to touching the plant here, like in a way that gives you visions and stuff. She thinks it's like 
crazy elf magic and you shouldn't she, get anyone near it. She was, but she was before she even knew about the Palantir, which is kind of the, the problem is that that was the problem with, with season one is that she's massively against the war, but no one ever has a clue why, because they didn't bother to give her a motive at that time. She just that was. That is the big problem with season um, one. AR, yeah. One of, one of the many big problems yeah. with season one. <laughs> wow. Um, and then she now she spots the planet. I kind of assumed that she had at least looked at it once because why wouldn't you? And that is then them sort of retroactively adding motive to the beliefs that she already had going in, which is not usually how writing works, but it is in Rings of Power. <laughs> yeah. So if the thing is, if um, if she did. If she, sorry, if she didn't look into the Palantir, then the only reason why she wouldn't have done that is if the king explained to her what it is and that she needed to do something else with it that we will see soon, which that didn't happen unless they're retconning it. But I thought, I thought um, she was just as, like politically poisoned, like propaganda has gotten to her. The king well, they did show tell the, her to look at it in like his final yeah, they scene. Show the flashback yeah where he says yeah. so they have a flashback here where he says uh, so know this our island will fall Ooh. and there is still time and we get the king saying this to arian but he didn't say this like on screen it's the the flashback sort of implies that this is something that she said to him that wasn't actually in the show i don't think and it yes. shows her pulling the blanket off the palantir and yeah, uh, that's her she... final scene of, of season one, the last episode. Of that. So like, she goes to him, he says, it's uh, like glowing, God says, blue. God, she, she does do all of that in season one. And he says, don't do what I did and look too long because, you know, you'll you'll go mad and you'll stop seeing you know, where the future just and the past and the present sort of like demarcated. Um, but like that, this is why like my read of it would be that the person she blames is is Galadriel because you know Miriel looked into the Palantir oh, yeah. and she saw the prophecy, which was that Galadriel would turn up and that would bring about the fall of Numenor, so that would be why she's blaming the elf, as opposed to the queen. But then she also blames the queen for following the I mean, yeah, the she, elf. she's blaming both, right? Is there no blame I, for the king here, and uh, impl implied by... No, he's dead. We don't care about him anymore. Well, I mean, just the, what, you know, what are you trying to say, and then the flashback going straight to the king, and she's staring at him as well. I just mm -hmm. wonder if... We got, we got... The, the problem is too many things fit, because she's a very underdeveloped character. Yeah, yeah. Well, it could be uh, go, go either was, way. We should, we should hold to the old traditions and be nice to elves so that our island doesn't get consumed by a tsunami. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that that's 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 him. That is the king. That's essentially all that he is. So, yeah. but like Aarian then ends up essentially doing the opposite. And my read on that scene was that when you touch the Palantir, um you you see a vision of the flooding of Numenor because it, it, we also find out later in the series that for, for a very long period of time that is the only thing the Palantir has shown it's just whoever uses it you just see that Numenor gets flooded so if she walks up to the Palantir and touches it and sees and it doesn't throw her across the room because that's not that's definitely not something that Palantir do in Rings <laughs> of Power um, and she sees the vision of Numenor getting flooded she then works out that the reason why Muriel took her army or took the, the Numenorean army that didn't exist to Middle Earth is because she has a crystal ball that says that Numenor will flood. And she makes the connection that that is why she did it. That's not an intuitive connection. Does anyone entertain the yeah, idea that the plant here is broken and is repeated a scene over and over again <laughs> on the DVD that's scratched? <laughs> It's, nope. just, it's like oh. a broken record. <laughs> they need to get like one of these things that just broken. scrapes scrapes off the first layer of the Palantir, like a DVD. Yeah, like one of these oh, things. I had repeat like, on. Oh, <laughs> I think they actually say in season one that it is broken because Palantir don't show you visions of the future. That's not what they do, um, except yeah, for this one. And I think there is actually a line in season one saying that this Palantir is different. But nobody stops to ask whether different means oh, it's yeah. definitely still working. Or whether different means it's fucked, and you really should be paying it no attention whatsoever. But then yeah. the, the king doesn't tell you until episode eight that he's an unreliable narrator, so the entire prophecy is balked anyway. Mm -hmm. And then they the queen, who, who makes the decision to go to war based on... Well, no, she doesn't want to do that because the Palantir tells her one thing. Then some blossom falls from a tree, and she says, well, that must supersede, I guess, the Palantir, because that's how... Pal uh, fuck it, I don't know, that's how it works for some reason. <laughs> so, like, Blossom falls from tree, override Palantir, go to war, but Palantir shows Numenor dies if you follow the elf. But Palantir so, might be broken, and the king is they, mad. They should have a bunch mm. more of them, right? Because they bring seven from here to Middle-earth later. Um, I think it's but, eight uh, in total. Yeah, so it? Could the Valar might just be. show up and tell us what we need to do? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 dude, even better than that. If y'all like, like, are real, 
a union right, worker so or a trade worker to be like, up. there's your problem. It's not properly plugged in, you see. It's all fucking frayed. The <laughs> wires. Let me sort that out for you. He's a good old hammer. seven, according to uh, Lord Ring fandom, at least. It's, it's a non plug with Palantir version 12.4. That's what, <laughs> right. what was the last time but you updated they're, they're your basically, Palantir? They're basically fucking, you know, smartphones, right? They're basically like telephones. See, when you switched um, your Wi-Fi network, like you didn't the, put in yeah. the new password. That's why it's gone to shit. I like shit. the idea that he's got, he comes in on a horse that's got like a little, you know, he's got like a tools. sign on him. It's, yeah, and, and he's just got a little sign advertising the guy's like little business. Yeah. And he's just like, <laughs> yep, this is my life. Just traveling the world, fixing Palantir. One of the only guys who can <laughs> fix Palantir's <laughs> left, you know, yeah. it's my family business. <laughs> Yeah, it keeps me busy. It's exciting. It's fun. It's You'd rewarding. be surprised how many break. It's, it's crazy. Travel the world. The, yeah, when when they called him, they were like, "Oh, Palantir is playing the same. He's like same scene over and over." Yes, we get that all the time. Yeah. Don't don't, right, don't take the destruction of your home. I, I, sure, I sure hope you haven't made any crazy decisions <laughs> based on looking at it. Don't go doing that. All right. Shows the entire Lovely. civilization fucking drowning. He's like, "That's terrible." Totally oh, temporary man. though. I can get that fixed right up for you. Don't worry. <laughs> but we don't know the password of the Palantir. It's like, oh, he's an old guy. It's probably like uh, one, two, three, four. Have, <laughs> <six hundred. laughs> oh, right. Right. have right. you tried we'll passwords? Have to some different channels. It's... There's some really great television on lately. You know, you, I give it, give it a look. See what, <laughs> see what you he like. Looks, well, the people in this universe. Bad. It's a really good show. Very interesting. When all of these people look into the Palantir, they just see Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. And it drives them mad. They're like, they can't <laughs> fathom that this could be the Lord of the Rings. And so it, it drives them insane. They go yeah, nuts. Um, the old worker guy he makes him a remote. He's like, you don't have to touch it anymore. You just press the button. <laughs> don't press them too hard or you're, you're, you'll stick on a seat again. So nice and easy now. Just call me if anything goes wrong. <laughs> Three-year guarantee. Like universal remote. So, you know, if you got another Palantir nearby, it might turn on. As he's leaving, there's a civil war. And he's like, oh, jeez. <laughs> I think I was too late. All right, come on, my horsey. Let's get out of here. Gotta go sort yeah. out something in Mordor. Yeah. See, that would be the best. He turns up to see Sauron or Adar and fixes their Palantir. He's like, oh, here's your problem. <laughs> 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 they really want to kill him, but like, uh, fuck, you are so valuable. He's like, ah, that's how you stay alive in the world. <laughs> Where are Palantir are showed the destruction of the Southlands, but that actually <laughs> happened. <laughs> yeah, that that realization where he sees that scene on repeat, he's like, "Oh, this isn't broken. This is just gonna happen." <laughs> yeah, like, sorry, guys. you might want to move. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, who is Waldreg? Was... <laughs> he seems evil. Keep I'm going to a hero with these parents. Uh, yeah, make sure that he's okay. Make yeah. sure he's safe. Make sure he's all right. Bit of a dick, but um, good worker. Good worker. Yeah, he loves what he does. Yeah. Also, I, I like the idea, like, now that I heard, like, the lore stuff from you guys, that they apparently sail west to Valinor. I just like the idea mm -hmm. that they all of a sudden do that, and all people in Valinor are like, the fuck did we do? We haven't talked in, like, a thousand years. Why are you coming towards us? You zap! And just die. Basically, the first, like, the first foot they set on Valinor, they all fucking instantly die, and no more, no more sinks to the sea. That's just Dude, funny. I want to see that. That sounds hilarious. Uh, all the elves are like, da 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 I, could put, I think that that's also the moment at which the Earth becomes round. It's a yes. flat Earth until that point, and then oh, no, that's the gods get so that's, pissed off. That, that's, or is that the first stage one? That, yeah, that's the sinking of uh, Beleriand. That, this is the part yeah. where Valinor gets like disconnected from the entire world, and you can only get there through like some magical bullshit means. That's insane. Oh. The, the, the lore so, is yeah. crazy. The lore sounds really <laughs> crazy. <laughs> so Valinor gets removed from from the the globe basically, and gets put like on the its own plane. Well, because in season one, it seemed like that was maybe already the case. Because yeah, you had I was going that, to say that. Yeah. Uh, you had that, like, uh, poorly... It's, you know, similar. Huh. But that should not be a thing. Yeah. I really like the idea that basically the writers seem to just repeatedly be using, like, in-universe narrative devices to place ideas in the characters' heads. Because they're doing mm -hmm. that. They've decided that that's what the Palantir does. And they've decided that that's what the rings do. Mm -hmm. by, by the way, it should also be mentioned, part of the like deal with Numenor is uh, men aren't allowed to sail as far west, so they, they, they have to like see the shore of Numenor at all times if they sail west. So they can't like um, yeah go, go that far at all to the west. That's why the, the thing with the boat sailing past Numenor in uh, the first Three episode doesn't miles. make any fucking sense. Yeah. 
they're, they're never allowed to leave leave shore basically it's just funny with the show no matter which direction you look at it's just a bunch of nonsense <laughs> do you want to do anything in the lore no because some elf bullshit or whatever or some god said you can't do something or else we'll you'll get zapped <laughs> no i have a line here that could explain a little bit we could, no go away so, oh, okay <laughs> back to the funeral <gasps> oh joy i love funerals do you oh, know yes. what Funeral. Dead people are called the late so and so well what 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 say it again it's a funeral. Do you know why they would refer to like Tar Palantir? Do you know why they would call him like the late Tar Palantir? Why someone, if they die, they're referred to the late so and so? Because they didn't turn Because up. they will never show up on time again. Dead. True, they're dead. No. So, Muriel, she's here with Farazan. They arrive at the funeral. She's still blind. She can't see anything. Hopefully, that gets better. Uh,. Elendil goes up and he stands next to her when she arrives. <clears throat> and uh, she has uh, Elendil be the one to kind of describe what's happening at the funeral because she cannot see. Her ability to perceive objects at distances has greatly diminished ever <laughs> since the accident um, over in Middle Earth. Yes. So, hmm. Uh, I think this is supposed to imply, I believe, that she doesn't really trust Farazan. Because uh, even though he let her in, seems to be in like an official capacity, because it's a Lendl that she trusts to report what's going on in the funeral. Well, they threaten um, to do political intrigue, don't they? Because they say the lords from the north have turned up, and one of them, I think, is called Belzegir, who I think is yep. a name they've actually stolen from a king in the books. Like, he's supposed to have been like, a few kings before Muriel, or before, well, sorry, before Palantir. Yeah. Um, but like they threaten to do that, and it's like, oh, we're going to get some sort of Game of Thrones y House of the Dragon political stuff going on. Fucking no. No, just stand by a window and you will be king. That's all you need to do. Uh, yeah, uh, Alindel says that uh, the nobles from the north are here, and it seems Lord Belzegar has come to pay his respects. Yes, Belzegar. Yo, Lord Belzegar. I've been waiting for him to show up. Uh, one of my favorite what characters are gonna in the lore. Off show. They've been talking about it for years. Rings of Belzegar. Um, yeah, yeah, Belzegar right. and Waldrig are Waldrig. They're they're roommates, and they just uh, well, they just the Waldrig a, prequel like, series is obviously on the way, but the, the Belzegar, Waldrig, <laughs> Waldrig, you know? a Lord of the Rings story. Yeah, it was crazy. Yes. We we're talking about the five seasons like of the it. Waldrig show. They've already confirmed ten, and they said they could be as many as twenty. <laughs> Which I think is a really good idea. You know, mm -hmm. like yeah, might as well lock him in. It's he lived be a, a life. He lived world. a life. He's they, the most yeah, important they, figure in Middle Earth, somewhat. Well, they didn't show him being <laughs> eaten by the warg. They want to leave the door so, open. That's going to be a reveal. <laughs> apparently, yeah, yeah. for season five, they're going to show us the end of that scene, and then the season's going to split. Then <laughs> for, going forward into the future and the past, it's going to have a huge Waldrig. narrative. Yeah. Where the warg is. The warg's was... about to jump on him and eat him, but then the warg is like, man, what am I doing? <laughs> no, no it, it was actually the warg screaming because the warg ate him. Oh, yeah, the warg <laughs> screaming. The show... Yeah, the warg <laughs> fucked him up. The show will open with a voiceover from Sauron against a black screen saying, do you know why I saved you? <laughs> <laughs> Make the warg not eat him. <laughs> and then, and then the follow-up line, because you saved me. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like uh he he loses an arm and a leg he's like kazahira miller in the phantom pain and he's just walking around with his sunglasses and he's like Ugh, why are we here just to suffer snake boss stuff is happening I don't know what it is because it's fucking Metal Gear Solid, but shit's going down it's just a lady happening in Metal she Gear has a gas mask and a guy's on fire hell yeah what the fuck is happening? I would love it's to have an rag. interview with the creators at the end of season two and be like, so what will Aldrich be doing in season three? And they're like, oh, well, who? He, <laughs> like, like they, th they think they want to tell him. I'm just like, he's not dead. No, he's not. Why would you say that? <laughs> no. And they're like, yeah, I guess we don't know. It wasn't really confirmed. It's like, exactly. Have you spoken to the actors? Uh -huh. Is he, is he mm -hmm. interested in coming back? I think he should, you know, you guys don't ruin this opportunity. And if we could get the fan base <laughs> to do the Morbius thing, <laughs> it's Baldrick oh, time. Time. The, the, the petition to bring back well, return, restore Waldrig even it would, it would definitely like, be the Acolyte one that board meeting where they're like there's not much hype for Rings of Power but there is for Waldrig <laughs> we've got to get on this I don't know <laughs> it's a lot of interaction in Waldrig <laughs> Sauron played us like a damn fiddle a woman walks oh. up to the queen at the Ew. funeral that's so funny. I love that scene. <laughs> Which is disgusting. I would say do not do not approach me. Do not come anywhere near me. But the queen, on account of her being blind, doesn't really see this happen. 
And this woman <laughs> asks, is this how we repay our fallen? And she has a shell in her hand. Uh, I guess they so put a shell I up guess... for every dead person. Is that how that works? Maybe. Maybe, or it's just shells are just decorative because there's a whole jar. You could see. Yeah, it's like a whole big, thing. Big old shells, jars then. of shells, big old shell jars. Maybe it's just because they're an island kingdom, so they have a lot of ocean related decor. Um, I don't know, but she has one in her hand. So it seems to be that uh, she is not referring to the funeral itself. It's uh, about the fact that Numenor has lost all of these soldiers in Middle Earth when they got sent over there to deal with the orcs. Yeah, and a lot um, of people probably have a lot of questions about what the fuck that was. Well, that, okay. Because, yeah, it, it, we see Elendil putting one down, and I guess uh, his daughter is like, You didn't even say that that was for Sealed, or you won't even say that that's what probably what mm. she's talking about. So I guess one shell equals one person you're mourning because they have died, and they're all over the king's uh, coffin thing. Mm. So I, guess I thought it was sense. more like a just like a cultural thing they do to anyone well, you who know, dies. Like in like, hot I D, thought there was that. Like in a candle, too. Per like, whoever, person like everyone mourn. who. Yeah, everyone. You no. Know, yeah, I know what you mean. I, I thought it would be more like just whoever many people come to your funeral, like everyone puts like a shell on your thing. Could be that uh, as well. I'm not a really. matter of respect. That's what I thought. Well, the, the reason why I wanted to just kind of clear that up if possible is because uh, that lady's really mad and I'm not sure I understand really why. Uh, I don't same. understand what they understand. Yeah, what's so, what's the story? What, who told who yeah, what? Cause the, <laughs> okay, cause the so thing you're, is the, you're a oh, lady. Ahead, right. Right, you're gonna be Shell Lady. But also, it's hilarious that she goes up to the blind woman, holds out a shell, and says, "Is this how we repair a fallen?" That's fucking hilarious. You're gonna have to be more specific. <laughs> I can't we, see. Now we've established this lady's a dick. All right, mm -hmm. if you are her, if you're a random Numenorian, life is just carrying on. Things are great. We got our shells. We got our guilds, and there's no elves. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> there is an elf. Apparently, this Elendil guy has picked up an elf randomly floating around in the ocean, brought her back to Numenor, because he says the sea's always right, but you're not supposed to bring elves to Numenor. That's treason. Let but it's drown. okay, Let he gets away drown. with it. I guess it's whatever. Mm -hmm. he, he gets, maybe it's just like an old thing, whatever. But he gets away with it. Now, this elf, the entire time this elf is here, the elf is like, I don't want to be here. I want to be in Middle Earth. And I'm going to convince you to... Not bring your army, but to create and raise an army so that it can come with us on these five, oh shit, now three boats so that we can go. Because she says there are orcs in the Southlands and we got to go kill them. You Numenorians, you need to come over to Middle Earth and kill the orcs in the Southlands because this elf convinces the queen that it just so happens by an insane coincidence she met the king of the Southlands, who was also floating around on a little raft in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> and she said, man, this guy's the king of the Southlands. We got to go kill the orcs. So the, the queen's like, yeah, we got to do that or else something mystical will happen and Numenor will explode. And so we make this army. We go over there. Fucking tragedy. All right. We kill like 20 orcs. Um, <laughs> and then a volcano explodes. <laughs> And then, like, um, uh, so many people die. So many Numenorians die from that. And then yeah, after like that one battle, after that one ten-minute battle in the in the mountain explosion, they come back. The queen is blind. A bunch <laughs> of people got killed, and and the king's dead. What the fuck is happening? What is going on here? I did not vote for this. Here is a <laughs> this shell. He is a shell. Just how we mourn our fallen. Well, there. Uh, the, the, <laughs> it sounds like you build up to explain why she's pissed, but I just don't understand why the, oh. the story isn't pretty straightforward. It's, we yeah, went there. The, the, this we is did the save them. It the, was going hey, great well, until an old man stuck a key in a fucking thing and a dam opened up. A, it's which they don't. They don't know. They don't. No, know they don't know that. No one knows what Waldrek did for this world. But like, why wouldn't the story be? We went there full force, and we got fucking repelled hard. It was it was horrifying. We're not ready for this force well, that's on would... the other side of the world. Like, why would that be seen as well? You're you shouldn't have fucking got. It's like, well, we tried to help those people, the Southlanders. They're all dead now. Mm -hmm. Well, what I want to know is, wouldn't the Numenorians consider with what what they've been sort of you know illustrated to be? Why wouldn't they consider the explosion of this fire mountain to be like a sign from the gods that they fucked up hardcore? 
They don't know game. anything about Waldreg and the we sword. Need, no. and we need a green council anything. scene with a bunch of people who have different perspectives in Numenor. One, the mm -hmm. uh, like a land deal who can be like, this is the this is what happened, and it's pretty reasonable, and it's just yeah, unfortunate. And then someone who can be like the religious zealot, someone who can try and contextualize it and write a different. It'd be like, I don't think you're telling us the whole truth. I think you actually went there for other reasons, or blah blah blah. You know, and then back and forth and back and forth, political squabbling, and then implications that uh, whispers are being moved around the kingdom. Because to just fucking throw this on me, like her slapping the queen who got mm -hmm. blinded saving soldiers? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Look, it's At a funeral? Saving soldiers from a, from a place that she put it, them in, which will be the, the point of, of confusion. But like, the, the problem is that, that they don't have a figurehead for the other points of view because they, for some inexplicable reason, decided that they would have Farazan support the war in Season 1. So they don't have anyone who can sort of stand and give the case against what happened, which well, would make I, all yeah. of this understandable, because the good people and the bad people both think that that was the right thing to do, which is just a really bizarre writing choice. Why would you have that? You didn't need to do that. Like, Farazin could be convinced to go back later, but don't have him effectively taking away the conflict, because you kind of need the conflict to understand why people in this situation are pissed off with the Queen. You could make it more. You could make it interesting that there's just a, a newer character. But obviously, we would want to put them way earlier, set them up. But oh, let's yeah. say there was like a, a political sort of guy who's getting in the way and getting everyone to blah blah. blah. And then we get the scene that you realize he's working for Farazon. He's getting paid by him. He doesn't actually believe in anything. Lord of it Belzegar. We have the character, but he. But they're not using. Well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's not interesting. It's just confusing to me. I'm like, oh, I guess the whole play. I mean... This is the thing. Whenever they have a scene in Numenor, and they just, it's like the writer being like, this is the situation now, and I'm like, oh. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the situation now. Very well, if you say she, so. She says that uh, she lost her son, right? So that's the moment. No, yeah, but that's why she's so mad. This is what it's I mean. It's so weird because this is the king's funeral. Imagine yeah. going to someone yeah. else's funeral and being that's like, "How come you're not mourning my son?" Yeah, because you're an course, asshole, but... lady. No, but, yeah, but you, you guys aren't women. You don't understand. Too true. Have you never gone to someone's funeral and slapped their child? <laughs> I do that all the time. Yeah. That's fantastic. Absolutely. Really there's that, but there's also <laughs> just. I want to hear about your dad's. Do they actually? Because, as Rag said, you can definitely have a perspective that it's like a, a religious moment of the their particular god punishing them, or whatever. But is there anyone who's like trying to argue, guys? We won. We did it. It was great. And then the fucking volcano went off. What do you want us to do yeah. about it? Like we tried. <laughs> yeah, that's not explain I at think all. that I think that's what Muriel potentially believes, although it's very, very unclear. Because this all is we what have... Muriel potentially believes. <laughs> well, it's, it's, really, it's really well written. <laughs> yeah, because at the end of season seven, we have the scene where Galadriel kind of shows up and she's like, oh, fucking hell, the queen's blind. What have I done? And then Muriel kind of spins it on its head and says, uh, oh, uh, save your tears for our enemies because they don't know what they have unleashed. So Muriel at this point, mm -hmm. unless she's changed her mind off screen, of course, uh, we're supposed to believe intends to go back to what is now Mordor with even yeah. more soldiers, which means so basically that. that she, yeah, like she doesn't understand the, the whole reason why all of that happened is because she was essentially tricked by Galadriel's claim that Halbrand was the king of the Southlands. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, she she went there to put Halbrand on the throne and unite the people, which is also, like Platoon said, what Farazon wanted for some reason, thinking that they'd mm -hmm. get paid, like, tribute forever. Um, and what ended up happening is they killed, like, 50 orcs and saved, like, 20 people, and then the volcano went off, and uh, I think we're supposed to infer that somewhere around 300, 350 Numenorians died. There were not that many there. Maybe. Uh -huh. well, because, because there were there were 500 soldiers that were going to go, and if we assume that they crammed uh -huh. 500 soldiers into the three remaining boats, mm -hmm. um, they only came back with one boat. Uh, so I was figuring, I was figuring maybe they they lost somewhere around 300 to 350 people because you, you're not bringing 500 people back in one boat. Um, um, also, this doesn't really change the explanation before, but regarding the shells that the woman picks up and says, is this how we treat our fallen or whatever it is, um, we do see in a later episode, they do a little like uh, candle ritual where they put the candle on the shell to like pray for the, the lives or for the safe return of their soldiers or something. So it okay. does have a... I don't. I religious superstitious. Some it does have a kind of. I guess spiritual. Something is happening. Is what themselves. you're saying. We yeah. have information to know. Something yeah. is going on there. Like yeah, all but right. the shells. The shells are more than just shells. We just don't know this yet. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's just as all as already been said. This is like the king's funeral. So the soldiers will probably get their own ceremony, probably on sea, 
with like a whole big ceremony, everybody yelling the sea is right or something along those lines. Maybe they throw some shells in the water, I don't know. But the way it's like portrayed here, like this hasn't happened yet and apparently will never happen because she's so angry she slaps the queen or the queen regent or whatever. I do love this meme, by the way. Crazy. Yeah, fucking best ship to sign in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Mithril fuel, damn. Yeah, man. High Wait, tech shit. It goes really fast, that's why. I nice. like the, the <laughs> like Galadriel's room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and highly flammable wine, because obviously the ship's exploded. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, uh, the turbo elevator as well in between there. It's not labeled properly, <laughs> but, you know, it's just, it's just, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so you just made me think about something as well. Like, uh, it would be really hilarious if there were pen pals for any given elf and, um, you know, like a Numenorian. And after what's happened with Halbrand and the reveal in uh, Lindon of, of who he is, like, all the elves there know. I actually just sent, like, a mail being like, that, you know, that King of the Southlands guy? And the Numenorian's like, yeah. And like, Sauron. No, but they, they all have to go through <laughs> that one area in, you know, the, the spooky forest, though. So. Oh, no, this is email. Well, this is different. So it's fine. Like, oh. <laughs> they have, so they... But, like, if that if that word got <laughs> out in Numenoria, uh, Numenor, like, the, it's like, we, we got tricked into putting literally Satan back in his throne, uh, by the way. <laughs> I feel like that would actually that be ha- much more useful to the story to subvert Muriel. But they don't use it. Well, yeah, because it would make it would mm-hmm. give Farazon a very, very viable reason for being like the elves are pricks. Look what this one did. Well, like, because you could make him tall, right? You can make him not cringe. He could be like, listen, I respect you, and I think you're a wonderful woman. But your decisions have led to the most destruction our culture has ever experienced. Maybe it's time to understand that you know certain roles are not meant for certain people. Like you could you could, you could play it that way. Instead of they make him like the more the episodes go on, the more cartoony he gets. Yeah, or, or like you know, say you know the people will not support you after what happened. Yeah, and he'd be like, step down for a while. And... You don't have to be queen just because like you were the, his daughter. That's not how you can make something meaningful out of it. You could actually make him mm-hmm. seem like he cares about it. And then of yeah, course you, can... you can have it in the background. He's like little finger or something. He's like, ah, I don't actually care about it. She's a woman. I hate her. <laughs> <laughs> also, like. I, that just reminded me. So neither, no, no one anywhere re- uh, acknowledges that Halbrand is supposed to be the king of the Southlands anymore. Even though really everyone should know that, apart from the elves at this point. So it's not mentioned by any of the Southlanders. It's not so... mentioned by uh, a- any of Numenor. They mm-hmm. just the idea that Halbrand is the king of the Southlands. And he, uh, you know, he was injured and oh, is he still alive? Oh, right of way. What not if, mentioned again. What if everyone thinks he died because there's no way he would have survived the, the trip when he was in? <laughs> well, yeah. where, did, where did that wall, where, that wall, sorry, where did that, where did that Halbrand, first off, where is Waldrick? Is he safe? Is he all right? Is he safe? <laughs> where, that guy you said was the king of the Southlands and was like an instrumental point in this whole catastrophe, this, mm-hmm. our own personal Afghanistan. What, where is he? And oh, he got just, captured by the elves? When, oh, they, when they said, like, oh, God, he's super injured, he needs elf medicine, so and wrong. you need to ride <laughs> seven, like, what? seven days or whatever, I just I just feel like everyone yep. there was like, oh, oh, yeah, you'll make it. You'll make it, mm-hmm. for sure. And then <laughs> when he sure, left, they were yeah. like, oh, that's a pity, he's dead. Anyway, you know, moving oh, on. And when they, king. They just but then you died. have, like, these Southlanders that have been released by Adar, allegedly, so they should probably go around, the king saved us! He, he, he did a deal, and it's all awesome. Yeah, well, I've seen what there that These people around as well. I, I guess they could have. People. They could have <laughs> had like a second coffin at this funeral and just had it be like you know an empty coffin to symbolize the deceased king of the Southlands. Because the Numenorians would be like, yeah, there's no way he survived. This is for Halbrand. He was king for a day, quite literally. <laughs> But that would have obviously been very, very funny. Dude, it's so it's yeah, just that's... waiting there though to be like, first of all, not dead, and then they all go. Oh. It's like, no, that's not the shocking information. He's Sauron. <laughs> like, <that> was, what? <laughs> Guys, our our intelligence was really bad. <laughs> really <laughs> okay. bad. Yeah, apparently he was about to just go chill somewhere, and then this crazy elf bitch was like, "No, you're the king, actually," and now he's evil again. And then like, they can be like, has really Galadriel been punished? And they're like, no. <laughs> no, he has like a she crazy got a ring of power. She got a ring so of power. Anyway. Punished with more power. She got, she got mega promoted, actually. Um, oh, oh yeah, so the woman slaps Muriel. Mean. Because Muriel 
this is only the beginning of our morning. Slapping a blind person uh, feels especially rude. <laughs> it's I, well, yeah, like Elendil and the guards don't <laughs> himself. I don't. I don't know how this woman was able to get anywhere near the queen. Even like, she, especially because she's she she telegraphs that hit so hard. She's like step, step, yeah. lift, slap. But it's like I, Elendil. Yeah, on. like I guess if at this funeral it would be a lot of people would want to go up to her and pay their respects. So it would be like normal for people to go up to the queen. But to slap yeah. her like that, um, Elendil, what are we doing? Yeah. Maybe he's just so, I don't know, maybe so this is just so unheard of. You know, maybe this is, this is just doesn't happen. But uh, anyway, after, after Muriel gets slapped, which is worse, by the way, when you're blind, because you don't see it coming. I do have happens. a question about the blindness, actually, which is like, how widely known is this? Because she she tries to hide they it. Just in think season she's one. ignoring everybody. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Like, she tries to hide it in season one, but then sometimes she wears um, a little like headband, eye band, whatever the fuck you'd call it, blindfold. That's the one. Sometimes she wears that in public, but then here she's not wearing it, and there's there's clearly like a rumor going around because some people say she's impaired. But I haven't got the impression that it's sort of widely known. So they might genuinely think that I she's think just ignoring them. Because no why would she not just be permanently now. wearing a blindfold? I, there is a mention of her I being I blind. That impression, very but it got later. Yeah, that I, I was like, wait, did I actually know that she's blind? But I think they mention it later in the episode. This is yeah, where they... they're the conspirators, aren't they? And that, that, that's the thing that confuses me. Because like they almost go to play it as a point of tension. I thought this is what they were doing when there's the later bit when Farrison presents the two colors of robe. And I thought, well, ah, okay, this is going to be the bit where he mm. finds out or like he exploits the fact that she's blind because she can't tell the difference. Mm. They don't do that. No. But the only people who do seem to know she's blind are the people directly involved in the conspiracy and not necessarily the they people. So I don't, I have no idea how widely acknowledged it is, given that she did try to hide it first. I think the show is just expecting us to believe that everyone in Numenor knows it, which is why they're not mentioning it. Yeah. It's, just, it's just a given yeah. because she-, she Well, it's actually someone... a callback. To the to earlier in this episode, this is actually a reference to uh, the beginning of this episode because to Muriel, all forests are black. Because mm. <laughs> she can't see. Okay. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> oh true. So I was gonna say um, that uh, they, they they've always missed opportunities, and you could have Farazon be like, "I'm gonna reveal the truth to the people I believe." That she is blind, and there's all these people like she's not blind. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, she's blind. And he's gonna prove it by the big ceremony, and he gets everyone to agree. Do not laugh. Don't say anything. <laughs> I'm gonna come in dressed as a clown, full makeup, and she's the only <laughs> one that won't know I'm gonna do this. And we'll see if she reacts. And he walks right up to her, and she's just like, "Hello." And he's like, "Yeah, you fucking blind." <laughs> like, I knew it. <laughs> like dressed as a clown. <laughs> And then they could all burst out laughing. It'd be a great scene, and I just think it suits Rings of Power, but never mind. It does. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, let's see. She says, uh, she tells the guards and everyone not to instantly execute slash jail this woman who just assaulted the queen at her father's funeral. Yeah, uh, the guards kind of suck for of stopping a... her, by the way. But, uh... Oh, no, 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 guards are ass, dude. Yeah. Considered a mild faux pas. Oh, sorry. Speaking. That's someone just yeah. mentioned uh, honk yeah. honk, and I was like, "That's a great payoff too." They hug, and then his <laughs> nose hits her back or something, and it, it honks, and then she has that moment of realizing, "Oh no, he's dressed as a clown." <laughs> I should have pointed that out. <laughs> Fuck. She feels the afro hair. Like <laughs> when she comes in here, no one's saying anything. <laughs> and then, and then as he's walking away, she's like, "I know you are dressed as a clown. I did not want to embarrass you." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah sure." <laughs> Um, oh. so yeah, uh, we learned that the woman lost a son, uh, in, uh, uh, now Mordor. So yeah. Anyway, Muriel should be furious with Galadriel based on, um, what she was told and the plan that happened and what's going on with Halbrand being Sauron. Um, <laughs> what a so mess. angry anyone can be with Already. Galadriel. They like they just don't allow it, you know. Kind of. Then it then it loops back into apathy because yeah. <laughs> that's kind of where we are. We're just like, yeah, she's awful. Mm -hmm. You know, our bandwidth is it's just it's not there like it used to be. So like um, as far as as far as Muriel can be aware at this point, the reason why she is blind and hundreds of Numenorians died is a combination of Galadriel's fault and the Valar's fault. 
that that is not ever addressed. No. You would think that it might change her outlook on life perhaps a little bit, but it does not. Oh, yeah, so, there's a few moments like that, though, all the way through season one, when she says, oh, there's a prophecy that my entire world is going to drown, and it's all because you came to this city. And, like, she never acts as though that is actually information she has, because then she just has these nice little formal chats with Galadriel and ends up giving her an army, which is not the kind of thing you do if you think that person's about to destroy your entire world. So, like, yeah. none, of, none of these people ever act in accordance with the information they are supposed to have. Ever. You might have actually sent her back to Middle Earth as she requested when she arrived there. Yeah. Well, that was that was going to happen until we got the scene with the petals from the white tree, which uh, th that's why, like, I yeah. guess the whole reason why she ends up doing it is because she is so, uh, lack of a better well, word, faithful. I she love genuinely that, idea. that That was going to happen later, but ori originally she was like a prisoner in Numenor for quite some time before that. Oh, the and they times. were sticking her on the boat the to exile time. her, and then some wind blew and some leaves yep. fell off a tree, and she's uh... like, oh my god, the gods are crying. We must completely <laughs> reverse course. Do. Foreign we policy do. decided by the fucking... Uh-oh. Who have you lost me? Oh, oh. Hello. Nope. Nope. Hello, everyone. Back. Oh, okay, we're good. We're back. We're, we're, back. Yep. we're back. That was terrifying. We're okay. That was yeah. terrifying. I felt well, you know what? We're okay. We're all we're good. Okay. We're all good. We all made it. We're Which live. means we get to talk about the next scene. Hooray! Hooray. Yay! All right. So yeah. uh, okay. we assume that later that night, uh, Farazan goes up to Muriel's room, place, whatever, uh, and she's feeling up the bracelet that uh, was the key that her father used to unlock the secret Palantir room mm -hmm. up at the top of the tower. Um, because I guess nobody knew about it except for the king and Muriel. Right. I guess that there was a whole room up there and there was a special door that had a secret lock on it and no one was like, wow, that's an odd way to secure the room cupboard. But no, <laughs> turns out, I guess no one knew about it except those two. No. So, okay, sure, I guess. Well, she um, hides it behind her back, but he can fucking totally see this, it from where he's standing. <laughs> yeah, this she is pretty funny. Know he's, like, she also doesn't know exactly where he stands. So well, she can also just put it fucking back up. in and be like, yeah, yeah. Just bracelet, yeah. whatever. Put it back in the fucking box, close the box, idiot. God, this My seems dad. dumb. Like, the, the, the effort they try to show that she's kind of listening to him to balance where she would place the bracelet to best avoid him seeing it. When he's probably seen it already. He's He's got eyes. Oh, yeah. he, he does look down, like, in the scene as well. Like, he looks straight at it. Well, the, the fact <laughs> yeah, is, like... he's like, oh, your father's you, things. Uh, he says, have yeah, you yeah, heard yeah. of the no, Streisand effect to her? And she says, the what effect? And he's yeah. like, it's when you try to, <laughs> you know, make so that people can't see a thing, and then that makes the thing that mm -hmm. much more interesting. I now wonder what that bracelet is, and I want it. Because yeah. you keep hiding bracelet, it from what's me. that? What's a bracelet? <laughs> I've never, I don't know. What's a bracelet? I don't even know. Yeah. I wouldn't have given a shit if you had just said, yeah, this is a fucking bracelet, I yeah. guess. <laughs> yep, this was uh, my father's bracelet. Yep, he really liked it. I really love my father's, anyway, but I want to keep it. Uh, yeah, he goes in, and he's like, oh, you're the father's stuff. And she's like, yeah. And then she acts really suspicious, weirdly. Um, <laughs> and then he tells a story about when his father died. Um... He it felt odd to like not drink the wine that he had left from the night before to waste mm -hmm. it something like that but whatever it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, um, it's like this great dialogue where he does like this whole anecdote and you're like, oh, are they going to engage in this conversation? Like, are you trying to tell me I should do something even though he's gone? She's just like, oh, what are you doing here? I was like, oh, I guess we're done. Yeah, with like, now. <laughs> like maybe in House of the Dragon or what some other show. Like we there would be a point to the dialogue, mm -hmm. but <laughs> no. They, once again, though, missing the comedic opportunities. If the if he was circling her while talking, and she kept he moving the the bracelet around her in a big counter circle, and the last thing he said was behind, uh, like in front of her, so she had it behind her, and then he doesn't speak for a little bit, and then the next thing he says is directly behind her, like actually takes <laughs> the bracelet off her. And she'd be he like, gets Fuck. on the bed, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she quickly moves it to the front again. Like. <laughs> He just does stop so, trolling um, it, like walks silently to the other side of the room, goes, so, and then runs over to the other side silently and goes, what have you been <laughs> doing? And she's like, what are you doing? Why, why are you doing that? <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, I guess um, Farazan's telling her about, you know, his dead father, and she's like, what do you want? This guy, she doesn't really like him. 
Uh, I think it's implied that they are sort of political opponents. We haven't really got that much on it. They were kind of working together, but they were a little bit opposed, and he didn't want to go. But then he's like, ah, I guess we could. It might work out to our benefit to have the Southland guys like mm. us, and that might be neat. But then it turns out he was Sauron, so Rip. that didn't pan out well. Did Farazon... but, you, know, you can't really blame us for that. He only supported somewhat in an effort to get her out of here so we could work on building people up to support him, right? Is that the idea? Like, that he wanted to go on? Because when Can she comes back with the flags and stuff, right? The big spooky ending of season one is like, oh god, what's going on? And I thought with the flags about being loyal to him instead of her or something. I don't remember. Um, no one remembers who watches the show could tell you anything about the political situation of Numenor. I just don't think that much time or effort or focus was placed on it, and now it's like they're trying to do some catch-up work with Oh, we got some political intrigue with Ferris on it. Apparently, Discord is misbehaving. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Singapore. Yeah. All right, we we should be back now. Singapore saved us. <laughs> uh, but I was saying, yeah, they the the whole the, there seems to be this whole political Numenorean situation that's very poorly explained, elaborated on. It's hard to remember, and now they're leaning into it again. Mm -hmm. And here we are. I think and that the sum total of it from season one is, is literally like she, Queenie says, go to war, and um, Faraz and Son and the Sildor sister say, no, don't go to war. Far Faraz and Son goes to Faraz and then say, we don't want to go to war. Why aren't you stopping it? And he says, because my trade routes, and I'm not going <laughs> to stop it because we'll be rich. And then they go to war, and then they come back, and the king is dead. That's li that's basically the entire thing. There's so. nothing I else. Yeah. Like he yeah. marshals. He's portrayed as more of the demagogue and the master of the opinions of poor there people. Is, but like that's it. I feel a bit of a competition sometimes between Numenor and not Gandalf scenes for just most worthless, boring crap that you want to get. Through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we've made we've um, made so much yeah. of discussing Numenor because all of our criticism slash discussion is basically speculation, like. What does yeah. this mean? What does this character want? Who knows? Yeah. Like, why don't you run a couple of examples? It's like, <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, like, funny um, what they try yeah. to do here and just compare it to, like, Hells of the Dragon or something. It's like, man, that's really embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, when Muriel asks him why Farazan is here, and Farazan uh, wants to know what she's hiding behind her back, and he'll tell her why he's here. <laughs> um, and she's like, nothing. Nothing <laughs> moves around, puts a bracelet on, says nothing. <laughs> puts it in her ass. I had and, nothing. And, like, <laughs> I told you. The only reason for being here is literally just, hey, what color do you want to wear tomorrow? And that's kind of she it. should. Um, she There's needs to have nothing else. A full time bodyguard. She needs a queen's guard that should be with her at all times. Oh, yeah. super trusted to be her eyes at this point. Like more, you should probably have it anyway. But when you're blind, that's very cynical and fucks her. Yeah, oh, like uh, like vertigo <laughs> to <laughs> Salazar. Very true. You should have someone to just make sure no one's fucking with you. Like if Farazan is just actually naked, he's like, you don't know. <laughs> he's helicoptering her the whole time. But he also he has the Hong Kong horn nose. <laughs> the clown are you are you dressed as a clown again, Farazan? No. <laughs> no. no. Every, time he, every time he steps, you hear the you get the little squeak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's really he's really booking. Wow, look at him. He's, well, not, I see your ears are as healthy as they've always like been. That sounded like ducks, more like. Well, like somebody was well, running with, with shoes that were like duck sounds coming out of your clown shoes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, all right. It, well, it, it is a fantasy world, you know. They're not as yeah, magic. Well, you know, things are it's a little bit different. Nothing it's a little bit makes different back sense. Then, you know? Is that what is that what is that, that so shoes? beyond making sense? First make... off, nothing does make sense. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> yeah, but because... that's, just, that's not because it's a fantasy show, it's because it's bad. Fantasy means things don't make sense, is what Rings of Power has taught yeah. me. No! Um, Sci-fi is things that don't make sense, instance, but might one day. For instance, right? Farazan asks, tell me what you have behind your back, and I'll tell you while I'm here. And she says, nothing. And he says, okay. Well, mm -hmm. so boom, there you go. Yeah, he says it's time for her to choose a color for her gown for the coronation. So we have our symbolism here. Red is red. for the future, and white represents the past. Well, and bear in mind symbolism. also the, the purple prose again, because everybody speaks in purple prose in this show. 
They can never just speak plainly. It's so oh. annoying. Yeah, yeah, what does he say about like the, the her father stuff? It's like the these are like keys to a door that will no longer open. It's something like that. Some <laughs> bullshit metaphor or yeah. simile. It's Pretty it's actually like unbelievable future. that they oh, keep doing that. Past. Like, god damn, just talk like normal I just, people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I, th this scene just drove me insane because they were just so ham-fisted with the what, what they tell us the meaning of these two colors are, which then like visually pops up uh, later on. Mm -hmm. But the meanings that they assign these colors are not what they would usually be associated with. So it's it, I like... actually ended up looking it up, and it's like he says that white symbolizes the past, but like if anything, white symbolizes like a, a clean start and a new beginning. If that's how they want Numenorian culture to be, okay, I guess, but it's not what I would have intuited from what those colors typically mean to people. No, it's like the... say, look, white is the past because it's the one her father wore. So to break right. from the past is to break from her father by wearing the red instead. So like that's about as deep as it gets. But like there is a kind of explanation for it. Yeah, because she says she remember that her father war um this is a very this is actually quite confusing and it will be extra confusing when we reach the end of the episode she says my father wore white that's all i can recall that and an eagle <laughs> say, say no more let's keep going all right because and then he says it is rare for an eagle to grace a coronation which made me go like but if you but if you have one on you it's it's guaranteed but I guess it's not well, normal it, that course, an eagle... When but... saying that, it's like, right, so an eagle is going to show up then. <laughs> yeah, like, over okay, this, so... There's a deleted scene where he pays off the eagle in an alleyway, so it's definitely oh, happening. Oh, right, Yeah, see. he says... Right. He's... <laughs> yeah, he give says... Did he give him, like, Shh. bird seed? Mm -hmm. Yes. He might. They leave one out there, which is considered cheating, <laughs> kind of, to leave the bird seed and dead rats and things out there for them. Oh, or live rats <laughs> on the little str on little strings to lure them in. Um, gets considered in bad form to trick the eagle or to, to you know to lure it there, uh, because Ferrazon said should one should an eagle make an appearance at your coronation, it would be seen as an auspicious omen. So, except yeah. that the eagle appeared at her father's coronation and then they yeah, deposed that's... him anyway. So <laughs> evidently, it's not that auspicious. Well, it was good at the time. He he. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the eagles, the they don't promise permanent good shit. They're like, we're coming to tell yeah. you. They, they thumb it up, and then they're like, it might not be great forever, though. Bye. Just, just <laughs> comes down and says, this is a good ceremony, and I'm not saying anything more than that, but the ceremony <laughs> is good. Like, what do you think, eagle? Um, he's like, I don't want to get political. I just, I like the guy. I think <laughs> I, I just, he feels like the kind of guy you want to have a beer with, you know? And they're like, yeah, yeah, true. And he's like, yeah. Oh my god, he's gonna fly drunk after this, isn't he? Oh, we remember what happened last time. Bumped into the King's Tower. Ooh. It wasn't the King's Tower at the time, it was just a tower tower. Another an eagle has hit the second tower. Oh god. No! No! Um, <laughs> so Farazan. Farazan, uh, uh, he's like, yo, which color? You wanna wear the crimson or the white? And she's like, yo, I'm gonna I'm gonna wear white. And so Farazan wants her to wear red. He says he prefers the red, that it will symbolize a new monarch for a new re uh, new age, and the people want, you know, change. And then she says the white because it is humbler. So, yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, all right. Yes, there you go. Next scene. There's a little <laughs> tavern. There's a tavern down there in Numenor, and, and, and Farazan and Belzegar and Kemen and Aarian are all sitting at the table and they're drinking and eating their salad. This scene is so no, bad. No, this is great. Which this was really the good, good scene up to this point? <laughs> this, this one really. Well, sucks, the horse right? one. The horse one where Barak yes, the horse. Yeah, the, the horse. The horse yeah. saving. It's been a long time since we've had a good scene. Good right? It's the best scene horse. was I mean, just a horse running across a field. But this, this one really sucks. Like, yeah, this no one's really day. great. This is a good one. So in this tavern, all of these characters are they're, they're talking that night in the old quarter. Um, after the funeral, we learn. Uh, now Belzegar is talking about how he does he doesn't think uh, Muriel's fit to rule. He says she suffered an infirmity, probably referring referring to the fact she's a woman. 
And Farazan wants him to lower his voice. He's like, do dude, dude, don't don't do that. You can't say that. You know, we have a big sort of as you know moment where uh, oh, we learn that Farazan on episode three hundred. Yes, as you know, this is bad writing. <laughs> so we, we this is bad dialogue. Uh, Farazan, uh, as you know. You, Farazan, <laughs> you. you are almost <laughs> named king in Muriel's place. Wow. And, as you know, much of this land still believes that yours was the better claim. Mm. And after Muriel's warmongering, many are ready to raise it again. <laughs> Anything so, else you want to remind me of? Now that we're all on the off? same page. <laughs> 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 now that we're all on the same page as to Farazan's backstory, Farazan says that many aren't enough to get him in power. Uh, so I suppose there is indeed a sort of election or choosing process that happens. And while it's kind of assumed that Muriel will take over, it is possible, I assume, to challenge politically uh, or contest the claim of the successor to a king. And they have a little get together, cast votes. There's a decisions, mm -hmm. whatever made. And a new person can be chosen instead. I think that's all we kind of really no we don't know much about the process you would assume that would happen before the fucking coronation though but you, you know, would but you never know they have a <laughs> flair for the dramatic and boy <laughs> yeah, i love yeah. drama um drama. so arian asks what if there was a way to turn many into enough great line wow yeah. great line <laughs> yeah amazing uh <laughs> they say arian arian can you please stop talking about percentages again and she's like, what, 30,000, 6 million, it's all bad either way. And they're like, you need to stop talking about that, please. Uh, she said she's afraid of what might happen if Farazan is made uh, to replace uh, the king. So she yeah, says Muriel's also... afraid or whatever. So uh, I, there's, they... I thought I'm she was sure. worried about what happened to herself when she... Yeah, what, started... what happened to oh, her yeah, yeah, she yeah. forced Farazan, yeah. So, yeah, like, or, yeah. or whether whether it would be bad, not necessarily for Farazon to take over, but what what would actually happen if Muriel were to be, if you set that kind of, I guess, political precedent and you do something that doesn't normally mm -hmm. get done, yeah. I guess. She would have to openly, like, oppose the queen and, like, what would happen to her if she does that? Yeah. That's, the, that's the thing. Well, but yeah, there's also the fact that they're literally discussion. literally punch the queen and nothing gets done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's also true. She gives you a hug yeah. and you can uh, share, a, share a cry together. <laughs> Because that's she the poster and she hugs no. you. <laughs> Viminor should change yeah, its uh, its electoral system to where it works like Wakanda. Just fight oh to the God. death. Just yes. Oh God. <laughs> Paris on fights a blind woman. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. They miss their opportunities for comedy every time. Clown Paris on versus blind Muriel. That would be <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> yes. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, oh no, so she can't see anything, so they have to nerf Farazon and say, so, you know, you have to wear these clown shoes, because otherwise it's just not fair. She has to be able to hear where you, you have to be, you have to be riding a unicycle. <laughs> you have to do the whole thing on a unicycle. <laughs> they do they do like Numenorian Gladiator, like a show where they have the big Q-tips and they have to hit each other with them on like pillars or whatnot. Yeah. But she's blind. She is a huge disadvantage. Yeah. I think uh, this, no the, way this line, even it out. the line she said there was like where she's worried what happens or if she has to oppose the queen. I think this is where my thought about the whole treason thing came up that I talked about before we went live, actually. Because uh, yeah, obviously, so, because I was like, oh, you're just discussing this whole treasonous stuff mm -hmm. here in the open between all these people. Shouldn't you like go somewhere yeah, else and said not do that? Surely the queen. you have. Like, it is yeah. insane yeah, to discuss this Surely you have publicly. a villa somewhere or something where you can talk about this shit, you know? But no, yeah. Yeah, let's talk about this in a small-ass tavern when people are sitting, like, yeah. you know, two feet away from us. <laughs> well, and it's particularly oh. crazy for Farazon, who's trying to hide any notion that he's trying yes. to subvert her in any way. He's just publicly talking with people about how he wants to get rid of her. It's like, bro. Mm -hmm. All of these people like, I like how he you. Starts, very fucking stupid. He starts with, oh, that's the L speaking. Then he says one more thing, it's like... Hang on, do it say, say more? <laughs> like, he doesn't even try to stop him anymore. <laughs> it's like, oh, there's people that like me? Hmm. I like being liked. Um, yeah, I, I get the idea of, like, Farazan not wanting to make it particularly public that he is wanting to oppose the queen, but without, like, splitting hairs here, would this count as treason if uh, they do have an electoral allowed... system? I guess you're allowed to. 
Okay, like, the, the, consider yeah, it or talk whether about or not. Yes, I think depends it was... on what image he wants to have, right? Because he, in all previous scenes, he has been shown to support her actions. I was going to say, there's, there's repercussions for this, whether or not we understand it to be legal or legal talk or whatever. It's like, this is out of character for him, and it could damage him significantly in his running for... Yeah. If this mm -hmm. is like, yeah, by the way, he's been trying to fuck her over forever. That's just that's just what farazon has been up to. You're like, oh, that could, that could mm -hmm. you know, affect his uh, profile in some way, shape, or form. In ways that, yeah, like, and all of these people should be smarter than this. They're all, like, fucking puppeteers of politics, but they decide to have this conversation here, of all places. Well, yeah, well I mean... Or past it here, right? Yeah, like, this conversation taking place, I think, is probably okay, as long as Farazon is not personally here. Yeah. I think I'd still take issue <clears throat> yeah, yeah. with it. I'd still think these people are Even too smart then. for this. It's double weird because because be the because the Valandio specifies spe spe like, oh, why are you here in these poor quarters? Don't you go to your fancy things all the time? Yeah, I was like, wait, so you mm -hmm. specifically yeah. went to a place that was actually like less uh, inconspicuous yeah, that you don't yeah. know about <laughs> at all <laughs> <laughs> to have this conversation. Uh -huh. It's like, so yeah, would, would you like to come around to my house and discuss treason? No, let's do it in the pub. It's like, <laughs> do it in the pub, I want to have a pint. <laughs> the small ass pub as well, yeah. Oh. It's bigger, there's more rooms. This is, sure. this is more than, mm -hmm. you know, the whole, the whole thing. This is like the little my, my guest point room is more you can that get there in are the people back. Like right next to them, it's not a big open area with lots of noise and shit. Well, I don't know why you would imply that nearby people can hear what they've been up to because oh, Valandil well, well, shows up. Yeah. Valandil shows up. You guys remember Valandil? He was the Afro guy. Yeah. His name that's is Valandil, and he's he's probably the only competent character in Rings of Power. Uh, well, so far. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I being biased here? Because <laughs> maybe it's because I was like, come on, well, this gotta be one. Well, it just feels weird that, yeah. like, are, are we all just There's accepting Galadriel. Waldrig is a given, it's... right? I, I think oh, no. Waldrig oh, <laughs> oh, oh, is very yeah, confident, yeah. yeah. The reason why I find it interesting that you say that is essentially because this scene is is this conversation happening, him going, nah, don't go doing that, leaving, and they're like, so anyway, back to the conversation that we're yeah. having. <laughs> yeah. uh, the queen. Just... Like, he didn't even achieve anything here. Yeah, well, yeah, and he also yeah, doesn't uh, tell what anyone I was about it. to happen afterwards is because of the way that scene ends up going, as I was fully expecting him to just kind of hang around near the pub so that when they leave, he can corner AR because he knows Aarian. We see that in season one. Yeah. He can then corner her and be like, what the fuck are you doing with those like goblins? You need to, you know, mm -hmm. you, you can't be talking about this kind of stuff, uh, you know, making these weird. Well, we like, need to describe what actually stuff. happens here. Uh, and then we'll yeah. talk about what, uh, you know, what repercussions may yeah. or may not happen. So, <clears throat> Philandil's nearby, he's drinking. And he goes up to the table where all these dudes are talking and chatting about Muriel and support and whatnot. Um, and so, uh, yeah, he approaches the table and asks what they're doing in the old quarter. And they said that they're coming back after the funeral. And Valandil uh, kind of you know, says, uh, Valar, rest him and keep him, you know, showing respect to the old king. And uh, Kimmon and Valandil get into a little, uh, little, little spat, a little back mm. and forth. Um, and Kemen says, uh, Kemen says, pity members of the common soldiery weren't invited to the funeral. Uh, and Vlandel says, uh, especially considering the low class that was. And everyone's Ooh. like, oh, wow, so what's Damn. going on? This is crazy. Now, Kemen stands up and he says, did you insult my father? And Vlandel says, no, I insulted you. And then they get up and they, or they're standing right in front of each other in the pub gets quiet and Valandil says I bled with the queen on the battlefield I watched her walk into an inferno to save lives to save her brother's life you speak ill of the queen again it'll be you suffers an infirmity me so Seven. yeah so I would say that the normal read, like the normal way that a scene like this would progress is that it would momentarily stop what's her name from doing anything right like yeah, exactly like that's what way? i would think she, she was about to start speaking he shows up and says hey shut the fuck up and the normal way that the scene would play out after that is she doesn't say it like that speech makes her have second yeah. thoughts right even if she wants to go and do whatever bullshit later like that's the normal way it would play out but instead again they, they just sit back down it's like so anyway tell us about how we can yeah. concoct our evil plan <laughs> yeah get another well, ale and tell us about your plan <laughs> and then she says exactly what she was gonna say so the scene is basically pointless it's just so that guy it's... can be like hey queen's pretty based yo 
and then Liam. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, him, and then him like himself Liam. and having heard the conversation. So he, he just paints a target on his own back, like that's pretty that's much. All it does, basically. Yeah, yeah. And, and then Valandia doesn't, doesn't like even do it. She's great. Yeah, and then he doesn't even do anything with the information, like at all. No, because I was expecting at the end, it's like, oh, maybe he told someone, and this like, oh, look out, they maybe tried to I do think something. He'd go talk to Alindo probably because he only... knew Isildur. Exactly. Yeah. I think that the only point of this scene is to establish the the conflict between him and 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 other guy. I don't yeah. give a fuck about their names. Yeah, and... like, <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> that, that guy, so that they can have a bit of a problem yeah. that will. I wish I would know the names. In the story. <laughs> Weasley White guy and Afroshad. So we can call them. By the way, him <laughs> eavesdropping, uh, there's equal reason he should have just let him keep talking. He could have just yeah. listened oh, yeah. to their Would've entire been, fucking planet. Yeah, and what's yeah. really funny is he's further out of earshot than about what looks to be maybe 15 people. How loud are they? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He has some really them. fucking good hearing. It's just so They're funny. They're not really subtle about it. Now. If he could hear it, <laughs> I think everyone yeah, everybody fucking can hear it. Yeah. Tavern could yeah. hear it. The rest of this tavern must be really fucking quiet. And if he, if he can hear the conversation. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, Farazan, through all this, doesn't say or do anything here to help his son or come to his son's defense or anything like that. He just sort of lets things play out, even though Kemen kind of gets. Uh, has to sort of back down. He's not. He's not willing, certainly, to rise to the kind of the the, the threats that Valandil is implying here. Um, I think it's still implied that Farazan and Kemen don't have a great relationship. They just sort of, you know, just sort of around because uh, I think at the season one, Farazan was like, "Oh, Kemen's kind of a Goober. kind of a nerd." Well, he scolds him specifically because because. Keenan goes and, and tries to stop um stop the war from happening. And Farazan says, No, 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 it's good for us. Don't be a fool. And then Keeman goes and blows up the boats. And uh, off screen, no comeuppance from that at all. Like but yep. also he's portrayed in season one as not being this much of a shit. Like he has a principled objection to the war. But when he goes onto the boats and he finds that Isildur is sleeping underneath, he doesn't just set fire to them anyway and blow them up. He wakes him up, which is a he's a very silly person all the way through, but he's not an evil silly person. Mm -hmm. Except right. that for season two's purposes, he really needs to be an evil silly person. So they've just kind of swapped his character at some point between seasons and now he's just a dick. Well, well like in season one, he, That's why. it wasn't it, it, yeah, in like season one, he well, I don't even think it was necessarily that he was principally opposed to the war. Like because because he doesn't have a character, all that matters is that he is uh, I guess romantically interested in Aryan. He just does what she says. She yep. is very much opposed to the war, and we know a little bit more about her than we do about him. And then he just is like, "Oh, I, I try to talk to my my dad, but like he, he won't listen to me because his ears don't work, or whatever the line was. His ears close up when I speak. I think it was the line." Oh yeah, and then she um, says, "Then yeah. speak louder." That's the yeah, one. speak louder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he does. <laughs> Great line. And then Farazon <laughs> Farazon explains why no, we're gonna let this happen because we'll get really rich. And then he still is like, "I'm gonna blow this up because Poon yeah, like that." I don't think it was his Boone. principle. I think it was that he wanted to After get laid. Because of Boone. Yeah, he's just a simp, basically. He pretty much, yeah. yeah but well, yeah, they, they've completely changed his personality in, in this season, and it gets even more insane in later episodes. Oh, yes. Oh, boy, I can't wait. Woohoo. So, Aryan sounds that she has... Says, ah, ah! Oh, <laughs> what? Oh, you okay? I lost the ability just to Think speak. of Waldrig, get back on track, you'll be fine. Oh my god, Waldrig. Oh, sweet Waldrig, guide my... My dog. boy. All right, Aryan says that she has found something secret and dangerous. Something forbidden. Uh, and yeah, they show... Uh, and show they, they show Muriel uh, is seen discovering the Palantir is gone. And I think it's implied that Aarian has stolen the Palantir from the King's Tower, which is weird because I don't know when this could have happened. Because it's it in season done. one. Well, she must have done it immediately okay. when the King uh, told her, which is bullshit. Well, because before she does that, she she yells for the for guards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I guess season they never one, arrive. In season one, she's like, "Oh no, guards! You need to come and help the King. He's choking or doing old stuff or whatever." And she's about to, she's able stuff. to. She's go. She's able to go to the secret room. I assume use the palantir, and Possibly, then conceal maybe. it from the king, and then leave with it all before and without the guards knowing that she took the palantir, or if the guards even know about the palantir and the fact that there's a big secret chamber here, and uh, we we don't 
also know what Arian thinks about the king's warning. We don't get what her perspective is on him being like, oh shit, we're gonna die. We um, also don't know what she thinks about the elves, and those are the two things that yeah. we need to know for her decision to make sense, because it, she, in this season, she hates the elves. So just seeing the Palantir and kind of magically knowing that it's an elven thing is enough for her to say mm. it's evil. But in season one, she doesn't ever give the impression, I don't think, that she thinks the elves are evil. No. She's opposed to the war for reasons that don't exist. But again, like uh, Kemen in this season, has at some point in between seasons been given a something like a personality, albeit one with no grounding. I think when the whole fucking they took our jobs thing happened, she looks kind of concerned. Like, that's the, the only thing we get uh, for that. I can't believe that happened. Yeah. <laughs> It was so funny, yeah, like, dude. This, this the one elf is... on an island that's are taking all our jobs, man. <laughs> yeah, it's that slippery slope argument, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. If we allow one in, they will all come here. <laughs> it can go from many into enough, or again, whatever the line is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like they, it, it, we never really know why Arian is doing any of what she's doing. And part of it's because the show just doesn't let any characters finish their conversations. Because in season one, She's having fun painting the king or making a statue mm. or whatever it is that she's doing. And then the king says like crazy bullshit to her and opens the door and then she goes up there. But we don't know exactly why she, you know, what does she think about this? Because he says, um, you must go, because he thinks that she's Muriel at this point in time. And he says like, you must go quickly, but don't look for too long. It's all very vague. I'm a crazy person and I'm going to be crazy in exactly the right way to let the story happen kind of dialogue. Um, but then the flashback that we get at the beginning of this episode was um, there is still time to save our city or something, which I don't believe ever actually was spoken in season one. Um, so at that point in time, when she goes up to have a look at the Palantir, I think we're supposed to be thinking, well, OK, she is wanting to help the king because she's doing what he's saying and she's having a look at the Palantir. She'd be like, oh, OK, I understand kind of why you're doing what you're doing or why Muriel's doing what she's doing. But then in this episode, she's like, yeah, I got a magic elf stone. I'm going to help your political opponent now. Because the, the king absolutely will not have wanted her to take the plant here. Oh, no, yeah. So, I, I mean, maybe mm. she put it down her shirt and was like, I'm pregnant now. Bye. I, I, that's all. I have always had three boobs. Did you not notice? <laughs> yeah. Big fan of total. Oh, you know, the it's the blessings of the Valar. <laughs> She's just um, spawn or whatever. So, uh, <laughs> welcome to Mordor. Oh, where's Waldreg? <laughs> Give me Waldreg. Waldreg is in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Waldreg's in our hearts. So, I want Glug. To Yay, good Glug. Old, good old Glug. My favorite, gl my favorite orc, Glug. Mm -hmm. Glug is talking about preparations for fighting with Adar. He says the preparations are nearly oh, complete, Lord Father. <laughs> and... Well, this is a this is a, oh what a great scene guys what a great scene <laughs> Glug says that he doesn't want to fight that they're safe and more um he says you said Sauron mm. uh, you say that Sauron was dead we should leave him that way and Adar's like oh if there's even a one percent chance of Sauron being right. alive <laughs> we have to take it as an absolute certainty we'll, we'll never be that, safe man. yeah he says we'll never be truly safe until we make sure that Sauron is he's gonna we're gonna stab him even harder than the last time. So this time, step on the yeah, blood, uh, stomp it. This time, the blood thing. Which I don't even know if they know about, and that be the reason why. I have no. Does he sound like that for anyone else? Or is it just actually? Me? Yeah. 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 Okay, Big oh, robot. We're, we're Lewis and your rags. Come back. Rags, oh, no. no. Oh, That's God. Is... Discord, you conspire well, against well, everyone... rags. <laughs> I no what what. What? What's happening? You turned into a robot, robot thing. You oh, turned okay. into a robot, yeah. Oh, yeah, and well, then, I'm, then I am not a robot. I'm flesh I'm and blood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yuck. Let's see. So, yeah. Um, Glug doesn't want to fight. They're safe in Mordor. Adar's like, nah, we gotta make sure that Sauron's dead, or else we'll never be safe. And then we see uh, Glug, and he, he goes over to his uh, his orc wife and his orc baby <sighs> who are standing uh, right, <laughs> right next to him. <laughs> And they're like, oh, we're taking care of our orc babies because we love our orc babies as orcs. We don't want to fight. We just want to be left to have our disgusting orc sex and make babies. And that all, and, and there you go. Um, I, I, I unironically prefer the fucking lore of Discuss. 
Here's a little <laughs> little meme I made for my video. You can play that ah, if yes. you want. Oh, man, I, <laughs> I don't know how to play it if it's not in... Because how do I get that into like a... I have to download it. Oh, right. oh shit. Damn it. I um, played it. It was really good. <laughs> you can just show an image of it and people will realize should we just, what it is. Should we just treat it as... This is, this is a little trailer for like, you should go watch Metal's videos, guys. They're there. They're ready. Mm. It's happening. It's happening. You got so, memes in them. Uh, memes. I, I All the memes. Yeah. Let me see if I can find a timestamp and I'll, so people can see what, what we are talking about. But go go ahead, go ahead. It's cringe. That's what I'm saying. Well, there was like a whole week's worth of, of discourse yeah. on Twitter, which basically boiled down to lots of people. I still know. I was going to say lots of people who really like this show, but that's oxymoronic. People who really like this show were like, <laughs> well, Tolkien confirmed once that orcs have sex. And because <laughs> we have really deracinated relationships, this means that we think they're good people. Um, because you know, like anyone that has sex must be good. So not like yeah. everything in the animal kingdom reproduces <clears throat> in much the same way. Um, and th th this idea that yeah, you can actually present orcs as being just as kind of they're, they're just misunderstood people. That they're like they could <sighs> be as good as humans, but the world is really mean to them. And actually, all they want is is love, life, and home. He wants to provide which is the family, complete horseshit. And he's gonna have to go yeah, off to but, war. But the show... It's really sad. <laughs> he's gonna get killed in this tragic music doesn't playing. Doesn't take this seriously. No. We're about to get a comedic beat where Mike Ehrman troll comes in and <laughs> he has like an orc's head <laughs> in his hand and they yeah, drop it yeah, for comedy. Yeah. And Adam so, like, doesn't care. I guess, I guess Adam doesn't seriously? give a fuck about the children dying, apparently. Like, no. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, the, the problem that I have with this is it's just. Oh, oh who do we lose? Rags. Rags. Uh oh. Rags. Rags. Um, oh, well. <laughs> I mean. Go ahead. Yeah, like. Should, should I wait for rags, or how do we want to... Well, I, I, the, I mean, this, this... I don't know what else we can say about this that hasn't been said by the whole world over and over again. This is hilarious cringe. It is some of the most concentrated. I'm gonna, I'm, Pretty much, yeah. I'm gonna say I ironically prefer the lore of Gollum, where orc children are like tadpoles in a big pool somewhere. <laughs> and I they just like that, eat whatever yeah. gets thrown in there and each other. Yeah, I like... I, I ironically like that better than this shit. Ugh. I just think it's so like blatantly manipulative. It's like the most manipulative thing that you could possibly do, um, and like I don't know exactly why they want us to feel empathy for the orcs, but that's that's the purpose of this scene, um, which is that you you could have had them doing like any number of other things, like show that they're um, intelligent or they they have like a code of honor or anything else that makes them to quote unquote humanize them a little bit. If you actually want us to understand them and care about them. But no, you've shown us that they they will just attack and destroy. They, they will burn down cities. They will you know enslave people. They'll beat them. They'll kill them for no reason. But also, we got Glug, and he's nice. Like it's it's the most bare bones ama emotional manipulation. It yeah yeah pathetic. <sighs> Don't do this. For pathetic. <laughs> Embarrassing. It's, it's really dumb. <laughs> I'm just waiting for like what the payoff is going to be for this. Like, um, maybe I'm being it's way not going to be naive. one. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, there, there may not be a payoff. Maybe, maybe Galadriel has to no. slaughter all children at some point. Well, Sauron would have to do that. Sauron's going to have to come in and and you know oh, restore yeah, yeah. some order because you've got all these independent-minded orcs who are developing values and loves and things that are not very convenient <laughs> if you're a tyrant. Like, he's going to have to get rid of them all and like replace yeah. them with some more subservient orcs because that's what orcs are. There's many different mm -hmm. versions of orc backstory. Tolkien himself went through several because you know, Tolkien, being a you know very staunch believing Catholic, didn't like this idea that he'd accidentally, basically, well not accidentally, but he had created a race of people who seemed so bad that they were completely beyond redemption. Um, which is kind of a heresy if you are a Catholic. You're not supposed to believe that anyone is beyond redemption. Um, but like, he was also bound by the needs of the story he'd written, so he never inserted anything into it which fundamentally broke the way orcs actually function. And many of like the later essays where he was evolving his thoughts and coming up with different ideas for the backstories of the orcs, some of them were designed in a bid to take away the redemptive question by effectively denying orcs any semblance of free will. So orcs would be described as like ant-like when Sauron isn't around to control them. They sort of spiral out of control. They have no centralized direction, yeah. but they have no centralized will either. Um, so there are all kinds of really interesting things you could do with this premise, given that Sauron isn't around, to make the orcs seem more distinctive and less just like the unthinking villainous automatons. But turning them into you know, loving creatures with values is probably the worst thing you could do. It's a little nine to five orc family, as, as they are. 
So cute. <laughs> so anyway, I guess we move on to my Gurman troll, as you mentioned. I, I provided Yay. the meme if you want to still show it. Let me see it's here. The, 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 you can do the YouTube format, right? I think um, chat will enjoy it. That's why I uploaded it real quick <laughs> on its own. Only if they've seen Smiling Friends, which they should have, and if they haven't, yeah. they're dead to us. I feel like yeah, enough it's, people it's have seen funny, you know? I, I don't really want this. <laughs> nice and simple. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> watch Smiling Friends Season 2 if you haven't. You're not cultured. Yes, yeah. you gotta watch <laughs> Good it. shit. Really, you really should. good. Season three, gimme. Uh, gimme more. Yeah, big cringe. Funny it was For mentioned, sure. by the way, because he does toss in that head down. Do you think the rest of the orcs are like, does he actually like us, or has he just been lying? Because <laughs> he seems to be playing <laughs> favorites yeah, with that guy. He could just kill any of us, huh? Isn't he, is he no better mm -hmm. than Sauron? And Ada's like, look, we need him, okay? <laughs> so... This doesn't work really well when you have the fucking orc family like two seconds earlier. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. It could I have feel been like that was just... if you'd had like a couple of orc kids run out and go, "No, daddy," and then they sort of cry over <laughs> yeah. his decapitated head like the Boba Fett in Attack of the Clones. <laughs> and then, you know, oh. we have to. And he's like, "We'll put, it, we'll do something after the once we beat Sauron." Fuck you, okay? We got to get this done. And this guy's real big. He's gonna be super useful. Mm -hmm. They need the big. This uh, so something that rings of power in particular in season two is just done repeatedly and it is driving me insane. I'm gonna go through and count how many times he does it at the end. <laughs> is cutting off mid conversation and uh, yep. what what they do with this particular scene is one of the worst examples because this troll arrives and Adar explains to him like who he is. He like gives him a grand welcome like your uh, what's his name Damrod the hill troll of what what you call it you eat dragon bones and you kill giants or something like that mm. so this is like sure. some like massive legendary troll that he's recruited to do whatever he's going to go on and do um and immediately the only thing that the troll says is where is sauron which means adar told him you got to come help us kill sauron and then we cut away yep. what the yeah. fuck answer could adar have possibly given this troll that, that didn't satisfying. result in him being like yeah, yeah, exactly. He, he's he's here to kill Sauron, and, and Adar's like, well, I actually don't know where he... I don't even know if he's alive, but I met this king earlier who tried to kill me the last time I met him. <laughs> but he promised me <laughs> that if I freed all of his slaves before he left... Uh, sorry, all of his people and un unenslaved them before he left, um, then he would come back and tell me if he just so happens to bump into Sauron on his journey. Uh, yeah, that's... Damrod the troll is going to look at him like, uh, okay, well, I'm going to eat you now. Yeah, that's like... when you get the comedy cut of <laughs> just the fist coming down on Adar and it squashes him into just paste. It's yep. like, you fucking yeah. wasted my time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it took me weeks to fucking walk here. <laughs> I'm just keeping that head in my hand this whole time. Like, as you said, it's worse that he doesn't know where he is. He doesn't even really know anything at all. He's just sort of going off of what that guy said. Mm. <laughs> it's like, like wow, this probably place used to be a lot greener. What happened? And he has no reason to trust the person that he knows to be, or believes to be, Halbrand. It doesn't work out. This is why I'm really waiting to pass judgment on all of the Adar stuff until we know what information he's working with. He, um, he did I have say, a feeling. He did say to follow Holbrand to one of his orcs. So, I guess he doesn't trust him. But you know, he follows him to uh, to a mm. I guess, and I, we just have to assume that that orc reported back uh, to uh, Holbrand being in a region by now. True, uh, but he, of course, at this point, unless unless we find out later that this isn't the case, he believes that Halbrand is not Sauron. He has no reason to assume that he is. Oh yeah, uh, fuck. But, but but then yeah, again, where where that ends up going, it's going to be some reveal. I'm guessing it might not be revealed. Who knows? But until we get that, it's difficult to say how little sense it makes. But at yeah. the moment, it doesn't seem to make much sense. He has to assume that Holbrand actually told the truth and he's going to where Sauron is. And yes, they took me a week to walk here. To free his people. Yeah, I had to go all the way around the Black Forest. <laughs> no one, no one returns from the Black Forest. Do you know about so the Black Forest? He's like, no. What, what is that? It's like oh, it's this whole thing. <laughs> Fuck! I thought I would have gotten around by now. Okay. Uh, uh, Good luck. Told me about it. That's fine. No one, you know, they'll know. They, everyone will learn. They'll, they'll, they'll pick up on Just it. Just make pamphlets. The context clues. Of, yeah. <laughs> More dwarf. All floor. right. So I guess you've talked about Damrod. Mm -hmm. What a cool guy. What a cool dude. Yes. Yeah, um. 
Yeah. All right. So back in Eregion, we're Oof. back here. Oof. Let's deal with the elf Yay. shit. Yay. Um. Mm. So um, yeah. Back in Eregion, Durin and Diza have Yay. come here to visit Celebrimbor. That was quick. Um. Yeah, it is quick. Yeah. Uh, Celebrimbor. Speaking of quick, Celebrimbor wants to make rings for each of the powerful <laughs> dwarf lords. <laughs> we're there, baby. But uh, why? Durin asks. <laughs> Well, that's yeah, a great question? question. I think I complained about this last week as well. That the dwarves are starving and they come. It's like, well, can we have you know the deal you gave us last time? And he's like, no. no. But have you considered rings? That's not. <laughs> like, that's not... <laughs> he can't it's so stupid. They they get here and Caliburn was like, yo, we can make you rings if you go mithril. That might fix your mountain. It's like, wait, don't you want to start with? Hey, we prepared like it tons might. of food and car. We don't know you what might, they do. Might have you shut up? You might. <laughs> you you. you... No, fuck, where was I? Damn it. I was just like yelling at you. Damn, I'm going to kill him, Okay. I'm a little bleeding. It'll return. No, we have prepared like uh, ton tons of cards for you with food. Uh, take them with you and bring this message to your king about these rings of power. Then maybe he can consider. And if not, still keep them because you need the food right now. And we're your friends. So there you go. You don't even want anything in return. And that so just gives the... you tons of plus points already with Durin and the people of Khazad-dûn. Puts pressure on the king to take the, well, essentially the bait, I guess, because it's bait uh, by Sauron, which they don't know about. And then we can go from there and have, like, the, you know, something the well, smart deceiver the man would do. You the, know, the, the smart deceiver. The conflict of this scene is that Celebrimbor, because Anatar, who is Sauron in disguise, Sauron wants the rings of power under his influence to be spread all over the place. And so he has tricked Celebrimbor into thinking that if he makes all of these powerful rings and gives them to all of the races, things will be great. It'll heal the world, and Celebrimbor will make things of beauty, and it'll be great. <clears throat> so uh, they have summoned Durin and Diza here in order to get them to convince King Durin to um, accept these rings and to give him some mithril for the rings. Mm -hmm. um, they don't think that King Durin is, you know, they, they think he's pretty obstinate. They think he's stubborn and he won't make deals with elves, even though he did in season one. One of them he did, <laughs> one of them he didn't. So he's, you know, we're 50 50 on that. But he says, oh, but if I, I can convince you to, you know, you can talk to him and maybe you can convince him about that. Um, but there, there's some elements of this conversation that I, uh, I really don't like. For instance, when uh, they first uh, first begin talking, and Keller Brimbor is like, "Hey, we want to make you some ma uh, we want to make you some some rings, here, rings power." Durin asks, "You summoned us here to barter jewelry mm -hmm. because we have to make Durin stupid, and I don't like that, yeah. and it's dumb, and, and I hate it." He immediately knows what the, he's talking about, even though I I think they both should be like, "What the fuck, do you... yeah. rings? <laughs> what are you talking well, about?" Well, I well um. The uh, the Celebrimbor and uh, basically is explained that they're rings of power and they have the probably have the power to heal afterwards. your mountain. After what? He says that afterwards. He just says like we want to give you rings, and then after Durin says you've come to barter jewelry, or you sent us here to barter jewelry. After that, yeah, he that's... explains that they're magical rings. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm doing it now. After that, yeah, um, rings of power isn't explained. He says it's got the power to heal your mountain. Because it healed the great tree of the elves. That's um, a non sequitur. Uh, <laughs> you, you somehow, how did no, you do that? if they heal trees, they can heal mountains. Name one thing that heals a tree that doesn't heal a mountain. Do you, uh, hold on. I, there is I, a think, I didn't think so. Uh, I didn't think so. I think I have the steel man for this, which I, I'm probably doing some work for the show here, but I'll just do it anyway because yeah, fuck sure. it. So <laughs> the 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 tree went bad because there was too much evil in Middle Earth, and they currently believe that the mountain has also gone bad because there's too much <laughs> evil in Middle Earth. Too so much evil in and your therefore mountain. they could Yeah, and therefore they can both be healed evil. using Mithril, which undoes evil. I think that's what even though it's half is. evil, but yes. That Whatever. Makes it that's not it's even easier. that's not even what the ring ends up doing <laughs> to help them. So the idea that like, it draws away evil that's not at all what happens. But fine. Yeah. I think the Simpsons it's meme like covers evil. this one where he's like, "Rings of power, no, we want food." And then it zooms into Durin's brain, who says, "You fool! Rings of power can be exchanged for goods and services." And then he's like, oh. <laughs> 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 
So yeah, Durin makes the connection um, uh, because that that the mithril he gave Elrond uh, and the rings that saved the elves, it's all connected. It's oh, you used the mithril I gave the Elrond to make your rings of power. And he doesn't even know about the moon runes that were recently invented. Oh my god! But boy, the the dwarves, <laughs> the dwarves are gonna love those moon runes. Man, those things <sighs> will fucking take off like hotcakes. Um, you know, Anatar is just sort of standing around, not really help, uh, not really helping Celebrimbor explain things, which I feel he should be doing because Sauron is allegedly a master manipulator mm, who can like smart. read your mind and give you what you desire and do all that stuff and. And he's just kind of hanging around, letting Celebrimbor with his ten ass charisma just sort of try and do things. Um, I, well, so Anatar is also just kind of standing around, looking very suspicious, like he, he's yeah. doing like evil, evil face yes. at the camera. All kind elves of thing. are suspicious, and, every single one. Yeah. Well, because we learn we learn later <laughs> in the scene because he introduces himself later in the scene, which means that at this point, Durin and Disa have no clue who this guy is, and he's just standing yeah. around, motionless, just looking away from them, doing I, an evil yeah, face. Yeah. <laughs> Listening to their conversation, well, they can't see his evil face if he's looking away. So, Lord Kalev, I know, like, man I evil. evil, right? That's the whole point uh, of the show. Really? Can I know when it. someone's standing in a room with me, purposefully the facing away, sing at them and feel they evil. imply they have an mm -hmm. evil face. Hey, evil guess what? What the deal is? Mithril for rings. That's the deal. Oh. Celebrum was like, "You give us Mithril, <laughs> we give you rings of power." Isn't that like a really? Isn't that awesome? Can we have uh, yeah, I mean, like. It it would be if they weren't evil, but they don't know they're evil. So you know it's pretty. You know it seems like yeah, not a you know. There I just it is. Saw this, and yeah. So like, on a race swapped alien. There's a skull in there somewhere. There's a lot of a lot of shots with her with Big from brain. the side that looks really fucking good. Well, there is a skull in there, but is there a brain? We have yet to see. There was at one point, but we'll see if it evaporates or not. Because uh, mm -hmm. it looks like Durin's has, unfortunately. Now, <laughs> Durin and Deza, they ask, why not tell King Durin? And Celebrimbor says that King Durin is hesitant to get outside help, so it would be better to hear it from somebody close. Uh, Durin is, insists instantly that the king won't listen to him, and he'd be of little help. Um, the connection between getting the Durins together and healing the mountain should be stronger. It's an opportunity for thematic parallels. They don't really... You know, talk about it or or go into it much in any way. It's just kind of implied. Uh, Disa kind of mentions it that if the uh, that that if King Durin and his son, you know, sort of make up and get back on track in terms of their relationship, the mountain will be better and the mountain will help be healed and stuff like that. But we don't we don't really know if that's true or if there's any real connection to that or it's just so sort the... of like floated out there as a thing. Yeah, they're, they're clearly trying to go for the idea of, like, if you heal them, then you have healed the core of the mountain, and therefore it will kind of, I guess, mirror itself in a spiritual sense, and the mountain will be better. That's what they're trying to go with. But it's just presented as, well, you've got you've to gotta make, it, make it better with your dad in order to fix the mountain. Whereas what they really could have done is said, no, you, you physically cannot get the mithril unless you get, on the, you get back on the king's good side, because he directly controls the mithril and you you have no other means by which to you can hello hello uh, uh, this board is... oh, okay we're claiming yeah. another victim sure. um <laughs> yeah they they could have done something along the lines of hey durin uh you we we can tie in the whole a potential cure or a potential you know way to resolve this mountain issue and if you're the one who brings it to the king, then maybe he'll be very grateful to you, and that'll be a way for you to sort of restore your bonds, and all this stuff can be tied together, and it's a way to convince him to do this. Um, but it never really never really happens in any of those nope. ways that might be interesting or thematically relevant. Or What it does no do, though, is it's in. happened in almost exact parallel to the same beat in Season 1, because these writers can't come up with anything new. So, you know, season one, you have the sort of cosmic ticking clock of the trees are dying. We need the rings to fix them. Oh, no, maybe the rings are evil. And then season two comes along and it says, well, we can't. Well, what? I mean, do we have to come up with something else or can we just do the same thing and swap the word tree for mountain? But mm -hmm. otherwise, the exact same plot is going along. 
Um, and it's the same in like every area of the show as well. They've swapped MacGuffins, but there's still the MacGuffin. Uh, they've swapped the mystery, but there's still the mystery. That they, they, it's just writing by numbers all the way through. And so in this instance, it's just rather than oh no, all the leaves are falling off the trees. It's oh no, the grain reserve will only last three months. So that's the reason that they end up doing the rings. Um, if like, we I had think... these, if we had these characters explaining their thought process more. Mm. It would get me to believe why they might think certain things. Because I think there's a way to write, hey, these rings have the power to sort of heal the world around you like it did for us. Maybe they can do that where you live in your mountain. Um, they don't have to say this with incredible confidence. They could say, hey, it's a theory because of what it did for us. I think it's worth a shot because things are dire over there for you. You don't have anything to lose. Let's give it a try. And if And if it doesn't work out, then... You've got these really nice rings of power, and we've we've established trade, and it'll be good for us anyway. Remember when we worked together to make that forge? Oh, those were those were good times back in season one when we did that. Let's go back to those days where we're cooperating, and you can tie all this together, and you can have Anatar talking and Celebrimbor talking, and everyone's like, "Oh, okay, this is it's a deal that we could you know maybe discuss with the king," but the way that they present it makes it seem like. Uh, like it's just like the, there's there's nothing really going on. Yep. It could be a whole conversation that's mm, written no. with dialogue. Speaking of dialogue, they, they only have one know. hour per episode. They can't do anything. <laughs> there's like nothing. Yeah, they, <laughs> no time. Do anything in an hour. With the Harfords and the the wizard men, we've got to have uh, that. Uh, They're oh, gonna make room. Uh, well, one thing I was just gonna say, by the way, is just the uh, constant visits between um, Eregion and Cause of Doom is is just funny because it keeps adding to the timeline of Celebrimbor oh, yeah. not being suspicious <laughs> at all, that there's just no communication with Gilgalad, it's... Galadriel, or Elrond. Mm. It's like, yeah. hmm, curious. Right. They teleport three times in this uh, in this episode. It's like the most it's important crazy. people ever, the most important time in their history, or at least the living history, so to speak. Like, what what they're doing right now, and he just he's just like, so oh. weird that they haven't contacted me. Anyway. Yeah, it adds a little, at least a day every time they travel between Oregon and Casa Doom. There's a, there's a broader lack of curiosity as well, which is, like, what is evil here? Like, what is the evil? No one seems to ever want to ask that Galadriel. question. Like, why? What, well, that, that's the fu funny you should say, Galadriel, because the only <laughs> actual theory we were ever presented with throughout all of season one for what was causing this was Galadriel. That's why they sent her away. They sent her away mm. because they thought her warmongering was going to recreate the evil she was fighting. She then went, then she jumped off the ship, so she never actually left. And so as far as they should be aware, their theory could still be operative. It could still be her who's causing all of this, but they forgot mm -hmm. about it because they are really, really forgetful people. But since then, no one has ever actually bothered to say, well, you know, what's actually causing this evil thing? It's all very well saying magic rings will fix it, but maybe we should at some point figure out what the it is. But they, they, I guess it's another thing, they're just not interested in at all. But from the only yeah. information we've got, they should still believe that it could be Galadriel who is responsible for everything. Yeah. Oh, the right, one person especially who because she that's... behaves like Sauron would behave. She's, beh she's, doing, she's doing the checklist that we talked about last week. All the things that Sauron would want someone to do, or Sauron would do in disguise, she is doing. She doesn't yeah. do a good job and of explaining herself. The one person Sarah. who knows... The one person who knows that Holbrand is Sauron is the one person who has been hunting Sauron obsessively for fucking ages. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. But what else is interesting is that it is at this point mm -hmm. that Anatar starts... He, he, he becomes a participant in this conversation. Anatar says it would be a, a, a good way for Durin to get back in his father's good graces. Like, back into his inheritance. So... um. That's weird that this one random elf just sort of knows that apparently mm. Durin has been cut out of his father's inheritance and their relationship is really bad <laughs> and right now. The opposite that's of really weird tactful. that you know that. Like, th that's not oh, he's like yeah. super aggressive towards yeah. Durin. No, I just mean so like, like yeah. uh, he's not playing that piece of information very well at all. No. Kind of showing his hand. No. He's big, yeah, big sussers. Big sussers. Because what he should have done is even though he knows it in his head, you can't just blurt that out because it makes you look yeah. mega suspicious like you're spying on him or something. What you do is you maybe say, oh, Durin, you mentioned that your father wouldn't listen to you. What, what do you mean? Uh, 
why wouldn't he listen to his son? Doesn't don't you have his ear and da 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 da? And Duran would have to explain, oh well, you know, we haven't been getting along lately, and da that's really bad, and da 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 da. So you know, you brought me here to talk to him, you know, but we're not really on speaking terms right now, and so that opens it up for you know him doing all that stuff. But instead, he just blurts it out, yep. ah, you got cut out of his inheritance. Maybe if you gave him rings, he'd let you back in. And yeah, Durin like is that, kind of like one of the, the only characters that... we can partially enjoy, so you kind of want him to be like, who the fuck are you? Shut the fuck mm -hmm. up, random yeah. idiot. And you're like, yeah, <laughs> Durin. Yeah, um, like we get, there's, there's three problems with that, because one is Durin basically does not respond to that. He doesn't ask, like, how do you know mm -hmm. that? How the fuck do you know that? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the fact, the fact that he responds as he does means that it is true, basically, because otherwise he'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, what? But also, uh, Anatar is obviously Sauron. So how does Sauron know that? Or did he just guess? Because this is a everything. massive guess. Well, he doesn't has, yeah, he just really knows. knows. It's really dumb. It's funny. It's funny you should say that because he clearly doesn't know everything because he slips up in this scene, which is what leads to drama with Durin. <laughs> so I mean, he, he, does, knows... he does know everything. He's just an idiot. Well, also... yeah, well, that's possible as well. He knows everything, yeah. but he's someone said, um, more yeah. respected Sauron to be subtle. How foolish of him! No, so nothing to do with subtlety. It's just using your brain. That's a piece of information you can play at any point, and you used it like that. That was fucking crap. And if anything, convinces people that you're trying to manipulate them. He's supposed to be a clever mm -hmm. little guy. And, you know... Sauron also, should absolutely would be subtle, be subtle, but you know, yeah. he isn't in this show. Yeah, you can you can manipulate um, both subtly and overtly, but uh, he's not. Oh yeah, not doing a course. very good job of either. <laughs> uh, Durin does ask who Anatar is, and Anatar says he's a he just says he's a friend to the elves and dwarves, nothing more. Uh, Durin lets it go, which he shouldn't, because he's like, how, he should be asking, how do you fuck do you know about the inheritance thing? Do you have spies? Yeah. This is just like the elves to spy, just like that Elrond guy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But instead, he asks, uh, <laughs> he asks where Elrond is, um, and apparently, uh, Celebrimbor says that Linden's restoration requires his full attention. He, he speaks died. of you so um, fondly. That's just, he's just making that shit Anatar up. Is that, sorry. Yeah. yeah. He's just making that shit yeah. up. It yeah. drives me nuts because if Dura was like, wait, what do you mean? And then Calibri Ball goes, oh, well, basically, they got the rings and then I haven't heard from them at all and no messages have been taken or given. <laughs> like, oh, that oh, no. that's not good. <laughs> you should probably go see it. It's like, don't worry. This guy who came out of fucking nowhere told me everything's fine. It's like, cool. <laughs> Oh, okay. This is what I mean that about sometimes you just need no. a character with even the basic brain cells because Celebrimbor is so ruined. There's just nothing for him in this. Yep. Oh, he's barely a human any or elf anymore, retarded. rather. <laughs> he's so fucking Elves stupid. Elves are barely human. So, yeah. Um, yeah, here, this annoys me because El or, um, Sauron's a moron. Uh, if someone asks, first off, you should be prepared to have to account for where, El where Elrond is. You should have something ready to go. You should have an excuse. You should have a reason. Have one ready in the chamber to fire that off whenever anybody asks. Especially if you know about uh, Durin and Elrond, which we have to assume that he, he knows about that. That's how the Mithra got here anyway. Um, but you should be ready when Durin asks to give him an answer. And if saying that, yeah, it, it, he, he, speaks so fond he speaks so fondly of you, and da da da, you need to say something like Gil Galad ordered him to da 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 the thing, and da 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 da, and he he can't make it. We need to be doing. We need to be a bit more tactful than doing yeah. what he does, because Durin is going to ask things like, "Oh, well, well, didn't he leave? Did he leave a letter? Did he leave a message or anything like that?" He says he speaks so fondly of me. Did he? Did Did he have anything to say about like? What's going on and what happened with the mithril? And did he leave you a message or anything like that? And he's like, no, I guess not. Okay, well. Hmm. Um, Durin says that Elrond never mentioned uh, Anatar, but he doesn't know yeah. Anatar's name, so I don't know how um, he would know if Elrond never. Yeah, mentioned there's lots of him people Elrond. Elrond. Or maybe Elrond. <laughs> well, then maybe again. Elrond has never mentioned any other elf ever, which I guess technically would mean that he hadn't mentioned yeah. him. I was about I to guess. say, like, I guess uh, they're trying to account yeah. for like all the conversations that have happened off screen. They've gotten to know each other real well, Elrond mm -hmm. and Durin. So he's like, how come he never met? Like, I get that, I guess, but. You know what bugs me about all yeah, these... Elrond was also gone for, like, 20 years, right? Or something like that. I think an, uh, a yeah. relatively normal person who doesn't care as much as we do would be like, these complaints about all these little interactions with characters stuff just feels a little um, excessive in terms of, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's, 
all of this is going to lead to a huge payoff that's probably next episode oh, yeah. this out. Well, and especially when... Well, it's like, every line. Yeah, yeah everything, yeah, exactly. all the puzzle pieces have been put in place. Like, like these little nudges, they're done on very much with purpose. Like, there's so many things that would stop the story from happening, but they've got to let these things slip mm -hmm. through. And there's like, it's, it's just a mm -hmm. dam that's yeah. breaking over and over again. It's insane. Um, every little, because like, you know, if they'd sent people to a region in episode one, just straight away, like the, the what's going to happen wouldn't the, happen. None of it would. Yeah, nothing. Not, oh, it's this, so annoying. This plot nothing, is so. Not, not there's a lot happened. of moving parts, and none of them fit together. It's just sort of like clanking along as a plot line. Um, every line, I have questions of why would you say that? Why aren't you asking different things? The logistics of how people got here. Nothing works. None of the parts fit together and make like um, a cohesive story. This story, this story is nonsense. Well, and of course, the you know when you the consequence of this is like, well, the consequence is going to be creating all of the fucking rings that like mm -hmm. define yeah. essentially the next you know hundreds of years of of this entire world. Yeah, and it's so crap to have it all be the foundations of just people being stupid everywhere constantly. Yeah, like it's yeah, all it like be... more interesting if they're smart. Well, speaking of stupid things to say, oh. goodbye. Uh, go <laughs> um, speaking of stupid things to say, um, Durin says Elrond never mentioned him, and Anatar claimed that Elrond says Durin was the wisest dwarf, but implies that they should be speaking with different dwarves. Um, Anatar is basically pretty much just outright insulting Durin. Yeah, uh, here. great idea. Uh, Very good which idea. Which has me wondering, uh, I, Sauron is stupid. If mm, you, yeah. Sauron is just stupid. You need and you are, are relying heavily on Durin and Disa to speak to the king to convey this this offer to them. That's your way in to this dwarf lord. And so your strategy is to call Durin a dumbass. That's yeah. your strategy. How do you think Durin's going to react to that, you idiot? You yeah. fucking moron, Sauron, you be... stupid idiot. Should be happy he doesn't didn't just straight up leaves like, oh, you're insulting me? The okay, bye. Fuck you. Yeah, Duran is like Duran could just turn around and be like, Yeah, I guess you should. Good luck. And then they just I mean, leave. You... Dwarfs are proud and stubborn. Like if they you insult them, especially if you're a random fucking elf, he doesn't know. Yeah. He's sort of like uh it's so, bye. It's all backwards. Yeah, like, like, I don't the, know you. As was mentioned, the second he arrives, you should have Anatar should probably be the one to greet him and be like, I am this, I am here for this reason. I've heard of you, I know of you, I, I have great respect for the Dwarven Kingdom and yeah, the... Yeah, pick them up! Yeah, you're all, exactly. all the things. Yeah. Instead, it's You're this. the ones who made the incredible forge and stuff, like, oh, we, we have yeah, similarity... Like, yeah, your your work is known yeah, throughout the world, yeah. yeah, just all that sort of stuff. And your graciousness, uh, and just reference things that happened in Season 1. <sighs> yeah, thanks to you and the Mithril, we were able to do this, that, and the other thing, and Elrond speaks so highly of you, he was the one who recommended I speak to you, and blah, 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 blah. In just you know, like do Sauron things. Yeah, smart things. Normal. Yeah. Actually, not even smart things. Just greet them well, so like normally. If you were average, getting... <laughs> if it was just average, just just the things you'd expect a guy to say to another guy, yeah. it would be better than this because it's not outright insulting and stupid. I want to collect. I think there's like three or four of them. The little moments where Sauron does evil face and just looks off in in evilness, and show them the fucking people <laughs> who make this and be like, "What's the point of this?" And they'd be like. Oh, so he's like a, you know, he's he's kind of an evil character. He's he's kind of he's he's like he's getting frustrated with the nature of the situation, not going fast enough, and he's yeah, just trying to let you know, you know, he's he's getting frustrated, he's angry, and he's evil. And I just feel like, hey, you think there's any other way you could do that? Like, <laughs> it's really, you know. <laughs> I think probably nah. my favorite facial expression that we get from uh, from Anatar is when he Disa says, "Can we have a moment to think?" and then he starts saying, "I'm afraid," and then Calibrimber interrupts and he goes, "Oh yeah, of course." And Sauron's expression just changes, and he just he, like he is staring fucking daggers at Calibrimber. Yeah, like, <laughs> who is this asshole slowing me down? Stop it! I didn't give <laughs> even though he's not slowing well, the thing him, is, though, even though he's not slowing him down at all. Slowing him down this. in this show compared to the source material is fucking hilarious. <laughs> like. Oh, this, guy's that on, this guy's on speed, and he's fucking annoyed that he's it, too slow. But know? the thing is, being aggressive to him here doesn't even make any sense. And forcing him to decide, he can't decide. He's not the king. Yeah. He has to go back one way or another. So the time yeah. spent is there, even if you're nice or not. So just be nice. Like yeah, I don't know what the no fuck you're doing. Yeah, like timeline-wise, it's uh, the, the only question mark that I have in t in how long all of this is taking is we don't actually know how long it takes to craft the rings. 
but mm -hmm. I think it's it's probably reasonable to assume that the dwarven rings would take slightly longer because there's more of them, and then the rings for men would take slightly longer again because there's nine instead of seven <clears> instead of three. Um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who, who the fuck knows? Yeah, book, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like in in between each of those, in between each of the groups of rings being crafted, it very much seems like you're getting a couple of days at most. Which means he really yeah. is just go 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 go. Make the fucking rings, get them done in like, it, you know, if it takes a weekend to make each of them, he's making them all in a month. Like it's it's insane. Yeah. Ugh. So, um, yeah, as Random mentioned, Diza, when it's time to think, Anatar says no, Kelly Brimbor says yes. <laughs> the dwarves, however, they have a built-in reason to be quick. They are getting mm. desperate since the cave-ins are causing a food shortage. So it's weird that Sauron is being stupidly quick here in this way when he has, like I said, that built-in reason to be like, you know, I, if, if, if the dwarves do too. They're, they are kind of on, on the clock. Well, why uh, already is under no, pressure, yeah. Like, it's like whether like or not you agree on the rings. Like, here. so can we get a you know a bit of bread just while we're here? Yeah, can we can we get like a card of food <laughs> exactly? Yeah. And then they're like, ah, no, it looks like uh, it looks like she's good for a while. Don't worry about it. We'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> no, that's that's just her hair. Like, that's like, all her hair. This. <laughs> oh, it's on the hair. Okay. <laughs> oh damn! Get that. Fucking hell. Um, so they uh, outside uh, down uh, down below. Uh, Diza, uh, after they've left the uh, little meeting chamber here, we see our, 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 our wonderful elven guards doing there, just standing around. Uh, Diza chastises Durin for being antagonistic. Uh, mm -hmm. Diza seems a lot more trustworthy of these rings and what they can do for the mountain potentially, and what they might be able to do for the relationship of her husband and the king. Um, Durin says that Anatar is big sussers because he assumes Elrond wouldn't say such nice things about him. Uh, which I don't even know if, if it's true or not. I have no fucking clue what the relationship between Elrond and Durin is because it's all over the place and it's so poorly was, written. They're, they're good Durin friends. Written to be... I, they're good friends. They trust yeah. Each Durin... Other. Mm, yeah, well, I, I don't it, know. I feel it, like the Durin Elrond... is written to be insanely gullible. Elrond would totally I mean, say yeah. nice things about yeah. Durin. Well, even if he wouldn't, like in, in season one, Durin is. I don't think this was intentional, but Durin was in, uh, established as being incredibly gullible. Whereas here, it's like Sauron, the, the best person on in Middle-earth at tricking people, can't fool Durin. It, it is, is insane. Mm. Like him him fooling Deesa, I could be like, oh, f sorry, him failing to fool Deesa, I could maybe be like, oh, okay, I guess she's just kind of smart enough. But the thing is, with Durin, we were shown in season one that he should not be smart enough to be, uh, to, to it, see through this. It's two problems at once though, right? Like the it's it's against his character to not be taken in by this somewhat, but simultaneously the dialogue from Sauron is so shit. Like, it... yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah. So the issue being that if Durin is uh, suspicious of this because he assumes Elrond wouldn't say such nice things about him, then how come Anatar knows about Durin being cut out of the inheritance, but doesn't know enough about the Elrond-Durin relationship to not know that saying that would be very suspicious to Durin? Because after all, I mean, he knew about Finrod when he, you know, when he was trying to fool Galadriel. And, and... I mean, in that case, it, well, yeah, in that case, he physically touched Galadriel. And we know we went through this before in, in previous episode. He has to touch and then he can literally like fuck around with her mind so he can see in there and, you know, know about the brother. Which he doesn't actually, even offer like... to shake hands with Durin and Disa and stuff like yeah. that. Him, that could be like a whole like plot point of tension and everything where uh, he's trying to touch people. Uh, and he's trying to shake hands. He puts a hand on the shoulder. He, you know, d does something, or maybe touching an object that that person is touching, um, to to draw some sort of a connection. But they never play into that at all. Like that's something he's trying to subtly do, in socially, yeah, well, they, you know, in, within social convention. Yeah, they could they could have even had it where like um, like you say, Anatar could have come out and been the one to greet Durin and Disa, and uh, maybe Durin is not having a particularly good time as we've seen. Whereas Disa is maybe a little bit more willing to put on a happy face and she you know greets him with, with a handshake or a hug or whatever but then durin is just not having it he's not interested in being nice to this elf because he has no clue who he is and he's mm -hmm. very very pissed off uh which could then explain why disa is so much more on board with this than durin mm -hmm. um because anatar wanted to i guess influence quote unquote both of them by physically touching them and then fucking around with their minds 
Um, even to just, you know, steer them very slightly in his direction. It doesn't have to be literal mind control like he did with Galadriel or, you know, mind invasion, I guess, like he did with Galadriel. But yeah, we, we didn't get that. So the 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 mind mind games part of this does, doesn't factor into this scene. Yeah. Um, also want to so, mention uh, yeah. that th this is just pushing really hard for the rings here. And I think we should remember that for when we, we when we meet here next week. Yeah, you know, something might happen in the future that you know. Sure. Yes. Uh, so magic, that. magic rings seem to be strange to Durin as a concept. Like he's skeptical of the idea that there are magic rings or magic rings could exist or something like that. And Adiza, instead of talking to him about that and his concerns and his reservations about this plan, she basically just says, "Well, that's for the king to decide." Uh, but you would think that she'd really care about Durin's opinion. Uh, she does mm -hmm. seem to like, you know, love him and their their relationship and everything. But here, she's just like, no, no, it's it's about the king. You're you're arrogant and uh, you you kind of sucked in there. Um, and I don't really care about what you think in a lot of ways. But uh, why would uh, why defer to the king when earlier it's implied that she's willing to subvert the king with the mithril mines? Uh, she's yeah. very, very quick to be like, oh, what the king, mm. it's what the king says, what the king says, instead of her being like, oh, magic rings, you say, well, you know, the, the kind of, like, how can we use this to our advantage? How can we sort of get around the king to get these rings of power ourselves? Or, oh, shit, if these are for the dwarf lords, I need to make sure that Durin, my husband, becomes a dwarf lord. That's extra reason for me to try and repair the relationship, because I mm. want my husband to have a ring of power. We also like had it implied earlier when the writers, for some strange reason, decided to make Durin an idiot, but Deesa knows all about magic rings, because she kind of like rolls her eyes and scoffs when he says, did you bring us here to barter jewelry? Which so the implication there is that Deesa is at least somewhat familiar with the concept of a magical ring. Um, because that's, for some that's reason. A, yeah, for, well, I mean, I, I don't have a problem with her knowing what one of them is necessarily. It's just the way that they handled that interaction I really didn't like. But then you come to this scene and Durin walks out and says, um, oh, don't you find the idea of magical rings really strange? And her response is, that's for the king to decide. Surely it would be, what the hell are you talking about? Magic rings exist. You, <laughs> like, if, even if she actually knew this and he didn't, she could then inform him that, no, I've read about them in books uh, thousands of years ago. There were magical rings and they were really cool and they did a load of bullshit. But that isn't what she says. They, they, just, they just drop the idea that she knows vaguely what they are. Completely skirts around it and is concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Or they talk I about, imagine. like, it was mentioned that lesser rings exist, and they'd be like, well, we've had lesser rings for ages, and that's not helping. And they're like, no, these are these are really powerful magic rings. These are way more than those. I read yeah, the earlier have... interaction Sorry. not as being about knowledge of rings, though, as just her being sort of tired of her husband's lack of tact. That's how I read the eye roll. Um, yeah, I don't definitely. think she knows about magic rings. The problem the show kind of has as well, but doesn't so realize, is that there is no reason based on how it shows us the rings are made, that the dwarves can't just make it themselves. Because what's the magical thing about the rings? It's the mithril, which dwarves already have. Why do they make the rings? Well, because they use alloys, but the alloys are made of lesser metals, which are not like anything magical about them. I think it was gold and silver from gold Valinor, silver, yeah, which, they, which was yeah. Galadriel's um, dagger, which they yeah. melted. Yeah. But if the only magical thing about it is really that they are mithril in a circle with some precious gold in there, the dwarves can simply say, "Well, we've got fucking all the mithril. We're fine. We'll make them ourselves. Thank you for thank you for letting us know. We're uh, we well, absolutely great. We will make all of the rings from now on. Goodbye." Well, you see, a little bit. You need a very special forge in order to make them. And dwarves, as we know, are really shit at forging things. <laughs> they don't know well, about yeah. That's their problem. <laughs> yeah, mm. I mean, it's not like I mean, they I... don't build this forge, right? Yeah, that's for me. They did build this forge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, fuck you. We'll build our own. We have the blueprints. <laughs> <laughs> we have magic rings at home. Um, like, I don't know. I, I feel like we're supposed to just take from this that Keller Brimbor seems to be the missing link. Like, the show is treating it as though this yeah. is the case. Anatar requires him in order to do his evil plan. Need him as the craftsman. His skill yeah, exactly. is so great that he's the one who's required to do it. He, he really. looks Which at the metal as it slides the down situation. the little ramp thing. Yeah, it's um, the opposite arrangement from season one, because, you know, season one, it's very much Celebrimbor can't do anything, and Sauron is the missing yeah. ingredient. In season two, yep. Celebrimbor yep. can do everything, and he's the missing ingredient, because it's just literally whatever the scene demands happen, that's what's going to happen. 
They've not earned that um, whatsoever. Yeah, it's it's well, Duran is being very skeptical of this, and Deez is not making any attempt to convince him. And if he's the one who's you know probably going to go talk talk to, uh, talk to King Duran, she should be trying. There needs to be a. We need to have what's called a conversation, mm. but it just doesn't happen. <laughs> These characters just don't have a conversation about this when it's really important, and there's no reason for them to just write this stilted, quick dialogue and so that, so they can leave and we can get to the next scene because they we need to have a talk. We need to learn about these characters. It's that that terrible rings of power um like writing element that's thick throughout the entirety of the show where conversations end on a dramatic point so we don't learn about things. Yeah. Uh, just to create tension or characters just do not talk to each other like people and we miss out on huge amounts of opportunity to learn who they are, what they want, what they're trying to get, what they're willing to do, what they're not willing to do, how they feel about mm -hmm. the people around them. We're just empty with, left with these, uh, these near empty, these husks of characters, and the writing is often transparent, which is a shame considering that the writing is just so, it was so awful. I think it was um, discussed last time, it, but the only time they have interesting lines is ever going to be at the end of the conversation. Like the last line might be one where you go, oh, and then it's, that's it. They'll use yeah. it as a crescendo, yeah. Like, we would want it as the start of the conversation. The show always treats it as, like, wasn't that great anyway? And you're like, no, no, wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, yeah, Deza says if there's a small chance that this rings thing will work, then the king should know. And if Durin doesn't tell the king, she will. This is kind of like the big ultimatum she's making for him. And this could potentially damage their relationship. Seriously, if she's kind of like forcing him to do it without trying to convince him that it's a good idea, she's saying, if you don't tell him about this thing you think is bad, I'll tell him about this thing you think is bad without trying to get, you know, take care of the you think it's bad part. Um, but boy, what a cliffhanger for a conversation. Anyway, back mm. to the forge. Yay. <laughs> and that's the rings of power writing. Pretty much. Uh, Killer Brimbor says to Anatar that there's a there, there's a saying in Khazad Doom the slow drip splits the boulder the famous sure. dwarven saying uh, the dwarves sure always you the, know dwarves what else the, boulder. Say, <laughs> the dwarves would definitely say the slow drip splits the boulder they would say, no, the hammer fucking smashes the boulder. Let's go. <laughs> the dwarves are very, you know, they're, they're aggressive and they're gung-ho and they're problem solvers. They get it done. They don't just wait for things to slowly resolve mean, themselves. You, you almost want him to have said it in front of Duret or something that he just goes, they do not. No, I don't. <laughs> like, you're, My face you split, splits your balls. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> Oh, uh, they could have had that be the reveal that Anatar is sus. Is Anatar says, you know, uh, at Calabrimble, there's a saying, and then Durin's like, no, there fucking isn't. What are you talking about? What? You made that up. He's like, yeah, I heard it. Um, it was one of the other caves. <laughs> it's, it's one of just the ones you wouldn't. You wouldn't have heard of it. There's the the Orno County dwarves. Yeah, they 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 say that. Look, yeah. it all fits together. The sea's always right. The slow drip splits the boulder. Which means the know. water These doesn't like water the stone. analogies or yeah. Hmm. Um, but, I'm but, slightly but the to um just the, where the knowledge comes from on Celebrimbor's part. Didn't he have to take Elrond to Khazad Doom in season one because Celebrimbor isn't welcome around. in Khazad Doom? I thought was it the other? I thought because they Elrond was the way in. They used him as their spy. Yeah, yeah El Elrond took him. him. I, yes, yeah. I thought you said so, it the other way. Yeah. So Celebrimbor like isn't that familiar with the dwarves and like the show has not mm. in fact the show has told us quite clearly that the dwarves and the elves well, maybe he don't read a mix book. very often it's a rare thing Elrond when they do does know he about could the dwarves, have read a remember? book I guess but... whenever, he a whenever he leaves when, it, when he leaves um, when, it, when he leaves Durin uh, he knows that the, the, the dwarf sang for Elrond no, does it's the other way Elrond, around. It's the other way Elrond around. is friends with Durin, Durin and, that's, and that's a remarkable thing because the general relationship between elves and dwarves seems to be very hostile or at least like indifferent and it's, distant. It seems to be yeah. pretty neutral. Well, the king doesn't let them trade ever on any terms, no, he, even when his people no, he are does like the king being a retard. <laughs> they do the forge thing. <laughs> They, yep, they have that they whole the, construction the, of the this the forge thing happens. Forge, that's true. Huge... Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah this huge collaborative project. project. Uh, Which is actually an well, enormous not project, not to be fair, yeah. Really. It is huge. Yeah, it's not it small. is an enormous project. But then yeah. this season began with, like, there is a, the line where yeah. it is explained, the king won't let them... I'm, I'm going with whatever mm -hmm. the last thing no, Rings yeah. of Power told me is <laughs> that true. Is, that is super retarded, especially with how reason. good their relationship should be. Yeah. yeah. It should be. Which is another uh, way yeah. you could handle the rings question, is mm -hmm. that, you know, once you've established this relationship between the dwarves and the elves, they've worked together, they've built this forge, the rings for the elves have been made, and the dwarves see how successful they are. You could have the dwarves come and say, well, we want some of that for ourselves, yeah. thank you very much. And Did that's you make Sauron's your rings with our in. forge? The forge we work together on? You make yeah. yourself <laughs> magic rings without us? Just, yeah. just, it, it, just, just because, is that what happened? So what and then rather than like Sauron having happened. to go to Celebrimbo every other scene going, mm, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, I think we should be making more rings for more people. You could have him say, well, they seem to want them, and I had nothing to do with that, so let's make them for them. Which is a subtle form of manipulation, which allows him not to come Wait. across like a complete buffoon when he does try and manipulate people. <laughs> well, also Man, in season one, rings. we never... So King Durin agrees off screen to get the forge built. Uh, we don't really know why. Um, and no payment is ever mentioned, if I'm not mistaken. No. I don't remember what it was. Because <laughs> the payment, the, all, all of the discussions involving payment were relating specifically later in the season to the deal the to get Mithril. Yeah, the, the deal to actually get the dwarves to help make the forge happened off screen. We have no idea what the terms were, but there must have mm -hmm. been payment in some form. So um, what they could potentially have done, which, I mean, this would have fucked around with the order a little bit, but they could have done this. Help us build this forge. Celebrimbor is shit hot at making stuff, like magical stuff. Um, look, here's his portfolio of magical rings that he's made before. Um, we can almost certainly make some for you. <laughs> um, we will owe you uh, the biggest of, of favors. And then the mountain starts getting squashed um, because evil. And then they're like, uh-oh, time to call in a favor. You better use that forge. Throw us a bone here, that kind of thing. They could have done that, which yeah. that wouldn't involve Sauron, but that was another option. Or oh, just, you know, give us food, but yeah. All that, yes. <laughs> <sighs> it's good stuff. It's really good stuff. It's, it's, I really like this show. It's really good. It gives you lots to think about. Um, the, 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 uh, the Anatar says that the king doesn't, the king, like Gilgalad, the king, the king of the elves, doesn't know that Anatar is here. So they have to be quick. He claims that the king, Gilgalad, thinks the dwarves are unworthy of the power and has forbidden more rings being made. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> suspicious. Red nah. flags. Uh, apparently I don't know this, what angel, this angel comes down from heaven, supposedly, and is like, yeah, what we're going to do? The, uh, Fiery heaven. This has to be our little secret, okay? Uh, what we're doing here. Because the king is like uh, explicitly saying that we can't be doing this. Um, yeah, th Celebrimbor... this was the scene that just convinced me that Celebrimbor is now a puppet. Because yeah, he gets okay. told, like, Anatar is, is literally saying, like, yeah, so I'm, I was sent by the Valar, and you haven't questioned any of the bullshit that I fed you last episode, uh, or two episodes. No, yeah, last episode. This is number three. Um, yeah. And also, Gilgalad doesn't know that I'm here, and he doesn't want you to make any more of these incredibly powerful magical rings. Celebrimbor should be asking some questions, but he doesn't. Now he gets angry at the king. Well, Celebrimbor does ask a question. His question is, what business... What business is it of his how I conduct myself in my own realm? Yeah, that he's fucking like, high Bitch, king. he's the king. <laughs> he's the king. He can show up here and be like, no. Um, I guess Celebrimbor thinks he'll get away with all of it. He doesn't have any reservations or worries. Um, but oh. Celebrimbor decides right then and there that he's going to lie to Gilgalad. Uh, he's going to write him a letter that he's closing up the forge and that he'll come and join him in Linden. Um, what it would a literally be quicker if he just strategy. went himself. He could do that in a day. We've established this. Just leave. Like We know that people move faster than letters in this universe. He could just go. <laughs> the, it's actually even dumber than that. Um, Sauron says, like, nevertheless, sooner or later, Gilgalad will discover the truth. And uh, Calibrimor says, supposing he doesn't, and then he starts writing the letter. So he's yes. saying, like, th yeah. this will make him never <laughs> realize what he's doing. It Ugh. will not be possible <laughs> to hide from Gil-Galad the creation of what will eventually be um, 16 extra mm -hmm. rings of power. Uh, the yeah. elves have three. He said, no more. You made si you're made, try to plan out on making 16 more. 
Uh, it, it's it's certainly against the spirit of the rule. No more rings. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's no way he can get away with it. Gil Galad will know. This cannot stay hidden. Um, yeah. Also, I don't know about the other part of the, the lie here. Would Gil Galad mm -hmm. approve of the forge being closed? Because well, I don't probably know. know. How strange it... it is that Gil Galad is like, yep, yeah, I'm closing the forge. Yeah, that's like, not what? suspicious no, at all. Because <laughs> yeah. the forge was not. The deal between the elves and the dwarves that again happened off screen was not that they were going to make this forge specifically to make the rings to fix the exactly. tree and then we're all good and then we're going to turn it off. It's this is a massive financial investment. Um, yeah. even though again it happened off screen, so that's what they're banking on is it's just not thinking about it. Yeah. Massive financial investment, and we're just gonna do one thing and then turn it off and put our feet up yeah. and smoke pipe. You know this, thing? Like, the, the, this forge that we use to make the rings of power and moon runes. Uh don't forget moon runes. <laughs> I invented those last episode or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm just going to shut it down. So like, what, are we turning this into affordable apartment housing? Or is this going to be a storage tower? What, what are we doing? What, it, surely that will be a, a terrible move if he just closes down this insanely amazing forge. They've got to, they got to deal with the cost of living crisis in Regeon, all right? It's hard to... <laughs> it's really expensive. If you, if people never die, up. you know? You well, start um, running out of room. I, I like how he finally decides to... Oh, go ahead. I'm going Sorry, just quickly. Um, so Eregion is the the home of the Elven Smiths, right? That's what its title is. It's yeah. the 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 land of of the Smiths. It's like a blacksmith Basically city the, kind of thing. The best the best of the Elven Smiths live there. Yeah. So I, I I guess the fact that this particular forge got made is because it's particularly big and fancy and extravagant, and it's really good at making cool shit. But yes. You're you're shutting that down, but you could still just go to another forge and make. All the smiths will love it when you shut this forge down. They're like, "Are you insane? Yeah. Think of all the cool stuff we could make." Everyone's yeah. gonna lose their jobs. I mean, Especially... I know that he could do that, I guess, because he's the Lord of Eregia, and obviously Gilgalad could tell him not to. But that would just that would just destroy, like, I guess, the economy in. In a regular, yeah. yeah, all this work yeah. and effort to make a forge, especially when we we're, we're kind of thinking we might be on the brink of a uh, of war here. They're thinking about attacking yeah. Mordor, and mm. like, don't you want forges up and running to yeah, make may, stuff may, for the may, war? Weapons and armor and shit. You know, we, we kind of need our best smiths yeah. to do that. We need our shitty nah. elf armor that looks so, like. So him plastic. closing this down is incredibly fucking suspicious, and he and... should know that Hilgalad would not just accept this. Yeah. That's yeah, true. and like even if he was going to close it down, or gonna sorry, pretend to close it down, you can mm. see from a distance that this thing is not closed down because it will have I mean, I don't know too much about forges, but they're gonna have smoke or some other kind of uh waste product, and in uh season one, occasionally explosions, which means that you can yeah. tell that the forge is being used. And you'll have people yeah, so going if, in if and out all the has time like and right. stuff and gear and yeah. equipment and the yeah. fuel for the if, fires if, and stuff. If Gilgalad has like, like one it's... loyal person in uh, in there, he, they they should be able to tell and like. Just gets a, a letter back like in a day that says you obviously have it. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've what, spoken to Frank. Uh, what's yeah, going on, Grimby? <laughs> also, uh, I, I like he finally Grimby. decides like he, he finally decides to write a letter himself to Gilgalad. It's like, oh, you could have done that, you know, probably like weeks ago. When you didn't yeah. get any message from no, Gilgalad not, to you, your way, it's not weird. It's not weird at all. The the most important <laughs> time in history for them right now has the rings and all that, and the war, blah blah blah. Yeah, not much communication. There just never is. Um, yeah, and the, well, the so reason just... they didn't make him do this is because oh, I sent my messengers. They just vanished because they don't just go over there and then just stay there. <laughs> they come back <laughs> no matter I the message. Wanna, so they would have noticed something out. is uh, awry. Sorry, Metal, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, this is all good. Yeah, uh, just throwing this out for no particular reason. There's no way that that letter should arrive, because obviously so, uh, all of the letters are being intercepted. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. uh, no. There's only one way to go there, apparently. The interceptors know the difference between <laughs> riders, and they're leaving some of them alone. Yeah, there, There's a very fixed small location in the way that oh, everyone has we'll to get, pass through. We'll <laughs> get there. Oh, we'll get to that. Do not you mm. worry. It's the dumbest um, part of this fucking show. Oh. <laughs> all right, yeah, Celebrimbor is completely and totally bought into the rings and Anatar's scheme. He'll question nothing. He is essentially enthralled yeah. for the purposes of any sort of character discussion. It's so he's lame how easy it is. Like, he's yeah, he's done. done. He's just this fucking incomprehensibly, like, stupid clown character. But you yeah. get the distinct feeling that 
once he's allowed, like once once his time is up, so to speak, he'll probably use all the references he should have used now later. <laughs> Like yeah. you know what's oh, weird I have noticed is this thing person. and this thing, and then we'll just be like, "Why yeah. did you say that the fucking time? Like, what's wrong with you?" <laughs> I have good news though. Ooh, welcome to Mordor! Yay! Oh, no, this that's about Flames We are we're <laughs> returning <laughs> to Mordor, the wonderful land of greatness. Uh, why is, so um, we why still... is Isildur still here, though, when we were, like, we've been explicitly told it takes a day to ride out of Mordor? So why is he still well, he's, in he's, he's he, hasn't lost. Made, he hadn't gone there yet. He, he, hadn't done Mordor yet. he hadn't left. He doesn't have Poppy's song, so he's lost. Oh. <laughs> so we, Isildur is uh, thirsty, so he finds some shitty-ass water, and he's like, all right, I need to drink this. Uh, and he, he is haunted by the visions of dead Numenorians in the water. Uh, because he's, you know, he's, he's, he doesn't know who else is alive. He thinks all of his friends may be dead. He doesn't know where everyone is. He thinks that his father's waiting for him at the camp. Um, so yeah, he's kind of haunted by the, yeah, that. So that's the thing. Um, that probably won't pop up later, but it happened. So there. Um, so, uh, he's wandering around in the woods and he comes across this, uh, this cart that looks like it's been ambushed. There's some, dead Numenorians laying around. And when uh, Isildur goes up to this cart, he, uh, he apparently doesn't notice that there's a lady in there. And the lady stabs his leg with a big fuck-off <laughs> knife. <laughs> I think it's hilarious after all the things he's been through uninjured, like this one random lady just stabs him. <laughs> it's like, ah. I survived a volcano explosion, and then this random yeah. lady stabs me. Oh my goodness gracious. Not that the um, stab wound does anything to him. In the oh long yeah, he's run. totally fine. He really after doesn't. That as well, <laughs> with, he, he well, just can't think... die. Yeah, with the scene going on, I actually did wonder: like, are they going to make this? Is it going to be a big deal? And I was like, of course not. Of course, not. fucking big deal. <laughs> nope. <laughs> True. Um, it's uh, yeah. They just put this dirty ass cloth over it, and mm. we're good to go. Yeah, he says it uh -huh. hurts. Uh, they have these weird attempts at comedy with her and uh, with, with her and Isildur, this this Where... random lady under the cart. Where he's like, oh, it doesn't hurt. And she's like, yes, it does. And then she pulls it out. And he's like, no, 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 don't pull it out. Ah, you're not supposed to pull it out. And she's like, oh, I've never yeah. been stabbed before. I didn't know that. And it's you very, guys... very endearing and funny. It's very hilarious. Yeah. Hooray. Yeah. If yeah. you want to see you guys like, know... it is actually very funny, Kung Fu Hustle, if anyone is familiar with that, the, uh, the knife oh. scene in that. Because yeah. uh, he, you guys he know accidentally why stabbed supposed to leave the knife and then puts it back in. No. Sorry, <laughs> what? Do, do you guys know why you're supposed to leave the knife in, by the way? Like, you know, so you, in modern times? So you don't bleed out? So it keeps the wound well, closed would be my idea? You're supposed to leave it in until you can get to a medical professional so they can remove it. Oh, well, yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah but I assume what Mel said is <laughs> yeah. the truth, that if you pull it out, well, yeah, it's like, you it's like rewounding you're not, yourself. You're sorry, sorry, I'm just baffled. Yeah. 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 I think that everybody here thought that to treat a stab wound is to leave it in there forever? What? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Well, that's, that's in there forever. Saying, my, my point is more like, what medical professional are they going to get to in time to remove that fucking knife? Oh, uh, well, we know, don't well, they? Because there, there was one that season one spent a really good long time setting up. She was a healer. And, um, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, but she's fucking yeah. miles yeah. away from the, where they are. No, I definitely don't really blame. Know where she is, I definitely don't blame uh, Isildur for being like, "Don't fucking pull it out! Don't do it! Don't do it!" Because that would be like his training and what he knows, and he doesn't want this woman just yanking this knife out of his leg. Sure, but he should also know why. Person. If he knows to leave it in, he should also know why you're supposed to leave it in. We well, probably don't want her to do it. He'd probably rather be the one to do it. Well, not just that. Because this is a random you lady you just to, stabbed him. You need a like, prep, Also, too. I don't want you having this knife. You just stabbed me. You need a prep, like, bandages. Do you have any medicine handy? Yeah, you can have prep, you. yeah. Yes, have bandages, have bandages have and, like, like you know, a fire ready to cauterize the wound and all that shit. But no, just put a rag out. over it. <laughs> um... <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Aren't they doing it the wrong way around? Like, are they are, are they using like a a thin one first and then put the thick thing over it? Shouldn't it be the yes. other way around? It's really fucking stupid. He will bleed out <laughs> in fucking hours. It, yeah. You want to apply a lot of pressure <laughs> to it, and then well, you also want to cauterize it during these times because that would go fucking you know septic and shit. Especially because yeah. he's about to be on a horse for what we have to assume is at least a day. You can't die on a horse. We've established this. That's true. Well, being, on a ho <laughs> being on a horse yeah. is preferable to walking all the way, to be honest, if your leg is you know, hurt. but uh, yeah. be preferable to walking, sure. But 
even yeah. so. It's not going to be resting here. Yeah. Yeah. This would yeah. be a way for Isildur to show that he learned some stuff in his soldier training um, and that he was building up this relationship with this random girl who we'll learn about later. Uh, she's great. You'll love her. Uh, and what, yes. they, what they're supposed to do for the leg and maybe, uh, like I said, opportunities. Him getting stabbed like this and their reaction to it and how they deal with this, what should be, is a big injury. This is a big ass knife that went into his thigh. That's a that could be bad news. That could be really bad news, and they need to treat it seriously. Uh, yes. But it's kind of played off as a joke, and then it's just sort of uh, gone. I think by next episode, you wouldn't have even known. Uh, so, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like the next, also, pretty much the next scene there, and it's he is mostly fine. It's probably worth mentioning at this point that her excuse for stabbing him is that she thought he was an orc. Just, yeah, uh, which is absolute bullshit. <laughs> well, keep that oh, in, orc keep that in nice mind because we'll get back to it later. <laughs> Orcs yeah. should have nice pants, Metal. No, they don't. <laughs> the only one who has nice pants is Waldrak, and he's not an orc. And Glug. Glug has great pants. Glug. Glug, Glug, Glug. <laughs> Glug is actually black speech for nice pants. Oh, I see it. Oh, yeah. oh, is that, that what they sense. named them after? Yeah. <laughs> nice pants. <laughs> um, it makes no less sense than anything else in this show, so uh, it, yes, it's canon in my heart. It's it's on par with the level of writing. Yes, Estrid is her name. This lady, she says the Numenorians have gone, and she went to the camp and found a map that they left behind, assumedly <laughs> accidentally. Course. So they yeah, now mm -hmm. know where to go. That's so great. I love their out. writing techniques that pr uh, uh, that just uh, are. Random guy is, oh. finds random other thing that has another random MacGuffin that brings him to the next random thing. It's oh, like, what did you know? It's exactly what I need to. Hear. Oh, great! I yeah. found oh, that's one. Fortunate. So she yeah. clarifies that she went to the encampment and that it is gone, which means that the because in season one we get told that the Numenorians are going to leave behind like one squad of soldiers. I don't know exactly how many, but the fact that they're not there anymore means that they were done looking for survivors. Obviously, didn't find a Sildor, packed up all mm -hmm. the tents and left. Because all that was there was mud and hoof, hoof prints. Which means Isildur has accidentally bumped into Estrid, who just yep. so happens to have previously gone to the encampment and found a map that the Numenorians did not mean to leave there. Yep. And on the map is circled the location that Isildur needs to go to get medical attention. That's what's just happened. There, Hell yeah. No, no you other explanations. Like they could have said just fuck this and deserted. Uh, the wild men could also have attacked them and just killed them all. And that's how she has the map. But you know, there's, there's a few ways. Well, I would. Happened. Yeah, one one thing that I was thinking about is um, that when the Numenorians pack up their camp, they might deliberately leave a map so that that way if they missed any survivors and anyone manages to mm -hmm. make it there late, then they can be like, oh, okay, well, they've obviously gone to Pelagia. But that isn't, like, yeah. maybe that happened off screen, but that's not at all what's suggested by this scene. I'm also not sure I would do that if the odds are that that map would be found by an orc as opposed also to a survivor. That, yeah, like, true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Send all the armies of Mordor yeah. after Pelagia. But I, I think that the simpler way of doing that would be like, have a sealed door go, because he would have known they would have gone to the camp. He can go to the camp. She can be there. There's yeah. no other Numenorians. Their reason, well, you know, when we sailed in, we passed Pelagia. That's the only Numenorian settlement ever around this yeah. part. So let's go there. Maybe that's where they went. Yeah. No yeah it's the obvious point like to the go timeline, to. The timeline seems to be such that Estrid was able to get to the camp find it, and then wander all the way back wherever she is right now in the time that Isildur was in the cave and then walked here. I guess those things just sort of lined up and there was enough time for both of those things to happen. But it also means that... Well, hold up. Yeah, if, if there's only... If, if the Numenoriums would have had to go to the... If, if we, like, synchronize time in terms of the, the volcano exploding, the Numenoreans in the camp... They were dealing with all the stuff they did in season one with, you know, Bronwyn being around and Muriel and the stab wound and Halbrand and all that stuff. That all happened. And while all of that's happening, Isildur is wandering around in a spider cave. And then they pack <laughs> up the camp. They leave behind some people. Those people wait. They decide they've waited long enough. Then they leave. And then during all of that time, I don't know, you'd think that that would be a week minimum that that would happen. No. And then, so it's been like over a week that Isildur has been wandering around in a spider cave? What What has he oh, been whoa, drinking? Whoa. He it, would... What we said she loved was nursing him. Spider milk. Oh, yeah, okay. Spider milk. fair enough. Oh, okay, fair enough. Well, all right. Yeah. Um, okay. 
Oh fuck! <laughs> that's that's happening. That problem. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just I'm thinking. I'm just my brain's turning to mush. Um. Okay. okay yeah. So the map says go to Pilar Gear, which is an old Numenorian settlement. Mm -hmm. Um. Sure. So they they the, the Estrid and Isildur come across another cart, uh, and and it's all ransacked. Oh no! At which point, instantly, it's like, oh, so this is a trap, and yeah. also that means that <laughs> she's a bad guy. Instantly, like instant, like how is he not figuring this out? You know what I mean? <laughs> um, like, if they are it, instantly, it's like, okay, so this guy's clearly set a trap for you, but also, isn't this very similar? To the circumstance where you met this lady, hmm. no, you know, hmm. someone waiting at a cart, someone waiting at a cart, and you just got stabbed. And being like, oh man, I'm so, I'm so tired. Come on, come here, come closer. It's like, come <laughs> on, <laughs> dude. Yeah, <laughs> you know, a little handshake. The guy's noticeably shit guy. in the story too, because he's like, what happened? He just goes, orcs. He's like, mm. <laughs> it's like you're you're alive. What do you mean orcs? Yeah, yeah. So the, there's a guy yeah. at this cart. Why haven't they, they, the two yet? come across? The guy's like, oh, we were attacked by orcs. Um, which is, as you know, as, has just been mentioned, why would orcs leave prisoners, or not even prisoners, or why would you just leave them lying around here? Why wouldn't you why kill would them? Why would you leave food behind? That's, that could you feed your whole family behind. for a week. <laughs> anyway, he, uh... this <laughs> family. When, yeah. <laughs> when Isildur gets close, a bunch of dudes pop out, and they beat him up. Oh no, we've been ambushed. Oh, sad. Damn it. Oh no. Uh, Isildur is oddly trusting of this guy, but Maybe that's just part of his character. I don't know. Maybe I, I. I don't know. I don't know if if, if people are he's characterized been, certain ways. Maybe I'd be like, yeah, that seems yeah, like the, Sildor is he's very. He's been consistently retarded from season one. So yeah, that, I think that, it, that's I the think problem. Is like, I think that the whole thing that they're trying to do is characterize him as like compassionate. But the problem is that in this case, it's just you're being really stupid, though. Yeah. Which is not good for you. Well, if Nestor and yeah. him had a conversation on the horse when they were approaching, all this could get resolved or explained. We have to help him, but he says they were attacked by orcs. Why would they just leave him alive? I bet it's a trap. Oh, yeah, well, then what is the thing you did to me? I thought you were an orc. And then they have, like, a conversation with words. Ew. Um, no. But that doesn't really happen because we have to have drama and because we have to reintroduce a very good friend of ours, a very Ooh. wonderful, a very good friend Ooh, of ours. If he showed up one. 10 seconds, 15, yeah, even it, five it, seconds later, Isildur would have been dead. And that yeah, but an elf everything. is never late. No, an elf arrives that's, that's right. precisely he arrives when he means to. Sure, yeah, yeah. The, the Isildur stuff specifically is really like an and then kind of scenario going on right oh, now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And oh, yeah. then he found Estrid, and then she had a map, and then they went to Pelagir, yeah, and then Arondir ambushed. showed up. And then they got and ambushed. They got ambushed. He ran off. Yeah, it's like we fucking hell. <laughs> Which um, is a yeah, staple of Rings shows of Power up as well. At the last second, and, and kills the wild men uh, who have some. the brand of Sauron on well, them. Well, and he does it with his um, he does it with his uh, arrow as well. He's like slicing them up with the arrow. He, he gets an intro yeah. with well, the always like. Well, don't forget that he like spins through the cart and explodes it. Yeah. Yeah, he explodes yeah. the cart. Yeah. He Arondir fucking is like a, <laughs> Arondir is a video game character where he like he does yeah. a the little dash jump, but it does damage and it destroys it. Break. It's like yeah. a, like <laughs> break, you have all yeah, the barrels, the barrels, all the exactly. barrels. Yeah. yeah, and you could dash through them to break them. That's what he's doing. You see little he coins the from the barrels all going up to the top right of his HUD, <laughs> like we're collecting. Yeah. Them. <laughs> yeah, uses the uses the card like one of these speed uh, speed rings from Mario Kart. Like, Woo! Um, Assuming that will... Isildur has recently, as in in the last couple of hours, left Mordor, he's still like 400 miles away from Pelagia, and Arondir <laughs> is out here collecting firewood from 400 miles away. Like that's a long, yep. that's, this that's, is really good that's a long way to go. Yeah, yeah, this, this is the part where the best firewood is. This is the good shit. This is the good it has shit. That those two actually traveled, yeah, like 400 kilometers or something. But I mean, goddamn, did they not have any conversations during yeah. that time? Wait, hang on. Aren't now, they, uh, they are they're in Pelagia already, right? Or well, they they, that, yeah, they they are, but the distance doesn't make sense. Oh, so <laughs> this is the the. the the area of Pelagia, but they still to the settlement is still like super far away. I don't think it's meant to be far away. I think it's supposed to be really close. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh. the surrounding forest, I think. But yeah. there's a lot of surrounding forests. So I mean, I yeah, they explain why Arandir is in the woods, but they he's here because it's really lucky specifically. Mm -hmm. Oh, for I'm sure. glad he didn't yeah. go to the Black Forest because no one comes out of the Black <laughs> no Forest one. except for a horse. Um, oh. Well, and Isildur, right? He's the first person. It's to true. I guess out. that's right. Yeah. Maybe it's just the, the, the aura of the, the black horse. horse. 
He's like, he's a guy in his horse. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start. We're we're gonna plan to see, and we'll discuss it later once it grows and blossoms. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, we are learning that um, because these people who ambushed Isildur and Estrid had this brand of Adar on them, that makes them wild men. We Apparently. will we'll just plant that seed and we'll we'll let it grow as we progress through the episodes and we'll see what blossoms and blooms well, from that little seed we, we've planted because we've, it's going to be important later. We've seen in previous episodes that Adar is branding people with this, like, you know, uh the slaves basically like enforcing them to take this or die in the yes. in the first episode. Mm-hmm. Which makes yeah, you I... wonder how many people would have just taken it and then like run off. Run well, off. Yeah. We, we, we've planted the seed. <laughs> we'll return to the. We the were just watering it, Rex. Just giving it a little... just, just a little, just a little tinkle, a little sprinkle, a little tinkle, sprinkle. Yep. yep. Uh, oh, no, I tinkled knows? a little bit. Um. So. Uh. Da, 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 da. So. Uh. Back at Pilar Gear. Uh. Braun Wynn. Is Braun was? <laughs> yes. Braun. Hey, yeah. hey. I, uh, He's fucking oh. dead. The reason I, uh, there's, that there's so one funny. thing. There's yep. one thing I want to point out as well. Um, uh, Lemon Lass says that uh, uh, Elven memories don't dim, but apparently he forgot about the orc arrows. I yeah. uh, <laughs> something I found funny during this scene is when they showed the flashback from like episode one of season one. It's like, oh, just in case you didn't know who who this is. <laughs> like, they, yeah, I, yeah. I get the impression oh, they yeah. shot it without an insert shot, and they're like, shit, yeah, like, yeah. and they don't shit. even know who the fuck. What if people this don't? Is? Know, what if people don't remember who this titanically important character was from right, the first yeah, season? Just put a, put a oh, slow motion insane amount of screen time of her. But yeah, this is obviously was not the plan. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Honestly, you, you uh, guys, are you, so like, much time on her. It's it's honestly one of my yeah. favorite scenes in the entire show so far. Just knowing how much time, effort, money they spent bigging this character up, setting her up, and then the excuse is, oh yeah, we kind of forgot orc arrows are a little bit dirty, <laughs> so she yeah. died. Oh, no. the, the I know the memory she was and, better. Yeah. Well, and the do, healer didn't do, know about this. Yeah. Do, do you guys know why she's not? Like, I'm not coming back. I've got. Oh, I can tell you. I, I I checked why. Oh, okay. That's, that's basically what it was. Yeah. She so like, like while while episode yeah. while while season one was releasing, she was like, uh, you know what? I'm don't really want to come back to acting because she's doing like activism stuff for in Iran or some somewhere for women or something. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Uh, and she was like, oh, it, it, it needs to be like a really special project for me to actually come back to acting while they made <laughs> such a big deal out of her being alive still. So this like, I think like the while flagship the massive to... project for Amazon yeah. and she's so like, this... yeah. I'm going to go do activism when I ran instead. I'd rather go to Iran yeah. than, <laughs> than act so in your funny. show. While yeah. season one was releasing, like, I think the, I think the second to last... Are? I think second to last episode, she was like, no, nah, I'm out. <laughs> so that, that makes this even funnier then, because like, yeah. I was thinking, essentially what has happened here is it's not like, oh, she was attacked by orcs again off screen. It's like, no, she died from her injuries from uh, episode six of season one. But she yeah, had already, yeah. exactly. So um, it, it, having her survive for five more episodes off screen and do nothing and be like, ah, yeah, she died, by the way. That makes absolutely no narrative sense. <laughs> she was the fine way that, when we left. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, but yeah. like the, the the way that you do this in order to have it actually mean something to the characters, you know, actions have consequences and affect what the characters are going to do, is you kill her off in episode six of season one. Yes. Because that, yep. I don't yep. think anyone she would have expected that to happen. defending the town. Yeah, mm-hmm. that would legitimately yeah. shock me. I'd be like, oh, I shit. Guess, yeah, I guess it guys... been that it was all done. Like, they'd shot everything. And then oh, it was yeah. after that that she made the yeah. decision. Oh, yeah, because yeah. Yeah, they, they made a huge effort to get her healed with the seeds and everything. And yeah, get it repaired. And... It was obviously a plan for the character. Um, but, yeah, but, yeah but, I guess yeah. not anymore. It was mentioned that recasting would have not... been the way smarter decision. Yeah. Because uh, it's so even easier to make use of all that stuff you've done already ready but then also just so much less awkward because what they do i think is maybe a sliver of a step away from she went back to her home planet and died along the way like that it's that <laughs> <Yeah>. stupid <laughs> <laughs> it's that. It's just that they, went play to pull and and died. they play like, sad music and it's it's dark and it's night and it's like oh man this is tragic but yeah i mean this is the just an is... abrupt end to a story that was yeah. clearly not finished yeah like the the funeral scene itself that's what death I is think... that's what death is uh, 
I did think like the funeral scene itself was decent enough. And I think part of that is because I did really quite like the music in it. Um, but also I realized that part of why it works is because no one says anything, which means that you don't have the scene <laughs> of Aaron Deer and Theo where Theo is saying, hey, man, I feel I know about guilt and shit. Like they're just... Uh, it, they just I don't, don't know. Talk. I, I think I think Aaron Deer's acting was fucking shit in that scene. I think I think he looks goofy and confused as fuck. Uh, oh, well, uh, he does, but he doesn't actually have to say anything, so it's not as bad as normal. Same for Theo, because Theo is awful. In this situation, I, 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 I would also see be his highly face confused oh, about acting. what was happening. <laughs> like it, it's an innately confusing scene. Like there's an, the other sort of um, uh, casualty that comes as a result of it is that the, you know you had the entire arc when. Theo and Aaron Deal were coming closer together over the last three, four episodes of season one. That they start off hostile and distant, and then I think the last scene you see them together, he's almost like taking on the stepfather role, yeah. and it sort of the ends with a hug. Yeah, and so, like that arc is done. That they have got closer together, and then because she's dead, they've had to very hastily rearrange things. So now none of that happened. So this episode, yeah. they're back to never speak to me again, you horrible bastard. And then by the end of the episode, it's, oh, we're actually really good friends again. It's like, we've had all of this. This is just a massive waste of time. Why yeah. are you doing you it know, again? The flashback to her face as well. Like, I actually think it's utterly hilarious because we know. But I think that probably was the wisest choice for them because they probably do know and would remember who yeah. that was. They'd be like, yeah. which of the ladies? <laughs> and then they say Broadwood. You're like, mm -hmm. I don't know who that is. <laughs> it's, it's it not. would be funny <laughs> if they chose to recast her and still did the flashback. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have the scene of old Bronwyn, the old actress, with her face in the flashback, and then it fades to new actress Bronwyn. And they're like, oh, okay. And All right, then. Subtitle says old Broadway, new Broadway, just like Mordor. Just to make sure we get it. <laughs> yeah, Mordor. <laughs> Aaron just says, Org, Org Eros have changed her face. It's fucking weird. It is Bronwyn no longer. Bronwyn <laughs> Oz. Unfortunate comparison that the show also invites, though, which is that, you know, end of season one, when Galadriel and, um, and Halbrand ride into a region and she says... Well, she looks at him when he's lying in the hospital bed at first and says immediately, this needs elvish medicine, he's dying. And he's been stabbed through, like, the kidney by a spear. And she instantly says, right, he must be dying, elvish medicine, off we go to Eregion. Apparently, though, like, Arondir is not as good at detecting things that need elvish medicine, despite being an elf. So, being stabbed by a spear is more obviously lethal than recovering like from an arrow wound. If you ask yeah. him, how did she die? And he goes, yeah, the uh, the orc arrows, they got her. It's like, but she healed from that. It's like, no, there's like a lasting poison. But she's a healer. She would know. It's like, no, she didn't. She missed it. It's like, did the elf not catch it? No. <laughs> You're lying to me. <laughs> you Holy killed shit. it. You, you killed it. Do we need to, do we need to work on like, a dance out or something? About the orc in case anyone gets shot forces. with an arrow? Well, yeah, we like, need to go, say... oh, so if we're just shot with an orc arrow, we're just dead? Should we think of like a like an antidote or something? So they're not instant they smear, death? They smear not instant shit death, on it but... or something. It's very hard to recover from. So the, the, the saving grace of this is that the writers didn't throw in that it was actually a Morgul arrow, because I would have cried if they had done that again. <laughs> <laughs> Morgul shaft. <laughs> was that a oh Hobbit thing? God. That's in the Hobbit, yeah. Kili okay, gets shot okay. with a Morgul that's shaft. Really, yeah. because, oh. and, the, and the only reason why that happens is because that's how the elves end up getting involved in the rest of the story, because if right, that didn't right. happen, it, they wouldn't I have left. need to rewatch um, the Hobbit movies. They sound like a hoot. You, no, you don't. <laughs> you, <laughs> they're not good. Oh, I don't want to watch them because they're good, just for the memes, I guess. Uh, I haven't seen them in... Like there, there's they came some out, decent, probably. <laughs> there's some decent moments in there, for sure, but they're not... Oh, yeah. Ones. There are some... There's some good stuff in there. I remember there, the... there is some. There's some gold in them, there hills. Um, I remember yeah. the barrels. A lot of hills, though. That was weird. <laughs> the barrels. <fucking> <laughs> yeah, Listen, the oh. barrels... That's just how Tolkien envisioned it. Uh, yeah. Barrel sure. maxing. Um... <laughs> That would be a thing, Speaking wouldn't it? If he was barrels, like, depressed watching the whole film, but that scene comes on and Tolkien's like laughing, jumping up and down, clapping. We're like, really? Okay. <laughs> 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 when when Bombo sticks his arms out of the barrel and starts spinning around like a Beyblade. Yes. <laughs> That's <laughs> Tolkien's favorite bit. We. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, we talked about everything that was in my notes. So we can go back to Kaza Doom. Hooray. Back, back to in... the mountain and the dwarves. Um, let me see here. What what, what shall we say? Uh, things are getting desperate in the market. People are getting hungry. Food is starting to run, uh, food's starting to run low. People are starting to worry. Yeah, and yeah. so, uh, Narvi, 
who is the uh, he's the guy from the uh, other episode we've met. He's the one who's like, yeah, the mountain's fucked, yo. We've, we've lost the connection to the mountain. We can't get to uh, we can't open up shafts because um, we, we, we don't know how to do it safely. Um, but Narvi is going to speak with the king. Uh, he says the food merchants want to open the uh, the grain reserves, which we learn will last them about three months. Um, and so, you know, all right. Uh, See, I'm just wondering at this point, did none of the merchants go outside and go trade somewhere else? Because apparently no, they, weren't, they weren't allowed to. They're not allowed, They're allowed to. to. <laughs> They're allowed to oh. do it. Oh, but, because but, King Durin is being assassinated with everyone else, so he's oh. like, nah, better to starve than trade. <laughs> or maybe yeah, that's part would... of his character, which I don't think it is, but whatever. <laughs> uh, seems like the opposite of what he would do based on his behavior in the first season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so Durin <laughs> Sorry, shows I just, up. I just saw chat. <laughs> chat just says, hey guys, is Waldrick back yet? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately Fingers not. crossed. Fingers, Fingers crossed. crossed. Yeah, I hope, I hope they, it will, will be. Um... Durin shows up to speak with King Durin and tells him about the ring offer for their mithril that Celebrimbor uh, had, had given him. Um, and obviously there's some tension in the room because they're not really seeing eye to eye on things. And Durin came here for you know, in, in an official capacity to tell him about Celebrimbor's offer. But, you know, they go back to the to this little room here, this little dwarfy room. And they're talking together, and Durin says that um, I'm hard as you, not a great line, <laughs> stubborn as you, <laughs> as crusted with pride, and I was wrong. I was I wrong that was to a really disrespect weird line. you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm hard don't talk about how you're hard and crusted. <laughs> I'm, often and crusted <laughs> here. I'm often crusted with pride after I'm hard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hard and crusted, <laughs> just like you are. Are oh, you calling me hard and crusted? <laughs> <laughs> um so he says uh Duran says he's been bullied by the miners. Um, yeah. I don't he doesn't you. trust uh, that he doesn't trust this power in Aregion. He says that cheating death might lead to a a greater catastrophe. Um and he refers to the thing that King Duran said at the end because uh, at the end of season 1 King Duran said, "Well, maybe Maybe this is the the will of the gods that the elves aren't uh, immortal anymore, or whatever happens to them if the tree goo gets too bad. Um, but it says here that uh, if Durin means that his father was right to have let the elves die, meaning that um, he it, it, King Durin was right to deny Durin helping Elrond in particular, but also all of the elves, then. I believe that this, unfortunately, is mm -hmm. uh, essentially the assassination of Durin mm -hmm. as a character. Yeah. Yep. And yep. I have to hope he's just taking the L willingly, even though he doesn't believe it, so yeah. they can save buying... the dwarves. Because, because be if not, he just changed his mind off screen, of which is fucking bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, the way out. He's going to change his mind back later on. He seems to flip fluff a lot, a lot. The, I, the way out of this is that he is just saying what he thinks um, King Durin up. should hear. Yeah. Well, he's he's yeah. not even necessarily buttering him up because he Durin doesn't think that the rings are a good idea because Sauron is an idiot. Um, so he doesn't want his father to actually accept this deal, right? Yeah. So, so by saying you're so wise when you what you're talking about Elrond, yeah, we probably shouldn't have helped him. I should have grown some balls and let Elrond die. <laughs> so as so as to convince his father that yeah, don't you de don't oh, go and get these I, I rings. I think you're doing yeah. too much nice work on the part of the writers. I don't think that's in there I, at all. I, I think it's I definitely perfectly am, consistent yeah. on this point from yeah. this scene onwards. He genuinely does believe that there is something terribly wrong with the rings, and so by extension, there was something wrong with them helping the elves make them. I think he's yeah. like he's. Flip flopped completely between seasons. Even though the elves said it relatively consistent from this point, I, he doesn't actually know that it has worked. That's the other thing. None of them have proof of concept. None of them have actually seen that the elven rings well, have done anything, except that the, the elves are still the around. Elves have all, yeah, the elves have stuck around here. All the elves seem to be like, "Yeah, it worked. We're we're good, and we want to make them for you too." And there's not this, you know, cause there's well, not like people running around being like, "Oh shit, we need to leave." They would have. They would have gone by now. They've only heard it from Celebrimbor and this weird Anatar guy. 
So, um, but they would have left. They wouldn't even. Well, the last thing they had to do with Celebrimbor, he was using Elrond to lie to the dwarves in a bid to trick them out of their Mithril. I think if Mm, I was a distrustful dwarf, I might suspect some foul play going on here. Exactly. Well, I don't think that's consistently written with Durin. I think Durin is unwittingly written to be insanely gullible. I don't think that was the. That's not the intention of the writers. Yeah. But also, they could corner, or Durin could corner Celebrimbor and say, he almost does this in, I think it's episode four. Uh, have him corner Celebrimbor. No, sorry, never mind. Sorry, we'll get to that later. He corners, call it, have him corner Celebrimbor and say, um, like, how do you know that the that the rings actually worked? Because then Celebrimbor would say, well, Anatar told me. And then at Ugh. that point, the fucking penny mm-hmm. the size of the moon would drop <laughs> and Durin would be like, oh, okay, we're in some pretty deep shit. Because the angel I from heaven that told me that it worked. We want to make exactly. the rings too. We don't I mean, even know what Durin would say. He'd be like, the what from who? Yeah, I brought this up before. Yeah, if I really summarized the entire these are situation that just again. don't happen. If Calabrimbo summarized the entire situation to any random person, he would realize probably when saying it out loud how fucking insane this whole no, situation is. No, he wouldn't. Been. Well, my point is obviously <laughs> he was this... normal. What I was going to say about uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Durin he is kind of the same. Is like the... If we had built up. I think Durin is supposed a, to actually be in this season between... the character that's supposed to be able to spot shit before it happens. He's supposed to have a bit of a street smart sort of like I, I get this, I understand this yeah. when that's not that's like the complete opposite of what we end up with. The um I He's I would not have expected like any of this from Durin. I would expect that if Durin would based off season one's characterization or its attempts, uh that Durin would be willing to apologize eventually to his father and all that sort of thing. But I don't think he would ever be willing to like throw Elrond under the bus. He would draw yeah. a line there and he said, yeah. he would say something along the lines of like, that's a thing I can't cross. Elrond is my friend. That means a lot to me. Use a dwarf should know that uh, and appeal to that, you know, bond. It referenced some history about some dwarf and something... some of the race that were good friends. <laughs> Yeah, or is, it, is um, Uncle Grisby, but... who was a goblin, that he was friends with him? <laughs> but this is that, that's basically the scene. Um, yeah, and like this should be a this is a huge character moment for the two of them, um, and it just sort of happens. I'm very yeah. disappointed in in Durin, of course, for the reasons that we've just gone over. I'm also very disappointed in King Durin for just being <laughs> like, huh, okay, <laughs> and then kind of oh, leaving. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I feel like uh, King Durin is uh, going to be very quickly fucking obliterated. <laughs> yep. In the, in the yeah. Well, yeah. Episodes. We don't we don't see what happens now because so this scene, of course, because it's Rings of Fucking Power, it ends with a cliffhanger, and we don't get any yeah. sense for what yeah. King again. Durin actually thinks about this. <laughs> again, yes, again, I, I swear, every other scene, you've got like a sixty to seventy percent chance of it ending halfway through a conversation. Yeah. So we don't know what yep. King Durin thinks about this, and we're going to find out later. But yeah. uh, also because of the previous fucking cliffhanger we have no idea why durin actually decided to speak to his dad in the first place because he didn't actually need to do it the 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 prospect of like lying to him or getting the mithril or subverting him in some way wasn't even addressed it was just well in order to make the rings you have to speak to your father and it was like uh, don't ask why you just kind of do well i guess he the, wanted the, the to reason do it why is he, wa- the... he wants to do it instead of disa right because he wants to present it in a way that it's we shouldn't Deza's... trust the elves because disa's on board with the idea he isn't yeah. And we have True, to do, yeah. we have to do mega extrapolation because these are just not conversations that they decide to have. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that's why. And there's like a skeleton of an idea that's buried underneath all the nothing that they do with it. But mm-hmm. yeah. like you know, like we say, we need to be having conversations. We need to have characters talking to each other in reasonable ways. But we don't get it, so it damages the characters and it damages our ability to understand the characters. I think you also but need to just the right character to send on the arc because well, they want King Durin to be the person who exemplifies what happens to you when you wear a ring. So they wanted this this change in his character from the the cautious guy who won't say yes to anything to the guy who, under the influence of the ring, says yes to too much and delves too greedily and too deep, etc. Like that seems to me like an arc that would be way better placed for the younger Durin, like the guy who is. The optimistic one, the one who wants to help the elves, the one who sees what good the rings can do, the one who goes back to his people who are in trouble and says, I've got a way out of this and our king won't allow me to do it, gains their favor, takes over effectively, and then under the influence of the ring, shows the folly that the king was warning against. And the king that is now disempowered is the one who can't stop it. Mm. Yeah. 
rather than it having takes, both of them effectively swap positions completely off screen you can yeah, actually have a way his more desire compelling for thing. greatness and glory and riches and to be known and famous and all that sort of stuff to provide and it takes that and it corrupts it and his and then, father's boom, name Mm -hmm. um that's what, that's what let's said, see right? all right that scene's done yeah that's the greatest honor uh for a dwarf yeah. is to earn his father's name something like that you could reference you that the name much. yeah yeah well, there's a special thing with the name durin and like lore of the dwarfs and shit like that but we I, we might not want to get into all that okay well yeah what a what a fucking catastrophe um i guess we could move on it sucks balls I think part uh, of why that's particularly painful is because those two characters, once upon a time, were like the best part of the show. Hmm. Yep. And yep. the more the, the longer we have spent with them, the worse they've got. And uh, by the end of these two episodes, um, I mean Durin at the very least is is gone. I say Durin. Durin the younger is gone. Durin the older is well on his way. Oh, he's so, teetering yeah. on the yeah. brink. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Deza too, she's been quite weakened when she De we well, ended season one with basically her probably being the strongest only, man. character. Waldrig was the strongest show, character was holding back time. the complete yeah. band, right? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Totally. Uh, I mean, from what I've seen of, season, of episode five, I'm not done with it quite, but uh, Deza does not come out of that episode in a good, in a good way. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, there is not much hope left. Um, well, all so right. It was too much to begin with. <laughs> there never uh, was much. Not, show. <laughs> there never was yeah. much, but it was fine. Yeah, what we had was all right and interesting, potentially. Um, she wasn't inconsistent. Uh, she had a personality. She had goals, and you could believe, based off of the, the dialogue and the acting, uh, that yeah, she was like an actual person. And then, the of course, the gravy line, the excellent gravy line, strong gravy. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, just they can never take that the away. Best actor but... in the show, I would think. Probably between Durin and Deza and King Durin would probably yeah. be the three they're, they're contenders. They're all like, you know, yeah, solid actors. Everyone else is very unmemorable to find. Remember to when bad. Elrond had a scene where he was yeah. okay? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that was about nice. his father. I yeah. Remember. It feels like a yeah. lifetime ago. <laughs> when it was it actually like making sense in what he said. All right, back in Pilar gear. <laughs> Isildur oh. is getting patched up by Theo, uh, which makes a level of sense. Theo is the yeah. uh, son of the village healer lady, so he probably knows a thing or two. Mm, he so, should be able to I do guess... this at least. Like this yeah, is yeah, pretty basic. Good... Seven, I suppose so. So at least they're so yeah. So boom, uh, Isildur is now okay. Um, yeah. So that's he's, you know, like, and he's you not going to randomly die the, off screen. The... Are you sure? He's not going to have a funeral. Okay, right, well, I mean, we don't know. Yeah, that, we that, don't know. It's that wound should absolutely check next that episode. Should absolutely be he, um, infected by now to shit. But in... he might also come he down does. with a bad case of the actor having better things to do. <laughs> <laughs> We've yeah. got a yeah. I, I'd be good on Rings of Power for actually uh, addressing the wound, uh, so to speak. But yeah, <laughs> it's, mean, it's 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 now yeah, officially yeah. cured. But at least they remembered that he was that's stabbed on scene. Hey, at least they acknowledged it before that's, they that's, it. The, the, the yeah, that's Rings of Power's yes. version it is of acknowledging it. The Rings of Power <laughs> grading curve. This is pretty that's excellent. They do that they, remind, that's they remember it. Yeah. Um, Imagine the scene was at the end so, of the season <laughs> where he gets it dressed. Like, and they, okay. They just forgot about it. Yeah. Rings of Power has like the every once in a while you get like a little crayon drawing that you magnetize to the fridge <laughs> to be like, oh, Rings of Power, Ooh. look at you. You remembered a character yeah. was. You know, wounded greatly last scene that they were in. Good for <laughs> you. Um, so, yeah, uh, Arondir is here with Isildur and Theo. Uh, Arondir thinks that he failed to protect Bronwyn, uh, which is, I guess, a thing that his character might potentially think, even though it's... Mm -hmm. I don't know what he could have done. But yeah, it's, it's not that he really could have done. It's just one of those things that just kind of happens. But he feels guilty about it, and that's fair for someone to feel guilty about it you know what if i had got her in faster or something like that, that, that. so i, I mean if he has thing. this like oh so perfect <laughs> elven memory or whatever he should probably remember the fucking orc arrow yeah but no. he might be thinking oh i i should have you know maybe killed the archers b before they got there or i should have got her inside quicker Ooh, or yeah. i should if have only, not maybe put the fucking well, medic was... on the front lines <laughs> well he was the one who who did the the medicine <clears throat> thing with the the seeds uh, in the wound and stuff. So maybe he thinks so. If only scare, I could have. Right? They're like, oh god, everything. A little bit, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a little yeah. ambush after they kill all the people who defected to Adar. 
Um, also, yeah. sorry, this came to me. Does no one in the Elven Kingdom like miss a Rondir being around? Like, doesn't he have like a post to fill or anything? He just seems to be here now, and nobody actually cares about the Elven. So the whole it, that is never mentioned. Elf, order. Yeah, that's never mentioned he after because I remember. Yeah, well, that's the, thing, isn't it? the rest of the orcs, sorry, the rest of the elves were captured by orcs and they, they are all dead now. But the fact yeah. that they were recalled, presumably to Linden by, again, mm -hmm. presumably Gilgalad, uh, and then they never showed up, would you would think mean that they would know that something's up, but they exactly, never yes. realized that something well, was up in I season guess, one. Uh, yeah. Did Galadriel mm -hmm. ever tell him, like, so yeah, when we got there, like, there was only like one elf left? <laughs> And, uh, yeah, yeah, evidently yeah. not. Uh, yeah, they're like, what happened to yeah, him? Well, it's like, if, if it happens, it happens off screen. But yeah, the pro I mean, I can believe that she didn't say anything. She's so solipsistic yeah. that I can oh, totally yeah. believe that she didn't even think like, oh shit, that might be something to tell Gilgalad. Yeah, nah, fuck that. But my guess then is that yeah, they they do assume him to be dead because the rest of his post is yeah. is dead. Yeah. I don't think it would probably I think be very important, important for the armies to meet up with him when they actually get there. You know, the guy who's actually been there and know what the situation is. You know, but nah, fuck said that. that. I think if you told the writers, they'd go, yeah. Yeah, they would <laughs> they'd, yeah. <laughs> they'd, go, they'd go, thank you for thinking about that. <laughs> like, hey, we called these people in this one post. They just never showed up. Like, none of them. Mm -hmm. Isn't that weird? It's like, mm, I also no. think that if you told no. them that, they would then talk to each other like, isn't it? Isn't this so dirty? They're like, oh, what happened to that character? What do they think of this character? From us? And they're not even... <laughs> That, uh, that attitude has really got to stop this whole thing of like, yeah. nerds paying attention to the details. Like, they don't even get paid to do that. This is your job. Like, yeah. like oh, look at these. Yeah. Look we at do these it losers because you don't do that. Cause and effect. Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, there, sh there should have been in the fucking planning scene when they plan to attack Mordor. She should have mentioned that, the, yeah, there's one, uh, there's this one elf over there who's, what was at the outpost and he survived. And we should probably, like, seek him out and, you know, ask him what the situation over there is. Yeah, because right now he's just wandering yeah. around this town as like the de facto leader of the people here. <laughs> it's mm. like, okay. Why not? I don't know why now. I'm just thinking about that as a as as like a problem. It's you know, it's almost like um I think uh, I think it was something that uh that Matthew Batosa said when he was talking about Dark Souls, um, and like his view on the writing of it, his view being that Miyazaki knew a lot more about his world than he showed, but that that gives it like a sense of depth. Right. Mm -hmm. Compared mm -hmm. to yeah, that the information like... actually does exist out there. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's it's like just because you don't see it doesn't mean that I don't know it. But also that uh, knowing it and not necessarily showing it still means that it can come through in ways like you can get a sense yes. of the depth of a world, even though mm -hmm. the writer hasn't necessarily told you everything that they know because all of the things that they know are informing yeah. the way that they write their story and construct their world. So like something could happen that from a viewer's perspective is just like, oh, that's just an event. But then the writer kind of imbued it with, well, yeah, but I know that this happened at this point with these characters in, in the world um, or in the history. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, yeah. you definitely get the sense of like, well, the world doesn't exist beyond any shot that you're yeah. doing at any particular moment. The mm -hmm. world doesn't exist beyond the confines of what you show like us. they're making it up yeah. as they go. There, um, yeah. There's a... There's a ton of that in Game of Thrones when the with, with like a bunch of like deep lore and like hinting at the, you know uh, older and uh, you know grander things yeah. like the we Blackstone know... being found at like all the different locations around the world and shit like that. The way that we interface with the world around us is this like built-in understanding that pretty much the the vast majority of things that have ever happened existed and happened before we ever were a part of it. Um, there's a history to everything. There's a reason why everything the way that it is. And it goes back many, many, many generations, thousands of years, potentially. So the mm -hmm. moment that you have a storyteller, whether it's um, someone in a Dungeons & Dragons game or whether it's a, a storyteller for a, a, a TV show or anything like that, the moment you get this idea where the immersion's kind of broken, when you realize that it is being made up as it goes along, there isn't any deeper thought that's put behind its construction, it automatically sort of breaks that believability with what we understand worlds to actually be, like our own world. And then all of the stakes and all of the investment that you can feel just, oh, it's like, this isn't like a world, this is just, they're just making it up as they go. We're just going from set to set, randomly learning things. You don't feel like there is like a background story to all the stuff that's being portrayed here. For as much yeah. as they talk about mm -hmm. history and ancient prophecies and 
and these people going here and these people going there. At any one moment, I feel like anything's on the table to be learned or told to us just out of nowhere and without any reason to it. Mm -hmm. it all of it added together, it comes across as though it isn't a story. It's a sequence of events that yeah. it, it has yeah. been put together to exist on a screen in front of an audience, yeah. which is like, that's immersion shattering. It's not immersion breaking. Yeah. It seems almost like baffling to the creators, right? It's like, how do people not like look at all of the money that we put into like creating all of these sets and props and, you know, visual effects and stuff? As, as because though, I like, think of them as sets and props. Well, that, it's, 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 it's almost this idea that the pure fidelity of, of the things that they've created like makes it so that it's a believable world. But like, there are video games and PlayStation 1 graphics that feel more believable and real than this because mm -hmm. it's not oh, about go... yeah. it's about like, yeah, when... the actual substance when we go to Edoras or when we go to any sort of place in the Lord of the Rings movies and they have that you never you're ne your first thought isn't oh this is a movie set these are actors on a movie set you're like no these are characters in a world that's ancient and old and is full of history and lineages and traditions and cultures and everything mm -hmm. that they do is going to be deeply steeped in that understanding and in that context. But here, it really does feel in this show, these are just actors moving around on sets of varying degrees of quality yeah, and believability. And off screen and then yeah. they all sort of go to lunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I'm thinking more about what catering they have instead of, you know, the actual construction of the fiction that I'm trying to be immersed in. Well, I think part of the problem mm -hmm. as well is how much of the acting and the dialogue is like needlessly theatrical. Um, that yeah, too much of the meta is seeping in, rather than sort of communicating like normal people. Yeah, they, there's so many just lines, to, or it, it, yeah, where it's like they did this with camera written. shots. No way a normal person just came up with that off the top of their head, you know. Well, I was th I was thinking more of like direct lines that have just been ripped out of the Peter Jackson films, where it's like the wink, wink, nudge, nudge, whistle, <laughs> thing because you know it, yeah. um, which is. This... You, I mean, I haven't seen the film yet, but exactly what you guys were talking about with Alien Romulus, where you just throw in wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, you said, uh, get away from her, you bitch. Mm. Like, oh, OK, oh, cool. Uh, how's that? For, how's that doing for your immersion now? Like, it's it makes me cringe. It's what it does. Yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it's like <laughs> I'll come with me if you want to live. Got fucking obliterated oh, yeah. by the Terminator sequels. <laughs> Constantly doing it over and you over know, and over again. Now, like, repeating that line. You say? Is one thing, but like the one that sticks out to me is still Amelia Clark's one. Which is Genesis? Like, yeah. <laughs> Come with oh, yeah. me if you want to live. Uh, <laughs> now, soldier. Never, uh, ever uh, do that again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my I, God. Uh, just why? Why? I think you've had it playing um, on the thing, but this is where I'm kind of on my little, on my, my, because I'm on Amazon.com right now and I've got it pulled up. Um, so we've, uh, this, it just, it looks like a movie set. This is a movie set. This yeah, does that's... not have, this is not how a village would look. And this is the, this is Pelar yeah. gear. This is it. This is like pallet town in red version. It's like, it's mm -hmm. three buildings and one of them's yours. And that's the town. And yeah. but here <laughs> you have a look at it dollars. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. I think the, that's, it's just, I believe everything that's the about this shot we ever get. Set. I think so. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. so. Yes. This is it, get, and I, they don't, I, don't, I don't believe there's any more than this. This is just it. It's three much, buildings no. and an old wall, and that's Pelargir, the, 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 the ancient Numenorean settlement. Yeah. This so is we it. Have, a billion dollars. Earlier on, we get a, um, when, they're just a, when we get the title card that says Pelargir, in case the audience doesn't have a memory, um, we do see Pelargir, and it is bigger than this, but obviously it's entirely CG. But what they don't it's do is with distance. the shot like this, yeah, what they don't do with the shots like this is they don't use set, ex you know, digital set extensions or clever camera work to, um, you know, reuse the same set in multiple ways from multiple angles to give it the illusion of size. Which, like, two examples of that from the Peter Jackson films is uh, Shelob's the, the tunnel where Shelob is was a very small set, but they filmed it from all sorts of different angles to make it seem like a labyrinth. Um, right. They did the same thing yeah, with the Nostromo in Alien. Movie. Ministerial, yeah. set design over and over oh, again. Oh, the descent yeah. is a great example, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you whereas this is like... the lighting to, yeah, this way, that way, turn it upside down, flip it, now we're going the reverse way direction. Just yeah. But here, you don't have scenes of people sitting on the dock looking out to the, to the ocean with a bunch of, like, fishing boats in the distance. 
you don't see um, people in a wide variety of interiors or maybe Theo's gone to sit on a roof to think about, you know, because he's sad because his, uh, his, his mother died of sadness or whatever. Um, you don't have people like you, you don't get well, the implication like that this is a place people live. Something busy, like, like nobody, nobody's just kind of like chilling. You yeah, know, just wouldn't like sitting there reading a book or or just looking out or crying even that would be kind of interesting if there were a couple of people just like breaking down because the whole situation is yep. really stressful. It's it's like they told everybody busy yourself with yeah, too busy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. It's an incredibly empty world all the way uh, through, um, and like th that's another problem is that none of these places filled it in because we don't see anybody anybody living in them. That's that's one problem. The existence of Pelagia also strains against everything that we know of Numenor or have been shown of Numenor. You know, incredibly isolationist, lives on an island, and then we're suddenly told, oh, but by the way, they have an settlement. old settlement conveniently nearby, and yeah. you think, well, okay, How old? But why then? Thousands How old? Why did old? they leave? Well, if they had settlements, yeah. why aren't they still there? Um, and uh, did they have any others? Would they be relevant? You hear, for instance, um, Arondir says later, I think it's this episode or the next one, he's from the Greenwood, which uh, invites loads of questions. You look at the map that Rings of Power itself puts out, the Greenwood is Mirkwood, or it's what Mirkwood is called before it becomes Mirkwood, where there's a whole elven uh -huh. realm. And so you think, well, okay, but then why are we jumping back and forth between Mordor and Linden when there's a huge group of elves right in the middle who'd be very important? Like all these things which give you the impression that this world is actually active off screen and they don't do it. All they do is mention things because they remember hearing it from the lore and that's kind of it. So they throw them in where they don't belong or they introduce them with no context or things that contradict the context we've got. And all of that adds up to... Yeah, you're you're not doing this because you're building on a history. You are just picking and choosing and putting in place for convenience. Um, yeah. well, and let's the... uh, let's keep on <laughs> let's keep on rolling here. Unless uh, Gogur has uh, what was I, I just wanted to mention that Belaga being a ruin makes no fucking sense in terms of the lore. Yeah, like, why it's, haven't it's a... they used the ruins? What they would repurpose the stone? No, it, this is it, this happens throughout it, all it of just um, shouldn't be human history. A ruin at all. It should it should either not exist at this time or it should be a massive city. Mm. Um, yeah, like, if it's been a settlement for a long time, I would. It would be nice. That's that's good. Little details of world building would be. Um, someone might ask, uh, "What happened to the towers?" And he's like, "What do you think all the buildings are made out of?" Because repurposing stone happens all the time throughout human civilization, mm -hmm. uh, where stone is used. Even to this day, they take stone from things and move it around and use it for stuff. My my Eagle Scout project. Was uh, was doing that using repurposed stone to build a bunch of walkways. Um, the uh, but it's it, how come people aren't living in towers? How come the towers haven't been da da da? It's little things like that. It's just like oh, it's an old Numenorean yeah. settlement, and if something's old, then we need to have ruins. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, yeah. I wanted um, to ask: in, is um, I guess based on both the law and based on season one, because I from what I remember, Pelagia is mentioned once because Bronwyn says there's an old Numenorean settlement. Pelagia, they called it. There's uh, yeah. shelter and water. Um, any indication that people lived here and that they've kind of moved in as like refugees? Is or, or are we supposed to believe that this place was completely abandoned? I mean, they probably it, should, right? Because when well, it was abandoned, it would be like a great place to, like a good defensive place to live, probably. And then well, has, exactly. Like, a big harbor and shit. Yeah, um, if they're try if they're trying to tell us that this place just existed and was empty, mm -hmm. then I don't. I don't believe them if that's what we're, yeah. we're, we're what we're meant to believe. Like in terms in terms of lore, like Pelagi was the first Numenorean settlement, I think, uh, in Middle Earth, and it, it grew to be like one of the big cities of Gondor later on. But uh, it's and not it was until, never until yeah, it was after, never abandoned. Like... So it's yeah, never yeah. abandoned, but it's also not existing yet. So, like, Pelagia is yeah. the first place they build after fleeing from the King's Men in Numenor. So, like, it shouldn't yeah. exist. So, like, the show doesn't have a law to fall back on. So, it doesn't have a people mm -hmm. to fall back on. It just needs the place to be there. But we're expected yeah. to believe that villagers in the Southlands would rather stay where their cows piss black milk than live in a place <laughs> with an aqueduct, for example, which is yeah. not believable. But I, I think, I think Pelagia actually exist, existed before the, uh, the uh, Numenor sank. Because there were a few settlements that they built before uh, the fall of Numenor. Certainly it's yeah. this show, I guess, but yeah. we but don't think like, it's like, the confusing element of the time. Pelagir, like Umbar, that. and like uh, Farbad, and like a few other places, I think, they built uh, before they But left. if that's the case... He's then... asking more questions. <laughs> yeah, if that's the case, then why on earth did they bother with the whole, like, we're, we're going to set up a camp in when we arrive and then ride over the mountains in like a day? Why not have the Numenorians arrive in Middle-earth 
at what would become Pelagir, and then the people who are left over, like Isildur and Arendir and Theo, and I guess not Bronwyn, they then turn it into Pelagir. They actually build it up into a function. Yeah. I get. Is, why not do that? Are the are I have the no people idea. here not of Numenorean descent then, or was it empty before the Southland refugees showed up? I, I well, think that was what I was getting. To believe at. that they all left and went back to Numenor for some fucking reason. So what we're told in season one is that Pelagir is uh, an old Numenorean settlement. Implication being that it does Numenoreans do not live here. It's just completely empty. Um, but. We are also told that a, uh, a, a quantity, it was a, a group of soldiers were going to stay uh, and not go back to Numenor on the on the boat that Muriel left on. And they're going to escort the villagers to Pelagir. But the fact that they're not here anymore means that they somehow have left and gone back to Numenor or elsewhere. Wouldn't so, they have... Wouldn't they have constructed it to where, based on my understanding of what the show has told me about the lore, when Numenorians were given the island by the elves and the Valar or whatever, because they were they chose the right side of the big war that happened a long time ago, wouldn't it make sense that a lot of Numenorians are like, oh, we live here in Pelargir. This is our home. This is where we live, and it's really cool. Plus, we fought for Middle Earth, so I think it's fair that we, you know, stay here and live here. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll just hang out here. Wouldn't that just make sense that you'd have? people of Numenorean descent who stuck around in Middle-earth instead of all of them being given yeah. an island and all of them going there? Yes. I mean, God forbid it would actually be... I mean, I know this is... We're not allowed to talk about it, but it's like the... God forbid a, an actual reason for the immense racial diversity between groups of, of, that, are, that are the same people. It's... It would it'd be a bit of helpful world building, at least in that way. And then you'd have the opportunity to have the Numenorians from Numenor meeting the Numenorians who stuck around in Middle Earth, and you could have now, especially you have Isildur here. Maybe he's like, "Oh, hey, you know, it's different." So, oh well, yeah. I guess we'll never know. Yeah. But uh, so let's see here. Um, where I we we got sidetracked on our little discussion on uh, all the reasons this is a great show. Um, okay, yeah, Isildur's getting patched up by Theo, who's the son of the, the healer, as we said before, and Arondir as well, uh, is there as well. Um, he says he, he failed to protect Bronwyn, then this is where I get the explanation that the, the flesh of humans couldn't handle the arrow, uh, so she fucking died. Which means, by the way, if we get, if we see a human getting shot by an orc arrow, and they don't die off screen later, I'm gonna have questions. All right, I'm gonna start to have questions. Um, Ar Arondir says that he's uh, he's pleased to see Isildur. He said, "So few who slept in the fire made it this far. Save those who took the mark of Adar." <gasps> I wish I could share my relief with your father. He did not abandon you. Numenor will return. Your family will be whole again. <laughs> Do you think? Does he made and, me uh, laugh. Like he's Theo like, looks at him. Give uh, it a little look that. over when he says that, as in, like, just check for scars, see if he's got a little, uh, little Adar <laughs> print on him. Like, just real quick, take all your clothes off. He's like, what? He's like, no, it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is know. how elves say hello yeah. to it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that seed we've planted earlier about uh, the Mark of Adar. All right, so now we've had, we're watering a little bit. We have... A Ron Deere saying that the only uh, people who, um, you know, the, basically everyone who survived the creation of Mordor, uh, they, they took the mark of Adar. There's been very few people who made it out unbrand, unbranded. Um, all right. Uh, outside, uh, they're carrying water together, Theo and a Ron Deere. And uh, Arondir's like, hey, you know, the village needs a healer. And he uh, he says, uh, Theo says, their healer just burned on a pyre. He's uh, talking about <laughs> He's his like, mom. Yeah, that's why. He's fucking dead. Well, I mean, we need one. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's that's yeah, what I said. There you really. go. <laughs> pretty, pretty great. Pretty good stuff. Bronwyn was the only one. Yeah. The only everyone one. else. And now they, they need another. grow on trees, okay? <laughs> It's like Everyone else in Pelagia is an extra. Everyone's an extra who just, they do busy. They don't, they don't do healing, they do busy. They do busy. Well, it's, it's just, it's got that terrible, mm. shitty, um, like, um, I hate when they portray 
like common folk in these kinds of shows and movies as just like these dirty, nasty, unskilled, sackcloth wearing losers who don't like have any joy or culture <laughs> or like clothing. They just wear these these potato sacks that are all different shades of brown and they're all dirty and nasty. I just like these aren't actually people who have professions and skills and interests and they want to express themselves in their clothing and the things that they do and whatnot. Um, it, it, yeah. Just big opportunity kind of we're wasting here to learn more about the Southlanders as a people, the kinds of people they are, the things that they like, and maybe ways to distinguish them between, you know, other groups. Um, just only Aranda, those two, everything just we on... need to know about them is they're poor and probably evil. That's all we need to know. Yeah. Oh, what right. else do you want? Only these uh, two well, on Waldreg yeah. mattered in the Southlands. I was going to say, we, we, we know that these, these ones aren't evil. Um, I don't know if we want to <laughs> reveal why yet. Um, that could be like our, our big... I don't want to say reveal, but we could like slowly but surely build... We can treat it like it's a mystery. Okay, and okay. Then yeah, they, might, they might be evil. Heaven. Yeah, you no. know. Uh, <clears throat> we could try and add some drama. There's much needed drama to this show. Desperately trying to be dramatic. <laughs> This is, this is actually drama. just a description of Rings of Power. We'll treat it like a mystery and try and make it dramatic. That's <laughs> yeah. all I'm really doing. Well, they're yeah, trying to make it dramatic. <laughs> they're trying really hard to make it dramatic. Oh. Um, Arondir talks to Theo and tells him about uh, his home realm of Beleriand, which was uh, sunk by Morgoth a long time ago. Yeah. He, okay. says, he says to Theo not to be angry. Even though last scene, uh, Arondir was pretty angry, uh, kind of at himself, because he thinks he failed to protect Bronwyn. But he's mm. telling Theo, don't be angry. Um, Theo kind of spurns uh, Arondir reaching out to him. Uh, and it seems that what they're going for here is that, um, is that his mother dying is kind of what has completely undone their relationship that was being worked on in the first season. Um, so. He also he also says Balerian was an entire elf realm, and there was other you know racists living there. So he's just a racist. Yeah, well, there, there were humans and dwarves living there as well. Damn, Arondir. But damn. Apparently, it was only elves. Yeah. <clears throat> By the way, um, Arondir's example is retarded that he gives him because he talks about himself like, oh, we failed with Morgoth and to hold him and blah blah blah." But obviously. Theo has like survivor skill going on right now and is not a trained soldier that failed his duty or something like that. So the example he gives doesn't really work with what Theo is going through. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, he, he doesn't. Basically, my take after this scene is that uh, Aaron Deere is now an android who doesn't understand <laughs> human emotion. <laughs> because uh, Just I, Aaron I, like, I know that his. Well, Aaron Deere specifically, because he's, he, he's saying like. Um, Oh, I, I feel really responsible because I failed. Um, I failed to protect Bronwyn, and uh, but also uh, back in my day, I used to live in Beleriand, and I felt really guilt. Uh, sorry, no, I felt really angry at um, at Morgoth because he he blew up Beleriand. Um, so Theo, you shouldn't feel angry, even though why would why does he think that Theo is feeling angry? Why does he think that it's okay to say don't feel angry, just feel like it's your fault? Like none of, none, 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 none of it works because <laughs> he's saying don't be angry, but then his actions mean like, well, I, I failed to do something. It's like, well, but also <laughs> in, in the example that he gave, it was his responsibility as a soldier to protect Beleriand, presumably. I mean, that's I think we can infer that from what he says, but it wasn't mm -hmm. Theo's responsibility to protect Bronwyn. It was the other way around, which is why she got yep. fucking shot with an evil arrow. So it doesn't apply <laughs> at all. Uh, yeah. I hate evil arrows. So much, so much poison damage. Oh man! Yeah. Evil Especially the arrows and rocks they get everywhere. Is is the running assessment then that you guys don't? Because like the impression I got was that they just they are they have reset the relationship, but that that's going to be the payoff for the season is that they'll reconnect by the end. Um, have they already done that? That's what I'm they saying. They do that at the end of episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was expecting that at this point in time. I was thinking that well, they're going to just kind of retread it, or potentially Aaron Deer is going to try and reconnect. Um, and then Theo will detach himself even more, which might then hmm. lead to further things well, that I guess we know are going to happen. Let's not but they deny don't do it. That. We're all thinking it... about it. Theo is the closest thing to Waldrick's student, so I feel as though there should be a, a <laughs> yes! Waldrick, Waldrick yes! 2, you know? 
And the second he yeah, takes on that role, he immediately becomes really old and gray. And he's like, <laughs> I am Waldrick too. It's, it's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. You can, they've yeah, set it up. So. We can have old video played by Waldrick, the same actor. Yes. But yeah, I, I know. I think it's just weird the, the way they go here. Because I thought when they started talking, it's like, oh, he's going to teach him some lessons and stuff. He's going to like grow into the stepdad role or whatever. But yeah, as we already said, they just fucking reset it here. And it's like, go away, you're not my dad. I have a sneaky suspicion as well. They think they're done oh. with this because they reset it here. And then by the end of it's either this episode or the next one, they've sort of reached that point where Arondir just decides that Theo can be Lord of Pelagia now. Goodbye. Oh, that's um, so retarded. And oh, why would you I, spoil I that amazing that thing now? Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll spoil it again later. You can spoil things multiple <laughs> times. This rings but now it's going to be less funny. God damn it. Oh. Anyway, what I was saying is, I think they, they think that's the end. I don't think they have anything else in mind. I think that will that might well be the last we get of the Arondir Theo stuff. I think oh, you're right. No. Yeah. Maybe. Anyway. Uh, to, anyway. To answer the chat uh, <laughs> regarding Theo's age, uh, the actor is 19. The character is supposed to be 14. Oh my uh, god. Huh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I believe it. Mm. Sure. Oh, oh. show sure sucks. Uh, yeah. I suppose Rags then that moves us on to the wonderful scene of uh, more reconnect, or more, more relationships developing, ready for the future of the the scenes. What even? Yeah. What are the? What are this? What is this team called? What what do we? What do we call these scenes? The well, it's it, cringe. It, bad. <laughs> these cringe. <laughs> That's not these what I meant. You know like it. The... <laughs> They're like two of the least competent characters in the show, and as soon as I saw them chatting with each other, I was like, where well, the hell is this going? Well, and it goes somewhere very entertaining. I guess, yeah, you know what, you're right. Because I was going to say, like, when, it, when it's like, oh, what, do you want to find out what Arondir, Theo, and Isildur are doing now? A girl? I'd be like, not really? No. But then I guess, no. you know, it's like, well, who do you want to know what happens next? But it's like, in some ways, exactly. in some ways I do sometimes want to know what's... Harvard's happening with uh, Galadriel, just to know what, what more cringe. It's, you know, it's like it has to be done in doses, but sometimes you do be like, yeah. what's she doing now that's horrible? Which, uh, mm -hmm. is oh it this boy, episode or the, next episode? What did the writers make her do this time? Yeah. When oh, she do the Galadriel's next, next episode. Next episode. Next episode. We don't actually get any uh, not big, yeah. big Galadriel stuff in this episode. What about Gandalf? Oh. Is he on his way? Yeah, of course. That's he, all for next coming, episode. Yeah, that's next episode. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God damn it. Yeah, I didn't actually realize until oh, yeah, like, well is. after Fuck. watching this episode that Galadriel is not in this episode. This is the yeah, first episode of the series that she's not in. You just this thought the Lord Wars episode. <laughs> You'd have thought that would be a thing that like contractually she has to be at least in every episode or something like that. But, uh, <laughs> oh, all right. Um, because a lot of shows run that way, right? Protagonists in every single one. She is our yeah. protagonist, right? <laughs> I don't know, well, we're losing her. Uh, she, yeah. she was. She gave a little bit of a narrative through line in episode. Uh, sorry, in season one, like it didn't really make any sense. But she connected so many of the um, of the various plot lines. In season two, there's like double the number of plot lines, and Galadriel's only involved in like two of them. Which is like why it, it almost seems like you're watching completely different shows whenever you cut to Rune or Numenor or Pelagia, because none of it seems to be connected. And it makes the pacing feel horrible because at the moment, I think the like most of the uh, plot lines we're on at the moment are just side quests because you've got these guys who are in a holding pattern. Their side quest yeah. is go find a horse. And you've got Gandalf <laughs> who's on a side quest and his side quest is go find a stick. And then yeah. the only thing that's actually Gosh. happening is like, oh, what's going on at Eregia? And we haven't heard back from Celebrimbor yet. <laughs> that's like the only main thing yeah. happening everyone's it's, waiting, we're waiting to get for to a the letter. battle episode <laughs> yeah, we're waiting yeah. for a letter yeah remember they were because didn't they <laughs> well, try to now... promote this season with more battles big battles we're getting your battles as though it's like it's the old yeah. Uh, yeah well i'm expecting that the battle i mean because there is going to be a battle i don't think that's a spoiler to say i'm expecting mm. that it will probably spend multiple episodes oh, um no. whether oh, that is a good no. thing or a bad thing i don't know but i would i would be surprised if they if they kind of one shot it like they did with episode six in season one, where it's just one back to front um, single timeline show, I don't think they'll do that. I think they will probably split it up. Um, there are only three episodes left with which to do that. I could see it taking up the oh last God. two. 
I, given the way number five ends, I'm expecting number six is going to be when it starts, and then we'll have a big dramatic cliffhanger, and then number seven is where it will conclude, and then eight will wrap up the season. I don't want to. And then we'll have to <laughs> wait another two years before we can see the sight and development of everything. Not horrible. That's. I want to wait <laughs> interpret that as you wish. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess the, this, what what's happening next would just be the notion that we're going to be getting that horse back. It's, it's like, yeah. As for like, what yeah, character do we a... draw out of this scene? Not much at all. They don't take opportunities. Well, I, can, to I, mean, I, I got something that doesn't really make any sense. Is um, Theo says he's like complaining because the water fountain's a bit shit. And Isildur recognizes it as being like Numenorean architecture because uh, uh, yes. it's like similar to what he has back in Numenor. Um, and he explains it's not a water fountain. It's not a shitty water fountain. It's actually a broken <laughs> aqueduct, although he doesn't tell Theo <laughs> that it's a broken aqueduct at this point. He fixes it later, but he doesn't tell Theo that he's doing it wrong or that he knows how to fix it. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's true. And then, even... <laughs> and then Theo uh, is like, well, they do people can't make uh... this kind of thing because he's never seen anything this good. And then Isildur says, oh, we got cool shit like this all, the, you know, all over the place in Numenor. There's aqueducts going all over the place. And then Theo says... Well, if Numenor's so amazing, why did you leave? And I was at that point was like, don't you fucking dare ask Isildur why he left, because he doesn't know. He's got about seven different reasons. He changes his mind all the fucking time. And then he comes up with another reason in this scene where he says, well, I heard there were grander things in Middle Earth. And it's like, you know that that's not the case. There's a broken aqueduct here. Yeah. That's not. That's just him being a fool of shit. Like, <laughs> is that, yeah. Okay, is that the point, though? Because he's like, no, and then Theo's like, think... Yeah, because I Pretty think much, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be more charitable to scene because I feel like he's just trying to make some some banter, a little small talk, because he knows he just lost his mother. So he's just going to try to be a little a little funny. If he succeeds or not, that's, that's the thing. I feel like he's just doing charity. Motive, at least. Because like, I see all those think, motives yeah. for, for leaving have been, I want to do, I want to go see West Numenor, then I want to do something worthy of being allowed to go see West <laughs> Numenor. <laughs> then on the ship on the way to Middle Earth, he's like, I just wanted to get away. And now he's, I thought there were really good things in Middle Earth that were better than what we had at home. And it will change at some point between now and the end of the season. Even if he was making small talk, you'd think you'd at least have some consistency in the small talk. Oh, um, yeah, well, it, sure. it actually, you just reminded me, changes in the next scene. Well, I say it changes, we get a little bit more context <laughs> because he says that he wanted to earn what his mother did for him. Oh, fuck yeah, I forgot about that. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> we had, <laughs> so that, that, another reason. <laughs> yeah, that can get laid on top of what we just said but it's another um i guess motivating factor to be honest yeah. Um, yeah. It's, another, um it's insane little bit that doesn't make sense in this scene as well when theo says you know people can't make stuff like this aqueduct as though he didn't spend all of last season living under the equivalent of the hoover dam yeah which you know is <laughs> like, a good fucking magic yeah key. when you That's saw what happened impressive. with that fucking Very volcano good. were you not kind of like holy oh. shit well then again i guess they, they still don't know the mechanics of that well so Paul the point, there, i though. think would be that they knew or they believed, I still don't fucking know, but I think that the uh, Osterith, the tower, was uh, built by the elves. And he specifically says in this scene, men can't build things like this. So he is very kind of, I guess, he's, defeatist he's about what men are capable of. He's a heckler of, of all that, because especially when it's everything that the, the little, uh, little Lola Seal does say, and he keeps having little snappy comebacks, but at least he's willing to help him get a horse. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, it was it was good for the writers because basically I don't know if we actually mentioned when um, Arendir showed up to save them after they got caught in a very obvious trap. Um, Arendir didn't he wasn't actually good enough. He wasn't quite good enough, and he, uh, he the the horse got away. Uh, they managed to steal Beric. Um, so now it gives Isildur and Theo something to do uh, for the end of this episode. It doesn't yeah, really problem there is problem there is how the fuck does Theo know where the horse is? Well, it's implied that Theo knows where all of the wild men are, which, okay. <laughs> You're going to say how? it's implied <laughs> Theo knows where all of the horses of the world are. Oh, Theo knows. This little horse radar. He knows. <laughs> yeah, he's the horse whisperer. My yeah. special ability. <laughs> Got a big cooldown, though. Yeah, yeah. Pushes us to the uh, fucking, wonderful bonfire scene. Fucking horse radar. I thought oh, it was the very trauma funny. dump scene. Yeah. Yeah. It's, this, uh, it really is like poetry. Lady, not feel completely forced on the story at all. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Estrid. I am a character now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know. Why are you hitting that knife? Huh? No, no reason. No. Why are you hitting a knife? I wanted to. Well, slice, she's about to accidentally butter. fall on the fire. Okay. 
So, yeah. <laughs> Obvious. <laughs> so you need a hot knife for that, yeah. Oh, oh that's so dumb. Oh. <laughs> Remember when she stabbed him in about. the fucking knee with a kitchen knife? <laughs> like, nah, I'll yeah. just buy whatever. Now they're having a nice emotional bonding session where he, I, yeah. I can't remember exactly how it comes up, but he says, he, he basically explains what happened to his mother, which until yeah. this point we didn't know. We only knew that she died. Yeah, he talks about how right the sea was. Basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he, he trauma uh, dumps uh, on Esther. I think she says, like, oh, you're not as strong as you think I am. It's like, oh, well, let me tell the story about my mother real quick. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, sorry, we hadn't mentioned this. So the reason why he ends up saying that is because um, Estrid has told uh, Isildur that she is looking for her betrothed. Right. And she believed that he might potentially be in Pelagia because she couldn't find him anywhere else. Um, and... Isildur asks her in this scene, any word from your betrothed? And she says, uh, no. And Isildur's like, well, if he's as strong as you, he'll make it, is, is basically how we get to the trauma dump. Same. Well, if he's sitting in carriages, <laughs> stabbing random passerbys, he'll sure be fine. Yeah, that's a great way husband? to look for your fiance. Are you my husband? <laughs> <laughs> Are you my husband? <laughs> um, oh. All right. I guess we're at the... The Isildur and Estrid by the fire? That yes. Is yep. where we are? All right. Yes. Uh, Estrid says that I'm, uh, I'm not so strong as you think. Um, which, all right. I guess she thinks that he thinks that. And if he does think that, I wonder why. Uh, maybe it's, I don't know. Uh, she feels survivor's guilt. And he does too. So the trauma bonding. So that'll mm. end well. He uh, wants we know to fuck her. It's places. obvious. He doesn't really have. Much <laughs> He's of the got the big horny. Very into her. Brand, no brand. You know, it's also because to show things, uh, all the viewers are babies. They spell it out for you. It's like it's hard. What is being Muffin. alive? Like, oh, thanks. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm watching the show. I think also it's hard to stay alive. <laughs> Uh, uh, Isildur, Isildur tells um, of his mother dying when he was 10 he swum too far out to sea and uh, she drowned trying to I guess succeeding I in saving him uh, and he has not uh, he hasn't told anyone else about that part um, at what point so... do you think they will decide hey maybe we should have a scene where Isildur comes across as competent <laughs> because like everything Soon he does TM. is shit. Every single thing he's useless. And now, when it yeah. comes to the backstory, it turns out he's even more useless than we previously thought. Because he got his own mum killed because he, was he couldn't ten. handle swimming. He's, he's, uh, he, he was ten. He, we all he killed was, our mums when we were ten. <laughs> yeah, we all got better, better, though, The guy that um, got the ring of Sauron's hand is a fucking wimp faggot. <laughs> so she drowned trying to save him. Isn't that great? Uh, she wonders what it's like for her mom now that she's dead, which is a weird... I In heaven, or Lord of the Rings heaven, I don't know I, what Rings. a weird thing to say. I don't know. Um, <sighs> Isildur says, uh, said that he never told anybody that it was uh, his fault that uh, his mother uh, drowned trying to save him. Uh, does that include Elendil? Because that... like, you well, think that's that my next would note. impact... Not... Uh, yeah, okay. I don't know if Elendil knows. Um, yeah, and I don't it, think that yeah. we're I mean, led to told, believe either way. We'd be like, "Well, the sea, though, it's right." So you know, get on. It's unclear <laughs> the dialogue that we get in this scene, but yeah, it's either that Elendil doesn't know because obviously the mother died and Isildur would, was too distraught or embarrassed to tell him, or Elendil does know because I, I guess he maybe saw it happen. I I, I don't know, um, and that maybe informs why on the sea. As he's yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> like no, uh, well, he's always it, right. It would maybe explain why he is so devout in his "see is always right" <laughs> shtick because it allows him to not blame his idiot son for his wife's death. Oh, <laughs> uh, again, I might be I might be doing way too much work there, but that is possible yeah, based on yeah, what the scene. You, you know what? I actually <laughs> thought the same thing. <laughs> really? Oh my god! That would, would kind of kind of explain why he's a bit a dick to his son. You know, besides him being a dumbass but you know but he's not that like that's my problem is that he's not that much of a dick to his son he's pretty his, supportive all the way through season yeah. one except for the bit where <laughs> the obviously has done something him. shitty 
he's he's more of a <laughs> his son is him. more of a dick yeah. to him is what I was trying to say. The uh, yeah, yes. like his dad has had to deal with a bunch of bullshit from him all over season one. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. <clears throat> he's an entitled little bitch. Like fucking ugh. And oh, like, it seems the season right. one characterization is that he spends too much time thinking of himself, not of other people. Like there's a whole episode which is basically devoted to that point. Which is not necessarily the character premise I'd expect to come from someone who had like whose mother sacrificed themselves to save him, kind of thing. Like, I would expect yeah. Isildur to be characterized much more as destructively trying to please, as opposed to not paying attention to the kind of thing that gets your own parents killed. Yeah, yeah but like, they didn't they know about that part to... of his character when Well it's it's weird though, because um in the you know, in the conversation he basically says, like, I feel like I gotta essentially earn my existence, but he doesn't really yeah. act like it. Um, yeah. No. Which is because he, in all, yeah, he really does. It, it, it would seem like what you would expect, especially if he outright states that this is something that he wants to do, is that he's like desperately trying his hardest to be the best at everything, maybe to the point that he mm -hmm. exhausts himself and starts making mistakes rather than being kind of like a bumbling, hapless, kind of like impulsive person. Well, he quits the yeah. Sea Guard exactly. after only nine. He's yeah. only got nine days left until he officially mm -hmm. becomes a member of the Sea Guard. And instead, he sabotages his chances because he hears a voice in the wind that wants him to go west. Don't know if we'll ever get back to that. Um, Probably not. And so I've got no connection between how he behaves and what he supposedly wants to do. His mother yeah. is not proud. She's looking down and being like, man, I should have so just not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, question is um are we meant to think that when the sea told Isildur his name on two separate occasions in season one that that was his mother calling to him because she was Ooh. taken by the sea possibly that's what I was th thinking if he was just actually like I'm, having I'm a brain fart and like, I can hear something it was actually his mum I have no brain. idea well because it happened once she... I, I, well I don't we know believe... nothing about her right would he believe nope. that it was the mother's voice? Because if he believed it, then why would he like ruin his chances to do something honorable for Numenor to honor so, her? It, well, <laughs> I mean, yeah, because obviously he he would recognize his own mum's voice. So I'm thinking maybe because it's after he hears the voice that he then decides to sabotage his own. Uh, it's not the sea trial, but it's it's whatever's before that. I um, I don't think so, the writers knew about him having like accidentally killed his mom when they were writing the entirety of season one. This is probably I, I a very stupid it. question, but how does she die in the in the source material? She, she doesn't does. really exist in the source material. She's not yeah. like named. I don't think she's even named, but she certainly doesn't have any kind of on-page role. I mean, she has to physically exist. Obviously, he wasn't born of a virgin, yeah. but otherwise, that's he wasn't it. Wasn't born from Elendil. <laughs> he'd still just because he'd, he'd still have a mother if he was born from a virgin. Yeah. Just shot out of Elendil. Elendil. <laughs> 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 The sea the is always, always right. Oh my god, Aww. maybe maybe he just walked out of the sea. This is my son. <laughs> <laughs> this is my son. Uh, my little no, like, my little my little kidney stone is <laughs> 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 No, I was oh. thinking like maybe if if the voice is meant to be his mother, then maybe she was really um uh, really, really faithful. She was one of the most most faithful of the faithful, and she really wanted him to go to West Numenor, maybe for some reason. So it was her voice calling for him to stop messing around, uh, trying to join the Sea Guard, and to actually get out there and do something worthwhile. I have no idea if that's what's bit intended. of a dick move to do that when it's almost finished. Well, there's that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why, done it what, mom, why, didn't you, why didn't you tell me this a year ago, Mum? I wasted no, so much just time. kidding. <laughs> Um, oh, fun times. Let's sure. see. So, uh, da, da, da. okay, Theo and Isildur, they uh, they want to go on an adventure to save Beric because before they leave, yeah. Theo, yeah, he, he said, yeah. Oh, you you passed that part. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Theo told Isildur earlier to meet him here, and so here they are at night. Theo and Isildur, they've met. Let's set up at a payoff. They said to meet, and then they did. <laughs> Good on you, Rings of Power. You, you, Good you, job. you did it. Um, High five. Amazing. So uh, they're going to go on an adventure <laughs> to save Beric the horse because it ran away and then it didn't no, the, come the, back. No, the, the wildman stole him. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you just know yeah, where they are. Done. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Isildur knows... Sorry, Beric knows where Isildur is at all times, it seems, and yet the horse didn't like turn around. Never had a chance. He was always tied up or something. 
Or maybe he, he was tied like, up when they were riding him away from them. Yeah, but he was being controlled by, he was being drove, driven, driven. Sure. And so he couldn't have. Sauron, there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but now, I don't know. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe, maybe Peric was like, God, this Isildur guy's actually a loser. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hang out like with this. those wild men. It's like, oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go hang out with the wild men. Let's roll the I dice with them. Before they go off on their adventure, I just want to mention, so when the, when uh, Beric got taken, um, Isildur says to Arendir, like, I need to go and find my horse, because he would want to do that, obviously. His horse has just saved his life, and he really does value his horse. That's one of the only things he does seem to value. Um, and Arendir says, like, you can't, the, there's wild men all over the place, and then he doesn't. So, like, okay, fair enough. But then later on, when he speaks to Theo, Theo says, you really want to get your horse back? And then Isildur's response is, you know where he is? implying that the only reason why he hadn't left yet is because he doesn't know where the horse is and he was waiting for someone to tell him. <laughs> like he hadn't immediately just gone out into the woods looking for him. So, yeah. yeah. I guess if he would, he'd have to fight all the wild men and stuff and he wouldn't, you know, be able to do that if it was just him alone. I mean, Theo doesn't really help in that regard, but we... <laughs> maybe he's <laughs> playing, he's just playing the, playing the field. Oh. You know, if some barrack related news comes up, then we'll investigate. We'll see where that leads, and if not, then I don't know. Rest in peace, horse bro. Nah, they would not eat Beric, probably. The orcs would. Well, they're wild men. But the the, the villagers of Pelagia believe that the wild men are like cannibals. They're like, they, they, would eat, <laughs> they think that they would eat a horse. Well, I wouldn't eat a horse, because I... you could ride on a horse, and they, mm. you can't ride on a person, so that's why they eat people. No, why not eat and ride? Just chew yeah, like, a, like like as you go, yeah. Like as you're yeah. as you're going, just, just have some a little pieces. nibble, and then you'll heal. <laughs> the and like, a, like, a, like a chocolate bunny. Mm -hmm. Why not? It'll work out perfectly. What a what an interesting theory we've come up with. Um, of power theory. So, uh, yeah, Theo and Isildur are two favorite characters going on an adventure. <laughs> I really um, want to see them team up, and here we go. That's right. Uh, Heck, after yeah. they leave, we see that Estrid has been branded. She's got a brand on the back of her neck that her hair has been covering up. Uh, mm -hmm. She decides at that moment that she's going to remove the mark uh, by rebranding over it with a piece of metal. So that is insanely painful, woman. Uh, but yes. okay, that's something that she's just decided she's going to do. Don't worry about it. I, think it's um, not I wonder what this means or refers either. to. Because a lot of people might think, hey, that mark is clearly not an Adar mark. It's like, yeah, but it kind of looks like a mark that's over a mark of Adar, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, especially Darn if... It. Are you saying that it's kind of suspicious she would do that? Damn you think it, that's kind of suspicious? you figured it out. What? You're so clever. And then, of course, it's just like, lady, why don't you just tell him? Like, yeah, they fucked me up with no. a mark. Yeah, you'd have to think that this is a common occurrence. Like, there must be people, yes. it, regardless of whether or not um, Adar has actually freed all of the Southlanders, mm -hmm. which I'm, I think has happened, but I'm not 100% on. Um, you would think that there would be people arriving like every few days, like, oh, finally, we found some people. Um, we had to, we were enslaved and we got branded. Please, can we have some help? But no, but the, uh, evidently the she is embarrassed because she's doing this on her own. She didn't want Isildur to know. She doesn't want anyone else to know because she's doing this mm -hmm. in the middle of the night on her own. She wants mm -hmm. to cover this up and pretend that she hasn't been branded. Mm. Um, yes, because Aaron, they are going to go around calling everyone who has the mark on <laughs> uh, Yeah, because if you have been branded, you are a wildman. Mm -hmm. yeah. Makes sense. You're irredeemably you're evil if you who... have the mark on, even though you're yeah. probably just yeah. a slave. <laughs> you're, probably, you're probably just a guy who didn't want to die in that moment. And so yeah. you got branded, turned into a slave, you escaped, and now you're like, oh, thank God I'm out of there. But it's probably apparently not even hard Arundir to Arundir in particular seems to tie, oh, if you got the brand, you're just it's deeply not gonna... evil. Yeah, yeah. it's probably not going to even be hard to escape, especially if he just fucking sends people into the fucking woods to be wild men. It's like, what, are you just going <laughs> to leave us here without any orcs? I'm just going to fuck off. <laughs> I'm yeah, not going to, I want to work for you. Fuck you. Yeah, what, why would I worship Adar, like, at all? Yeah, you're he shitty. He just enslaved and branded so that's, me. <laughs> that's part of why I thought of the whole sleeper agent thing that I mentioned in the previous episode, is um, oh, right. <laughs> those those wild men that set the trap, the fact that they are hiding in the woods near Pelagir and just ambushing passers-by is pretty strong evidence that they don't actually serve Adar, right? Because why on earth would they be doing that? Right. Yeah. yeah. 
What's Adar done for them? them? Nothing. He's made yeah, like, everything worse in every way. Yeah, By the way, like, the, oh. if he if they do actually worship him, which is not clear yet, we 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 get this in a little bit. But if they do actually worship him, then either he put them there to attack randos on the street, um, or they <laughs> escaped, which means that they don't worship him, right? Yep. Yes. So so the presence of the brand does doesn't Change mean anything. anything. Yeah, really. it's not a deciding factor mm -hmm. in anything. No. So the Health only reason I can evil, think. Those who are evil. Well, that, that, that's why this is so confusing. The, the correlation between <laughs> Wildman and Brand is that they decided to have the first Wildman that we meet have be someone who is evil and be someone who has been branded. And I feel like the only reason why they did that is for the visuals for the audience so that they could clue the audience in on being like, uh oh, uh oh, he's been branded seconds mm -hmm. before this happens because mm -hmm. Isildur doesn't know what the brand means at this point. <sighs> Yeah. It's so stupid because again, this is like another thing they could use to make like some more interesting drama or whatever. Where I don't know, a Rondier just almost kills someone with a brand, but realizes he's actually just an escapee. And then he has to realize, oh shit, that's a thing that can happen now, obviously. So uh, we should probably no, put in a so stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, maybe we should put in a system to actually figure out if someone is, you know, actually with Adar or if they just, you know, escaped after they've been Branded and enslaved, and somehow got away ah, from him, and then do this. Kill them all. Ethnic cleansing. No, kill them all. Yeah. <laughs> also, I'm not even super the whole convinced that all thing these makes no sense. It's just the way yeah. that people interface with it is. It just doesn't make any sense. You're branded. You're a wild man. Like, no, I escaped. No, you're a wild man, and all yeah. the wild men have brands, uh, and they're loyal to Adar, even <laughs> though they could leave whenever they want because they like him for some reason. I just want to throw this out from uh, Bleeders in chat. So he says, you think Elfman would understand the idea of being forced into slavery by Adar? <laughs> yeah. So, that, he, he, yeah. I mean, why, why he didn't get branded in season one, who knows? But I guess if he had, he'd be a wild elf. <laughs> also, I'm not even yeah, completely, con I'm not completely convinced that all these wild men are around already anyway. Like, it's been only like, a, I don't know, a week? Well, maybe that's why two. the timeline... The timeline doesn't work, and it is needlessly confusing. Like, yeah, because uh, I don't think these between wild men is because um, uh, Estrid says in the next episode that she's been looking for her betrothed for weeks, oh. which is it, it either means that it's been weeks oh, since the volcano, or it means the, the that... thing is they're they're not like in Mordor anymore. They're basically in Gondor. So I assume the wild men were just here, here fucking all along. Well, that's possible, um, but then they seem to be drawing a very clear. Um, parallel not parallel the opposite of a distinction whatever that word would be they're trying to suggest that the people Similarity? who worship adar parallel well yeah, mm -hmm. no oh, yeah they're, they're trying to suggest that the people who worship adar and the wild men are the same even yes, though that doesn't yeah. make any sense yeah no so the way they portray it is like yeah all these wild men they were enslaved by adar and now they've just been spread over all of middle earth already in like a week <laughs> or it's like I mean, what? if we can yeah, be... yeah really strict with it it looks like the show the show wants us to think if you have the scarring you're a bad guy but this lady mm -hmm. she's a little yeah. bit more complicated than that and we're all like what the why would having a scar make you a bad person they're like huh yeah, yeah. Like, what? no what, <laughs> like, what? what, what do, do you mean, mean? it's, a, it's the mark of Adar, about the question yeah it's a yeah, it's, it's a brand of adar of course they're evil like but you showed them color. You showed them being coerced, or else they would well, die if they didn't take it. Yeah, and remember very quickly makes as them well. Evil. It was like you had two seconds to say, "Yeah, I, I'm yeah. sure." We're yes, you, exactly. Yeah, or you get, or you get the bone <laughs> treatment, and you get stabbed. You just get stabbed right through oh, the gut. Means, what if a guy, What if someone showed up and he either doesn't speak English or he's deaf or he can't understand Waldreg's accent? He's yeah. just going to get shanked. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. What? what? <laughs> he like falls oh, over I, and I, accidentally I, deals. Then they're like, "Good." I, he's I, like, "What?" <laughs> Huh? I do I find it really strange, like how little of the story like has a focus on the human characters. You know, like the men. It feels like they're just kind of like around, but it's hard to get a grasp on like what the state of the world looks like for them. Mm. Nobody cares about them except when we do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Um. Yeah, so that happened. Uh, some wild man, or there's some wild man camp in the woods. Uh, Theo somehow knows that this is where the horse is. I have no idea how he does know. He just does. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd assume he's just in 
you know, in the settlement doing like work and stuff. I don't know why you would out here doing your things. And also the yeah. wildmen pr are probably not just all in the, one place th all the time. This is another area with the really good firewood. So he, he gathered some firewood. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so they they start sneaking towards the camp. It's nighttime. They're in the woods. They're a wild man. There's a horse. Uh, Isildur tries to untie Beric. And Beric yeah. starts to make some noise. And the wild men act as if... Do it. Why the wild men act like a horse make a horse making a little bit of noise is like a really suspicious, weird thing instead of something <laughs> that they here. just kind of do. Yeah. Just, um, uh, just a mi minor note here. I I don't know a ton about horses, but I like sneaking up on one of them in the dark from behind is not a good idea because they were probably spooked them to. But Beric loves spiritual the spiritual connection. Spiritual connection. Yeah. Great. Yeah. But it, there's yeah. other horses there. Mm. Beric would tell them that this one's first. Cool. Beric told Beric them how to like, feel. No, he's one of the good <laughs> yeah. ones. This is one of the good <laughs> ones. Yeah. Hey, I smell he's the Sildor. He's, he's, he's cool. He's, don't, don't be scared yeah. when he arrives. <laughs> he's not a wild man. He's a Numenorian. Yeah. And the horses wouldn't say anything because they're horses. Um, now, Theo uh, walks out to distract them, the wild men, from discovering Isildur taking Beric the horse. And um, Theo walks out and says he's one of them. He worships Adar because he just assumes that they all do, which is a really dumb thing to assume y yes. because logically most humans would absolutely despise Adar with a deep burning passion because Adar sucks. Uh, yeah, they can't even use the excuse that they would serve Adar because they're like loyal to evil and Sauron and stuff, right? Because he's like explicitly against Sauron. Well, well, we again, talked the about it with um, with yeah, he's Waldrig trying to round up well. the orcs to you know, attack like, him. With Waldrig, it is kind of like, man, you really want to live in Mordor? It's shit. Like, <laughs> you can't grow anything. There's no animals. It's just like crap. And yet, apparently, a lot of people want to live in that world. <laughs> like this, the, the the logical through line here relies entirely on the humans, the non the non people of Wild. I guess we can call them. They believe that everyone who has been branded is a wildman and is therefore evil. Um, even though that doesn't make any logical sense, but we have to accept that Theo thinks this for some reason. So he shows up and says, hello, hail Adar. They're immediately yeah. going to just kill him because yeah. they've just, presumably, logically, you would expect that they've just escaped. Yeah. From, uh, from Adar, he, right? he, show, he destroyed he our homes. Them, yeah. And he shows them a mark that, you know, followers of Adar wouldn't recognize anyway. So it's double. Yeah, and he hard. doesn't... <laughs> and he doesn't explain it because he shows them, yeah, the mm -hmm. mark that he left from the evil sword. Yeah, and says we're this not is wild that... men. We're we're well, we weren't wild a week ago. We were domestic men, and now men. we've been forced out of our homes. <laughs> well, also, no, given how far away they would be from Mordor at this point, wouldn't it just be way more likely that any person you encounter is just like normal? Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes, absolutely. Nope, they must we're worship the uh, Adar. Um, yeah, Theo walks out, says he's one of them, he worships Adar, he shows them the marks from the spooky blood sword yeah. that Waldrig used to make Mordor. Um, they don't know what that is, obviously. Mm -hmm. Why would yeah. they know what that is? And they're like, what's that? What, what are those marks? <laughs> and I think Theo says, basically, like, it shows I've done more for Adar than you have, or something. And then there's all like, like, oh, like, 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 trips. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> They yeah, have no idea know. what Waldrig did. They might know yeah. what he told. Maybe he's it, humble and he kept it to himself. Well, imagine they, they did know. They were, were like, the hero Waldrig? You're trying to take credit for what he did? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hero Thank him immediately. <laughs> well, it, it relies entirely, again, upon them uh, knowing and understanding what the evil sword is, uh, which, again, relies on... Why the fuck would they know that? <laughs> I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Well, Theo, yeah. Theo thinks it's proof. He says, it's proof yeah. I've done more for him than any of you can claim. Yeah, but then, Truth but then the guy replies. Shit, though, if the people don't understand it, but then like <laughs> the guy, the guy replies and says he says something like, "You'd be surprised." Try, like, us. try us. Yeah. So, says, so that us. means so that yeah. means that they do worship Adar, and yet they're just chilling in the yeah. woods. Yep. Well, yeah. Well, I uh, no. They they serve Adar even though they could leave, but they want to live here in the woods, <laughs> and they don't want to be in Mordor. So I guess they're out here by their orders to just be wild men and... And just ambush <laughs> yes, random that... people and wander yeah, into the forest. Shenanigans. That sounds like a sketch they're as well. They're here to come the forest, right? They all head to Mordor, they're captured, and then Adar's like, I'm gonna put your scar on you. He's like, no, 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 we already have, we're loyal to you, we want to do stuff. He's like, no, you'll be my slaves. He's like, no, we want to work for you. 
What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, I, thought, I thought the deal was... What you needed, like, people. We like you. you and and said, how like, how oh. can we serve you, my lord? And he's like, well, just go forth and be mildly irritating. <laughs> yeah. And that's like, Oh, we can do that. Be wild. We're the best at being mild. <laughs> It was oh. like, I just don't really like you, okay? Can you guys hang out over yeah, there? Like, yeah, All right, I guess. Uh, over there. Down some trees in this area to the west. Uh, okay. <laughs> don't piss off any... When the... Uh... Mm -hmm. Whatever well, could you when mean? The, when the wild men get suspicious of Theo, which they should be, because he just showed them weird marks they don't know or anything like that, uh, they say, oh, he's he looks well fed. He must be from Pilar Gear. Are you here to attack us, lad? Same as your folk done the others. Um, which makes me wonder, <clears throat> like, do you not expect that if you worship Adar and go around attacking caravans, then other people might not take kindly to that? I don't... Yeah, like the idea that they go, do you know Rondia killed several of us the other day? And it's like, do you mean when you <laughs> attacked and tried to kill some people that time? <laughs> He's like, I just realized they, actually, they, they do the same... They pull the same bullshit sympathy card that they did with the, the glug wife and the glugling earlier. Is um, <laughs> we see here in this uh, when Theo reveals himself, not no when Theo, when Theo shows up and says, "Hey, hail Adar," um, we see that there's a woman holding a baby in the wild man camp. Mm, glug. <laughs> yeah, they don't they don't mention it, but the suggestion there is that we're supposed to feel sympathetic with them. No, no I killed the baby. <laughs> uh, yeah, Theo says in response, "We've never attacked you." <clears throat> Yeah, and then he says, you attacked three of our camps. <laughs> yep. I don't know Meanies. what the fuck the state of anything is going on. <laughs> or what <laughs> no it, idea. It, this is just like, Wait, I guess the... they don't like each other for reasons. I don't know any... What is happening? There's no reason for I mean, the couple not, not to go all the ways that they do. Theo basically saying, no, he didn't. Then he goes, yeah, he did. No, he didn't. He did, though. No, he did. Well, the... No. The, the <laughs> wild men seem to believe... <laughs> Something has attacked their camps, which is going to pop up in a sec, though. Yes. For some reason, they believe that this was the Pelagians. We needed, uh... even though, uh, yes, even though they'll have no reason to think that, but we can, uh, we can hop right into it because uh, he, the, the the little wild man guy, is like, oh, grab Theo, and uh, then they do, and then once they grab Theo, a, a a an axe comes flying out of the darkness and hits one of the guys and sends him flying back like ten feet. So I guess the wild men are getting ambushed by some people. We don't actually ever see who they are. Um, we do, at least actually. not yet. Something incredibly strong and incredibly precise with throwing axes, because this is like, mm -hmm. I think you see Gimli do, do shit like this at Ammon Hen, but the size of this axe, it's like doing this with a, what, like a battle axe. Yeah, it's a big it's axe. It's a massive axe. It's pretty you are big. Not, you are not doing that if you're just a guy. So oh, whatever yeah. this is, um, is yeah. Yeah, they're big. So. <laughs> the wild men yeah, get yeah. ambushed. People are like flung up into the air, and massive axes yeah. are thrown into them. And everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, we're being attacked!" Um, whatever these are, these are big things that throw axes made of iron. So who knows what it could be? Uh, mm. Maybe we'll never find out, or maybe we I will. Mean, who knows? We kind of see and hear them. To be honest, you can hear like some in the, in the end of the scene. Yeah, you can uh. kind of make them out. I think. You, well, so you never actually see anything. Um, no, you don't. You you hear mm. the thing is it, you hear it, but knowing yeah. what it is based on the noise that it makes relies on you having seen the Peter Jackson trilogy. Yeah, you can yeah. recognize this golem immediately. It's just big golem. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big golem. <laughs> golem is like Ugh, I hate the wild men. Nah, stink, well, so I, I don't know. I, I don't know if he I was alone speak, here. But... He's not speaking. Stealth is optional for this mission in Golem. I assumed for some reason that this was Damrod, the the giant troll from earlier, because I figured, well, okay, they set him up earlier, and now something really big yeah, is attacking yeah. the wild men. But I mean, it, it's not Damrod. Um, no, I, yeah, I mean, there's one my really first prominent shot right one. that doesn't exist. That doesn't exist for any other reason of one of the wild men chopping a tree, like, and it's it's there yeah. and it's really obtrusive, oh, yeah. and it's like, oh, I see where we're going with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So oh, that was great, but we're gonna have to leave it there because we got to go to Numenor. Oh, did oh, you say that oh. at the very end? Uh, oh. Theo gets captured by something. Mm -hmm. Yes. You see, he yeah. looks up. There's something that like kind of like it's implied that it's the big a big tall thing captures Theo. Yeah. Yeah. And but we also so see we also see Isildur doing very cool things because he saw Theo being basically 
trapped by those uh, other guys. He looks at them yeah. and then just gallops away on a so horse. What what was the plan here? What, what was the game go plan? Get help. Yeah, go get help. I think oh. it was, he was going to just fucking away, leaves him. And then he, yeah, Theo was going to run away too and just be like, yeah, cool. All right. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Every Even though Isildur is the one on the horse. Yeah. And he, um, is it, so is a he cunt. hears, he hears, um, I'd leave Theo, Theo too. Like, why he, he hears Theo shouting, <laughs> which means that he knows that something has happened to Theo. That's that's all he knows at this point. Yeah. Then he, he doesn't see what happened, is what I'm saying. Well, well he, stops, he, he got hears him. the noise. He hears the noise of his voice, but he doesn't move towards it, and then we cut away. Right. It's like, and then we're oh, back what a... Numenor for okay. another shitty scene. The Numenor yeah. scene <laughs> sucks so much in this episode. <laughs> no, and this is really, really funny. They, they really I just know what is going to be the worst, ep the worst episode thus far of the season, which we won't be covering <laughs> today. Um, oh. Well, I think it's great. Uh, Muriel <laughs> is wearing white at the coronation. <gasps> Her the coronation, Farazan is wearing red. It's red. Because earlier they said she'd wear white and he'd wear red, and then they did. Um, what a setup. She wears, she, she wears this long flowing dress and walks downstairs while blind, and I just thought it would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, she doesn't, but it would be funny. Uh, she also has this, uh, has this like eagle embroidered on the back of her big white dress. Uh, so, yeah. Because I also Eagle feel like it, omen. it needs to be noted that um, Elendil kind of like it's kind of awkward. He like holds her hand with his like right hand, so he has to reach over, and then he just lets go. Like he didn't really. <laughs> he just kind of did it for no reason. <laughs> like he just yeah. gives up. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It just looks awkward. Well, she takes it. <laughs> he no, she, she takes his hand. He he holds out his hand. She is blind. And she mm -hmm. takes his hand, and like then, she and can then she, see. Yeah, and then Just and then he lets go. Like. Yeah, like because I know oh, that yeah, she, he helps her like ten feet. Yeah, because we saw him. Like, she, she seems to le learn how to walk around all the different rooms by counting the steps. We saw that in uh, season one, and I'm guessing that makes a little bit of sense. If she's very familiar with the room, then she would know how many steps everything is. But knowing that Elendil is there, does she? smell him maybe they, maybe they said ahead of time like once you get I to the bottom i'll you. be there just reach your hand out and then i'll I'll guide you for two seconds yeah, like hold my hand for going. two seconds i don't understand the benefit of it but i mean unless it's yeah, supposed no. to be that he was going to take her the whole way uh because she is i mean she's disabled she can't see but then she kind of refuses it in order to just persevere oh, and do it that's not what they like do. That, though, no, you know, no. You'd think that they would focus on it if that was the thing, whereas it mm -hmm. just happens kind of in the background. And the thing is, she knows exactly where the hand is, like exactly where it is. Yeah, she does that. Like, uh, fumble or grab his arm or something like that. Yeah. The uh, the green screen for like the exterior, you know, in the in the mm. room looks pretty bad. Like the oh yeah yeah, really, it really does not look like they that exists at all. And yeah, it does look pretty bad. Like this is what you're talking about, right? They've also yeah, that one, that shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how great that was. <laughs> oh, yeah. That literally that looks like a Doctor to Strange portal. portal. That literally the looks like a portal to amazing. another dimension. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Um. All right. So yeah, she take counts her steps. She walks up. You know, walks to the place where I guess she takes the scepter or the the symbol of Numenorean authority. It's like this little doohickey with a sun on it. Um, but uh, what, what? So it's, it's at this like point so... she has been voted, right? Like if, if this is like a thing they vote for, no, I guess no. she won. I think it's just implied <laughs> that she's going to be the one because there's not really a challenger. But so this is this there is, is what a I was room, going... but sorry, Regs. Um, no, I'm I was going to say, say yeah, I was, I was going to, this is what I was going to ask earlier, but I didn't want to jump ahead. I didn't, I didn't want to break the rules. Um, <laughs> the rules are sacred. Sacred. There was not, there was not an election. Muriel is now the queen because the king died, uh, who was about her me. father, obviously. Um, and my question was, why does Farazon have to wait until now to uh, essentially take over? 
Because because it's it's more dramatic. dramatic. Yeah, this is dramatic <laughs> and sudden, yeah. and it's a dramatic shift in what you would have expected to happen, maybe. Well, if because we case, really like Muriel, and we do not like Farazan because the show if, is. Terrible. Do we like her? I think yes, the show to. tells me. Yeah. <laughs> the show, tells yeah, me the show she's likes blind. her. Yeah. She's blind. We have to like. Her. Yeah, leave her alone. The show sure. tells me. <laughs> yeah, but we don't like Farazan because the show said he's bad. Oh, you can see. Because yeah. if that's the case, like, because we don't know that they have anything like in the US or the UK where you have like elections on a, on a uh, I guess, consistent period of time. Um, it's just like, well, he waited until the king was dead, at which point there would be another coronation. And now it's time to spring into action. Um, which also, again, if that's the case, then it is tremendously lucky that uh, Muriel went away and fucked everything up and got a load of people killed, which then means that Farazan gains popularity. Mm -hmm. And that coincided with the death of her father. Because those yeah, two things have nothing to do with each other. That seems highly unlikely, but, you know. Uh, it's in the, the show and how it works, I guess. <laughs> was that, that he was waiting for whatever the most opportune moment would happen to be. And this, because of the rule of drama, happened to be the most opportune moment, made, made even more opportune by the sudden and random emergence of an eagle, um, which of course he <laughs> yeah. couldn't overlook. Uh, so like the like elections, like, this is all world building that I wish the show had done. Because every time I'm like using any single sentence about it, it's more world building than the show does. My assumption <laughs> would be that the like elections are not commonplace for monarchs. It was a special thing that happened because the king was deposed for his unpopularity. Once they decided upon his successor, the rules of succession by a monarchy just operate. But obviously, the queen being very unpopular, Farazan is waiting until he has sufficient public support to openly challenge her. Because he seemingly has a claim of his own, though I don't think the show has established that he's related to the king, so that wouldn't really work. But assuming that he is and does, he it's just that this is the moment he chose. Yeah, yeah oh, he and Muriel are cousins. Yeah. cousins yes, um, which I don't know how that works with a like a line of succession. Because so mm. the show seems to be treating it as though he is her <clears> political <throat> opponent and nothing more. And again, prior to this episode, the show didn't even treat him as though he was her political opponent. No, like if, uh, if, it, if it was a case of like two, um, two people who are viable options for succeeding the now dead king, then that should have been made clear from the start. And maybe there could have actually been some kind of um, political back and forth between the two of them where they try and gain support and ultimately Farazon wins because, I mean, eventually because Eagle. But, you know, if, if he does something that maybe means that he's able to beat Muriel, whereas the way that that it goes down in the show is it's going to be Muriel because it just kind of is, and then Farazon wins because Eagle. Yeah. Aren't, aren't they married in the show? No, not? not yet. Um, okay. like, I, I, they might do that in future because, like, yeah, canonically, Farazon takes power and forces Muriel to marry him. Um, yeah. It was like, because it's normally I, I forbidden thought, okay. it's cousin marriage. Like, I, 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 I thought she called him husband at one point, but I might be misremembering that from I something else. I don't think so. I could be wrong. Yeah. I don't remember it, though. They've only spoken to each other in one scene prior to this episode. So are they gonna, yeah, um, okay. are they going to say the eagle was truly random, or are they going to try and argue he did some shenanigans? Farazan summoned. Whoa! Me. Don't spoil no spoilers. <laughs> no, I've already the, the eagle rags. The eagle got mentioned like five times already. I don't know if you missed it. <laughs> no, all they no none no spoilers. It's been. I mean, it shouldn't rags. be random because so it eagles... hasn't. Shut up! It that was is, on screen as this well. This is dramatic. This is dramatic. No, it's only Rex, Rex the eagle that's, is on screen. No, that's yeah, we just screen. saw it on screen. No, that's a chicken in the market. We're back in Peller gear. All right? <laughs> this is not oh, dramatic. God, You're ruining the drama that the show is trying to create. Where oh, the show does that itself. <laughs> We've been discussing all of the drama. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is madness. Eagles are supposed to be able to speak in this world. Like, that, they are fully mm, sentient yeah. and they have language. So it should be able to turn up and say, oh. no, no, like Farazan walks up and says, oh, it must be choosing me. And the eagle should be able to say, fuck you, fuck no, I'm you. not. Um, I mean, it's, yeah, it's quite clear the on the eagle's like. body language that it's, not, it's, quite, it's quite clear on the eagle's body language that it, it does not approve of uh, Farazan. But, you know, it's... Yeah, it why why is it that every single things. person misunderstands that, though? Like, they're retarded. They don't know nothing <laughs> about eagles. <laughs> Wait, they're all retarded. It always happens in these fucking shows. Everyone's retarded. Rex is currently fuming oh. that we're already talking about this. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's great. <laughs> wow, he just got character assassinated. Did you see it live in person? Yeah. 
There's so many fucking. There's so many problems with the eagle. I mean, do we want to? Are we? Are we on the eagle now? Or have we skipped? Have we broken? The <laughs> well, no, we we still got like the whole scene the to play out. Well, though. yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have. Well, we I mean we have the whole thing about the people yelling at her, and she gives this big speech and everything, and and we can get into it if you want, or we could just move on to the fucking eagle. Wow, I feel unassassinated because back. we have the oh pollen. The, the writers are all we over the, the place with this one. And then the, she says a thing, and stuff happens, and everyone's man, angry. And then a bird shows mad. up. Big the plant needs mad. to be mentioned. I think the, the plant needs, needs, needs to be. We have to talk you about the plant here. Right? Yeah, the, the plant is actually Not important. A, we need a tire. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I quick this recap. Bullshit. She walks up to be coronated. I guess someone says she's queen of lies, and someone oh, else says true. that she's unfit to rule. Why? And then she says a bunch of stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, we could go in. Uh, we could, uh, the grief of Numenor is sacred to me. Your pain, a prayer within these walls. I hear your sorrow and your anger. I share it. We have bloodied and been bloodied, but know this will find our course. Um, should there be another amongst us who feels moved to speak, firstly, ask yourself this for whom do you cry out? For those who've already buried for your kingdom or for yourself? And then Iarian's in the back of the room. <laughs> she was she waiting for a still door. <laughs> And then she reveals the palantir, <gasps> and she like drops it, or th she drops it, I think, yeah. and it just yeah. she she, she says that the, the queen is taking counsel from this like elven artifact or whatever. Yeah, yeah, the queen is but... taking counsel from it, and and this yeah, elf stone the elf is your queen. Is your queen. Yeah. Uh, and Elendil's and like, what the fuck? Up. Shut the fuck up, silence, little girl. She throws it down the stairs. <laughs> You uh, she throws it down the stairs oh, and it flop out of her hand. It's like yeah, it's really anticlimactic. She's real evil as well. She's yeah, she does it on purpose like, too. Sinister. But she also means she it is. She does come she didn't even quite consider evil. in the scene. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, which means she didn't even she didn't even consider not doing this after hearing that the queen basically tried to, not basically she did try to save her brother and got blinded for it and she's like no no care i just find it so bizarre that like so little of the conversation has been about dude like an entire portion of middle earth has been transformed into a desolate wasteland by orbs <laughs> oh yeah. sure yeah. yeah super yeah. evil monsters yeah. running around you guys are all mad <laughs> like, ugh, like <laughs> lame yeah like the story bro unfortunately galadriel was correct <laughs> like she was <laughs> she actually did turn out to be right yeah just like, don't talk Arian about the halbrand theme. stuff avoid that Aaron in this scene is like fully uh, Team Farazon, yeah. uh, which means oh, that damn. essentially what happened off screen, this is why I was confused the first time I saw it, because she has connected the dots of like, um, I guess, flooding of Numenor, vision in the Palantir, question mark, did she actually use it and see that? And then connect the dots herself of, oh, okay, so that's why Muriel went to Middle Earth. I think that's what we're meant to get from it, which I don't I, think I don't that's know. intuitive. I thought she just said that that's what we're meant to get she from knew it. from I've... the king that they they were using it to like decide shit, her and her dad. The king that they yeah, proposed I, I think to doing exactly this sort of thing before yeah. choosing yeah. his daughter to succeed him, which they just, uh, yeah. And I think, I think she's just big mad at it. Muriel for getting Isildur killed, like she's just, she's yeah. just big mad, but, she's gonna support our so, person. Yeah, so she's she's very pissed off that, that her brother is, is dead at this point, essentially, yeah. which is what is meant to inform her actions. But again, I'm kind of inventing a scene that might have taken place off screen, and it would line up here possibly better than what the writers have actually done, um, is that <laughs> Aarian presented the Palantir to Farazon off screen, and he knew what it was and was like, oh, fucking hell, I know what I know exactly what's happened. She's used this oh, yeah. thing. This and the basically, thing after. this is what they yeah. can use to grab power or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and he's kind of worked everything out and then told Aarian, okay, you need to say, this is what you need to say. That's so Aarian has, yeah, so Aarian has no idea about the, the flooding of Numenor. Aarian never used the Palantir. She just spoke to Farazon and Farazon told her to do this because it would yeah. then lead to him gaining power. That's possible, that, but that's not in the show. That actual part, I mean, this plan, which has to come off perfectly, otherwise it completely fails, is that... They're trying to force the queen into accepting ownership of it. But yeah. if the queen yeah. at any point says, no, nah, it's not mine, or she knows that it can't actually be What's destroyed that? because you can't destroy a Palantir, then this yeah. entire thing doesn't work. What if which you makes dropped it, it into yeah, the risky. ocean? What if you gave it to security <laughs> and, and he dropped it in the ocean? What if, what if when he says, this is lies, the queen would never use such elf tools, blah, 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 setting her up to be like, no, 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 no. If she just instead said, you know why I'm True. blind? 
I fucking oh. was desperately tearing through. You know, like, basically just ignore this attempt at being insane from these people. Yeah. Just start talking about why she's a really great ruler, what happened, and the thingy, the mistrust, blah, blah, blah. And then be like, I don't know what that ball is. Someone grab it. And, and then they go, wait, how do you know it's a ball? It's like, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I can hear it. I, I assume. I assume. I it. It. She has the perfect excuse in this scenario. She's like, I cannot be getting visions from this stone. I am fucking blind. Like, <laughs> you, what am I supposed that, to be doing? That might work on fifty yeah. percent of the audience. The other half are like, I don't think that's how yeah. visions work. <laughs> I think that you can yeah. see them without eyes. <laughs> it's clearly magic. You can just still see it. Yeah, yeah. this is obviously magic. <laughs> Um, imagine, imagine the ball fucking just shattered when it dropped. She dropped it on the stairs. Like, <laughs> yeah, they didn't know that unless they tested it out on progressively more and more stairs so that they knew. Oh. Um. Okay. It's, yeah. It's so a, it's a leap as well. Just very quickly, it's, it's a leap for everyone to assume it's an elf stone. You have no like, idea what's going most on. Of these people have never it seen it. Like yeah. an elf that was, so that, that was that's why I was an thinking elf stone. Well, it's a spooky yeah. orb. It's clearly an elf-made thing. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm willing to believe it's that something he would I don't have, understand. He definitely would have <laughs> coached her after she told him about finding it. But like yeah. the the people in this room, they they just they're just going with the flow. They don't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this is what, yeah. what's about to happen. Like I, I, I don't know if you want to go through the the what happened to the Lendl here. We have to. It's so it's so it's, it was so funny. Uh, yeah. Confusing. All right, so. Uh, Arian's like, yeah, Palantir, the queen's taking counsel from it, and it's it's elf bullshit. And your real queen's this elf orb, and oh. then Farazan says, no, that's lies. The Numenor's true ruler would never take counsel from an elvish artifact. Uh, and so he says that it should be destroyed. And when he says this, uh, the queen was Muriel's... like, "Phew, crisis averted." Oh, I'm yeah, so glad I have Farazan. <laughs> yeah, what he'll make a great advisor. <laughs> to me when I'm queen. Uh, actually, she says, no, don't destroy it. It's hers, and they need it. That's the <laughs> worst um, fucking thing to say is we need it. It's like, don't, don't, don't. don't. <laughs> yeah, don't say it's it like ours. that, you idiot. Uh, uh, oh, God. Elendil then reaches down to grab the Palantir, and it, like, shocks <laughs> him, him across the room. flying back across the room. <laughs> I don't know why. If anything, Elendil was yeah. the one who was trying to like protect it at her orders. Yep. So I have no clue why it acted aggressively. The or was angry it. from being dropped, so it's just gonna shock the first person. Yeah, the first person. <laughs> <grabbed Yeah>. it. <laughs> it would it would have been way funnier if when he grabbed it, it backed him off and just goes. <laughs> like, like, wait, what? <laughs> what? Why did it make this sound? Yes, is that him? Uh, <laughs> it's like the. The part of this I like, and then part of it I don't. Is it obviously, it, it throwing him across the room that then reveals to the crowd that oh, it's elven bullshit, and then they get very angry. Like that's yeah, the yeah. reason why it happens. There is, is it no one in the crowd is just like even I don't know what that means. Elven sorcery, <laughs> <laughs> elf sorcery. Oh. Yeah, they're like oh, it's elven oh. sorcery. But magic. Like, the part of it that I do like, which is I think very small, is that um, Muriel says we need it. And she hasn't actually given Elendil an order, but he is so like in her corner and devoted to her that he he just immediately he just walks up to it, looks at it, and goes to grab it um, mm -hmm. to make sure that no one does anything bad to it, purely because Muriel has said we need it. So yeah. little character moment from him that I like, but I don't like what it leads to at all. <laughs> well, and also, like what would have happened if we've had, had like... it not exploded? What if it gave him a vision? How does the scene run then? I don't know. I wonder if he well, still got the vision. It, like in it's the, funny. The, it's funny you weird... should say that because he does get a vision from this. They talk about it in well, episode five. Just oh. gets a vision, not gets um, exploded. Spoilers. Oh, okay. So like that's what I'm saying um, is, is how does the scene run? If he again. if he grabs it to pick it up and then he goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and they're all like, Alan, <laughs> are you okay? And he's just like, oh. He just goes into a trance, his eyes roll back, yeah. and he's just spurts on the floor like <laughs> wow. Wow. He, he, he turns into the, the lady Tennessee chick from Acolyte and his, oh, his eyes are oh, no. black and his mouth extends <laughs> like the mummy. Stop Starts speaking shouting. in tongues and shit. Waldrig over and over again. Oh, no one knows what it means. Oh, <laughs> Save yeah. Waldrig! They start Waldrig. chanting Verizon, but he starts chanting Waldrig. And Lock everyone's like, balls. yeah, Waldrig. Lock balls. And Muriel falls down the stairs because it's funny. 
Um, yeah, so chaos <laughs> breaks out. It flumps on him. People are like, ah, elf mag elf sorcery, dark magic, murderer, the queen of lies, all that so sort of pandemonium. stuff. Well, pandemonium. Pandemonium throw throw takes hold. This is they not throw a fire at the there. queen. <laughs> yeah, one of them <laughs> throws out a fireball at her. because she's blind. It was blind, you know, get hurt, it's extra that money. guy's wanted to throw fire at her for years. And he was like, yes, <laughs> finally. Here yes. I go. And then he misses. <laughs> and he misses. <laughs> no. Also, we get another great be. example of Numenorian godsmanship. They won't let through oh, yeah. their captain, but there's like this yeah. random goober that get, just goes through and is about to fucking slap the queen or something. They're keeping well, back goes, a windmill. <laughs> ah, the, the royal queen like, slapper. Take, take my hand. He goes, he like, else... take my hand, take my hand. And then this she, woman. she takes someone else's hand, because obviously she can't see. <laughs> That's funny. And also, guard, why, would, why, why would he want to grab her into the fucking yeah. mess of people? Like, what? <laughs> I don't know. What? Why? <laughs> because he's not very competent as a character. Hmm. Um, I, 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 all right. I, I feel like it's got to be pointed out, because so many, so many things do this. Like, Farazon is there, like, evil smiling what if someone just <laughs> noticed that and was like dude i think he set this shit up like to he'll be like yeah, they'll never power. believe you he'll say they'll never believe you it doesn't matter i was, I was just thinking you. of a joke i heard this morning you know <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah um, i was just thinking of an episode of fucking, this is really yeah, you wouldn't get it <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the reverend guy is the one that points it out. And then Farrell's like, no, you were evil. Smart. I saw you doing it, actually. Not me. Yeah, so yeah. you're the one who's behind all of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. And then we get yeah. the best scene of the episode. He's like, yeah, what type of sandals do frogs wear? Open toed. Ah, ah. They won't <laughs> believe me. So, um, I'm sorry. Uh, so, <laughs> Farazan okay. and. Okay, so this big ass huge fucking eagle shows up. Um, Hell yeah! Uh, I don't. Uh, yep. So I, well, guess, yep. I you know we we've discussed it's, it a little bit. It's I a mean, good omen. Why they told us omen. so? I don't know why the eagle <laughs> showed up. I didn't even know that eagles were here. Do you think they'll say I don't Sauron know. did it? Like uh, sure. Uh, why not? The season down the why line. Why not? Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was actually the Sauron eagle is Sauron. Was, yeah. Anyway, the eagle favors Farazan, I guess, because it lands it at the balcony doesn't. and he walks. He's he walks out to it. Eagle. But it landed during. It landed the during chaos. Chaos coronation. Yeah, yeah, but. But he, he then, was close to it. He was close yeah, but then to like it, Lord... people don't like Muriel now because the Palantir and the Elf sorcery. Just like, the crowd goes aside, but it's Farazan. Everyone goes quiet to appreciate the, the eagle. I just wanted to hear it go like, "What's going on?" <laughs> did someone yeah. had something hello <laughs> yeah, did everyone really die one. but like when, when our person walks up to it it like screams and like it's clearly want him to fuck off <laughs> yeah. it, it, it didn't get too annoyed so everyone's like oh okay. i don't know what it's thinking. Thinking. Oh, 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 oh. well yeah, yeah it was just it, some I random thought... guy to walk up and be like it's yes and me farah's on a derrick farah's on a derrick yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it seems like it basically was just because that one guy who was on his side just started chanting, and then everyone's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess that means... Belsagar. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, Belsagar is like, for us. And, and then the eagle screams at the people, no, you fucking retards. <laughs> and that's the how you bit... become king of Numenor, I guess. Yeah. Welcome to the main bit of this that just drove me fucking the... nuts is, like, if you forget knowledge of the Lord of the Rings, and you forget knowledge of the books, and you're just watching this as a TV show... What meaning do eagles have in this setting? You saw there were there were eagles in the in the Morgoth battle in season one flashback. There was a mm -hmm. vague mention of an emblem of an eagle being worn to a coronation in this episode. Muriel wore the image of an eagle to her coronation, and then suddenly there's a giant eagle, and yeah. the eagle chooses who wins. I have no idea why that audio played, by the way. I don't know what the fuck has happened. <laughs> Yeah, that's I don't okay. think it should Here's be like, um, super specific, specific to the Numenorians, but in general they're just like, you know, really cool or whatever. Like, people like them. <laughs> I don't yeah, think but I mean, like, super significant... Uh, well, because, um, like, the, the sea being, you know, always right, that is a thing that is culturally present in Numenorian culture, so, yeah. like, the sea will do a thing and oh, it was the sea that it put her in my path, whatever. Eagles... We haven't seen that at all. They don't have eagle mm. emblems in Numenor. It doesn't. It's not in their architecture. They don't 
It's not a, a, like figure of speech that they use. Eagles and Numenor don't have anything to do with the each other. The slow eagle to splits the boulder. <laughs> Ooh. Numenor, Numenor is so weird. They're like, we are the sea folk. Anyway, we have psychic connection to our horses, and eagles are good omens. It's like, why not a yes. fucking goldfish? Yes. 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 Right. It's just a better slogan. <laughs> yes, I guess so. They're just a bunch of traits and attributes that don't seem to be culturally connected. Um, yeah. Though technically, that's not like necessarily an issue. A big civilization can have all sorts of stuff going on. It just feels sure. like they just get thrown in right before yeah, they're it'd be needed. Nice if we had more. Yeah. Yeah. That's something the yeah, show they, likes to do they anyway. They episode. just they set set something up like two one or two scenes ago, and then they just pull the trigger and he's like, "See, we just like in the last episode, oh, like and uh, it was like." Oh, we're not gonna go through this desert, and then it's like, oh, I guess we have to go through this desert. Two minutes later, it's like, oh, oh okay. Well, this episode's Likewise. another very good example. It's like you have a scene earlier when Farazin says eagles turning up is a really good thing, and then of course he says mm -hmm. that because the eagle has to turn up to it's be a really good thing. That's really. Oh, good. I wonder what what's gonna happen about? in what the if it was a crocodile that showed up. <laughs> then what would you do, Farazin? Yo, like, like, I, I am the wall. so tired. Holy <laughs> fuck, I am tired right now. <laughs> I guess she's queen, but fuck, I need a nap. I need a nap. How did I get in oh, here? Sorry, anybody, <sighs> anybody who's interested, I have gold in my mouth. Here, come and get it. <laughs> Just, come on. You, you have to pick it up with your mouth, though. I brought shells, so you guys yeah. like those. Come on. Get, um, get okay. Gold. So Farazan's king, I guess. Sure, yeah. why not? <sighs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know what to shoot. So, what do like, people nothing want? made sense, but sure. Like, the eagle so, showed like, up, and now Farazan's king. I so awful. That this is meant to be essentially the first thing that kicks off, like, the fall of Numenor. So how long has yeah. Numenor got left before it gets destroyed if this gets five seasons? Do it. Two episodes? <laughs> two more episodes? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I, I wonder, but I mean, I don't know. I, I suppose I'm curious how how long are they going to keep using Numenor before they destroy it? Yeah, well, they are just rushing happen. through I, this so quickly. Like I, prior to season two, I was expecting season two to be dealing with the the fallout from the rings, maybe end with the forging of the dwarven rings, uh -huh. and have the attack on Eregion in in as like the big yeah. uh, climax. And then maybe you deal with the fall of Numenor, you build up the Farazan conflict in season three. But no, they are doing, they they do basically everything that I just said, apart from the battle, in episode three of season two. Yeah, which seems mm. crazy. It's insane, yeah. Like, yeah. The timeline like, I, is I, ha I have no idea when the fall of Numenor is actually going to be like... Well, and plus, they're not exactly like... After the, the summer of they're Numenor. Not, they're not very adherent <laughs> to the lore anyway, so like it could happen yeah, whenever even that's then, like, Yeah, it could happen the most natural time. way for the story to proceed, which is it's semi in, in adherence with the lore, is that you know, Sauron is present for the, the attack on Eregion, then the Numenorians ride in and save the day, capture Sauron, Sauron is taken mm -hmm. back to Numenor to corrupt it, and then it falls. Which That's is, what roughly speaking, be. what's supposed to happen. But it's taken yeah. the unusual route of anticipating all of that by basically making Numenor fully corrupted before it's had anything to do with him. Like, Farazin yeah. is just a dick without any influence. <laughs> so it's not going to be a huge shock if he turns out to be more of a dick in the next season. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, like, if they actually follow that timeline, I imagine it's going to happen at the end of season three. But who the fuck knows? Like, it could happen at any point. Well, well uh, that was fun. Final scene. No, we're not one, done yet. We got one last scene. Yeah. One yeah. last final scene. So, back at Eregion, at the forge, King Durin has decided off screen to accept the Elvish <laughs> offer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. That cliffhanger from um, earlier. I thought that yeah. would be like an insanely important thing for him no. and Durin to discuss, but no. I guess not. And instead, we're just here after the decision has been made and they've yeah, shown Yeah, we up. don't want to deal with that. <laughs> Holy fuck, what a travesty in writing this show is. <laughs> yeah. These things just, these insanely important conversations we need to hear are just done off screen. And now here we are, plot happening. Yeah. Um, By the way, how many, how many, how many rings are there about to make here? Seven. 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 
That's all the and seven already. A, yeah. That seems not enough mithril for all the seven. Yeah, th it's a smaller nugget than they used for the free elven. Nah, but it'll, it'll be fine because Sauron's be making it evilness. He's making it oh, yeah. evil. Oh, yes. to mm. also, because, because also, this I time... guess this is what we are to conclude. Then, like he 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 yep. didn't grab, even though we absolutely would have. Like the, like he grabs it and then puts his evil in it and then drops yeah. it. So if Kellebrimbor yep. just went, nah, bro, I got it. That would have yeah. Been <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's funny because <laughs> he, he, he grabbed the Mithril in season one as well. Like he, he yeah, had but the, grabbed that one, yeah. Well. yeah, but hold up, hold up. The difference is there was no evil music playing when you did it the last time. <laughs> oh my god, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, so that is less evil. Wah, wah, no wah, evil wah. Yeah. This so means that the, count. this means this means that the moon runes are evil. Oh yeah. no. I guess so, yeah. yeah. Because he makes yeah. Ithil, Ithildin, which is, which eventually becomes the door of Moria, uh, yeah. no, which wait, means wait, the wait. door of Moria <laughs> is evil. <laughs> no, you you're, you're spoiling the reveal. That's such an awful. Scene. No, 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 no. He, he literally says the name it. of it when in in the previous episode he says the oh, word true, Ithildin. True, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. So, yes, yeah, so all these important things that we're, we're, we have liked to hear them talk about that that's that happened. Here's Mithril. Go ahead. I think yeah, we I think they set up very yeah this the the setting up the dwarf rings and then getting them made here is just it's just so fast. It's crazy that the episode ended with this. I was like, oh holy shit! Yeah. I got whiplash. I'm like oh yeah, all right. Well, it's like an episode left, one where. It's like an episode one where they just all wear the rings already. It's like oh wow, that already happened. Cool. Mm -hmm. And also. I guess. If you are planning to give dwarven rings to all of the dwarf lords, and there are seven, and only one of them is present from Khazad Doom, mm -hmm. shouldn't you sh like assemble the rest to come and get them? Are they each they're, they're, going know, they're quite to, far away? Are they going to get spread out? Like he's like, hey, you, we're going to give them all to you. Make sure these get divvied up fairly for us, okay? Yeah. Well, mean, that would the actual more, it was uh, it was Sauron who gave them out to the actual dwarves, but you know. Yeah, yeah, that would require that they we'll... ha that they've set up multiple dwarven kingdoms, which I, I they've mm -hmm. they've mentioned. <laughs> Disa mentioned that there were other dwarf others. lords, and there were other. We were going to rule this mountain and all others. Implication being that there's multiple dwarven realms, but the show has not yeah. given us anything. There are no characters. We don't know what the state of their lives are like. If they are also undergoing similar catastrophes where they're starving, we have absolutely no idea. So basically, what's happened here is. Uh, King Durin of Khazad-dûm has decided, let's make seven dwarf rings, even though I don't <laughs> actually know if anyone else needs one. Or wants one, <laughs> or what they think about this, you know, collaboration. We have no idea, yeah. They just come up to the other guys like, hey, our mountain was dying, we made you rings yeah. also. And they're like, what do you mean what? your mountain was dying? Did you yeah, need what, help? What, what deal like, got, got... Well, that's another thing. Anatar's why, why... back with a brand new creation. If Durin the yeah, third were... is such a Cunt. Why wouldn't he try to deal with his own dwarven brethren to save the mine? The save Casa Doom first. Yeah. Hey, bring message to all the other uh, dwarven <laughs> lords. They can probably help us yeah. in some way. They probably even have more food for us. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I don't know if it specified the exact locations of the dwarven lords, like in the actual lore, where where they're located. Well, I can think of like you know several places, but yeah. Not that that's a shock, but I they make their way to this show pretty fucking quickly. <laughs> yeah. But what's the letter like that King Durin sends? That's like travel thousands of miles because I've got a I've got ring rings. for you. Yeah. I got some swag for most, you. Most of them would be like fairly close. There are a few that would be super far away, depending on like where exactly they are to be sent. Uh, but most of them would be in the like you know somewhat somewhat close to uh, Casa Doom. Well, because the areas that I'm thinking of that are not close to Casa Doom. Is you've got the is it the Blue Mountains, which is near Eregion, sorry, near Linden. You've yes, got that's the Iron Hill. In Linden. Yeah. Okay. Are there dwarves there at this point, or is that just a silly I question? I don't know if they're there. The, the okay. dwarves Ooh, that move no. too, they're from Casa Doom later. But I don't okay. know if there were dwarves there for, to begin with or not. And then you've got the Iron Hills, which is where Dane is from in The Hobbit. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then you've got obviously Erebor, which I'm gonna guess is not populated by dwarves at this point in time. Yeah, there's also dwarves to the to the north of here at this point, I think, uh, around the, the area of Gundabad. But um, okay, yeah, I I think they're still there at this point. I don't think the dwarves have taken it over yet. It should be. Uh, and then there's also dwarves like way far to the east, like super super far away. Uh, they're called the Orukarni dwarves. 
that lives in a big mountain chain over there. So I, I don't know exactly like where they're all supposed to be sent. Yeah, and but like if that's is that is that because it just isn't specified in the source material? No, I, well, think I don't it is know specified. if it is. Oh, okay. I think it is. Like I, I just don't remember. Fair enough. Um, because I mean, yeah, we, we, honestly, whether it is or isn't, like they the showrunners could have just made it be somewhere that isn't lore accurate, but somewhere that yeah. at least you know lines up. Maybe they're all in the Misty Mountains, but in different mountains, you know, up and down the the, the mountain range, but they don't do anything. It's just, well, I guess there must be some other dwarves somewhere, somewhere around six other kingdoms, and mm -hmm. um, I'll I'll make rings for them that they probably, well, rings for them that they don't need. Like, why would I think that they do? I mean, it, I guess you could technically give them to, like, minor lords as well, right? But uh, who knows? I, I'm expecting that that will probably end up happening, but again, we haven't had any world building for yeah, anything yeah. dwarf-related outside of Castle <laughs> Doom. Yeah, you just give one to D's, I went off. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Rings of power, yeah. Yay. Episode three, the eagle and the scepter, and uh, yeah, pretty good. Oh, pretty like good. Five out of ten. Yeah, five That's out cool. of ten, maybe six. <laughs> five or six <laughs> out of ten. Oh boy, what now? Episode four. Episode four. Episode four. four Eldest. Oh. <laughs> Boy, yay! Fucking I sure do love, uh, sure do love Rings of Power episode four, eldest. Um, I think uh, this God. might be the worst episode in the fucking entire series. I, yes, I think so the I worst agree. episode is episode five, honestly. I, I haven't seen five yet. So I haven't five I, yet. Uh, no. Boy, it gives me something to look <laughs> yeah. forward to, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Until this point, I think this episode is the worst. Sure, I would agree with that. I think but, uh, um... episode five. <laughs> The lads on Open Bar said the next one, five, is the best episode of both seasons. Really? Well, they did yeah, say that. Fun. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm I, still, uh, I, I, I was guess not we can't inclined why, to agree, and, but... I, I think it's the worst oh, one of this season. They just felt like it was the least <laughs> damaging. That's the scale they're going with. Oh, of course I know, I know oh. they're not saying it's good. I'm just... I, thought, <laughs> I, thought this I loved it. That's I, what I heard. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 to I, heard that story again. Again. Awful. I would probably argue that it's one of the most damaging, but I will <sighs> save that for when, when we do we it. Yeah, next about week. It, yeah. Is that next week or is it two weeks? That'll be next it... week. Next week, okay, uh, yeah, because yeah. next week is five and five and six will be out, so that'll be five and six. Yes, yep. yeah, I don't know how much rings of power my body can take. Well, you know, you only <laughs> got three weak metal swords, and then oh, and Agatha starts this week. Ooh, that's, well, that's, not, that's, <laughs> that's not on my docket. <laughs> it was already <laughs> all along. What was um... her all along? She didn't do anything. Wanda did it all. <laughs> she didn't they, they do didn't anything. change the title again to something even more retarded. They like call it, it was... Agatha All Along now because that's the name of the song that okay. everybody knows about. Even though, even though it's, again, yeah. she didn't do anything. What did she do all along? Wanda was the one who know. created the hex. She's it's the one the, who did all the mind control. The, the, the <laughs> like body lines. She's like, what do you mean it was you all along? You didn't do anything. <laughs> you didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In time. Oh fuck! Good and of course, Lord. it's particularly yeah. awkward considering that Wanda trapped her in a mind prison for what, seemingly years. <laughs> like, my goodness! <clears throat> oh, oh really boy. Anyway, there, there was another name they had for the show that was even more stupid. But that, I will. Oh, they, they had a whole bunch of them. Like, yep. <laughs> a lot of a lot of them. <laughs> oh god. Mm-hmm. Now, something that uh, some of you might not have, uh, it might not have entered into your minds, because it didn't, it didn't actually for me when I first watched episode three. Uh, episode three does not have Galadriel in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we, did, we did mention that before. Yeah, we, we discussed yeah, that, right? We, 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 so, we did. Yeah, so I now, think Rax was one at that point. Uh, loser. So now we <laughs> have to, I, I have to mention it because the first thing we get to see in episode four is we're right back to Galadriel. Hooray. Um, now, and uh, we're in Linden right now, near the Greyhaven boat places. Uh, we sure are. Uh, Aregion is just under 150 leagues from Linden, yes. I think he says. Yes. <laughs> so that's weird that they give an actual distance. I'm sure that will um, fuck them over later. But oh, I gave that a quick Google. Fucks them over as soon I gave as that they a say quick it. Google. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Uh, that was basically 
where I got all of the uh, numbers that I went through last oh, okay. time of, of travel time. So you're talking, if you're running nonstop, you're talking maybe three days to get there. And if you're you riding running, a horse, not... why would you? Why would you run between that well, kind I of just, a distance? That's, that's no, insane. I think I, that's a good, good yeah, I'm metric. I'm just saying that for just a point of point, the, point, point of reference. Work. And if you were to ride a horse like a like a messenger might, um, then you're talking you're getting that done in 22 hours if you're not stopping, which the horses in Middle Earth apparently do not stop. So uh, yeah, which means the the, the trans stop coming. the transmission of information between Linden and Eregion should take at most three days because. One day to get there, one day to get back, and about a day of, you know, leeway. Well, yeah, that's that? way faster than what I Linda perceived it to be. Yeah, so I but, figured it was about a week because of the distance involved. But now, no, I mean, like even with the it. numbers that we have, like I, I, I guess it I has to be way metrics. longer. Yeah, because Wait, it, I, I, when it, yeah. I checked, because I went with like thirty miles a day, and apparently it's like four hundred fifty miles. Yes, but we have seen. Uh, because what we this this is why it's a problem is um at the end of season one oh you Galadriel mean, you mean for it horse. to make sense they have to travel that fast or no what I'm saying is that based on the information we have they do sorry they can travel that fast and because they can travel that fast right. the timelines don't line up um because uh, end of season one Galadriel rides nonstop to get from the Southlands to um Eregion, which means that that's possible because it just is even though horses can't do that obviously. Um, which means that horses can ride nonstop. And the distance that we get is about 450 miles, 150 leagues, 450 miles. Um, to, to do that nonstop on a horse, not running at full pelt, is you can do that in a day. Doesn't this season it, it, begin by establishing that? Like the first shot of season two is Galadriel chasing Elrond from Eregion no, to Lindon in a day. That was, it, it, that again, was after two weeks of travel we... with day and nights where she was chasing. <laughs> at nighttime, she would sleep grab at him and he would sleep walk away. Yeah, so. Exactly. Like, why, why are we accepting the show's insane logic of travel time? Well, because we're using its own rules against it, basically. Just, well, <laughs> nothing is consistent because if she truly chased Elrond out of Linden, or rather to Linden, sorry, then um, they couldn't have stopped, right? Because she would have got him. Yeah. Yeah, I would rather yeah, well, just I say, like, yeah. this is mm -hmm. bullshit and the show is lying to us. Oh, it is. But uh, again, if we, were, <laughs> if we use the rules that it's laying out for itself, we can actually work out where the problem I guess, is. but I'd rather not use insane logic. Like... <laughs> <laughs> It, it fucks with my brain to do that. It, fair enough. Because I but, because uh, I did not go with their logic. I I <laughs> yeah. used real oh, logic, yeah. and but I still put something on top because this is a tipsy turvy world, and it's still longer, way longer. Like so did you but, did you come out in about a week, metal? Because that's what I was fifteen days to to get from <laughs> Linden to Oregon. That's with the metrics with ten miles on top. They would do a day. Uh, how many hours a day do you travel and like sleep and shit? I, I I just I just went with the I just went with the metric, so I I, I checked how much can an average human that's not super obese and kind of fit can do in like a day, and it's like oh it's like 19 miles, and then it's like oh I'm gonna put yeah, 10 cool. miles on top of this or 11, so we have 30 because they're like fantasy creature people, and then it was like oh wait but those are elves how how fast can elves go and it's like oh wait in the in the trilogy El uh, the, the Legolas and, and Aragorn, they're actually kind of the same-ish. And then I Google quickly, and it's like, oh, they're apparently they go about the same from what I... That's like quick Google searches. Yeah, so but like, okay, so like I put a superhuman, the... though. He's not the regular human. True. Yeah. yeah so in name. any case, that's why I put like 11 <laughs> miles on top of the 19 miles that I yeah, yeah, yeah. saw. And then still we have like 15 days they need to go the shortest way they tell us they might have. Yeah, so, yeah. so just and to be clear, like running... For... Running that kind of distance, uh, or riding that kind of distance nonstop, is that that's not happening. Oh, Traveling of course that not. <laughs> kind of distance, running running four hundred and fifty miles, is difficult. That is not something that anyone can just kind of do. Um, which means that yeah, it would absolutely take time to do. But again, given that we have seen that the elves can travel without stopping, oh yeah, which I think is like that's I don't really have a problem with that. And they don't take uh, any supplies with them. They don't have any food, which I don't no. know if that was an oversight or if we're yeah, they don't have anything like that. They don't have camp supplies, which means they are nope. running day and night they to get to a regular because yeah. they are highly motivated to get there in time. It's just so, funny because no, it, it, I went this direction with the other direction, and it just doesn't work in either way. <laughs> but basically, like the the end of my calculation here is that if we're going to say it takes them just over three days to get there, which is assuming that they're running um, 
a mile every 10 minutes, which is a pretty reasonable pace. It's about average pace for a human. I figure elves would be quicker, but you know, they're going through different terrains. So better endurance, if you right? extrapolate, yeah, they'd have better endurance, mm -hmm. so they're not going to slow down. So I figure let's call it four days. This means that um, we're about three days after the rings have been forged at this point. Because the rings get forged, they ride a day nonstop to get to Linden. Um, Gilgalad is like, oh shit, Halbrand is Sauron, and he sends his letter well, it's later that evening, but you know, it would be Ugh. immediately. Um, he then expects people, it to get there in about a day. Like everyone, you know, he, it's, it's, it's painful. It's always yeah, he painful. just sends like two guys. So that so he would expect the letter to arrive the following day, or, or you know, 24 hours time. He would then expect a response about 24 hours after that. And if that response is later than a day, maybe, he's going to be like, okay, something's up, Galadriel Elrond, go see what's up. Which means that right now, them leaving to go back to Eregion is at most three, four days after the forging of the Elven Rings. The Elven Rings? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what an Elven Ring is. Oh, oh, finally, oh, we know to watch Rings of Power to figure it out, finally. Yeah. Also going to link a very detailed map of Elrondor oh. if anyone wants to check on that later on. Just to have it. But yeah. What if though? What if it's not an open world? Like, what if you just get to the end of the road in Lindon and hold X, and then you just appear wherever you're supposed <laughs> That's to be? That's where the ice wall is—the ice wall that holds all the water, so it doesn't fall off the edge. Oh. You can't go there because mm -hmm. of the U.S. Navy uh, makes sure that you can't go and see it. So. But yeah. In conclusion, they give us more references on how to uh, show things, and it just still doesn't work. That's, mm. uh, hmm. Yeah, and um, again, the only question mark that we have at this point is how long does it actually take to forge the rings? Um, but the the time because the the two unaccounted for periods of time that we have because we know how long it takes to get from Linda to Eregion and vice versa. We know how long it takes Sauron to get from Eregion to the Southlands and vice versa, which he has done. Uh, which means that um, unless Galadriel and Elrond are delayed by somewhere around a month in getting to Eregion. The timelines don't line up and because i don't know what happens in episode six i can't say that for certain but mm -hmm. something tells me they're not going to be delayed by a month because if the if if forging the elven rings and forging the dwarven rings if that took a year or something insane you still have the same amount of discrepancy because uh one of them happened before sauron left and the other one has to happen before galadriel arrives so either way there is still a discrepancy of about a month Oh, there we are. Is this? Yeah. My brain hurts. So yeah. basically, if, <laughs> if we if we use if we use the show metrics, it's a matter of days, tough, yeah. maybe a week or so. And if I go with what I tried, it's fifteen days. And oh god, I don't even I don't even know. If, I'm gonna fucking. Uh. If you, you yeah, your numbers make sense if you're an actual person who needs to sleep and eat. Um, and if you're not an elf, I guess. But yeah, based on what the show has told us, it's <laughs> it's quicker. Yeah, Long because they bigger. just don't stop, <laughs> which they obviously still should be doing. Yeah, we just don't do that in the show because I, I know what you're uh -huh. doing. But I know what you're getting at, of course. It's just fucking insane. This show is stupid. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. So, uh, Elrond and Galadriel are here. They're about to set off for uh, Aregion, uh, because. You know, there hasn't been any communication, and that's weird. And I guess we're, like, what's going on? Or something? Stuff's happening? I, I, stuff's happening. Man, Things are going on. like you're half <laughs> dead. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> like, I know it's rings no, of power, fine. but... I'm well, no, I mean, it's, the, it's just, the I just strongest summary would be, this is absolutely how... nuts. They've already just decided they're finally going to fucking leave this place where they mm -hmm. need to get there immediately yeah. <laughs> if Sauron is there, which they have full reason to think is not only a big possibility, but that is their, like, their weapons yep. maker that he's with that can corrupt and create WMD's equivalents. And they're like, hmm. It's been weeks. Well, mm. hell, you've seen how long it took for Gilgala just to send a message. Yep. At he least in a full day to just write it. Yeah, it, it took a full day to just write the message. I'll get around to it eventually. Whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Elves have no perception of time. We learned this in season one. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is so. This would makes the elven the messenger makes get to the? I mean, well, actually, in the first place, why go on foot? I don't think that's established. Take horses. You have horses. <laughs> no, horses are faster. Fucking don't be a moron. 
But like the <laughs> Elven messenger they did send, did he not mm. get to this destroyed bridge? Because I think we're there on the yes. screen anyway. I think that's they what the bridge, assuming. which is the fast route, he and did. the bridge is destroyed. But when he got to the destroyed bridge, did he not think, "Oh shit, this is a <laughs> massively important development that maybe the king should know about"? And given that I'm closer to home than I am to a region, it might be worth going back and letting people know. No, it was well, just a question. This, but we have no yeah, we fucking idea where he actually is at this point. Like, b because this this place does not exist. It, it shouldn't exist. It, it's but like, even... yeah, re regardless oh. of where it is, if it's if it's halfway or closer to Regin or Linden, there are two messengers who have gone together. For I, I don't really know why, but there are. Which means, yeah, he could have. One of them could have sent the other one back to tell Gilgalad. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I guess why that happened is because it wouldn't necessarily have helped because. Then they would have had this discussion of, oh, do we go through the spooky forest? They would have had that yeah. before getting to the bridge, I guess. Mm. Be because if, if we're going to go by the logic and they end up, like we know where they end up, they should be around the area of Bree at this time. Bree doesn't exist yet, but, you know, they should be around that area where the fucking massive gorge is with the bridge. Oh, and uh, also just to slide this in quickly. Another way that the timeline doesn't line up is if Galadriel is correct that Sauron blew up the bridge, <laughs> which, given given the way the rings work, I think we are supposed to believe that he did. He can't have left because so Sauron left Eregion prior to the rings being crafted, which means Sauron left Eregion before Galadriel and Elrond rode to Linden. If he blew up the bridge immediately and then went to Mordor, right. then they would already know that the bridge is gone. Mm -hmm. And we're which just means... granting that he can blow oh. up bridges. Yeah, 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 we're we're not that. With that assumption. <laughs> Well, I th Galadriel we told us, I'm, I'm going to go we... with what the show has told us. So <laughs> this means... What this Joe means... says he can blow up bridges, all right? Yeah. He's like she, a has a magic ring. she has oh, wait, a magic ring. They actually ring. show on the map where they are. They do? Yeah. Yeah, they show, like, they zoom in to the map where they are. Oh. I just noticed okay. on, on the screen. So that, yeah, I, I so... kind of want to see exactly where that is, because that tells us how yeah. far out of his way Sauron had to go. Mm. But... Yeah. I, uh, I think so he, it's he, about like where the Shire is, like uh, around that area somewhere. Is uh, where okay. the no, I I don't have anything to back this up with. I just heard about it, but from what I've heard from uh, like lore heads, uh, from third party sources, I guess from a friendo, uh, <laughs> apparently where this big big ass gorge is, there should just be a river or something. Like there shouldn't. There be should a, be nothing a, there. It should, it should just be, be like a, flat, flat yeah. Maybe there's a river at the bottom of the gorge. <laughs> oh, they no. both be there together. <laughs> It, just it should be like a small stream. It shouldn't trilogy. be a massive. No, it, no. Fuck it was no. a thousand years ago. Yes, in the Second Age, it was a massive stream. You even see the lake. There's a, the lake called like Ninuel, Ninuel or something, up to the. What? Sounds like a slur. Ninuel. Um, Ninuel. Hey, whoa! <laughs> what random like, was look how that, massive but... this fucking landmark is. This should be on every single map. Well, also, the, if, if you have a gorge exists. that big, it's insane. There's only one bridge. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that too. That was all That's the lightning. Enough. Also, I was going to say that about the timeline shenanigans. Uh, all the, <clears throat> all the defense of that would be is Sauron can do that remotely at any time. The that's insane. Uh, it is insane. It, yeah, that's un that's insane. <laughs> so Sauron just wins. <laughs> I, oh, I don't know if we are meant lightning. to that. But yeah. <laughs> Like, why go but, to all yeah, the trouble of doing what Sauron's about to do to the messengers if you can just smite people from heaven? <laughs> it's like yeah. the show's gonna really struggle with this all the way through. It's like the, the idea that he was dramatic. running around smashing all the individual mirrors in Moria to stop them working actually makes more sense and does less damage than the idea that Sauron is now capable of just manifesting evil at random points on the map at will. Mm -hmm. Because if he can do that, there's basically nothing he can't do, so he can't lose. Yeah, he can just I don't think he can deal with that. Why would he even he need any army at this point? He can just fucking. Yeah. There you go. That's where one. the the bridge is. Apparently. Oh, so that yeah. that looks close to Eregion. Then that that's closer to Eregion. It's right? it's, Which... it's like halfway in between. Okay. Yeah, because you see Mifflond over there. That's uh, yeah, that's yeah, uh, Linden. Because um, right so... after yeah, because right after he was healed, he headed off right to Mordor once the rings yeah. were made. So uh, he would have. That's one hell of a detour. Yeah, so basically, he can't have he can't have destroyed the bridge before because then Galadriel and Elrond would already know that the bridge is destroyed. Which means, if we say that he must have destroyed it afterwards, which means that he went to Mordor, got tortured by Adar, and then went and destroyed the bridge on his way back to Eregion. By which point, we're about a month ahead of the elves' plot, which means that they waited in Linden for a month before leaving for some reason. Remotely, did it remotely? I, 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 see, I see what it, it's or, actually. It's actually. Or he did it remotely. That's the only other possibility. <laughs> yeah, nice. So it, it's where, it's where the Brandywine Bridge is. 
<laughs> that, that's where that's where this bridge is apparently. He did that remotely. So we have we have uh, how to do stuff remotely as well. He's doing it all remotely. He's he's OP. I is guess so. I guess okay, let me. Is it ever implied that maybe this is just an effect of evil happening in Middle Earth that the bridge collapsed, like evil the mountain the bridge? Well, yeah, like the like the. Well, wouldn't that be the, worse? The tremors destroyed. The yeah the, the tremors yeah, destroyed the mountain light and so yeah. maybe the evilness just made the bridge collapse. That, that, that was that my read of the map sequence with the evil black tendrils coming out in the last episode. I think it yeah, was yeah. episode sorry there two episodes ago episode two. two, two yeah. Is that, that that's just like evil is just doing stuff and like whenever you come across anything in the world that's really inconvenient, you can do what Galadriel does and just say this must be the work of Sauron. No, and that's no what I would ever realize. ask how that could possibly yeah. be true, but it is. Three red lights well, in a row. Work of Sauron. Sauron. Stubbing my toe, is destroyed by evil because uh, basically, the I, like I won't spoil what ends up happening, but the reason why the bridge is destroyed is because he's diverting people another way. Um, which means that the the evil spreading destroyed the bridge and made there be something the other way that is evil, <laughs> which is uh, like uh, that's not happening by accident. Both of those are that, evil things, so it matches if it just does well, evil stuff. I can accept, if it makes sense logistically, which it doesn't, then I can accept that Sauron would voluntarily do both of those things. But just saying that, well, evil, so that means that Middle-earth is now the antagonist. True. I, I <laughs> <laughs> Someone just said as well. Like, for the Khazad Doom stuff, I, I see the point. I think that works. In this show, Middle-earth is the antagonist. I don't even think the Khazad Doom <laughs> stuff works, but they said uh, Sauron yeah. destroying the bridge was a one in a million shot. No way he's doing that again. <laughs> Just get that light in there. <laughs> no way, that shot that was one in a million. Uh, by the way, th this is the stuff. river that the uh, that the gorge is on. By the way, apparently. Oh, okay. The, there's not there's not cliffs <laughs> oh, over okay. every part. This is where it lowers down. Uh, yeah, of course. But it's, yeah, course. I was about to say this is where the river is. I was about to say this is where the river is high up. But this is where yeah. the the yeah this is. Different part the, of this the is river. where the Nazgul has crossed the Brandywine Bridge, apparently. Oh. Like for Drop North. <laughs> well, it's <just> so bad. <laughs> Buckleberry Ferry. Yeah. Oh, um, fucking hell. So, um, what's happening? Oh, yeah, right. Uh, they're about to, they need to go to Eregion and find out what the fuck's going on because of all the aforementioned reasons why they should mm -hmm. be scared and terrified. And this is really weird, and we got to find out what's going on. And we know about the Rings of Power and Sauron's involvement, all that good stuff. Um, so Elrond asks uh, Galadriel for her recommendations on some guards, an archer, and two swordsmen. And she's like, trust me, are you certain that's wise, Commander? Um, yeah. And he says, at the High King's urging, I agreed to appoint you as First Lieutenant. But if you deem that duty beneath you, I'll choose another. And she says, yeah, I can recommend some who else she would take. She's just like, God, we're so, she's such a cunt. So remember when she when like remember her whole speech about is that Aaron, you need to help us. We can't let him in me. Da, 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 da. And I was like, <laughs> uh, can you help me with these things? Like, oh, trusting me, huh? Oh, now mm. you trust me. It's like, fuck you. What are oh, we doing? We didn't have her, we didn't have her for a whole episode. Them. And now <laughs> the new episode oh. starts, and we're like five seconds in, and Gladriel's here being a bitch. And He's like, such we're a right back horrible on track. character. I hate also, also fucking. I hate Sa Sa Satan might be in the region, and we're bringing like three guys. Like really? Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they gotta be low profile or quicker. No. <laughs> There's just no reason not to send like an army elves. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a commander of the northern armies. Like what the no, fuck? No, because then send, send Sauron the will lightning strike them from the other side of. Uh -huh. ah, That's true. You don't want to. You don't want to clump yeah, up. You want to be a big target. Yeah. yeah. Imagine, yeah. Great imagine, you fucking, imagine you get there and fucking. Imagine you get there and Calibrim boy is just completely enthralled by Sauron, and he just doesn't let them in. <laughs> what the fuck do you do then? Yeah. Um. He's so placed all the doors of moon runes. The elves set off. Uh, down the road, they're running. Oh, they're not man. taking horses. Who fucking knows? Um, I just what a bafflingly weird decision to make. I thought um, I'd more. miss something. I, the, really run. I thought Elrond was gonna say the land is too evil for horses or something. And I'd be like, okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no they, there's like we need the we need people to help us. Okay, let's get them, and then okay, we just uh, see them walk. You just want to it's get like a hammer walk. and just start hitting himself in the head, and he'd be like, I have to. I, it, it's Sauron. I have to. Like, okay, fine. it's it's because we want to reference Lord of the Rings shots with the like you know yeah. panning over the them running over the hills and shit. That's the reason why they they're not on horses. <sighs> so yeah, we got our fucking fallen crazy. bridge. So... Aron says lightning. I don't know. 
uh lightning just <laughs> is i i guess it's weird it's like is this typically what is this what lightning normally does in their world i don't know he thinks so our runs big smart uh yeah, so, so thick, we have what, that's pretty thick we have our lightning. Big choice oh oh yeah that that lightning is that, uh, that lightning is serious business to destroy yes. stone bridge it's evil to lightning. vaporize it <laughs> all right so there's a guy with him uh one of the one of the guy elves he's oh, like guy okay elf, dies. why because he's a man i'm losing my mind i'm sorry <laughs> all right um so the, the show is getting to you um yeah. so oh. he says that they oh, have on. two options they have to go north and add two weeks or they'll have to go through the hills of turin gorthad uh and Bullshit. galadriel gets galadriel gets this weird premonition that i think is from the ring that there's evil in them their hills of course <laughs> yeah. she does because we can't just uh -huh. go there and figure it out by ourselves we need the fucking vision before this it's like there's evil huh? now Shut i suppose up, what this means is that this is sauron are we to believe that this is Sauron telling her to avoid that path? No, so I think it's just no. the ring giving her the, the weird vision powers that she now has for reasons that the show given, made happen. Like, given what happens later in the episode, I have... I mean, I'll, I'll run this past you guys when we get there, but I think we have pretty good evidence that Sauron is controlling the rings. I Wait. would have said the opposite. <gasps> yeah, yeah says, me too. She says in the scene on the bridge, she says, I think Sauron means us to go the, the evil route that we will go down shortly. So the ring has given her a correct premonition. They should, in fact, have avoided it. If, if Sauron were controlling the rings, he would have mm -hmm. told them to go what, that way. What if Sauron's yeah. so fucking clever that he knew that if he gets the ring to tell her that <laughs> and to say that, it'll make them even more resolute. They'll be like, you know what? Well, Fuck your ring. Well, it's it's fucking that, but I think that would be out of character for Sauron. Bluffs. He's not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> <It's just laughs> Sauron's retarded, so you have to I mean, keep that into, uh, <laughs> into consideration. Just so that um, I'm like clear on why I think that, um, later in the episode, uh, Galadriel gets a vision, and it's not anything really meaningful. It's just a bunch of images of things that are yeah. presumably going to happen later in the in the series. It's like it takes like mm. three seconds, and it's like five different quick images. When one of those images is Halbrand, Sauron yep. no longer looks like Halbrand, which means that unless in the future he turns back into the form of Halbrand, and I cannot think why that would ever happen. But he probably will though. Yeah, I mean, well, if, if, to convince her, if it's a vision of a flashback, there, there'll be a scene. It a could be a flashback. Of a flashback. <laughs> yeah, it's a premonition of a flashback. <laughs> no, I'm sure Which there is, will be a scene toward the end something. of this series where, like, it's her and him in the room together, and he can do his whole "Join me and we'll rule the galaxy as father and son" thing again, or husband and wife, or whatever the fuck it is, and he'll revert <laughs> to that form because that's the that's one she fancies. Yep. Mm. So if that happens then i will agree yeah i but if that doesn't happen then i think that's the, the the writers are basically lying to us at this point because if if he shows up as halbrand in her vision given to her by the ring but doesn't ever show up as halbrand in reality then that means that this is not a vision of the future it means that this is a vision that has basically been put into her head and it is a falsehood basically which to me indicates that sauron is doing this I mean, I, um... And therefore, Sauron wants her in a Regian, but again, until we see how that plays out, I, we can't say. I we'll, think the we'll show see. wants you to think that that's what it is, but I think that, that that's the show's concept of a mystery in, in this arc. It's, are the visions from the rings controlled by Sauron or not? That's the thing that it wants us to be dwelling on for the entirety of the thing. In the end, it will turn out they're not. Um, mm -hmm. It's just that they give you genuine foresight, which actually most of the elves are supposed to have in some capacity anyway. Um, but we are all supposed to think, oh, that could be Sauron doing this. Even though this very first example cannot possibly be Sauron doing it because the ring gave the correct vision. What's funny, I think, is in universe her suggesting to use advice or information she's kind of drawing from the ring. You just need Elrond to sit her down and be like, sweetheart, I've explained this. That thing is evil and you're evil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would, well, that wouldn't work because remember, she said she knows in her art, uh, in her heart that the, uh, yeah. the rings are not corrupted. She's got that's sort of corrupted. So you gotta. Say. He just knows, yeah. Oh, that's what, no, that's what no, I'm no, saying. The whole the point thing. is like, stop giving me advice from the dumbass rig. I told you, I don't fucking oh, think it's good. She knows in her heart that it's don't pure. care. Well, Shut I don't, don't care. Fuck yeah. up. But have he you considered that she knows in her heart? You should push her off the little cliff. 
<laughs> yeah. If the ring saves you down. In the world of that evil. <laughs> then it slips from our finger into the river, and then it floats down, Do you know, and then Sonic's whenever... great, 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 great <laughs> grandchildren find it one day and rule the world. Whenever the chips are down and something bad's happening, Elrond needs to remind her every single time, this is all your fault. Every last thing, every last piece <laughs> yeah. of suffering is your fucking fault, you yeah. loser. Every time we see someone die, every time there's misery or suffering, you did this, just to be clear. So he anyway. does say, like, straight after this, he says, uh, I will not take counsel for that from that ring, and neither will you. Which, like, okay, fair enough. But at the same time, why is Galadriel still wearing the ring? Why did Elrond agree to lead this mission mm -hmm. and agree to let her keep the ring? Like, I, I, you don't even have to necessarily yeah. get rid of it or give it to Kiridan and throw it in the ocean. Just at, the, at a bare fucking minimum, him going, him leading her to Eregion should have been contingent upon her giving the ring to someone else. Yeah. At least not wearing it, keeping it in her pocket. Even she, uh, whatever. Like, the, the, the notion <laughs> that she is kind of corrupted by Sauron, which is still bad if, if the ring is pure, because that means she's the bearer and she's corrupted. You know? Whatever, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Sure it is. Um, yeah, Elrond says they won't take advice from the ring, but even though Galadriel wants to leave, she won't because she doesn't want them to die. Wow, which a noble. Is, uh, a bit of out of character. Uh -huh. Bit out. Of, it's out of character for her to care about the lives of anyone else. But uh, <laughs> fair enough. Oh well, yeah, it's progress of a kind. Yeah, well, I figured so it was so kind of like her statement is basically, is "You'll all die if I'm not here," which is yeah, yeah, basically yeah, exactly. as arrogant as we come to expect. Cool. <laughs> yeah. We'll put a pin in that for the next scene, I think, with them lot. Yeah. Uh, she does okay. mention, by the way, that the uh, the evil in the hills uh, is ancient and full of malice. So mm. it God, should be so bad too. like Gollum. well known slash implied that there's Gollum. really spooky bad stuff over in Turin Gorthad. So mm. I don't know why I I don't know if this. How is much ever longer is the long up, way? Or if it would cause issues. Two, two weeks. Well, two weeks, weeks right? Like, dramatically oh, longer. it would yeah. it would add two weeks. Yes. It's a gorgeous, uh, unlimited in both ways. Okay, just get really long kind of planks of wood to put across. The... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or, or here's here's, here's like another fucking... idea. Cli climb down this side and then climb up the other. You're elves. Just use your fucking bullshit magic powers. Well, or just bring like a, a an adventurer's pack from fucking D and D. They got ropes. <laughs> yep. When she nah, an arrow was skilled skilled the, if I look at the screenshot, then that's true. The yeah, she yeah. did. If I look at the screenshot on in, in the Discord uh, here, uh, there's like a path that's not that far away from each other, actually. Well, that, that that's actually if you factor in the distance, that's six miles between those two points on either side. So it it looks close, but it's actually really really far. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. I'm tired. Anyway, back in Rune. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, oh god damn it. Finally. Rune. Rune. Oh. Oh, we have way too much time in this episode. Whoa, time for some exposition. Boy, I hope you guys are excited to meet some fan favorites. Um, so, back in Rune, not Gandalf is looking for the Harfoots. Because remember, they got Team Rocket blasted away by they're the, dead. the they're dust dead. tornado he they're summoned. Finding... Super dead. Yeah, yeah dead. they're 100% dead. Yep. No, they're alive and he's looking for them. Dead. No. So, he right seems down. to be, he seems to be, they're not pancakes that got splatted on the ground. They're mm -hmm. fine, and he's looking for them. That would be sad if they died. Um, yeah. I, uh, so he's just looking around randomly. Well, he doesn't really know which way they went or where they landed. Um, but he's got to find <laughs> them. He's looking around, and uh, he does eventually find some uh, random guy. He finds this goat farmer uh, just sitting around out here in the wilderness mm -hmm. by his little house. And so we asked this guy about the about, about the Harfoots. But the stranger is I don't know. I don't know if they're going with this guy cuz he he kind of just acts like a like an asshole. Um, <laughs> he's a prick. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's well, like, and, oh, uh, yeah, I've seen a pair of halflings and not Gandalf way, but kind of really quickly forgets about the Harfoots in this sequence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the Harfoots? No. Okay. Uh, those stars well, so he, are... says, <laughs> he says, I, hope, I was wondering if you've seen my friends. And then do we want to reveal who this person is yet? No. Okay. So he, uh, so the hermit, we'll, we'll call him the hermit. Yeah. Um, he then responds and says, I see you found the goat. And it's like, well, no, that no, no. He does. It's not. He, he sits there. He, he stands up. We have a dramatic reveal of his fucking face. Mm. And then yeah. he sits there smiling like an asshole for like 37 minutes. And then he says, <laughs> I see you found the goats. 
be- before that, he also throws some like bandages and shit in his face for no particular reason. Like you can and hear he says, him standing behind him and talking, and he just throws shit at him. And he then and, uh, says, like, not Gandalf says, like, I wasn't looking for a goat. And then t- uh, uh, the hermit says, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try my best to do this fucking accent. He says, Well, there's what you're looking for, and there's what you find now, isn't there? And it's like, I ain't you, there. You, oh, cool. It's, Fuck you. So you're, it is so you're just an asshole. You don't. Yeah, yeah. Don't, I don't. Wanna, I don't be hearing this shit. I, I like just. Walks I nearly off. died. My friends might be dead. There's people trying to kill us all the time. I nearly died of dehydration, man. Like I, I don't want to hear this. Could like, you not be a smart ass right now? Like, because what you're looking for was like, shut the fuck up. I need help, please. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, I don't. It's like just if you're not gonna help me, just let me know now so I could go off and get eaten by a tree. Because mm-hmm. I just can't be here. Um, you're such a jerk, and I hate you already. <laughs> I don't know what they're going for here with this weird hermit guy, but I hope yeah. he doesn't turn out to be anyone important because the less I see of him, the mm-hmm. happier I know that I will be. He walks off and he starts singing a poem. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, he's like mumbling a poem. Um, Gandalf says that there's some stars above his like hill where the little hermit is. Who and the then stars the hermit's all like, the hills? Uh, or stars above you. most hills. <laughs> I mean, and I'm true, like, oh, but fuck you. You just, you just want to character. Like, is that what you do? Someone says something, and you just switch the words around a bit and don't say anything. Is that what you? Is that your thing? Mm-hmm. Like, does that make you happy? <laughs> it makes him very happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, all you would say back to that is like, "What makes you happy?" Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, Gandalf says, well, my friends and I, we were looking for these stars here, and he pulls out the little map of the stars, and then it gets blown away by the wind. Mm-hmm. And it's probably and, him um, doing that. You have to keep that in mind. Yeah, maybe. Uh, and Because and, Tom... Uh, uh, fuck. Uh, this guy. <laughs> this fucking asshole. Piece of shit. Just Tom watches Smith. the breeze blow him away. Yeah, Tom Smith. Um, he Tom just Smith. watches the breeze <laughs> blow the map away, and he just smiles and sings his stupid song. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, it sticks on a tree, and it's a magic tree, and it sucks not Gandalf into the magic tree. This is definitely well, one of the bad, that, bad but, sequences. Yeah, yeah. Before, before yeah. that, he, he sees a branch, and this looks like nothing like the, the yeah. staff I'm looking for. So let's uh, jank it off this tree that, you know, this uh, hermit is probably, like, using for something. But, nah, okay. Peeing. And then it gets, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I... I... <laughs> The, <laughs> the there tree? is no ex- Oh, that was the little. That was the pterodactyl in a land before time. Oh, oh. oh this is no. Hold on, different character. I was going to say, sorry, one of the voice actors. Uh, voice actors. Uh, oh, it's a it's a really sad story, but it's a different character. I don't want to. I don't want to get into it. No. Mm-hmm. All, right. All right. Anyway, he yeah. gets right. eaten. Yeah, Gandalf gets eaten by a tree. Or sorry, not definitely mm-hmm. not. Gandalf gets eaten by a tree. I uh, get sucked in. I want. I well, now that the okay. Hogfords and he, he, he are dead, uh, we can, I, we can right, go somewhere this plot else. Line never is return. over. Thank God. Oh, thank God. We yes. did it. Hell yeah! So, High five um, all around. So the next scene, we're still in Rune. Oh, why? And uh, well, well, I'll tell you why. Uh, oh. It's because we have to find out what happened with Nori and Poppy. I really because don't. they got flung into space. <laughs> so how many they must have landed somewhere? <laughs> Well, um, broken bones and everything. There, the two of them are just lying down on the ground. They, I guess they mm-hmm. they just landed on the ground after being flung through yeah. the atmosphere. The hard, I rocky, just, arid ground. I just, yeah. I, <laughs> you could have done like anything. Like you could they didn't have do anything. Pretended like anything happened. Uh-huh. There's this one little bush where Poppy didn't even properly <laughs> land on. Yeah, she lands they next land, to it. <laughs> so they don't land in a like a proper like a big bushy tree. They don't mm-hmm. land on a cow. They don't land <laughs> on a river or a I lake. Or there's, no, pond. Cow. there's no bouncy castle or anything. There's just nothing. No, yeah. bouncy, no bouncy castles. No trampolines. I was trampolines. expecting a giant trampoline, yeah, but we, we can't have that. It's just, just on the side of a small hill. <laughs> they didn't even try to explain it. They, they're just here. They were just walking mm-hmm. around in the desert, and they set up the cameras and said, all right, you two, go lay down. No, no, in the bush. Yeah. You go yeah, lie down in that bush. bush. But only one of you. 
I mean, yeah. th- you think maybe they filmed this before doing the visual effects scene with the uh, with them flying away? So they made it look I mean, yeah. way worse than it really was. Well, <laughs> yeah. it has to be well, yeah. really bad because if they're lost mm-hmm. and Gandalf can't find them, they must be a long way away. Yeah, they must I mean, be really far they're... away, yeah. Also, they're right next to each other, which is obviously how tornadoes work. Oh, yeah. Maybe they. Um, maybe what happened was when they landed, they like they bent their knees mm-hmm. so that... <laughs> so they that they, they were able to land and roll safely. You want to land, and bend your knees and roll. Yeah, you want to keep your momentum. And then they got unconscious because they it's been a long day and they were very tired. Yeah, they were, they were just tired. They fell asleep. <clears throat> um, I don't think they actually yeah. drink that much when they get to the well before they get flown, flown away. So they're probably still no, massively dehydrated. Because yeah. <laughs> they don't know how to drink from streams or water yeah. sources with their hands. No. Um, so yeah, the they... Vamp- um, they da, 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 what's happening oh so they're they're lost they don't know where gandalf is they don't know where they are and randomly there's one of those trackers who's looking oh, for no. him <gasps> and it's he's he's kind of close he's looking for him and so they decide that in order to get away from him what they should do is jump off this cliff yeah, yeah. Uh, more, more so like could, they... you, could you show at 11 30 exactly there when they're like running away it looks really fucking goofy hmm. Yeah, they ha- if, if we have able. learned here that they're impervious to fall damage, though. So. Uh, yeah, I, it seems yeah. to be the case. They're like squirrels. <laughs> we, they, they cannot we, die we saw before damage. that they're they masters at hiding and like running away and shit. And then it, it, looks, it just looks really fucking goofy when they're like lumbering away from the. Yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> if I were directing this, I would not have kept this shot where they clearly are so <laughs> desperate <laughs> to save themselves from, you know. Whoa, <laughs> get going there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, I've got to point this out. Nori, the actress who plays Nori, repeatedly does this thing where she kind of sticks her tongue out into the corner of her mouth. This is the third time she's done it, and it seems to be like mm-hmm. a tick. I don't know. If, yeah, I don't yeah. know if she's if it's just something the actress does, or if she's decided that Nori does this. Where but... is she from? <laughs> I, I don't know. Nori Town. They don't normal? have a home. I don't care. Maybe in maybe wherever she's from, that's just something you do. Maybe she's from a dry part of the world where you need to keep your mm-hmm. lips. She's from Arrakis. <laughs> she's from Arrakis. <laughs> it's a bad uh, habit because the moisture is leaving her tongue. Well, we're kind of we're kind of onto something because she is from Australia, so she could have grown up in the desert. I don't know. Um, <laughs> that's racist. Fr- Frankie's <laughs> always licking his mouth like that because he he's yeah. from Australia. Yeah. Hey, Australia is a big going, place. Num, num. Australia is a big place, <laughs> and a lot of it is. Why you saying it's all desert, then, huh? I mean, a lot I of said it a lot of it's desert, desert, but the vast majority <laughs> of people here do not live in the desert. Oh, sure. Australia's, sure. Australia's not that big compared to Jupiter, though. The majority of people here actually live in places where it rains a decent amount. Um, honestly. So yeah, All right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Most people so in the coast in Australia, like ninety nine percent. It's a it's silly just a assumption to make that this is just an Australian thing. It's not. Well, now that we've established hey, I did, this is an Australian thing. I didn't say it was an Australian thing. thing. Yeah, and it's not <laughs> like <laughs> Australia. And it's funny to give a shit for it, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fringy's done licking his lips. We can uh, proceed here. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so they jump off a cliff. I don't know, man. That's what they. I just tell. I'm look. I just report the news. Okay. I don't make mm-hmm. it. They jump I, off the cliff. Oh, they, they jump off the cliff. Face. They roll, and I think it's long enough to be funny. Yeah, the way they the long they roll long enough yeah. for, for, it, for it to be funny. Not quite John Wick 4 funny, but still pretty funny. It's close enough. I'm this putting this on screen guy. for a while now. Yeah, here we go. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. Oh, I, I, I lost oh, no. my shit when I saw this the first time. Now, it yeah. turns out that it's actually quite fortuitous that they jumped off this cliff. Yeah. Because they uh, they land right next to this weird guy. This, this really weird gnome. looking dude. This, this goofy <laughs> goober. Uh, and oh. um, so they ask him who he is. And he says that he's nobody. Um... And then they're like, no, but what? So surely somebody calls you something or whatever. And then he says, oh, well, my, my mother who named me calls me Merrimack. So I guess yeah. he's a retard. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, that's his whole, that's his whole shtick. He's that's, a yeah. That seems to be his thing. That's, yeah. that's it's really funny. He's the, very The stupid. writers put a character who doesn't know how social interaction works into their show so that they could waste time. That's all I've got. Ooh, mm. boy. That's probably correct. We did that with Mel. Um, Hello. <laughs> Mahler, <laughs> is your icon less purple than it used to be? It's more reddish now. I got full that's variant colors, yes. He's, uh, oh, I don't the colors that I am. One. 
Oh, do Ram, you don't worry, that's just based normal. Based on your mood, or like what we're covering, or can nope. you swap them out if you're feeling sad, like a blue one for There's when you're sad? There's a light in my room, like... and that's what's happening. It's shining off the mask. Oh, this is just okay. a live feed of All me. Right. Oh, okay, that's fair enough. I like your transparent room. Yeah, I know it's great. Isn't it? <laughs> it's really nice. Yeah, that's the same one that I've got. I just am really close to the camera, so you can see my my whiskers. Um, they're smaller than Pixel, so you can't see them. Um, they're implied. Speaking mm. of implied, um, no, this is just this is just stated. Uh, so Poppy threatens to turn him in for being a water thief if he doesn't take them back to his village. Uh, well, oh, well. So, so before that, he accidentally reveals that he's from a village. He's not just a wandering nomad. And then uh, he accidentally, uh, she, she's then able to use that accidental information to be like, "Oh, cool, take us there." Oh. So they Are they accidentally in bumped into fuzz. Yeah, they accidentally bumped into no, no, this it, guy it, who then accidentally was like, luck. "We've got a village." It was no. Sauron. No, oh, it's true. This is Sauron. Yeah. yeah. He put the cliff there just so that they would know mm -hmm. to be able to jump down off of it. He roll. sent the retard oh, to find the. Serious. <laughs> <laughs> to fuck up the shit. I'll these. just send the retard. Listen, <laughs> Merrimack is not retarded. He's just big bone. He's absolutely no. retarded. <laughs> That's so, all so, great and... under there. Super smart. Okay, oh, yeah, so of course. They go to the happy village. They go to a happy village in inside of like a. It's like in this gorge cliff. But it's not like that. This is this isn't like the sad, evil gorge from before with Galadriel and them. This is a happy gorge with a happy village in it, Aww. and it turns out it's full of little people. Well, halflings. I don't know if they like to be called little people. Um, I would if I was a little person. You could call me a little guy. Um, but yeah, we have a happy, uh, happy village. Uh, there's some. There's like an attempt at a joke here where before they get to the village, Merrimack's like, yeah. okay, there's like three rules. Don't call the the what the gunter name there's like a <laughs> i i for, i don't know man it's like it's i i just didn't write any notes really for it funny because it was Rex, a shitty attempt at comedy he says rule he says one b and then four to get it because I've, he's fucking retarded i've got it here because they're obviously the, the joke is that they're all gonna break the rules and everyone will laugh because yeah. that's inherently funny oh yeah um, he says so he one, says it's uh, one, don't look the Gund in the eye. And the Gund is what he's introduced his, his village leader as. B, yeah, always stand gun. three steps back. Yeah. Four, don't ever call her the Gund. Yeah. Uh, the Gund sounds yeah, like, like a euphemism. So, which the follow-up question is, what should, we call, what should we call her? Which is the follow-up question that they don't ask, because this isn't like a show where characters talk to each other like people. If all you've told me is don't call them this, well, first off, now I'm thinking about it. Yeah. So thanks. <laughs> In seconds, what am I supposed to call this person? <laughs> no, not the, the gun. They don't have chat, a name. The <laughs> it's even Ralph. He's the really oh. Ralph. <laughs> okay, so yeah, they go into the gorge. Wow. Um, I I don't feel genocidal very often, but <laughs> like, if if you ask me, of the, having seen season one, you know, what do I least want to see more of? Harfoots is really, really high this on was... that list, and so when I saw we were getting introduced to fucking more of them, I... Yeah, oh, I thought we yeah. rid ourselves no, of them, but they've just been multiplying. We had Nori coming yeah. on like a tumor fine, and then Poppy comes along like, ugh, and now we've got a whole village again. You're like, no! We work Wait, so to, hard. To be fair, yeah. if, you, if you actually give them a place to stay with a little bit of water, they're semi-clean, at least. Like, they're not completely disgusting. They're still mm. psychopaths. I was going to say, they'll reveal the cannibalism the soon. Don't worry about it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the, the leader is a cunt, but uh, yeah. Oh, God, that character drove me nuts. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. this is essentially Absolute her intro, bitch. right? Yeah. It's always yeah. great when you get Pretty into much. a place and the first thing yeah. they, they threaten you with is I should just throw it's... you back to the people who we hunt all... you. Well, it's all, it's all <laughs> insanely retarded, like right? right? Um... The, this scene is treated as though it's a very isolated just interaction. We're going to see something funny happen and maybe something surprising, which is they get captured. But this lady, the more we learn about it, the first thing she should have said to these fuckers is like, okay, where are you from? Because I actually know probably where yeah. you're from. And then who do you know? Who is your trail finder, leader, whatever the fuck? And, it, you know, they would inevitably mm -hmm. mention Sadik, and then she'd be like, oh, yeah, I know that fucking idiot. You know, that sort of thing. Like, I know exactly who yeah. you are. I know exactly where you're from. Um, why are you here? And then they mention Gandalf, whatever. And, you know, it would just skip us to the next scene instead of having to go through all this rigmarole. Yeah. Yeah. 
and what ends up happening is, is without skipping ahead uh, too much hopefully is they mm. get captured because they say exactly the wrong thing yeah and then later on they get released because they say exactly the right thing which means and and then they end up doing the, yeah. the bit that you're that you're referencing Mola is uh, later I'm not going to say what that is because it's too funny we'll wait until we get there yeah. um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so they, they basically wanted to uh, have the characters get captured and then held off screen and then released so that they could do the dramatic payoff later on <laughs> to fill time. Yeah, to fill time, we, exactly. We, we, also also do like the... super, we also missed the super funny dialogue with the, the fucking, oh, I'm nobody that made me want to strangle someone. That was mentioned, wasn't it? Yeah. What was it? No, I missed it then. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it was the I'm nobody and then the mum. He was like, my mum gave me a name. It was, mm. just, it was just more on the pile yeah, of yeah. he's a retard. Yeah. It doesn't more. He's like, oh. Which... She talks because I think they're trying to do a thing between Poppy and the nobody guy. It's like, oh, great. That's yeah. exactly what I wanted. Yeah, that came yeah. on in yeah. like five seconds. Is that they've just laid eyes yeah. on each other and she thinks, oh, I, mm. I like what you're I saying. like mentally challenged people, apparently. Dripping wet. <laughs> well, uh, because yeah, they 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 do kind of like exchange a glance, and then he smiles like a big doofus because that's the character that he is. Um, mm -hmm. Then she basically threatens to turn him into the Skeletor people because he stole yeah. the water from Skeletor's well. We we learn. Mm. Um, so basically, she is willing to. I mean, she's not going to do that because Skeletor's trying to kill them as well. But she's willing to threaten essentially to kill a mentally disabled person in order to get <laughs> what she wants. But Please. then later on, when speaking to, <laughs> when speaking to the Gund here, she's being really rude to him, and she says, "Be nice to him." So I, I have no idea what they're doing there. I don't know if they, if they think that that was flirting or what. But I don't know. When she says that, everybody around them stops and go like, "Oh, she talked back to her." To her. Oh yeah, it turns out that that was the fourth rule. Yeah. Yeah, it's like. Mm -hmm. They gave me like big Bazinga vibes, like for real. It's like, <laughs> oh, that was the fourth rule. Bazinga. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's gonna go I in my mean, video. Yeah, it it is like the fucking <laughs> Saturday afternoon cartoon show, like for kids, basically. Yeah. Uh, that's, um, that, that's gonna be in the video. They're talking about <laughs> how he's big, like their friend they're trying to find. And it's the most forced shit dialogue ever. The goober guy says, like an elf, and they say bigger than an elf, and then she's like, "Oh, great big grand elf." And you're like, "Did, did you? Uh, just, did you? Uh, oh, grand elf? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> just vomit everywhere. Kill yourself." Um, yeah, and they're very proud of themselves. Room. There for aren't it. any elves over here. What do they? Th they don't, probably never met an elf. Never mind a grand elf. Why are they referencing elves? Because it's a really good bit of dialogue. Damn you! You're ruining it by <laughs> thinking about nuts. it. It's and then, fun. stop thinking. But then, but then they want to like cross in. It's like he's a wizard. And then they're like, "Whoa, there's only one wizard around here, and we don't like him. Tie them up." And it's like, "Why, why don't you just ask them a few more <laughs> basic questions, you dumb fucks?" Like, yeah, because well, even if they do that, the Nori and Poppy don't respond. Like, wait, sorry, dark wizard, evil wizard. What the hell? That's not us. We've only just got it. Yeah, but like, they're not uh, allowed to say any of that because I mean, they need to get a, captured. Such a yeah. shit yeah. conversation that has to go it's that way because the writers have forced it to. They straight go yeah. to, oh, you were no wizard? We only know one other dark wizard, so I, they're <laughs> probably friends. So... Like, no, I'm, I'm not a wizard, I'm just Harry. No, just Harry. Oh, good. No, he's, like, he's, like a, he's like a grand I mean... elf. He's a bit, oh, but no, he's not an elf. So he's like, grand solo. It's just like, fucking, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, and I also, they, they should probably they should probably know about the hermit, right? Or well, I guess they don't. Who I don't, the stores I don't, I don't fucking know if they know. Yeah, the stores. Don't I mean, know. they they can't because they only know of one wizard and he's the evil wizard, so they can't know about the hermit apparently. That's but true. they probably I mean, should know about him. Evil he, wizard. He, he isn't a wizard, but yeah, they would think that he is. Right. And then he just says, yeah. "Listen to me, you fat oaf. I'm not a fucking wizard. <laughs> oh, oh fucking what is with your language? <laughs> I'll put my fucking dick in the owl. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get the beard on fire. Hagrid, you're pushing me over the fucking oh, line. <laughs> no, I'm not. You are. No, I'm not. No, no, I'm no, detecting no. too. No, no I'm just... detecting too much joy. We have to talk about rings of power. <laughs> no, no. no. you get a magic owl. Deal with it, you twat. <laughs> <laughs> I I had to get up for a bit. I I see. Oh. I I can. 
I see everyone here is having their own little their own coping mechanism. Mine yeah. is yeah. um I've decided to get a beer, which is a depressant, and also oh, nice. this five hour energy, which is a stimulant, <laughs> and I'm just gonna have them together and see what happens. Oh my god. Oh so, no, no. I don't I, 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 sh I should be no, fine. Just die of alcohol poisoning. Also, by the way, um, the, the gun just says that she knows that they're being followed. Like, she says, oh, we should just mm -hmm. throw you at the people that follow. It was like, how the fuck do you know they're being followed? Why, why do you know this? They she's have well, people. She's got another retard to spy on them. I guess the retard told I, yeah, them, yeah. It, it, yeah. We find this out <laughs> later. We find this out later, but it, it, she must have been tracking them because she knows who they are. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she, but because, sorry, sorry, I said that backwards. She should know who they are. Because oh, she's yeah. been tracking them, is what I meant to say. But then, then she should know about the Gandalf, though. Uh, indeed, yes. <laughs> because she, she knows she knows that, quote, half the devils in the desert are searching for them. Yeah. So she should she know that that's not the evil wizard, that that's their friend. Yes, okay. and it, it, it also means that she should know where they came from in terms of direction, mm -hmm. which uh, is important uh, soon. Yep. Uh, this beer oh. says it's best by... Uh, July 29th, so it should be okay. Yeah, sure. I just also, this is not a five hour energy. Looking... This is a discount. This is not the like on this is off brand. This right, is just so you're vitamin drinking, energy. Like, expired, expired beer. It's not ex it's not expired. I mean, pretty sure you it just, just said says, it's expired. It just has a date on it. It just says a date on it that has already occurred, but that doesn't mean it's expired. Uh... Um, it's I mean, I have done that. Time. He's gonna become even more. I did do that once in the past, and I puked immediately. So you know, good luck. I haven't puked immediately, but this this yeah. <laughs> off-brand five-hour this vitamin energy doesn't taste great. But I don't drink it for the taste. I drink it for the incredible energy that it I gives me. Then I'm gonna need it is power clear, through. Like, there is a power. level of, of half an exposure that just leads people to substance abuse, <laughs> and we've hit it. <laughs> I can't fucking. I hate them. I, I don't know if I want to see here. them less or Galadriel less. There's so much it's hate legitimately to be a around the whole up. show. Uh, yeah. Speaking of, well, this uh, this seems pretty funny actually. So she the, can kill them. The next. Oh one. yeah. Um, so like <laughs> we talked about this in prior episodes with the nature of these guys being like, we're gonna get them. It's like my greatest mm -hmm. acolytes couldn't do it. What will you do? And it's like we're gonna use the halflings against him. It's like, oh, my acolytes already fucking did that, plan. loser. So you're gonna have to come up with something else. And he's like, ah, oh, we'll we'll do it. Rushes out, comes back. So he's like a wizard, yeah. huh? <laughs> like, uh, yes, that was the fucking way more point. Than we he's thought. a fucking wizard. <laughs> like, mm. <laughs> well, he cast uh. some spells, and we had trouble with it, honestly. Okay. Genius. But like, right. yeah. so Feminem should have told him in the previous scene, which she didn't because the characters aren't allowed to actually explain themselves. Have conversations? No, they are yeah. not allowed to. They're so literally Skeletor, not allowed to. Skeletor should know. The, the three mystics like easily beat him at the end of season one. Uh, but then uh, they got bonked with a rock and Nori stole the staff, gave it to not Gandalf, yeah. and then rock, he exploded rock. them into butterflies. Which, yeah. which means, translation basically, is um, if he is waving a stick at you in a threatening manner, don't ride towards him on your horses with bows and arrows. Well, which or is exactly what do happened. a fucking plan where you knife him at night. Or that, yeah. yes. <laughs> You just captured the heart. You the dumb fucks. What was the plan? Oh, we're just going to stand in the Wait distance, the well. wave at them until they recognize just us. Just charge then... them. Like, yeah. Wait, so the, 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 the plan was we'll put a bell on the well and then hope that they pass out next <laughs> to the well. And <laughs> Hopefully they don't rip the bell off. That would fuck the whole plan up. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I just, oh, yeah, gosh. I'm just amused by the scene. He's like, he conjured a sandstorm, but it's just like, he is a wizard, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That was part of the reason this is difficult, yes. Yeah. Wanted to mention, by the way, as well, that uh, oh. the gun that ties up the, Har the Harfoots, thinking that they're friends of the wizard, which is probably not a good plan. Like, they're probably going to anger well, him if they. That whole thing was retarded. If they didn't, they should ask them way more yeah. questions, but we don't get to see that, you know? Yeah. They would never fucking tie mm -hmm. them up if they yeah. actually got to ask. Just a handful of basic ones after yeah. that one. Whatever. Yeah. yeah, we're walking through the wizard. Not that wizard. We just got here. Um, we're, we're trying to find... I don't even... We're trying to find some stars and stuff. We don't know anything about it. Like, things that they might say to defend themselves. They tried to this kill us. accusation the... that they're in league. Yeah. yeah just, they might eat us or something. We don't know. These people are crazy savages. This is a, a really crazy idea, I, I understand, but like, have they considered just asking him nicely? Because they never who? do. Like, asking asking um, Gandalf like, just to come with them. 
but they didn't do that in season one. They just decided we're going to go and be like as obviously evil as possible to put him off. And then, like, but because they did that, they kind of screwed themselves. But if the, if the skeletal knights of leprosy people who like they don't know are attached to the evil cultist people just went up and said, "Hey, we know a wizard and he can help you. Do you want to? Do you want to come?" Well, they say they have a skin condition, and it's just bad to be clear. To they could be race. They could be racist, and he changed them into the race that they don't like <laughs> with his magic. Uh, oh yeah, it could be that. So, they so I think in the mirror. <laughs> I, once we uh, at the end of this scene, I, I have kind of a theory as to what the original evil plan was, but it, it's similar basically to what you just went through. But it, it 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 gets very dumb because of what happened in season one. You mean is that something you want to talk about later? Say, well, I'll wait until until after this next scene with the hermit because it reveals information that I need. I don't want to jump ahead. I don't want to break right. the rules. Fair enough. <laughs> yes, this, there are, the rules are sacred here. Um, let's see. So um, I did have to step out for a moment. Are you talking? God damn it! Uh, the about, tree so... vomits up Gandalf, not Gandalf. And Tom yeah. reveals his full name. It's shocking. It's terrifying. One thing we didn't mention that I kind of want to is that this scene. Both the getting swallowed by the tree and getting vomited back out is like a 100% ripoff of the uh, extended trilogy scene. They even, yep. like, yes. you know, I'm not willing to give them the whole, oh, it's a fun reference, it's homage. It's like, no, 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 they kind of just ripped it. Like the it's way that cringe. it's filmed, the way that they, they use the sound effects, the way that it's meant to and, be like a, oh, 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 God, oh, oh, it ate. You know, like that feeling with Mary and Pippin. Tree should sound and, and the way The way he delivers the lines are so shit. I yeah, guess. it's awful. You should not be waking. <laughs> yeah, which again. It's now, it sounds like someone uh, who works in like an old folks home just talking to someone who doesn't really understand someone who mm -hmm. doesn't really talking have a Talking to someone who isn't there. Yeah, like just in just and this, talking aloud. To no my one. understanding of, of this character who uh, have we actually said his name well, yet? Well, I mean, I just, just... we'll get it. He, he does the funny thing with it because Gan, I was like, what? What's your name? And then the, the camera's like the the camera looks like it's trying to be a fan of this guy. He's like, ooh, he's gonna mm -hmm. say it. But he's like, wow, it's been a long time since anybody's given me a name. And you're like, oh, for fuck's sake! It has to be like a big <laughs> thing, you know? Just say it, you fuck. <laughs> but back in the withy windle, folk used to call me Bombadil. And he's like, oh, oh, <laughs> he my faded. God. <laughs> uh, like, my understanding is, is he's supposed Tom... to be quite a jolly fellow, right? Thomas uh, Bombadil. Yes. This is him. This is Thomas. Oh, did we just do the big reveal? Okay. Yes. Thomas. This is Thomas Bombadil, Steen the Fourth. Wow. And mm -hmm. boy, let me tell you, he's a fucking prick. Just like yep. Tolkien yeah. imagined him to be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I don't recall him being like this, but may it's been a long time since I've read the books, so maybe I've just forgotten. But I don't remember him just being this sarcastic piece of shit. But... Not so much, but like, like he, he's. It depends on your perspective because I think it is. This is further than cheeky. Giving, this ain't giving cheeky. Him the ring at some point, and they kind of assume that Tom Bombadil is the kind of guy who would just drop the ring and leave it somewhere because he doesn't yeah. think it's important. If you think that's a dick, of then he's a dick yeah. in the book as well. But that's because he's not supposed to exist, sort of in and of the world. He doesn't give a shit about the worldly concerns. And the reason he's so annoying in this show is that they've put him in an important position where he does mm -hmm. care about stuff, but he takes the most long-winded, metaphorical bullshit way of getting to the point <laughs> that he's just frustrating you all the way through whereas at least back mm -hmm. in, you know, in his books adaptation he's not trying to get you to do anything he's just this curiosity whose point is to exist outside of purpose isn't he like basically like mega god or something in the universe um, he's, like, <laughs> um, he's the oldest being in existence and we don't really know exactly how powerful he is he's just like super powerful he is confirmed to not be the Ero Luvatar, no, the highest god. No, Tolkien didn't confirm that. It's not, uh, you know. It's like he drops off the hobbits before they get to Bree because like, he never, ever, ever leaves his own land. He has a very specific realm in Middle-earth, which is kind of around the Brandywine River, which he references in these scenes. So he's not supposed to be here. Um, this is quite like the opposite mm -hmm. of Tom's territory. He doesn't really belong in the Middle East, but they've put him here for <laughs> reasons. <laughs> rather than... Like the old man willow tree, which is the thing that swallows the hobbits. Um, it's it's an old man dead tree from the looks of it. And like, why is he? I think his reason for being here in this show is that he wanted to come and see rumors that it was a desert, which is yeah. Dumb. I had to see it for myself. 
always been that way. So and I did find out, and I decided to stay here, even though it was a desert, mm -hmm. as I had just confirmed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wouldn't. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe he likes the climate. Maybe. Because I can understand that in my current modern day self with modern technology like air conditioning and irrigation and supermarkets and modern infrastructure. Back then, nah, I'm going back. I'm going back to Shireland where things are nice. Uh, shame about the Harfits wandering around, but you know, you no, we can kill all of them. Gotta. It'll be fine. Yeah, well, that, unironically, <laughs> we can just kill them. If there's um, any left after they've eaten each other, you know. If there's any left after next winter, <laughs> <laughs> when the bees start to grow again. Oh, not running. the bees. <laughs> um, okay, so, yeah, Thomas Bombadil. He's uh, introduced, he's in the crit. show for seemingly, well, it's the kind of thing that I think Could source be. readers are absolutely baffled by. Like, what the fuck is this, what's going on here? Not just the way he's characterized, but what the hell he's doing here um, at all places. Yeah. I hate, I hate the actor. I, I hate him so much. I, he's like, just not, not him personally, but like his performance. <laughs> um, I, yeah. know, I know him from a couple <laughs> things. He was, well, he's in the he's Imitation in a, Game is the one I know him from he's in that. He, he was in a couple of Bond films, the recent Daniel Craig ones. He, I can't remember what his role was. He was like oh. some guy who helped out Bond. He wasn't any of the significant characters. Uh, he was in that Men film semi recently. <laughs> he was the main still not seen that. creature that was like all of the men or whatever. He's got some weird roles under his belt. I don't know his name. I just sort of recognize him <laughs> here and there. Um, and of course, yes, because uh, this is the thing. I don't know as much as some of you guys, if not all of you guys, know about him from the source material, but. Uh, there is reference to a lady of some kind, and that that's something we were all expecting the mm -hmm. show is going to be making a great use of, because they bait her almost next up. That's Goldberry, yep. and Goldberry is supposed to be his kind of wife, who is, in the books, implied to be like a river spirit. Um, she, like, she pulled him by the beard under the water as a joke, and he fell in love with her. Um, and so like okay. he, he rescues the hobbits from the, Barrow, the zoo, but, from the yeah. Barrow Whites, which I mentioned for nothing to do with this show at all. He rescues them from the Barrow Whites, and then he steals a little brooch to take it back to her. And that's one of the reasons he never, ever leaves home, is because he's very much in love with her. Whereas here, she's, like, disembodied, and he doesn't actually acknowledge her existence for some reason. I think she's I the goat. This... The goat. She's the goat. <laughs> yeah, she is the goat. <laughs> so that, I, that's the... I weird... didn't know about the, um, the, the connection to... What, what was her name? Willow something? Goldberry. Old man Willow? Goldberry. Goldberry. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm getting Aldrich? confused now. I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I I didn't I didn't know about that connection, and I was just thinking that the show is just wasting my time with something that isn't funny, and it thinks that it's hilarious because we, as the audience, hear that he's singing, and there's like a woman's voice singing in mm -hmm. the next room, and then oh, not getting up is like, oh, can you hear? Wanna... Like, do you want to go through it? Yeah, I I hate Thomas Bombadil. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so uh, he's they're they're back at his house. And Gandalf's in a tub taking a bath. And Tom is like, yeah, here, I, I tried to clean your filthy robe. Here's some soap. Wash up and then join me by the fire. Now, this whole time, um, he, he kind of heard this, like, woman's voice sort of, like, talking with him or whatever. And he, he couldn't quite hear. So, not Gandalf asks, is there somebody out there with you? I thought I heard a woman singing. And Thomas says, woman? What woman? And Gandalf asks, well, is there, is there no one else? here with you and uh thomas says uh you're here that is i think you are are you <laughs> and then gandalf says uh yes and Weird. then thomas just like laughs and walks away and mm -hmm. i just like this why can't you like, I, why I was watching like this, this? I was watching, so like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to make of this. I just find this incredibly it's annoying quirky. and it's hard to funny. focus on. It pretty it's much. Funny. Well, the impression I got first time around was they're kind of trying to do Yoda. They're trying to be like, look, he's a wacky, nonsense, yeah. Yeah. crazy little guy. You don't need to care about him. Oh, he's actually your master for learning about everything mm. that's important about the world. Yep. And he has your quest that is going to be to say, I'm just like, ew, just ew. <laughs> everything about <laughs> it. <laughs> Go away. Never would have thought he would be the Tom Bombadil, master wizard that's going to teach Gandalf how to Gandalf. Whoa. Uh, Whoa. Amazing. He turns his map into bread. Well, Whoa. I also wanted to say fucking 
having a fire in the middle of the day in the desert is a huge f- fucking He's waste a wizard. of resources. It's not hot. <laughs> it's a cold fire. <laughs> it's, it's, it's evil, evil fire. fire. No. It's evil. <laughs> <laughs> Sauron was here. <laughs> but this, uh, so this, this does eat up a lot of time, these scenes, and there's not much to gain from them. Yeah, it's it basically, basically, basically just a to... huge exposition dump. It's like, Tom here, I'm this character. The stars that were mentioned earlier, and he says, we learned that Tom's really, really old. He was here before rivers and trees, and he remembers the first raindrop and acorns. And I, we essentially learn that, like, new, uh, or not Gandalf wants to know if he can get taught magic by Tom. And mm-hmm. Tom kind of implies that he sort of can, but in his weird roundabout, assholey way of avoiding answers and things. But Tom says he has to prove himself worthy of learning magic and getting like a staff and everything. Um, and so that's that's kind of what happens. Yeah. Uh, but it takes Thomas like this is just a weird seven guy. Seven or eight but minutes. But it takes forever. It takes like a yeah. ten minutes, seven, eight, ten I don't know. Sure. But yeah. Um, oh, wait, someone said hear horses in the it being a desert is not necessary about what temperature it is. This one's a hot one. I don't know if we needed to point that out. Yeah, I mean <laughs> d- technically that's true, but you know what we mean because this, well, we're looking we, we, at it and we're I just all didn't here think we needed to mention this one is in this in this world, ruined yes. this area, it's a hot place. It's not a cold place. <laughs> yes. It technically is based off of precipitation, but we can tell by the visuals oh. they're not in the Antarctic. So we can imply that it's pretty hot and shitty. Um, yep. So yeah, they hear some horses in the distance, and uh, not Gandalf asks who these people are that are chasing them. Why are they hunting him? And Tom says that there was actually another Istar who came by earlier, and that has revealed that that's the dark wizard who we've been calling Rasputin mm. on account of the way that. Did, he you, did looks. you think he called himself Dark Wizard when he introduced himself to <laughs> the Dark Wizard? Well, I mean, <laughs> wizard. Hello, I'm wizard. the Dark Wizard. It's like get out are of my house. Are you a nice wizard? <laughs> Well, I, I call me the Dark Wizard. The only reason he's called the Dark Wizard is because they want to do a reveal for him too, where the exact same camera yeah. shot where Gandalf's like, what's your name? And then he, he's like, <laughs> Waldrig, and you're like, like, oh! Saruman or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no! oh. They gotta save it all for everybody to be shocked. But yes, it feels that way. Yeah. And, and my bet is they haven't even fully decided who they're going to make the Dark Wizard, if anybody, because I saw someone suggest he could be the Witch King, and I was like, that wouldn't. That wouldn't. But then again, would they? Why not? No. Everything's on the table. It wouldn't. Why not? But then again, would yeah. they? Well, oh, I don't the, know. The I Witch mean, King is what they've mentioned already to done. be like, um, or someone would ask to mention to be like sorcerers, right? Well, so it's what I'm don't. saying is like they if fuck everything up so much. Is is like, what if they subvert yeah. you? But he, he's, on, he's, on his, Saruman, he's on his story he's... though. So yeah, whatever. He's one of the He can only be like Saruman, Radagast, or one of the Blue Wizards. Yeah. Um. It, I don't think it's Radagast because like, it's just wrong. I think it is mentioned in the appendices to which they do have the rights that Saruman did travel in the East at some point. So it's did, not yes. impossible well, that's the, that they will actually turn him into Saruman and he's actually become evil theory. long before he's supposed to. There's not really anyone yeah, else. Yeah, that's that's, that's the thing. Because I think people saying Witch King is just desperate. It's like, what else can we fit him in? It's like, there isn't really anything else. Mm-hmm. It's probably well, the, the only yeah. other thing would be he gets fucking killed, and it's just like, yep, that's just, he was just he was yeah. that whatever that was. <laughs> well, I mean, it could be <laughs> just, yeah, their own their own mentioned. creation. They just there's a wizard out here, and we're gonna have this little mini plot. I guess it's the plot for the Harfoot stuff, the rune <laughs> stuff, where Gandalf has to defeat the wizard and he becomes super powerful by the end of it, and that's his quest. It would be funny if they said we know a spell to stop the Dark Wizard. It won't kill him, but it will make him small, brown, and crazy. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> It'll also force him to refer to really himself like as animals. Radagast. <laughs> right, <No>. well, okay. <sighs> the riders he outside loves... also disappear. Uh, have an unusual have fondness for hedgehogs. <laughs> um, so, all right. The, um, yeah. I wanted to go through just like uh, just the insane evil plan. Uh, have, you, have you revealed what uh, Tom Bombadil th- says that uh, Rasputin's plan is? Or what he wants um, to do. Not yet. We're we're right on the verge of that. Essentially, okay. um, when he when he tells not Gandalf that he's not the first Istar who came by here, that the first one was Rasputin, the Dark Wizard. Not Gandalf asks what became of him, uh, and apparently he sought to control magic. Now he controls Rune, but he hungers for even more. Doesn't... He seeks an ally more powerful than himself. And if the two combine forces, there will be no end to the burning until all of Middle Earth is ashes oh, and the, no. the plan is that uh, the dark wizard was searching for sauron to join forces with him 
And then there'll be a mm-hmm. dynamic duo that rule the world or something. And if they can't do it now, maybe they'll do it in three films later. True. <laughs> now, <laughs> what so I found cringe about that was a a, it really felt like we would, we've so drifted far away from Lord of the Rings into just copying other movies. Like, you bumped into an old master yeah. whose enemy you have to fight who is an old student. I'm just like, what the fuck are we doing? Like, what is this? <laughs> Oh, uh, that's ring. Well, the ring's yeah, his own identity, man. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Gross. So that uh, yeah, that reveal basically kind of informs everything that Rasputin and the Mystics have been doing, but uh, with extra information that we've had previously in this episode, I just what what their original evil plan was doesn't seem to make any sense because the um, constellation that not Gandalf spawned with is uh is of something called the hermit's hat that the mystics they know that it's called the hermit's hat they're familiar with it and they also knew that he was going to have that in his head because they in? they have their little dinner plate with 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 it on when they meet him and they show him and they're like yeah we know where that is it's the hermit's hat so uh, but they obviously thought that he was sauron and yes. the hermit's hat is directly above tom bombadil's house so what i think unless the writers are just like i don't fucking know just you make it up is uh, Morgoth gets defeated. Rasputin then wants to team up with Sauron because he wouldn't... We, I think we have to assume this happened after Morgoth. Um, mm-hmm. Sauron then gets killed and he disappears, uh, which then delays Rasputin's plan. Rasputin then sees the meteor head towards uh, the lands in the west and he's like, okay, uh, that's probably Sauron. So he sends out the mystics to go and find whoever's there. Uh, they, and, and the plan was that he was going to take Sauron to see Tom Bombadil so that Tom Bombadil could accidentally train him into being like a really powerful wizard so that he could then team up with him. That's that's what the show has basically told us. Well, I suppose so, because all of the other stuff that's in the air is things like, why would they, it, it, it's all based on how do they know that he has the visions of the stars? How do they know that? Why do they think that Sauron is reborn as a meteor? Do they not know that Sauron was died and he exploded in ice? Um, <laughs> like a lot of questions that we have to ask. And it's like, I guess this is just how it kind of, this is just how it went, I suppose. And they know the things they need to know so that the plot can be the thing that they wrote it to be. There's well, no, the there's whole... no connective tissue between all the things, you know? Was it the, was it episode two they talked about the whole, like you, you lifted the veil on the wrong person is how they phrased it. Uh, was... We discussed that. I don't think that's ever actually stated in no, the show. No, they don't say that, but we assume that's what happens. Well, the, a, what I we said was that yeah, the last season. they referred to it as they were lifting the veil, but they, they thought it was Sauron yes. and turned out to be Gandalf. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and we went over yeah. how, like, if you know all of this, then you never would have done the plan as you did it. You would have... You wouldn't risk lifting the veil on a wizard that's going to kill you all. You, you on a fifty-fifty, yeah. If they even, yeah, you, yeah. Well, yeah, because they even said they they knew by saying he's not Sauron, he's the Istar. So they knew yeah. from the beginning that it could have been someone else. It wasn't like, oh, we didn't even think it was possible that it couldn't be Sauron. So yeah, the fact that that risk was there means that their actions make absolutely no sense. Yeah, just bring <laughs> and, back the the weird guy and then check him out when he gets to Rune. Pretty and much, like yeah. the fact that they're walking around with a dinner plate with the constellation above Tom Bombadil's house. That's really cool it's, though. It's almost like they <laughs> just forgot that they wrote that in season 1 because I what are we supposed to make of that other than that they wanted to take Sauron uh, to see Tom Bombadil? Knew? <laughs> yeah, I guess like they they knew ahead of time that the the place where and I guess it's called the Hermit's Hat because does, well, the, does the constellation actually look like it could be a hermit's hat, or do they just call it that because Tom Bombadil is living beneath it? <laughs> well, it's both. The, the constellation on the dinner plate looks a little bit like kind of a top hat, which is weird because Tom Bombadil doesn't wear a hat in this, uh, even though I, I he will. take it he does. Yeah, but, the... we, but we in the audience, we know what wizard's hat looks like because of Gandalf. Yeah. So there but also, you go. But also, like, the idea of something being the hat, meaning that it's on top of, so they could call it the Hermit's hat, because they know that he's the Hermit, because they literally refer to him as the Hermit in this episode. So Rasputin and Skeletor and everyone, they all know, I mean, I guess they might not know that he's Tom Bombadil, but they know that this incredibly powerful (laughs) dude called the Hermit lives underneath the constellation. That's what they know. Well, I mean... Um... All right, so now that we've made sense of everything, 
Oh, <laughs> uh, Tom, Tom. Essentially, the conversation ends and the scene ends when Tom says he's not a warrior. He can't stop Rasputin. Um, and he basically says, Tom, uh, Tom is like, no, this is your destiny to fight um, Sauron and Rasputin and stop yeah, the fire. You... That's your destiny or whatever. That's so Suta. remember the two friends that you cared yeah. about, Gandalf. <laughs> no, oh, fuck no. Yeah, he doesn't fuck mention them. them. He mentions them once in this <laughs> scene. He he's says, completely I, taken I away with the notion that he's special and he's a fighter and all this <laughs> shit. It's just like, bro. He's been yeah, but it's, for it's an because excuse. it's because since the uh, the show has revealed that they're okay, then Gandalf yeah. acts as mm. though they're okay, even though he yep, has no true. reason to believe they're okay. Common ailment, he bad. He stories. should assume that they're yeah. dead. <laughs> he ought to assume that they're yeah. He I absolutely mean, should. Dead or like, like, dead or like, he's dead or maimed. Like his dialogue is certainly not reflective of it. His oh. attitude wasn't when he did care. He was like, "Have you seen my friend?" It should be like, "Oh God, yeah. you should be stressed mm -hmm. out, sweating like hell." Exactly. Like the way they could be yeah. over. Oh God, desperately pleading. Like, yeah. do you know where they are? Can you help me? And there's like four different reasons why he should believe that they are quite possibly dead because yeah. you've got tornado mm -hmm. fall impact, you've got I mm -hmm. I don't have any food or water, you've got it's really fucking hot, and you've got I'm being hunted by Skeletor. Like exactly. any of them. <laughs> He's like, ah, they're probably dead. Yes, if one didn't get him, the other three will. They should be either dead or like lying in the but, desert and dying slowly with broken bones and shit. Like yeah. 78 <laughs> broken bones and they're going to die. Yeah. Are, they, are they lying there saying, like, don't worry, oh, he'll save us. us. He's looking lying. for us. He'll save yeah. us. He'll heal us back. Also, he, says, he says in this scene, like uh, Tom Bombadil says, why are you here? Why did you follow my, my constellation or whatever it is? And he says, I was hoping to find my friends. And it's like, that's not actually why you're here. Yeah, that's a lie. <laughs> we'll skip past that. But like the, the fact that he says that, I think, is meant to be that he was hoping that if Nori and Poppy survived, they would continue following the constellation and that they would also be here. You're once again being quite is kind another... to the film. Uh, Which show. is something yeah. he could have said. Yeah. He could have, yeah, he that's one of those things that he could have said. He's sort of like, well, I, don't, I have no idea where they are. They were thrown away by a tornado that just, uh, it, it just happened for no reason. Um, but it, if they're alive, they'll come this way, and I don't even know where to begin. Or he could have just been more frantic with Tom, like, please help me find them. Do you have a spell, or do you have a yeah. bloodhound or something I can use to find them? Yeah, he's obviously a magic man, so you could ask him then, like, you know, could you help me find my friends? But no, fuck yeah. that. Cast to detect the halfling. <laughs> detect halfling. <laughs> um, halfling. Roll to one. All right. So now let's take a break from Thomas and Rune and all that good stuff out there. And let's return to mm -hmm. our other favorite characters um, Elrond, Galadriel, and company. Uh, they have. Uh, we can assume it's nighttime now. They've been wandering towards uh, the Tyran Gorthad, which, as we Evil learn, is called uh, the no, Barrow Downs. No. Oh. Just yeah, one more thing on that Tom Bombadil. No, he, go for it. He cares significantly clearly about all of this and is going to be so pivotal. Like, he's going to teach Gandalf shit, apparently, and, and is very much invested in the events of how these things will unfold. Interesting choice for adapting that character. That's all I was going to say. Oh, and mm. he turns a map into bread. Yeah, we needed that map, I thought, but it's bread now. <laughs> and Gandalf <laughs> ate it. <laughs> I guess he doesn't because he's here, right? He doesn't need the map anymore because they've arrived at the destination. I guess so, yeah. So now you can eat it. You can turn it into bread and eat it. <laughs> I think if you crush up a map, you can't technically make bread out of it. But please don't do you this could. at home. I get, get, yeah, I guess. Not gonna taste um, good, but he <laughs> yeah, so it's nighttime. They're in a spooky forest, Elrond and company. Uh, this is, uh -huh. as we learned, this is called the Barrow Downs. There's yeah. uh, it's spooky mist and spooky voices in the wind. And one of the elves, uh, well, he's the guy with the knives, Mr. Knives, Elf Knife oh, Man. He's my yep. he, they're looking Mr. around. They're so, he's very badass. They're all, not as yeah. badass as Gladriel, yeah. though. Oh, I love, I love how he's dual wielding all. knives, Rags. He's a cool fucking RPG character. He's very cool. <laughs> Isn't it he's so great how they. I was like, hey, Galadriel, do we have like some trusty elves we can uh, guess? Like, yeah, sure. Mm. And none of them have like an introduction. They're like, they are. They're pretty so much not characters. I, I realized I realized it's that it's basically away. like the the characters from Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon in that they're just <laughs> they're, they're suggested yeah. like let's let's just have them and let's just maybe imply There's a that... woman who has bows for arms. <laughs> 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 well, you literally have you have you have woman with bow, you have man with knives, man with sword mm -hmm. who's wearing a red shirt, and then you also have uh, map man. 
Not that bad. Well, and you just <laughs> you almost want them to be like Elrod's. Like before we head out, you, what's your thing? And he's like, uh, my dad died in the war. I, I've always wanted to prove to him that I was uh, <laughs> worthy of his love. And they're like, okay, next. It's like uh, all my family are dead. I've been alone my whole life. I'm trying to prove myself. Okay, cool. You. And he's like, I'm actually generally pretty happy, but a bit selfish. I'm going to betray you all. It's like, oh, okay, you. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, well, like, I, I grew up surrounded by grain, but then everything changed when the Imperium attacked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, great, great, great. Let's go. <laughs> all right. Uh, so. Know. Move out. We've assembled the Avengers. <laughs> the Elf Avengers. Elf, Elf Avengers. It is, oh, it is that embarrassing. It is. Um, they do the <laughs> it like it's in the trailer. So you guys have seen it, but sweeping shot. Yeah, the Avengers shot. It's just a complete ripoff. But they're just yeah. randos. They're just completely. Yeah. We don't even know oh, anything. Yeah. Isn't and that the great? Who we know? In the trailer, <laughs> in the trailer, you're like, oh, this must be some kind of Elf Assassin Squad, and that they're a part of it. Because like, nope, you got exactly the same information we did in the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> Do they even yeah, like have the, names that we that we don't have to learn in the credits? Or we only get them from the subtitles. Names? They are never named, uh, or at least they are not named prior to this scene. I think the map guy is named later in the episode, but none of them. I don't know the name of the elf, the, the elf lady, and the 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 guy with the sword. Well, don't, yeah, two, don't of, they, two of them they, are named, two of them are not, but not, not, none of them prior to this scene. Don't mm. they name Map Man at the bridge? <laughs> the, everyone asks him something. Uh, yes, you're right. He says it, it, his yeah. name is Camnir, but I, he says like Camnir. What, what, what now? <laughs> Camnir, yeah. he's nuts. Have you guys seen? Um, <laughs> have, have, uh, you guys, have, have you guys seen Galaxy? I West? love Knife Man Fire. in this scene. Look, look at his Quest. movements, man. <laughs> yeah, seen, I am so cool. <laughs> have you seen Galaxy Quest? Yes, well, it's been a while, but no, yes, yes. Oh, a long time. I when I first saw it, obviously one of my favorite fucking jokes was Sam Rockwell as the red shit. They all call him by his surname, right? And then when they realize the mission they're on is dangerous, he goes, wait a minute. Do any of you know my first name? Do any of you know my first name? Like, they're, all like, they're all like, what? He's like, my first name. Tell me my first name. <laughs> yeah, because they keep calling him Guy. Yeah. <laughs> that's... yeah. Fuck, I need to rewatch that movie. But yeah, this feels like it's the so same good. thing. Where it's like, if we got full names for everyone here, and it's like, oh God, oh God, I'm going to die. <laughs> Oh, uh, shit. Also, the Baradan shouldn't exist yet. The fucking kings of Numenor that... Or, or fucking Arnor that doesn't exist yet. Uh, and this is also, like, a very small fixed location that they apparently have to walk into. There was no other way to get the fucking Wurrigan. Yeah. yeah. Nope. Could you can't just run through, through on a horse, stupid. either. Oh, yeah. oh, you, can't go to... you can't go, like, slightly to the right of this location. No, that's no, impossible. If you're... If you're a messenger and you have another messenger with you and you're delivering yeah. a very important message and you're on horses, you can't just bolt straight through that shit and be like, ah, bye, mm -hmm. we're too quick. No. Yep. Especially mm -hmm. with, it's weird considering how the guy, well, I guess, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll just sort of set the scene, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's, there, there's glowing eyes in the darkness and Nelf is like, oh my gosh, I think I hear voices, which I would have mentioned the glowing eyes. Just well, to be fair, that's not what he yeah. says. He says the fucking elf thing. He's like, it's like memories of a song. It's like, shut the fuck up. Tell him there's someone in the fucking cave. Listen, you Jeremy, just tell me what you in see. That cave. I saw glowing blue eyes. We should. Yeah. What do your elf eyes see? <laughs> it's like, well, I have this tale about when I was guilty. No, you fuck. Like, what did you see in the cave? <laughs> well, we're going to call this, um, we're going to call it what the elves do. We're going to call it danger dallying, where they just sort of like <laughs> hang around. And are yeah. spooked instead yeah. of leaving. They just sort of yep. danger dally. Um, they don't stay on the road and keep going. Uh, but they do come across the messengers who were killed. So now we've the mystery is solved. The the what we learn are yes. the Barrow Whites, the spooky ghosts have killed yep. the messengers. Mm -hmm. So I was part of Sauron's plan to destroy the bridge with lightning so that the messengers would have to take a detour <laughs> through the spooky Barrow Downs where they can get killed by ghosts. So the so message dumb. doesn't reach the which so it which does, means name one part of that that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Everything. Well, it, it means that like what Sauron did, it, it, what he didn't do is line up some bandits to be like, okay, guys, there's going to be some very important letters. I need you to keep an eye out and just like kill anyone who comes past. What he did instead is he uh, eviled the Barrow Whites into being there. He kind of reanimated them, and they're they're here now in the woods. Even and though Galadriel figured... said it's an ancient evil. Well, yeah, but but then they say after this scene that oh well something must have awoken them. So I don't think the writers know when this happened. Well, they but are ancient, I, I think, and evil, but they weren't alive <sighs> last week. Okay, I, mean, I guess so. <laughs> they were still ancient and evil, but, but like was, you know, 
Listen, Sauron if, had a if, sleep. If, they were dead, there, but Sauron if the evil walking. is just asleep the whole time, then is it really evil? Because it's not doing anything bad. It's evil just, never sleeps. It's Isn't just that an something from something? Thing? Thing? Probably sure. from something. Let me, let me go go evil. evil oh, never no, sleeps. no, dude, dude, Regs, it's literally a line from Rings of Power. Evil does not sleep, Elrond. It waits. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, my God. There we go. Yeah. Is. Well, evil never well. sleeps. There's uh, a lot so of things. Basically, Sauron has been walking around with all the evil wand or whatever, and it's like, there's monsters mm -hmm. here, and there's a broken bridge over there, and Caladoom's do mirrors going down there. Yeah, uh, boom. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Just shoot uh, evil like, magic um... in every direction, and see what happens. At this so point, it just Sauron, feels a little like, unfair, doesn't when... it? Yeah. Regardless of when the Barrow Whites came back, his plan was that like they'll take care of it. If a letter goes vaguely near them, then they'll grab mm -hmm. it. I guess they'll grab it. No they one will go slightly yeah. to the left of this location. I'm sure it will be fine. We hate the transmission of information in all of its forms. Ah, even though I'm speaking Imagine to you, it's someone gets passed, gets into uh, Eregion, has the message, and fucking <laughs> Sauron. Like, did you? You didn't. You didn't encounter any. He's like, kind of what? He's like. Nothing, nothing. You didn't see anything, no. anything crazy. They were like, "Oh, there's a bunch of zombie ghosts." He's like, "You? Oh, okay, yeah." So you... Unkillable undead zombie ghosts that flew around, <laughs> and they like sucked the guy into the grave and split his bones. But like, it was like Dark that. Souls though, because he would be like, "Oh, how did you get past?" He's like, "You just got to use their own weapons. You just, you, they just drop one. You can use that. It's easy." You're like, "Oh, mm -hmm. okay, damn." Go also, to the graves, take their own weapons. You have to make something like, else next. Shouldn't time. you have to use? Shouldn't you have to use the specific weapon events. on the specific battle wife? If that no, nah, they're, they're a collective. They're a collective. They yeah, all collectively, okay. yeah. If you use it, one of those, it's it a class thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, I got. Let's uh, let's. Nothing interesting happens. Basically, there, there's a bunch of ghost zombies rise up. They are the Barrow Whites, and they one of the elves gets sucked into a uh, into one of the graves, and he gets. You can hear his bones crunching. Yeah, and I, I guess, guess he's like, fucking you know, dead. Something. That guy's they dead. The black they didn't hear first. it coming. <laughs> they, have re they have really good hearing, but they didn't hear it coming. Mm -hmm. uh, Elrond yeah. orders the elves to attack, and they do, but the, uh, um, the Marrow Whites are impervious to the weapons. Got yeah, yeah, so, they do a little so, trolling. Um, they just don't kill them for some yeah, reason. Yeah, Elrond. Yeah. They sort That's of just dramatic. stand there, and, and then they're like, lol, we could get you any time, but we won't. It's like, okay. And, and you know, Galadriel knew it. what they were, but apparently she didn't know about this. Also, Elrond knows how to kill these things. Yeah, so yes, Galadriel exactly. knows what these things are, but she evidently does not know how to kill them, which I think is a little bit weird. Yeah, um, but Elrond, Elrond does. Elrond does know how to kill them, but he, he orders them. them. To, yeah, he orders yeah. them to attack, and then so that the audience can see that actually they they regenerate, <laughs> and then dick. he can demonstrate that he knows how to kill them. And it's like that, well, it's that hilarious. When you, but you know, El, way sooner. Maybe that one guy. Yeah, El, like El, you know, El, Elven Elven memories don't dim except when they do. Apparently, <laughs> like it, what, what should have happened here is Galadriel should have said, "Oh fuck, these are Barrow Whites." Then everyone is like. Uh, oh, okay, cool. I know how to deal with them. Let's go mm -hmm. to this crypt quickly while they're all bursting out of their graves. Grab their weapons and just pop, pop them like whack-a-moles as they come up. Like, yeah. like Elrond, while I do this, we... be careful not to be grabbed by any chains, okay? Elrond, this is we the don't only the... thing you got to do. They... We don't have the time to grab the weapons. It's like they do an intro animations. There's like spawn animations. We'll be fine. They they do, they do this whole thing where they slowly <laughs> come up and slowly wiggle yeah. the chains before we got plenty of time to worry about it. Yeah, but when Elrond goes to one of the fucking tombs, the, the raves just fucking disappear. Like, they're not there anymore. He just, like, yeah, they're not... walks straight through it. <laughs> you would think they would might maybe be guardi guarding the tomb. Mm. Nah. <laughs> then we wouldn't no. have our scene. <sighs> now, that's, true. that's true, yeah. And boy, what a great scene it is. It's actually yeah. packed and dramatic, and there's a lot of tension. And yeah, uh, really they, kill, they, they kill the Barrow Whites with their own weapons, and they carry on. I have to mention this one really <laughs> specific stupid scene that stood out to me. You know, except all the other things that are also stupid. <laughs> the, the one, the, the fucking bow lady is about to shoot, and Galadriel's like, <laughs> no, don't shoot. And we think, oh, probably because it doesn't work. Oh, but yeah. no, apparently, apparently Galadriel figured out, oh no, if you shoot now, it goes exactly into the other elf that's behind her, uh, the fucking... Mm -hmm. White. That, that guy is a fucking arrow magnet, dude. <laughs> like, how the yeah, fuck? There's, first there's of all, weird... what a fucking what the limp ass shot what was that that he just fucking released? Mm -hmm. That it just goes down immediately. And then oh. Elrond's like, oh, no worries, I can just cut it in half and then everything is fine. It's like, what, what was that? Elrond's the politician. It almost he, hit him in the face. He, is, yeah. he has quick enough reflexes to, to deflect an arrow with his sword with with basically no notice. Like, he, he hears Galadriel say no, and then I guess yeah. maybe he hears the arrow get fired. I guess so. Yeah, it's like a fucking Jedi when they fucking cuts the arrow. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. It's like Jedi level yeah. reflexes from Elrond, who 
yeah. until this Smoke scene. Warrior. He, we have never seen him fight, and he, honestly, he doesn't really fight in this scene, apart yeah. from deflecting that arrow. They also mm. do the fucking thing where Elrond gives them the weapons, like, use this to stab them, then the stab's like, oh, wow, how did that happen? And then he gives the explanation immediately. I, I always hate when they do this, like, get the job done, and then after this, you can still talk, it's like, oh, wait, how did, why did this work? Like, some urgency in fights is pretty nice. You normally don't have time just, to just felt like talk they needed about a random scene. shit. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah of course. Scene it we have a close up of fights. In. I'm not fond of how the Barrowites look either. They're just CG things that kind of bore me. It's CG slob, yeah. really. It looks pretty bad. They could have made them like really creepy yeah. zombies that like shuffle towards you. And I like the blue look... eyes. Or something. The blue eyes are all right. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. they look pretty cool, but it's just they, they, they spawn because action scene and then they're gone and that's it. Actually, like, I think if they were. Um... To be here. Physical with a lot of smoke, they probably look cooler than they do. I, I just, I distinctly yeah. got an impression of oh, like, yeah. oh, CG monsters, cool. Yeah. As from all the pro all the uh. predictions or the ideas I had, what could have stopped the messengers in the end with the <laughs> with attacks? This, that this was not on my. This was what I was card, thinking about last was, yeah. week when you were talking. This about was, it. was one like, of the yeah. yeah. <laughs> this was one of the most <laughs> retarded things they could have done, like ironically. There's so, so many other stupid. like okay options they could have gone with. <laughs> uh. Well, um, yeah, they defeat the Barrow Whites, and it's really bad, and the action sucks. Galadriel almost dies, but unfortunately, Elrond saves her. Yeah. Um, stuff happens. One of the elves is dead. The name. Uh, of moving on, I guess. Unless anyone has anything else to say about the Barrow Whites in this sequence, I hate them. There's a completely fucked edit in there. I don't know if we want to. Go through it. Oh, the one with Elrond. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, Elrond fucking turns into yeah, the guy morphs. when the other guy's running. <laughs> the, yeah, the knife weird. guy. We see the knife guy running, and then in the next shot, it's actually Elrond because surprise, Elrond's the one that was actually there saving you when it wasn't. Mm. It was the guy with the knives. But yeah, great editing. Yeah, I think I, don't I know, need to rewatch that. I didn't even catch that. That was a weird one. It's weird. <laughs> they, yeah, they. You're they just, just in like it feels like they slapped it together. We, you're watching like a really poorly executed fight scene, and so you just kind of your mind goes into this weird malaise mm -hmm. of like apathy, yeah. and, like nothing, yeah. nothing matters that you're actually watching. It's just about what the plot wants to have happen, <sighs> and that's what happens. But it's got to feel right. like you're watching things happen, even though it doesn't really make any sense. But yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Isildur. Yay! Well, yeah, we're mm. back to Isildur and. Um, uh, in Arondir, we're, we're looking for. Uh, he went back to Pelargir to get a search party to look for Theo, I suppose. Uh, and so Arondir and him uh, are, are at the Wild Man camp where they got ambushed. Uh, now, Arondir, they're looking around, and Arondir says that wild men wouldn't have left their weapons, that an axe head to a wild man is worth more than gold. Which, okay. like, I get, I suppose. <laughs> That a, an axe head is really, you know, an axe head is really valuable if you live out in the woods and you're wild and stuff. But you can um, yeah. buy axe to, heads with to gold. To do the meme again and be like, well, gold? What am I going to do with that? Gold can be exchanged for goods and services. <laughs> I mean, they might, not, they might not be able to buy things. I guess they can buy things from each other. They're but, banned you know, from the like, market you know. on account of their uh, unruly behavior. So. They, might, they yeah, might not be the markets. <laughs> we know where they, they, they say to go to the market on their behalf. They have to, they have to like, shave and give a bath. And he's like, <laughs> they are got to do this, otherwise they won't trade with us. <laughs> So they're they're looking around, looking for Theo, and they can't find Theo. And Arondir says, "Don't worry, Theo has survived far worse." Um, <laughs> I don't uh -huh. know what is being referred to by this. I don't know what far the, worse thing. Maybe well, him Theo has him survived. surviving well, he in the especially the considering stuff. Arondir doesn't know what the hell's going on. That's yeah, true. he doesn't know what happened. All he knows from what Isildur could have possibly told him is that Theo's been ca uh, captured slash killed. Theo's been attacked oh, he ran by off something. And he's lost. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. That's all yeah. we know. He's been attacked I, I left by him something. with the wildman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Theo so... could literally have just run away and hasn't come back yet, and he got lost. Mm -hmm. We don't. We don't actually know. Yeah. In his defense, though, like most bad things fall below volcanic explosion, don't they? Like he survived a volcano going off in his face. That's so true. it's reasonable. Oh, yeah, to yeah, yeah. That that. He survived he that first. explosion with the orc in season one, one of his earliest scenes. Then he had the the thing in the well. Remember when he stayed in a well for like a whole day because he was retarded? Oh yeah, <laughs> he hid in the Just... well. Yeah, yeah, you know, he, he stayed he's in the well for a day. He's had some adventures. <laughs> but the, I, I've... 
Like, Iran, they should be really fucking pissed with the Sildur at this point. They went off to find a horse, and then he just left him with the Wildman. Uh, yeah, yeah, he should, you're right. You, you should be like, this was an insanely yeah, he, yes. stupid plan, and then you also just left him. You fuck. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you fucking asshole. Like, but Iran has, like, no urgency. Offer a horse? Yeah. And and he says, just, oh, don't blame yourself, dude. It's fine. Like, w w what? <laughs> I think the only <laughs> one who shows less emotion like, like, than Iran here. Is... Like, what the fuck? I, I think he just tells <laughs> everybody you. that all the time. That's his standard advice. Just don't, mm -hmm. don't blame yourself. Uh, somebody's like, Ex no, except maybe... if they're branded, though, then they're going to kill him. <laughs> yeah. It's like, maybe blame yourself sometimes, bro. <laughs> sometimes. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's like, man, I don't know. Like, Arundir, do you have do you have a, a better jacket? <clears throat> it's, like, really cold tonight. And Arundir's like, listen. He puts his hand on his shoulder. Don't blame yourself. <laughs> all right, you can't be angry at yourself all the time. You just have to let it go, you know? It's oh. not your fault. <laughs> and you, like, um, axe murder a around. whole family, and he's like, it's not your fault. Uh, <laughs> not your fault, yeah. man. It was Sauron. Um, Arondir sees a, a, a torch in the woods, and he goes to check it out, and it's a severed mm -hmm. arm and a ripped-up wild man who's been, like, crushed by something. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Which, it's which is what I absolutely up. see with its fucking elf eyes, but no. <laughs> No, <laughs> he just he just uh, calls out to him. Oh, dude, well, call the away. the consistency of elf <laughs> senses is yeah. well, it it isn't it isn't consistent. It's super <laughs> yeah, inconsistent exactly. with what they're able to see and what they're able to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, they go through the trouble of telling us that you know elves have incredible senses, and then this a lot of the time when they, they just don't. don't have it. <laughs> so don't. and and good memories, except when they don't. Uh, you know, it's it's whatever the plot needs to happen. Uh, so yeah, the, I guess they, they give up in the next morning, back at Pilar Gear, uh, they're talking about uh, Arondir's talking about what he thinks he saw it's kind of vague um, and uh, the people want to attack the wild men, because they think the wild men are, uh, are, are a big problem well, the people at Pelagir, they're like, yeah, we should go attack them uh, and, and Esther says that they should go look north because there are wild men there, and worse oh um, yeah, so we, we no one asked. I don't know if that anything becomes of that. Uh, probably not. Uh, is Sildur in Estrid or sort of implied to have this blossoming romance? They're over by the uh, over by the little well. By the well, wall. he's a simp and she's a thought, so Ooh. Yeah. and uh, the Damn. the uh, what was mentioned previously about her having a betrothed, I don't believe that is actually mentioned in this scene. And um, I, I think at this point, the implication is that she might have been lying. I thought it was just that they assumed he's dead. Uh, I, uh, if that's the case, she's moved on fucking quick. Yeah, because there's, there's a later scene which gives the, uh, the truth of that matter. Like, I think uh, it's yeah. the end of this episode, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is, yeah. <laughs> um, Good. let and me see. So they're chatting. Isildur and Estra are chatting. Oh, hee hee, I have a jar. It's got water. Hey, do you know what aqueducts are? Uh, I came. It's, 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 uh, I, I came. don't know why I said I came. Um, <laughs> I, came. <laughs> I actually don't know why I said The that. scene took a um, turn. The scene did. <laughs> so, Talk about um, aqueducts again for me. From, from witness to witness. <laughs> so we have them chatting back and forth. Blossoming romance. Don't think about the uh, the fiancé that I mentioned or whatever. And a Rondir shows up. And a Rondir, uh He's a, he, he wants to know, um, hey, he's a, he's Estrid, uh, how much time uh, did you spend around the Wildmen since you mentioned them up in the north? And she says, well, I was hiding up there from them. Uh, but that's when Arondir notices, or says he noticed, the wound on the back of her neck, which is fresh. Uh -oh. uh, where she, like, burned over her burn. She rebranded the brand. Her neck must hurt. Hurt. Yep. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, in fact, yeah, uh, you gotta think having having all that hair on it is not good. all the hair on it. Yeah, yeah and they we'll we'll probably like merge oh, with not. moving her neck at all will give her pain constantly. <laughs> like it's just. Well, yeah. they never do that. Well, where someone gets like... a terrible branding burn and people just act act, act like oh this will hurt for ten minutes and then it'll be gone. Like no, oh, yeah. that bitch will hurt for really? days. Yeah. I haven't seen Jackass too, where it was shown oh, that a oh, brand. God, yeah. Fucking hurts a lot, obviously, yep. and, and that it looks really, really bad after a couple of weeks. Really the bad. Thing is, the, the wound will heal like over the hair as well and get caught in it, and it will be fucking. Yeah, awful. it's actually it's actually worse than what would have happened in that because that was on his ass. Yes. 
This one is yeah. in like a place that where... That was the Dick brand, right? Yes, yes. The yes. Dick Dick brand that I put on them. And he kept doing <laughs> it wrong, and then he had to yeah, navigate so it up with like, like six like, marshals. Yeah, oh. he had like three... He had like a main one, but then a couple of like sort of smaller Did ones. ones and a set of balls. <laughs> <laughs> Just a set of balls on his ass. And uh, yeah, it didn't look oh, good. It was like hyper-infected. And, and that was not medieval mm. times. That was <laughs> only 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um so let me I mean, it's, it's just a dumb and why would you not turn up and say oh uh, i was captured by the wild men and they branded me but and i escaped. escaped and that's such a yeah, easy story fly, rather than say, waiting for yeah. an elf to turn up and say oh i notice you've been setting fire to your own head like, that's not <laughs> It's because the other man will it's kill you instantly if you seize the brand. It's the obvious <laughs> lie. Yeah, they threatened knows. to kill me. I knelt. They branded me, and I didn't like the, that's that's a brand now. I've got it. It sucks. I don't Elf want man it. doesn't give a fuck though. He will just fucking cull you. Do you see the way that he grabs <laughs> well, it? By the way, it's like they're in a fucking dance, like a yeah. musical. Yeah. Like, yeah, why is she spinning well. like that? <laughs> like, well. You have to cooperate to do that. <laughs> this is so, so um, oh. Aaron this says. Uh, what is it that he says? He says so. He he ba he basically knows at this point that something's up with her, and he's he's wanting to give her the opportunity to come clean. And he says, yeah. uh, "We all do foolish things sometimes, especially in moments of hopelessness." So, yeah. like what he's referring to there is presumably um, becoming evil uh, from his her, perspective. Well, her kneeling uh, <laughs> before Adar in order to save her own life because she was in yeah, a moment he, of hopelessness. Specifically because we know him. He's saying, it's like, you've chosen to be evil. You chose to serve Adar when you should have just let yeah. him fucking kill you. And it's like, no. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I want to live, then escape. Like, like I did. And now I got you fucking like trying to kill me as well. Uh, also, we also missed the explanation for the fucking... The mark there, right? Or does does that come later? Oh, we did uh, make that's fun of it. Happen now. We did make yeah, fun yeah. of it earlier as well. But yes, she does try to cover yeah. it by saying she fell asleep by the fire, and thus burned her <laughs> fucking neck. And it melted her. My hair off, is fine you know? though. <laughs> yeah, like, my hair is totally fine, lie. but my neck yeah. got burnt. <laughs> it's like a lie that a six-year-old would tell their yeah. parents when they got caught doing shit. something. I mean, and, bad. and the entire audience is sitting there with like the way better lie. And she's like, why is she so stupid? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you well, can't deny the brand. Like, it's just, it's, you can't deny that. It's there. Well, also, yeah. she says that and, and figures that neither Arendir or Isildur are going to want to be like, oh, shit, do you want, can we, like, make sure you're okay? Can I see that? Like, because oh, the, the, the only reason why we, why we can think that she wouldn't want to say, I got branded, I'm not evil, or a wildman. Can I have some help, please? Is because when you are branded, everyone just thinks that you are evil, which is insane. It, it, but that's like, the logic that's required for this to make sense. And on top of that, she attacks. What do you? What is your plan, yes. woman? Yeah. <laughs> she thinks she can outrun him. Elf. Um. Uh, yeah, stupid. Punch him. Oda like, didn't work. Run. Oh, damn. And you'd be like, well, she's desperate. It's like, yeah, but even... Ugh, yeah, but now this, this makes you look way worse, because now it makes it harder for you to sell the yeah. story that, you know, yeah. like, oh, man, I ran yeah. away. It's, it's like she punches him. Yeah. I'm innocent, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. You, you <laughs> hit it and you fought back. <laughs> like, yeah, it's uh, not looking great. Also, like one... that he's the one who spots it when, like, he's the one who is now most famous for not noticing when people are actually dying. But minor <laughs> wounds on the neck, that's, yeah, he spots that straight away. <laughs> Superficial. It's, it's them, the it's them selective elephants. Stinky orc arrows. Not so much. Yeah, that was in her liver, and you can't see that from the outside. So it <laughs> just happened. It's like in a burst appendix or something, you know? It, sure. I don't know if you can see that, actually. I'm not a, I'm not a doctor. Um, I, I haven't even played one on TV. Right? Um, I think so. I think it was the shoulder. I can't remember. A non-fatal place, or so mm. we were led to believe. <laughs> <laughs> and then the actress was like, nope. Nope, I'm out oh, of here. Bron I Sorry, ran... Bronwyn, it was through her shoulder. Bronwyn, Look, I just realized, yeah, by yeah, the way, because he even mentions this. Like, he's not even got a limp, is he, Isildo? He's just... No, nope. he's nope. just walking around. Oh, he's fine now. No, um, he, he, he barely had, had a limp. He was like, yeah, really good it. with medicine. <laughs> Fucking hell. You can't yeah. get anything uh, right. Was, <laughs> Not no, anything no. at all. Like, he, he, they, was, he, he was. He was barely limping the next scene. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's uh, yeah, also it's like, I, fine I don't know if we skipped it just but the um aaron Deer says that the act of covering up the brand is something that the wild men are known to do yeah mm -hmm. he's evil which, yep. just which, an evil thing to which, say at this point it just makes well, it, it, is, all these, it is, so, yes like on the one hand no that is not what we have seen because the the only reference that we have for that is a guy who didn't do that <laughs> yeah he true, reached man. up um, at the cart before he ambushed yeah. it and it was on his arm yeah uh, clear as day two Two is that basically if she's doing that, then she's replacing one identifiable mark with another, which means yeah. it's not going to serve the purpose. And given what we learn later in the episode, you know, she would absolutely know that that's a thing that they're known to do. Um, yeah, it's uh, there's a third yeah. point, but I've forgotten it. If you, put, if you put on pants, you no longer you could at pants. least make that's it a bit it more brutal <laughs> that anyone who does kneel to Adar gets the brand, but they only get it once they've proven themselves, and that involves having to kill someone who refuses to kneel. So at least you oh, could be that's like, a good idea. Yeah. oh, yeah, so anyone who has the brand did the deed then. Anyway, and and yeah. you know you could at least have that guilt level to it as well. But yeah, what he says is insane. It's it's all the ones that mm -hmm. escaped. Which... Is it... <laughs> Fuck him, I guess. He's just lawful evil at this point. You know, just kill everyone who's uh, you know even associated with leather. Yeah, so and they yep. just if figure you get branded, they... you're just evil. They yeah. figure that she is evil, not because she has been branded with the mark of Adar, but because she tried to cover it up, so she's a wildman, so she's evil. It's just... It, it's completely nonsensical. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he um, says, like, um, uh, to Isildur, like, we would have caught her uh, oh, yeah. if he if she hadn't come in with you? Is that what is that what it is? Something it's like implied... That, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's something along that is implied with... He is the reason that she got in. They didn't check because, well, she's with the Sildur, so we wouldn't have mm. checked her. She's obviously fine, yes. Yeah. Apparently. E even though if they believe that the mark means what it means, meaning you are evil, then they would absolutely check both of them. I'm, I'm thinking of, like, The Last of Us, you know, checking someone for zombie bites before they mm -hmm. come into your settlement. You're absolutely doing that. And Yeah, you check the, yeah. Check the neck and the arms, like, in the obvious yeah. spots. Yeah. And, like, the only reason why... I mean, we, we didn't see a scene of them arriving in Pelagia because it happened off screen when we cut from the forest to the Bronwyn funeral scene. And mm -hmm. I guess the reason why we didn't see that is so that they could reveal later that she's been that she's been branded. That's all I can think. If yep. So it happened off screen. We just have to accept that they didn't get searched. If it happens yep. enough, that it's like a cultural thing he's commenting on, then we rewind time and some wild men maybe came in <clears> and they were like, we're good people, and then they trick them, and then it's like, damn, we should have known, because you had the scars. And then the wild men are like, shit, we're gonna have to start you know, accounting for that, because now they figured out all the all of us are evil from our little little brandings, which doesn't make any sense anyway, and so they start over-branding them, and then coming in and being like, I'm not an ADAR person, that's just a random brand of nothing. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> like, it's none of this... I fell into the fire yeah, none of this makes sense at any <laughs> level. And the fact that it's been going on long enough that it's a thing Arondia, like is using to sniff people out, I was just like, all of that was insane. <laughs> and you could have written a way better scene of them realizing she has the mark, we all think she's super evil, then she makes a case, and they don't trust her anyway. You could have just been that. Yep. There's no reason not nice to do it that way. Yes. Like I was, I was a prisoner, and it's like we don't know you were a prisoner. We don't know that you were fucking Waldreg levels of loyal. Okay, he was legendary in these parts. We got to be careful. You could be yeah. the next one. The next Waldreg. I belong to a cattle rustler named Alameda Slim. This is what he put on all of us. <laughs> all right, we've got. He wakes uh, up Theo in a tree. Is... <laughs> That's, That's the scene. Wakes up Moving on. <laughs> There's some wild men there, whatever. <laughs> Theo's alive. It's just to let us know that Theo's alive, because we were really oh. worried about him. Remember well, how they pr prepared to move out, but now only those three are going, and they don't even have any provisions with them, yeah. even though he told I, them I, to get provisions. I, yeah. I want to mention it's really stupid that whatever creatures are you know, behind this actually capturing people. And uh, they can sense. easily fucking they they can easily get out of the, the oh yeah. in the fucking yeah. as well. well <laughs> and and we already know that whoever it is that has captured uh, these people, they are absolutely willing to kill people. Oh, we, yeah. see, we have multiple references for it in this episode and the previous. God, there's one. so many. You see yeah. the shot. There's so many ways to get out. It's insane. Like, yep. <laughs> it, it is. It's yeah. actually. You almost want to prove it. You're like, let me get, let me in. I'll show you. There's so many ways out. You dumb <laughs> yeah. fucks. <laughs> you know, some of them mm -hmm. they just rest. And like, I don't just, I just, I'm the, just comfy. The holes are like, like way bigger than they are. Yeah. This is much a tree chair. It's a tree house. It's pretty neat. One, why? You know? Why would you yeah, keep yeah. them alive? Like, what is the I'm point not, of not? Yeah, like why? There is literally no reason. It's because it's because trading. 
the writers want the narrative so payoff longer. at the end of the episode. It's like having That's a bunch of rats, it. and he tortures one per night and just keeps them all alive. Then he then he water the trees with their blood. <laughs> it's like Ursula and all the little shrimp things that she eats. No. Oh. Um. Next scene. Uh, did we talk about the whole? I guess. Do, oh, did we talk about the whole? Oh, you, 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 you wish that I died in Mordor thing that Estrid asks. Isildur. Yeah, I wish you did died. Did we talk about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um. Theo's trapped right. in a tree. Okay. Arondir and Isildur <laughs> fall into quicksand mud. Um, I don't know how he managed to do this. We just like this the camera scene. turns and he's stuck in it's mud. Hilarious. I hate most of the kind of into the middle of it. But this was such yeah. a like, oh for fuck's sake, you guys can't make drama properly. You just have to generate it. Like yeah. you fucking poof uh... it into existence. Sorry, I'm in the squelchy uh, so floor. He... <laughs> so Isildur is is like it, it's absurdly quick, this quick sand, quick mud, whatever it is. Wow. Uh, so much so that Arondir can't even pull him out because they both basically fall in and they get sucked yep. into the mud. Uh, yeah. Leaving He's Astrid dead. there to be like, oh no, uh, I guess they went into the mud. That's bad. And she oh, looks worried e and everything. Astrid's hands are cuffed, by the way. That's important mm -hmm. just to mention. Yep. Uh, yeah. So she goes and gets a stick. And no, then but she... they play it as as if she's gonna run away when obviously she's not. Like they kind of they kind of no. like shoot it as I like, don't oh, geez, she's abandoning them. She's but, but like, Gandalf run the scenario. You like this will prove is she a good or is she a bad? And it's like, but if she was a bad, she'd still do this, wouldn't she? Exactly, because she's cuffed. What's she gonna do? How's she gonna break out of her cuffs? Uh, you could find a wild man and break it with an axe or something. And I, but, it, but, uh, there's so little benefit, I feel, uh, and so much risk of being mm -hmm. killed. Especially if, yeah. you know, who knows what the wild man... Maybe we don't know what her relationship with the wild man would have been had she... I'm saying this, it, yeah. it doesn't work because she's not evil, but if she were... In any case, the, the <laughs> fucking shoving the, the, the fucking branch in there, I was so <laughs> struck by how stupid and useless that would be because... <laughs> She's a twig. She, what are you gonna do? Pull two grown men out of there? I don't think no, so. It's just, well, if, if they, if he couldn't uh, pull out a Sildor, what chance has she got? Exactly. She's it's, gonna yeah. pull out both oh, of them. Got a stick. <laughs> that helps. Why would that even yeah. mean anything? And yes, then it spawns a giant fucking monster. <laughs> like a video game. Yeah, this is why I was oh, not expecting man. to have like a Kong Skull Island creepy yeah. <laughs> serpent bug monster. But apparently, uh, yeah, it turns uh -huh. out they got eaten by this this evil serpent. And yeah, look at this thing's mouth. Astrid. Yeah, you should, you should pull some the mouth. Yeah. So yeah, this thing was basically, this thing was chewing on Isildur's leg and it slowly yanked them into the thing because Isildur was getting kind of slowly pulled down for a little bit and then suddenly, bang, they both go under, which means it was probably holding on to him for a little while. And its mouth looks like this. Yeah, how Maybe does he was taking advantage fine. of the actual quicksand. Oh my god! I don't, how does that swallow you and you are fine? How? I, it, yeah, it happened off screen. Is how? Maybe it opens yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. Like did, the, did the people who designed this creature portal. get told what it did? Do you think? Probably not. Uh, probably not. Maybe, right? They were probably told yeah, design a swamp it. snake snail massive horrible monster thing. Worm thing. And like, what is it yeah. for? It's like we have no idea. We'll figure it out later. You just design it. <laughs> yeah, what this needed to be yeah. was something like a sandworm from Dune. Mm -hmm. Giant, giant Big open hole. Mouth that's yeah, yeah, you need to yeah, not make it. Hole. It looks like you can't even get a leg through there without it getting fucking blended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't buy it at all. It's ah, such a kind of... goofy yeah. fucking payoff. It's like, look, you stabbed it through the. Yeah. Oh, it should have just been quicksand. Yes. If it was yeah. just quicksand, then they could go bloom, 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 and then she could no, leave. But... But we instead, need, she comes we, back and saves them, and that accomplishes what they're trying to do. Except it actually makes sense ooh. because there's no way they could have known that she poked this thing's head with a stick. Yeah, that was my big thing we from need this the scene. I was like, so far, they, like, they fucked up the one goal of this scene, which is to prove that she's not as evil as they thought. But they couldn't have known; they wouldn't know anything that she yeah. did. Yeah. We, yeah, we need a, we need a, we need a reference for like unable little things living down in the deep darkness or whatever. So that's why we had this scene. That was the really frustrating thing watching this is like knowing all of the time we've spent getting to this point was principally there so they could throw in a reference and that's yeah. it. Like all that time, what have we achieved? A minor character thing in proving that what's a name is kind of good after all. That was only for and us though. A reference. Because remember, the and following yeah, well, scene is when they considered releasing it, but why? 
there's nothing they haven't learned anything at all from their POV that would make them think anything about her. No. Well, the writers they didn't see what she did them, so they know no, that. Apparently, they didn't see that. They didn't see. I know yeah. at all. Yeah, it's, 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 they yeah. just they, all they <laughs> see is that she's still there. That like that's that's all they see. Also uh, yeah. worth asking the question at this point, but where are the rest of the peasants? Because by yeah, the as end, I said earlier, the way, yeah, that's, that's, that would yeah, have solved the, the problem. Whole point of all of this, if you had even one of yeah. them to say, by the way, she didn't run, you know that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, fucking stupid. Because they mm -hmm. make this whole deal like we're gonna go oh. north. We hate all those cannibal uh, fucking wild men, and then all, only those those three get, three go and don't even yeah. have the provisions they talked about. It's like okay. I mean, and I was also thinking, bring Beric. Where's the horse? Use the horse to pull them out of the swamp. Nah, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> And and also they are they are down there for quite some time and then they're, they're really good at holding the breath under stress. I like this image. They as seem the, okay the with this. Of the whole show, by the way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Why was that? Yeah. Oh no, because this is past tense and we're still experiencing it in our lives. <laughs> yeah, he's still experiencing <laughs> we, it. The scene. It's uh, it's not over, but he's still asking the questions. What was that? Yeah. No, he got he's got spat out. They're fine. They're all good. No trauma. Uh -huh. Rags, I'm going to tell you, Isildur's got a lot left, probably even all five seasons, actually, so they can't kill him. No, no, he's good. Yep. He's all set. I wonder how many more times they can't kill him. Apparently they're gonna... How many times will they bait his death, though? That's up for the air. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of... Uh, I, don't, I don't know, but let's move on. Um, <laughs> oh, we have, we have a Ron Deere says, like, a little joke. Yay. Um, uh, really. He says they're nameless things that Lurk in the world, and this one we're um, gonna call supper. Reference. I don't know if I want to eat that. I don't know if I want to eat that either. I wouldn't. It's covered in mud, and I don't know if you could. This, this creature is edible. Yeah. Maybe he knows that you can eat it. Well, yeah, said it, it could, that could be like the venom <laughs> gland. Could be yeah. so wrong. Cracking a that joke. That could be the poison sack. They're trying to find <laughs> Theo, and he's cracking jokes. Odd place like to have which, one. Yeah, which is honestly out of character from anyway. He doesn't fucking do that. Ever. No, he has never done that mm. once. This is the only time he has smiled in the entire series. Yeah, you would yeah, expect the same him expression to do that every like other after scene. they've done something, and there's not like a, they don't they don't have something to do that's that requires their attention. There's the like not not here, not here. If you want to have him lightening up at certain parts, that's one thing, but not not here like this. It's just it seems yeah. out of place. Also, deep places of the world sort of traditionally means down in the depths of mountain mines. It doesn't mean under mm -hmm. like five foot of mud. That's not <laughs> quite. <laughs> oh, that's where the dark in is. In a forest the right next to Polar Gear. Yeah. 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 The the water in the water is one of those creatures as well. Though. So they like occasionally make their way to the surface, but it's very, very fucking rare. Mm. Like, yeah. Well, it's lucky they cross paths with this one so that that way she could yeah. prove that she's not that bad. Mm. To nobody but us. Well,. Which Speaking doesn't help of... in universe. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I, I, I have no I have no segue. Let's go back to Rune and visit the Harfoots. <laughs> no. Uh... No. Yes. Don't worry, we're getting there. We're almost we're almost there. So close. Back with the Harfoots, the store leader, this chick, Gund Gundabale. Gundabale. The, Gund. <laughs> the, Gund the, Gund the big the big G. She Gundabale. says that they have to be cast out in the morning to be safe. Because they're um, still psychopaths, even though they're not yeah. super hard. All halflings anymore. are evil, is what I've they're been just convinced all fucking crazy. this show. Yeah, pretty much. All halflings are not even like foolishly generous and nice, which is something, but they're just bad, and I hate them. Um, yeah. So uh, Gundabale recognizes um, this. Nori randomly mentions Sadok, and mm -hmm. Gundabale recognizes that reference to that name. How incredibly fortuitous! Like, oh, I watched these. So one. she. Where did you say she unties, <laughs> unties Nori and takes her to a mural. And Gundabale tells Nori about a story about how in the ancient days there was a Stuer dreamer who dreamed of a nicer place with water and soft ground. And this is implied to be, this is, I mean, this is Sadok's ancestor. Uh, his last name's Burroughs. Um, and I don't know if they're trying to imply that the, the Shire appeared to a Stuer in a dream. And that was a magical destined place for all hobbits to one day live in peace and harmony or whatever. That's I'm what it sounds like they're trying to imply, yes. It's like she mentions you can dig a hole and live in it, yeah. Because they the only the only part of it that isn't explicit is that they don't call it the Shire, but they call it the Suzad, mm -hmm. which is I mean it's 
it's similar enough, and given that the description is exactly what we see from the Shire, and I don't know exactly how it's described. I thought the translation of that was there. the Shire. Oh, if it literally translates, then yeah, it, it is. But they've decided basically to do with the Shire what they've done with the Harfords. They, they've just amped them up in importance because they figure, well, the audience needs to, you know, everyone likes the Shire, so let's make yeah. it really important. It was the prophesized Holy Land that mm -hmm. appeared for all the little people. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it also <laughs> it also means that um, Sadok's ancestor was the, was the guy that um, went off to Orgal. I guess what was it, R Roramas? Yeah, I don't uh, know Roramas. It. Yeah, I don't know what gender that word is, but um, went off uh, into the west to try and find this prophesized holy land, and then just didn't go far enough west, and then eventually mm -hmm. they just started wandering around and became big, the Harper yeah. that we know and hate today. Uh, yeah, yeah pretty much. and it's implied that Poppy's walking song is supposed to be like the proof mm. that Arfits all kind of come out of the Stewars who are in Rune. That's like their origin, as far as we know. Um, yeah, which, by the way, makes it really weird that they're so again, again, it's really weird to see super multiracial groups like this when they're all. It, it's like shown here that they're all from the desert. They should all have like mm -hmm. brownish kind of skin and like a Middle Eastern like sort of complexion because they're from the desert. But they're all well, running around, just... and we've got every every you know shade imaginable, and it's just really we weird to see to that. Be... Yeah, we that was one to be thing. That... Multicultural, every single time. Well, yeah, like the priority it seems was multiculturalism rather than diversity, um, because you could absolutely have done diversity and had it be accurate to the source material. Not that they care, but um, if, correct me if I'm wrong. The Harfords are described in the source material as being browner of skin. I think so. Like, yeah, the, whether that literally Harfords means. Are, yeah. The half it's ba it okay. basically means like Mediterranean kind of skin color. Yeah, so yeah. whether that if literally you... means black people, I, it, I don't know. But I mean, if they did that, then it would be like, okay, well, they're all they're all portrayed by black actors. Like, okay, fine. But my mm -hmm. theory as to why they didn't do that is because they knew that the Harfords weren't going to be appearing after season one. So they didn't want to have the, the faction portrayed by the quote unquote diverse actors and then have them just not be in the series after season one. Which is weird. You could have had, you could have changed it up a bit in a way that makes sense, where the Harfits themselves are a lot more fairer in complexion because they have been out of the desert for a long time. And then yeah. when they get to the stores, the originals back in the, you know, the desert, they have much more, you know, brownish Mediterranean, you know, sort of complexion because mm -hmm. they're from that climate. And then it's like, oh, hey, look how we've changed. We've been separated for so long. And, you know, we kind of look a little bit different because we've lived in a different part. And that would be like, oh, hey, like a, uh, you know, one group meets another group and they look a yeah. bit, little bit different. And it's like, oh, that's some world building would, right would there. Would make it done. a, make it a bit more distinct as well. Yeah, it'd be interesting know. to be like, look Change. how you know we've we changed over time, but we're like your like like ancestor sort of in a way. Um, but even yeah, they, they could just change their clothing because uh, when they first meet, um, whatever his name was, nobody, um, Simple Jack, Merrimack, I can't remember yeah. what his actual name was. Yeah, um, when they first meet him, they mistake him for a Harfoot, and he's like, what's a Harfoot? So they look so similar that they even think that he is literally one of them. Like, what are Harfords doing out here in Rune? They don't, I assume they, they think they, all they little think people all. are Harfords, which I yeah, guess would be a I fair know. thing to say. If you're I figured it was because of his clothing, but yeah, you might be right there. Yeah, it's probably just because he's a little guy. But yeah, why, right. how come he's tied up with the other two? Because uh, he's they a tie up? Okay, well, maybe that, that's they just tie the retard up every <laughs> night anyway. Them, they just tie him up. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, I live here. Him. <laughs> they tie him up as this is my room. I live here. So, <laughs> also, something that uh, I, I think it was Mauler earlier said is that based on the revelation that we get with this scene, um, Gundabel knows that um, her ancestors went east, uh, west, sorry, to try and find the prophesized holy land. Um, mm. She also has evidently been keeping an eye on these two halflings. She doesn't know what they are, but she knows that they're little people. Um, and they have come here from the West. Um, and she's been keeping an eye on them because she knows that they're being hunted by all the devils in the desert. They then get brought to her village. She, she knows what a halfhood is. I think it's suggested because she says, oh, we're not halfhoods, we're stores. So she seems yeah. to know what a halfhood is. And, and she doesn't immediately say, have you come to lead us to the Holy Land? And the yeah. reason why she doesn't say that is because they wanted to wait until the end of the episode to give us that reveal. Also because she's a cat. <laughs> that, that, oh, yeah. The well, scene where they meet was like, it, it's so bizarre in terms of like, when you pair it with this one, a lot of what she, she's yeah. like a completely different character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, she she's completely fucking super changes. mean, and she's a kind of just really nasty and mean. And I'm like, uh, why though? Uh, why would anyone yeah. follow you? Or well, Rags, right. you know, you're just such an asshole to everybody. You're in luck if you um, think she's a horrible person. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. She Let's she see. also says, by the way, uh, that they're looking for a place where like we have streams of endless cold water. Like that's not very hard to find outside of the desert. True. Yeah. In the desert, the streams are cold. <laughs> just to be generally, the, even in the desert, the streams are pretty cold. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Rorimus never found the Suzat, and the Harfoots kept wandering in their yearly loop. And she even cries and says that the Harfoots don't have a home. Oh no, she which is bizarre so for Nori though. to say because they do have a home. It's wherever they are together. Where? That's their yeah. home. If you're a nomadic people, when you say home. That's what you mean. You're not well, going to yeah, say it, a location. You're going to say wherever it is your family and your friends are. That's where home is. Yep. You get what's and happening, home, though, right? We like, just we move around. They they do it, and it's, it's almost like they think they they're doing a thing of like she she's almost crying, thinking about the Shire and how awesome it is, and how that's going to be their home. Oh my god, can't don't have that. <laughs> but it's like yeah, but from her POV, she would probably enjoy the nature of her people moving their home, so to speak, regularly. It's part of like the whole cycle of their uh, their seasons mm -hmm. and. You know, it's where, where they find all kinds of meaning culturally and just with... Obviously, they eat each other whenever they blah, blah, blah. All, all, she, she seems to be on board with that. <laughs> Point being, yeah, you are completely correct. She would she would be like, well, our home is wherever we are. And then you, you could yeah, have a conversation. A it's like, well, what if you had a place you never ne needed to leave? Which to a nomadic people might be like, scary in a way. <laughs> a little bit like... Kind of, yeah. yeah, it might um, be. Never. Yeah. There's, there's yeah, a lot of... Leave. It's there's a there's there's a risk either way. Um, if you're nomadic, then the risk is what if you go like moving it around takes a lot of energy and time and space, and you can't settle down and set roots and stuff. And you're kind of beholden to the land in a different way than people who actually do set down, you know, a place in a town and rely on agriculture and things. That's its own risk, but it seems that that's in general less risky. But um, each of them would well if you have Nori, right? The, you have Gundabale who's like, oh no, you never found the the one promised land place and everything. And Nori's like, no, no, we, we're not tied to one location. We move around from place to place. Home isn't a place. Home is wherever all of your friends and family are that you love. And that's just a different in, difference in perspectives that she might be able to share that they don't do. Instead, they do the opposite, which makes me wonder what they want me to think about Nori and her bizarre outlook on life. Yeah, rather um, than having her challenge the idea of a home, they basically have her simultaneously hold two different perceptions of what a home yeah. is. Mm -hmm. Home's not a place, you silly goose. Home's wherever your family is. <laughs> yeah, they absolutely should have done that. Yeah. And Gunda Bale's like the opposite. Like, no, home is a location, and we want to go to a good place, even though this place seems pretty nice, um, all things mm. considered. But um, let's see. Uh, riders are spotted nearby. The, the little the, the people looking for him the little spooky skeletor man um mm -hmm. so w when the the, the skeletor <laughs> people arrive one of them slaps gundabale and then yeah, yeah, yeah. offers to help <laughs> her up which is not a great way yeah. to get people inside <laughs> to have them give you <laughs> information so this is just transparently being like yeah this guy's bad because he slapped the lady and i don't know i'm kind of on his side she's kind of a cunt it was my favorite scene for all of two seconds until he like helped her up afterwards. Just like fucking leave her on the floor and yeah, do it so again. Close. Fuck it, why not? Yeah. It would be so. Someone's down. making that edit. Literally kick her while she's down. It was made the edit where he picks her up and slaps her again, then picks her up and slaps her again. <laughs> but also, like, why? Um, asks... Why would you slap someone to the ground and then pick them up? What does that actually yeah, accomplish for him? It's dominance. If, if the element is to sure. totally intimidate her, then why help her up? Right? It's it, like well, the worst of both worlds. It does neither. I guess it's good cop, bad cop, but where you're both. But he's the only cop. Bipolar cop. It's like I'm I'm crazy nuts. He goes back you to never the, know what I'll do, so you better tell goes me. Goes back to I the dark wizard. Know. He's like, I did the good cop, bad cop thing you told me. And he's like, with who? And he's like, what do you mean with who? <laughs> like, with, with, like, God mean? damn it, you did it on your own again? <laughs> That's the one thing I told you not to do. Holy fuck, I'm, she's a fat MPD. fuck. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't notice how fucking chunky she was. Holy shit. Also, the, the Her and Diesel that, like, are like, huh. The fact that Skeletor has shown up here means that he is aware of the store's village, which to me was a surprise because it seemed like they were at least trying to hide it. Because they've also maybe got that's like just a good place to live. I mean, maybe, but I like the, I, I don't know, man. 
I don't believe that like Skeletor would know where this place is and not constantly be raiding it for food and water because they they have I mean, this magical little paradise. Well, land. if it was the payment, it's... that could be like payment for if you're living in Rasputin's no. land, you have to give like food and whatever it is every That's year tribute. or month or whatnot, and it, you got to make is... your payments. That's possible, it, but it... the other problem with it, like narratively speaking, is that he shows up here and says. Um, he refers to them as Harfoots. He says, where are the Harfoots? That's why he's here, because Skeletor sent, uh, Rasputin sent him to find the Harfoots. Um, but he shouldn't know that they're Harfoots, because he was tracking mm -hmm. them, and he saw two Halflings walking around with a, with a, with a wizard. Oh, he they're both fucked stores. in that situation, because, because the store woman says the only Halflings here are stores, which entails that she knows about knows a the concepts of others, sure. right? So like, well, she must yeah. have encountered them. Yeah, but what what I'm saying, sorry, is that if if Skeletor sees two short people walking around the desert with a wizard, he would assume that they are stores, right? Because he knows about yeah. the store village, which means he must have come here before. Which He's means here they now. must have had this. I, yeah, so they must. They must yeah, yeah, they know where this is. Yeah. Yeah, but They're... he he he's only here because Skeletor told him to go and find the find the missing yeah. uh, halflings Perfect. whereas whereas you would think that he would have come here previously believing them to be stores i'm talking like in episode two to find uh, out what yeah. the hell is going on they yeah. they should have had exactly this conversation previously but they didn't mm -hmm. yeah which one mm. of the two of you are with the gandalf person did they say where they were yeah. going tell me what you know yeah. Or I'm gonna slap you, but this time I won't help you up. I'll just slap you. <laughs> I'll just be bad cop. And uh, also, when when uh, Gundabel responds with the only halflings around here are stores, then that's like, oh, so you know that a Harfoot's a halfling? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Why would you know yeah. that? Uh. Anyway, back yeah. to Gal Ladriel and Elrond. Woo! They're well, morning. He says he'll he'll leave right and bring the wizard. He says oh, so. yeah. yeah, he threatens to, he says, he, he basically says, you need to cooperate, otherwise I'm going to go and get Rasputin and he'll rain down an unholy goddamn firestorm or whatever that line is, I can't remember. Will lightning your uh, images to death. Yeah. Is his threat, yeah. Do you know why we wear masks or something like that? It's like the, the implicit I, threat is that like he will give you leprosy too if you don't play the <laughs> game. He'll give you, we used, to be really nice. you. we used to be nice but people like, and then he leprosy does. Do you want him to do that to you? Yeah, I'm loyal to him and he gave me leprosy, so mm -hmm. he'll it give you he'll give you that if you're mm. well being loyal to him apparently doesn't protect you from that but you should tell us where the harfits are <laughs> he's trying I to think of like the really like creative the idea that... punishment he might give that he just goes he might just he might he, he'll just he'll kill you i guess <laughs> so that's I love pretty the bad. idea. I mean, he's basically said, um, as Skeletor, sorry, Rasputin has given Skeletor this job to go and find the halflings. Um, and he's gonna then threaten, he's said that he's gonna go back and speak to Rasputin and say, Yeah, I think they might be in this village. Yeah, I don't yeah. know that, but they might be. Can you go and like encourage them and like scare them? He's gonna say, I, like, No, because his whole deal is like, Because <laughs> he's, he's yeah. not gonna say, like, I'm not gonna heal the curse on your flesh as a reward for me doing what I asked you to do. <laughs> the little people are being mean to me, even though I have the scary yeah. mask on. They, I even slapped obviously know, one of them. They obviously know more than what they're saying, so just start, start fucking torturing them until you, yeah, you know, get like, yeah, the he information. Would, he would he's line like them randomly up. say, that one right there, I'm going to cut the arms and legs off of that child, and I mean, you, you don't, don't tell even... me where the Harfoots yeah. are. I mean, they're all mm -hmm. fucking tiny compared to them. Just fucking walk around. What are you going to do to stop Well, you? and he was he was fucking absolutely nothing. willing They'll to do exactly this. Yeah, he yeah. was willing <laughs> to be threaten fine. to kill the Harfoots in yeah. order to get not Gandalf to cooperate. He should absolutely be doing mm -hmm. this. The one yeah, guy had just, the big evil. Oh, no, shows, just yeah. fucks off again. Do you remember? There's only one show of, as a recent of the selection of awful ones that had torturing done right, and it was fucking Secret Invasion. One time. Was that? Oh yeah, that's oh. right. The finger. Right. Immediately chops it off, and then she gives him an injection that causes like your blood to boil. It was just like it's that's like, the yeah, way to do it. Like that is the way to do injection. it. <laughs> it's so annoyed yeah, at all these like, shows where they have the power like, to threaten or to abuse to a level that they. Obviously would, character-wise, but then they just don't. Yeah, it's he's he can torture as he pleases with no repercussions because he is in a com he's in a position of complete and total dominance and power over them. And instead of going like, I'm just going to start cutting off fingers and limbs until you tell me, or until I'm satisfied with your answers. And I'll bet you the first time he picks up a kid, he's like, all right, we're going to do yeah. what, leg or arm. They're going to be like, okay, we know where they are. We know where they are. We didn't know you. We didn't know you were looking for them. We just thought they were travelers. We didn't know you were there. serious Boom. because these people. Yeah, these we didn't know you were fucking, fucking serious. serious. Yeah. But anything. 
rather than going um, back to Galadriel and go, can we just carry yeah, on so fantasizing Andor, about sure. about how like horrible we can be to Harfoots? <laughs> I would really like to keep doing that. We just want to see Harfoots in misery. Yeah, even suffering. Like, just suffering. That's they all. Don't need no about their legs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put suffering. you on a rack and I'm going to stretch you till you're normal person size and then we'll see how you like it. <laughs> they just turn really lanky like spaghetti people. <laughs> they just <laughs> Uh, uh anyway oh, okay. um well let's uh now that we've cheered ourselves up let's return to rings of power and Ooh, uh gladriel and elrond uh one thing <laughs> i actually do like which i'm surprised of uh the three scouts that are uh along honoring with them they're the mourning dead. the loss of their guy they're honoring Whoa. their little that dead guy and i'm like oh crazy well, that a tv show I'm this shocked. bad would remember to do that good for the, you the thing is though there's no there's no fucking grave there they just took your fucking sword in the ground so they didn't bother to get this Body out of the cursed tomb. Man, I don't just know. A, I don't know. Puddle. Based on it's what just they a heard puddle. about that body, I don't know yeah. if you want to go in there. They get a sponge. What he looks like, man. <laughs> I mean, if you they, 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 could, they could bury him properly, you know, just le not leave him in the cursed he's, fucking look, tomb. He's a, he's a, like, he, he died in a tomb. How more? How, you can't be more yeah, efficient he's, than he's that. He's already where he needs to be. They don't want to remember him looking like. They don't want to remember him looking like that. This is, just remember what he used to look like. His, Trust me, his you'll be soul glad. is gonna be tortured for eternity in there. Like, no, he dead. <laughs> nah, he's dead. Oh, he, crunching and everything. Oh, he's dead. If they if they have his sword here in this grave, then it means that they it can't be used to kill him. So the next person, if he haunts ah. somebody, and tries to kill him, he's gonna oh, be no. him. They're <laughs> fucked over. That would be funny as fuck. I went to the tomb. Way... I couldn't find his sword. Where is it? On their way back, he fucking pops up like, oh, Ooh, oh guys, no way. <laughs> oh, it's me. Yo, I, I'm one of them now. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, oh, I have fuck. I have no clue if that's what happens, but it's funny to think about. Um, that feels like yeah. a world-breaking mechanic, though. Like, Sauron can just create whites and steal all of their swords and then just set them on anyone <laughs> he, he wants. And throws their swords in the Doom, He's got his so own army of death. Hmm. He didn't read the same books as Elrond, he doesn't know how they work. Because if he knew he... that they had a weakness, then he wouldn't have relied on them to get the letter people. The only way to kill a Barrow White is to throw them into Mount Doom. Ah, uh, that's annoying. Or to punch them really hard in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> What if they're a lady Barrow White? <laughs> Punch her in the dick! Punch her even harder. <laughs> 24, be inclusive. Um, what happens yeah. if you take part of them and then you just sort of run away? Because you can chop their <laughs> arm off and then run away with it. Maybe you get two. Uh, <laughs> may, well, it maybe crumbles. the arm will grow a new Barrow White? Or... Oh, now we're reaching oh, God, levels no. of duplication. That it, this is... <laughs> oh my God. Sarah's like, is it true? Can this power be hardest? It's like, yes. This shit's crazy. This shit's crazy, man. I don't know what's going on with as these As soon curses. as he reaches a hundred of them, the world starts to lag. He's like, what's going on? <laughs> like, oh, oh, God. No. <laughs> Uh-oh. I need to um, download more RAM. Sauron's evil has lowered the frames per second of Middle-earth than everyone oh, saw. <laughs> That's why, that Back, explains uh, the time difference. Oh, yeah, everyone's at different FPS, and the plot is tied to your frames. So it's that's Lyndon, why it's Lyndon happening. Has lag. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Lyndon has <laughs> lag. <laughs> uh, Galadriel uh. says that she knows that Elrond thinks the ring is tricking her, but she says, I believe it is guiding me, and that following it may be our only path to victory. Of course, oh, the that's obvious the same response argument. being... She says that. It does, it's yeah, based on nothing at all. It's not compelling. It's like, like it's like okay, on. you would say that. I it's think the same the argument. Though. It's the same <laughs> argument than before. It's like, yeah, like, but yeah, I, I, I know in like, my heart. Yeah. I, I think know she's in my being heart a bitch. that it's, they're not. It's I not think she's evil. being a bitch here because she she basically oh. warned Elrond and said, fun, if we go this way, there's a bunch of like spooky shit. <laughs> and he was like, now we're gonna go that way anyway. And now this dude is dead, and she's reminding him that it's his fault. If only you trusted the ring, Elrond. But the yeah. ring is trying to actively get people to trust it. So it would oh. give them good information here and there so that it would exactly. get them to trust the ring. Yes, I this hate is exactly the fact. what the But they ring should know that doing. shit. When you're they told... should just be like, we're not even going to listen to it. We're going to make all of our decision making completely independent of anything that the ring has to the point where I need you to take that shit <laughs> off and put it in your pocket. <laughs> Why does she still have it? Why isn't it in Lindy? I, I don't get it. I don't get yeah. Elrond's point of view. If he's so willing to not listen to his advice, but he's still willing to allow it on her finger and have her around. Okay. Shut Remember, he said he, said he considers I mean, her a collaborator with Sauron for as long as she's wearing that. Yeah. It should have been a stipulation of him uh, doing this thing. Is like, Galad, yeah. listen, 
you got to tell her to take the ring off. We know that it's infected by Sauron, or that we have a reason to believe it. So you've you've got to we've got to do as much as we can, completely independent of these rings. If you need it to keep the elves alive or whatever, uh, uh, but sure, sure, surely two out of three rings on elves is going to keep us around for a while, right? Or does it have to be all three? Have we discussed this? No, because we don't have conversations. No, we these never things. had this conversation. We didn't test. We didn't check. Just... We didn't prove of, of concept anything. We just sent her away with the ring, and then I guess that just works <laughs> still. Do we even need the rings one. anymore? Is the is the fucking are we set? Yeah, is it onesies fine? and dunsies? I don't know. Just sort of another problem with this is that from Gilgalad's perspective, he thinks that these rings are like the only way to save Middle Earth, and he's just sent Galadriel possibly to yeah. Sauron. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here, Doesn't take this sense. ring. Surely you want, you want the ring to stay in Linden. Surely, if you want. Well, she was convincing. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, she what said it Barrow feels White good. It feels ring. real good. The ring feels good. It's feeling. Everything's feeling great. It's feeling mm -hmm. good. I'm not corrupted. Sure also, yeah. Gilgalad is wearing one I himself. I mean, he's I just want, as I just compromised as she is. If Gilgalad accepts true, the yeah. premise that Gilgalad that Galadriel can't wear one because it's corrupting, then he has to take his off. Um, mm. I don't know that they actually need any of them though, because like that their fate was tied to the death of the trees in season one, but we know that just a chunk of Mithril can reverse that, so why don't they just stick them on a tree, which saves the tree, and then they can't die, and then they're fine. Yeah, the you don't actually need to wear them. Yeah. But then the ring, the, the tree will be corrupt, and then the tree will give them bad advice. Then you're like, tree, tree, tree you must give up the ring, and the tree's like, well, I feel quite good about the ring, I don't like I, 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 give it up. Sure. <laughs> I'm not corrupted, I feel good. Uh, yeah, how about you leave me alone? <laughs> 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 oh, we're having fun. Get away, go away. Please. There is a nice little dynamic in um in this scene that's playing Where out though, because like El Elrond says, you know, I'm not taking any advice from anyone who's wearing that ring, and Galadriel says, yeah, but you know, if it comes to it, and the ring tells me this as well, you're gonna have to promise me that you will stop Sauron, even if you have to kill me. And he says, yep, okay, that's all fine. Right, then, yeah. Those yeah, are terms no I can get well, on board with. Like. No, no <laughs> argument there at all. I will happily kill you first. That's great. You missed a step. Well, you missed a step yeah, there yeah, because yeah. he says, he says, um, I, I need to get the exact dialogue. Hold on. Yeah, he says, I will not follow the the advice of that that ring. But sure, I will do exactly what you just said. Basically, <laughs> I'll do what you want Look, for my own reasons. If anyone, <laughs> and I mean anyone, has show Galadriel offering to kill her, you take it. You're like, yes, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Good. I agree. Yes, please. Can I do it now? And she's like, no, not yet. You're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, oh, I think you're now evil. Fine. Just stabs her immediately. <laughs> Defeating Sauron. Uh, mm. Oh, God. I hate Rings of Power. You still do. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Elrond's perspective, blah, blah, blah. So, Elrond says that his father foresaw that one day Celebrimbor's life would be in his hands. And I think Celebrimbor mentioned this in the first season. Uh, that the Kel Elrond's father's son, which is him, um, Elrond, Elrond's father's <laughs> yeah. son is himself. Nice. But he said, I think Celebrimbor had mentioned that <laughs> his life would, or his fate would be in uh, Elrond's father's son's hand. Um, but it, that Elrond mentions that, that here, yeah. and he's going to take the he's going to take the best path to do that to protect Celebrimbor or make sure that his life's in his hands. Uh, Galadriel says that protecting lives is all of elves' duty, and that uh, it's one that is not he says, complete. He sa she says everything that is fragile, so he's, she's basically calling Celebrimbor a weak little bitch. He is. <laughs> it's true. Well, it's like, <laughs> she seems to believe that Celebrimbor needs to be protected. Uh, she doesn't seem yeah. to acknowledge that it's her fault. Uh, that yeah, that's she why that's put him in incredible <laughs> yeah. danger by not telling him that Halbrand, uh, he's actually Sauron. Why she, she's responsible for that? everything. Every single because thing here is her fault. We can't acknowledge and that. <laughs> it goes back to even the beginning. Can't acknowledge her though. flaws or her terrible decisions. It, it's it's rich hearing from her that yeah, that it's our responsibility to protect all living things. When yes, a she didn't tell Celebrimbor the most important information in the world, but also you know, beginning of season one, she was told we're sending you away to save all life on Middle Earth, and she jumped off the mm -hmm. boat to come back. Like, she's mm. the most selfish. Yep. She doesn't give a fuck about life in Middle-earth. She only gives a fuck about herself. Always. Yep. Specifically, having it be Celebrimbor is important because Elrond is like, yeah, I, I, I think I'm destined to save Celebrimbor from a thing that you put him in danger to. So, thanks a lot, Galadriel. Mm -hmm. uh, also, she gets we don't a vision. have to face the consequences. Uh, she gets a vision of a Region being destroyed. 
of statues being toppled, of the of of uh, Elrond being captured, of Halbrand. She sees Halbrand in this vision that I, as far as we're led to believe, the Ring is giving her. So, mm -hmm. um, I guess she thinks of Sauron that way, or Sauron is choosing to show her that he is still Halbrand, or. That Sometimes was what I was thinking, I but it's, it is it is possible, because, yeah, we mentioned it earlier, is that it's possible that he will change back into that form later in the season. For uh, until some reason. We know, yeah, until we know whether he does that or not, it's difficult to say what this means. Yeah. Um, let's see. She wants Elrond to promise her that he will oppose Sauron over everything, even her life. And Elrond says, I will make no promise whose asking is born of that ring. But, but, yes. but, but I'll yeah. totally kill yeah. you if I have to. <laughs> Very strange. I do not understand yeah. why they wrote this. So the, uh. the first bit is that, like, he says, um, she, he says, like, we need to protect Celebrimbor. And then she says, yeah, it's our duty to protect those who need saving. And then, like, Fair five young. fucking seconds later, she says, ah, fuck that. We need to kill Sauron at all costs. And he doesn't notice that she's just changed. She's just flipped on a dime. <laughs> like, may, maybe that's happened as a result of, of, this, of the vision. It made her change her mind. But oh Elrond God. doesn't react as if that's just happened. They yep. don't seem to acknowledge that this is a complete 180 in her values. Um, and then, yeah, what is it? So it, it, Elrond refuses to um, promise to put opposing Sauron above all other considerations because Galadriel is wearing the ring and he doesn't trust the ring. But then he says, he, he, he says, however, I will swear that defeating Sauron will come first, even before you. Which means he said, I'm not going to promise the thing that you said, but actually I will as long as I'm the one who gets to say it. Yep. <laughs> like, the only I'll explanation... Do it, but not for the reasons you gave, basically. That's, that's pretty much it. Like, it, he's unwilling to agree to a, any promise that comes from a person who is wearing one of the rings of power because he doesn't fundamentally... Try. So, like, the, the example that I gave in my video is if, if she had said... Elrond, can you go to the store and get some milk? Um, he would say no. However, I of my own volition will go to the store and get some milk. That's the only <laughs> yes. explanation that I got for this. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's pretty much what happened, yeah. It, it's either that or that the writers literally had Elrond forget the thing that happened five seconds previously. And I don't That's also I believable. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's happened both. They do that frequently. Yeah. Both of them could be true. There's also the, um, the, the, the slight. Yeah, you know, potential for foreshadowing here is, you know, as you say, this, this comes about after she's seen the vision of Halbrand. And if those things mm -hmm. are connected, that's because in her mind, having seen the vision, she thinks I'm not going to be able to kill him. So you're going to have to do it for me, including yeah. taking me with him, if that's what it comes to. Because she just can't quit him, you know? He might be Satan, <laughs> but she can fix him. Absolutely she can. Yeah. She needs that D, though, you know? It's, it's too tempting. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I just love the idea. That uh, that she just says she she imagines this and it's like no shit Elrond no we can't be saving the ones who are really fragile we have to kill this fucker. <laughs> it feels like they keep going like back and forth on like how much conviction Elrond has in terms yeah. of um, being opposed yeah. to the existence of or use of the ring. Who he'll, he'll be? It's it's like the most worthless one. He voices his dissatisfaction and disapproval, but basically does exactly like he complies. He mm. he just allows his influence yeah. to have an impact on their mission. It's so just whines about it. But what happened if, to um, Chad Elrond from episode one? Yeah. What happened? Oh, uh, he's gone. Uh, he's not coming back. He's long yeah. gone. I th I he feel died like in episode um, two. like if you're Elrond, if if we try and turn this into some coherent character which I, I know that's kind of impossible he accepts <laughs> that that the elves have to three elves have to be wearing like one ring each you've got to have three of the rings have to be being worn at this point in time because otherwise the tree will die and, and you've got to leave three and... rings and i never never established i don't know that, that would like... not have balance and can't do that yeah that's true yeah but like so if he <laughs> if he thinks that you, you've got to have three elves wearing one ring each otherwise that just has to be the case otherwise the elves have to leave middle earth so that should not have any overlap with his current mission with Galadriel, which means that this she this scene shouldn't shouldn't be happening, because someone else should have the ring right now. Yeah, someone mm -hmm. that they can monitor, someone they can keep an eye on. Yeah, there's got to be like there's got to be many trusted, wise, respected elves in Middle Earth <laughs> that you can go to. 
So oh, just yeah, pick three one. elves and put them in house arrest, you know, just guard Steven. them all fucking day and night. There aren't any. <laughs> there's no one. There's, there are no other characters in Lindy. The elves are so shit that there's just no one else that they respect. Well, we it's haven't been so introduced work, to any we? other characters in Linden. Correct. The show is sucks. Mm -hmm. We just invented. Uh, uh, yeah, we just. Uh, Kieran just kind of came out of nowhere yep. in the second season. So oh, we'll do it once. They'll do it again. They'll invent elves. Um. So yeah, uh, one of the elves goes up to uh, Galadriel and Elrond and says, "Oh, we heard drums." End scene. Yeah. Like a Arondir, and Isildur, and Astrid are in the woods. Wow. This isn't a setup to a funny joke. Uh, instead, that's just a description mm. of what's happening. Arondir sets so down the key to thing. her manacles because he wants uh, Isildur to be the one to decide whether or not she is or isn't freed. Because I guess they trust her now for reasons that don't make sense, but the writers are, you know, telling us that they did. Um, in any event, Isildur, uh, he undoes her shackles, and he's an idiot for doing it because her story doesn't make sense, and there's uh, too yep. many inconsistencies, and she's not acting or behaving like one would if, her, if, if she was innocent. She does a lot of stuff she doesn't deny. Um, they, also, they have no idea that she helped rescue them. Uh, they should not trust her. So... Yeah, I think the writers want us to think that she's a wildman, but she isn't evil at this point, even though we're led to think she might have killed Isildur when they met. It's it's very confusing, and they do a very bad job at sort of portraying this as being, you know, like, oh, she's she's not like the other girls, but she doesn't act and behave like she should. Uh, she says to Isildur, sooner or later they'll cast me out. You know they will. Um, and she's confrontational with him. She takes his sword once her, her manacles are unshackled she she takes away his sword um <sighs> which is not a great move it's considering boring. that arondir is it's, nearby it's fucking retarded why is arondir just fucking killing her right away they, they were gonna they were fucking gonna let her go and she just fucking fucks herself for no reason yeah well also yeah, like, what if it, I this shows us, sword this shows us that her objective is to like leave she wants to just run off and be a wild person in the woods but um, so she probably should have done that like earlier. She could have just left earlier. She wants but to be a hot well, foot. Still, there was going to let her go. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, there's, no her. She there's no reason to think she can't still do that while not threatening him yeah. with a sword. And also, this whole like there's yeah. no there's no like path forward for people like me, folk like me. It's like there are barely any folk like you. You you're you've yeah. had a very unique. You were invented history. last week. Yeah, yeah the you, whole... you've been a wild person for I like assume... five minutes. Well, yeah, I assume that for 98%, 99% of your life, you were just like a normal Southlander living a normal Southland life. What do you think's going to happen? People yeah, are like, just oh, go if she want to go, If she want to go live with the wild men, she certainly can. Like, he was going to free her. She could just fuck off. He's a dumbass. I mean, it makes no <laughs> sense whatsoever. The, the whole shit with the, with the glug orc that they did in the previous episode is really making me think <laughs> that maybe they're trying to go for this, like, moral ambiguity angle here, where, like, she's... Uh, she is wrongfully oppressed, and we get a little bit more of this in like later in this particular episode in about five minutes' time. It's like, oh well, you might think that they're wild men, but they're they're actually not evil. And it's like, why would I think they are evil? You've just <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. This is what you said, Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah you just said they like, have evil brands, so no, they're all evil. Yeah. Har har har. It's like, no, that's Pretty not crazy. How it works. Like, so this is the scene she gets killed. You know, we don't have it for that long, but she's oh, yeah. I believe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Arondir foolishly doesn't just fucking kill her right on the spot. A uh, big L, massive L. In massive fact. L. Um, she, uh, she's like, oh, they'll cast me out. You know they will. And so there's like, no, I won't let them. I'll protect you. Blah, blah, blah. It's bullshit. Um, uh, anyway, uh, and Ent shows up and kills her. Oh, so good that's Lord. unfortunate good that she's, she dies like that. Yeah, <laughs> kicks her and she bonks right against a big old boulder. Uh, yeah, she's one hundred percent fucked. She is absolutely she is dead. She's so yeah. fucking dead. There's it, she. You might survive, maybe, no. but it doesn't get a medical no. wheelchair. <laughs> that's that's, that's fine. fine. Her skull that's is fine. fucking crushed. That's skull in the spine is dead. Now dust. You are, it is dust. You are pretty rough. Pretty rough. He, uh, the, the fucking ant hits quite, her straight in the face, dude. This, She's so fucked. <laughs> it's quite the swing as well. It's, uh, doesn't look so, good for her. Yeah, There's something uh, weird looking just about the shot on screen at the moment. The way the branch stays like very close to our field of view and she teleports away. It's like the, the branch is itself the screen effect, but it's overlaid. Yeah. And it looks bizarre. Mm. Yeah.
looks a bit off, doesn't it? Just at the end of the uh, the shot there. Can you slow can you slow that down, Mola? Because I can't quite tell where the it almost seems like the visual effect of the tree stays the same. It, it, it could just be weird shot? in the it could just be weird <clears throat> in the cut between the two scenes. That's why it looks weird. Possibly, but it almost looks kind of like a screen wipe effect. I can't. It's a little bit quick. One <laughs> sec. Yeah. And slow it down. Ooh, slow it down. Please don't slow anything down. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Ow. Maybe maybe I'll Thunk. go even slower. Ow. Feeling pretty crazy. Yeah, because it looks like it looks like the animation of the CG um, arm of the tree, branch of the tree. I know what you're saying. It's like it carries on yeah. into the shot where it shouldn't, or is it just... That's what I'm saying, yeah. That's how it would look, but it looks like it carries on, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, because the looks camera... Like it, it looks like the it camera gets moves way back. I think they're like, okay. It gets bigger in the second shot. I think it's a bit different. Yeah, like, see that, and then that. It's... It's fine. It's... Oh no, sorry. That and then that is what I meant. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. The, the thing is, like in it's the second like the shot, it's back. a bit bigger than it should be uh, compared to the first shot. Probably, yeah. Really, I, I just wanted to say that act in slow motion is really my reason for calling this out. But um, it's just, the more times we get to see her basically die, the better. Mm. I don't need more pointless <laughs> characters in this show. It was all a clever yeah, ruse. Uh, really shitty character. Well, you you are the famous it. sadist man on the internet, so you know it makes sense that you would like this a lot. Is it not hilarious that every treased. person, well, all of us watching this, we were like, she's fine, nothing's gonna happen to her. Well, well of course, she's gonna survive. It's the strings of power. We know what fucking happened with Isildur in like was that last episode? Yeah, it was when he got stabbed in a his, his upper thigh <laughs> by an eight inch fine. knife, and he's totally fine. Yeah, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Theo took care of it. All right, we were there. Yep. We were all there in the, <laughs> the, the little. It was a great scene. Hut, okay, he went to the doctor. He got fixed. What do you want? Oh my god, you guys just hate everything. Yes. <laughs> yes. They work. They work so hard, and you just poop all over it. Everything is. Awful. Um. Anyway, so yeah, uh, another end appears after Arondir introduces himself as Arondir of the Greenwood, uh, mm. and this end sees the sword. Uh, Isildur's sword lying on the ground, and uh, it asks, um, "What? Uh, well, what's that sword? What's that sword for? You're, you ain't you ain't been cutting down trees and stuff with that sword, have well, you been? Which would which is not what a sword is for. A sword is um, almost like specifically designed for doing one thing, and that's killing people. Uh, but yeah. I guess the Ent wouldn't really know that. It sees steel, and it's a weapon. So I was like, "Yeah, you ain't been cutting down trees without have you? What?" Uh, it, well, Deer's that. like, no, it, 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 it's not for felling, you know, it's not, it's not for felling ants or wood. Wait, when it's does he felling it orcs. Does he you, you, mi you he missed says, the part with the axe. Though. Pulls it an axe. Though. He says, have you ever touched axe? To no, it, it's two, it's two different, oh, it's, it's two, two different lines. Yeah, oh, okay. First, first he, a he asked, has well, thou ever touched axe to wood in life? And I fucking lost my shit when I heard that. <laughs> it is funny, <laughs> but obviously, I'm assuming everyone was saying was, I, I was like, oh, because the big gay-ass tree yeah, in the first season, Yeah, because he has right. to cut down the tree in season yeah, one. Season one. one. But, one uh, tree that they didn't get rid of. He could have just of. said, like, nah, bro, I haven't cut yeah, down any tree. Yeah. If that were the yeah, only you would time, say, of course just we say have no. It because yeah. Yeah, no, we have it. We we uh, would never put that a living tree. We want it. We just we just burn the dead stuff that's around. It. That's what burns. You know, it, that's that's all we do. We just pick up the stuff. We don't cut stupid. down that. Also, I'm an elf, and we're chill. Mm -hmm. We live in harmony with nature. Because uh, I, I guess mean, the Ents aren't aware of elves and what they do. I'm not the, sure. The only right. reason the Ents can speak is that elves taught them language. Like, that's the reason <laughs> elves have consciousness, even, is that the elves taught them to speak. So they should very much be aware of the elves. Mm. Well, how come the mold in my it's, kitchen it's just, doesn't speak, hun? Yeah, well, well, it's do just you spend much that's... time talking to it? Yeah, how much time have you spent yeah, teaching it? it? Be honest. Um, I, I mean, at this <laughs> point, it's been years. Far enough. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe my mold's just dumb. <laughs> I need to get it, a It's just funny that, that that's that's the first thing that the ants ask him. Like, have have you ever uh, <clears throat> chopped a tree down with an axe, dude? <laughs> well, it also, oh, no, they, I have. Seen... Oh, the ants seem to behave like predators, as in like the from the film, because uh, Aaron Deer no well, so it immediately runs towards Estrid because she's holding the sword, um, mm -hmm. and it's like fuck swords, like the swords are, or I guess weapons are used to chop down ants, and Aaron Deer mm -hmm. seems to know that this is the case because just before the the ant sneaks up out of nowhere because ants are notoriously quiet, uh, he <laughs> says like no drop you? the drop drop the uh, drop the yeah. sword because he knows what's about to happen. It's about to kill her because she's holding a weapon. 
fucking ninja ants. He wanted her to <laughs> die. <laughs> it's yeah, a minor thing. Is there also a contradiction? Because, you know, we had the earlier scene with Arandir and Theo where Arandir is saying, hey, um, you know, I know your mum just died off screen horribly, but, you know, I lost my home when I lived in Beleriand, which is now flooded. And here yeah. he's telling the end that he's from the Greenwood, which is notably not in Beleriand because it's actually east of the Misty Mountains. Mm -hmm. And we've only ever seen him living in the Southlands. So which yeah. of these is actually his origin story? Is he just lying? Has he forgotten? Joker. Or is it just... He could be born in <laughs> Valerian and moved to the Greenwood idea. and then got sent to the, you know, uh, post he was at. So yeah, because he says... He says in yeah. season one to Adar that he is from Beleriand, which you wouldn't say if you are if you are uh, Arendir of the Greenwood, because they're not the same place. Well, maybe well, he's Beleriand of... sank beneath the sea, so he kind of needed a new home after that, you know. So he probably well, moved to the Greenwood. Well, he's been alive a long time. <laughs> maybe maybe lived so long in the Greenwood, he considers himself a Greenwoodian because yeah. he's been like there for so long. Like, yeah, I was born he here, here but I moved here and I've been there for so long. I, <laughs> I consider myself of the Greenwood. Maybe he's like in with the Ent gangs like of the shot. Greenwood, and so that's how he thinks he'll he'll sort of make friends with these people. Like if the Ents have the Crips version and they live in the Greenwood, and he's like, no, I I know them. Don't kill me. Oh, uh, I like the silhouettes, like the one thing. Yeah. The silhouettes yeah. are neat. I mean, uh, yeah, they, they look yeah. pretty good. I they look like slightly goofy, but yeah. they look good. Especially if they like they stuck their hands up like trees, and then you could see them slowly but surely moving them down a bit to a more yeah. There's like a shape. cool idea here of them. Blending in with a forest in a silhouette style. Yeah, I do they, like that. Yeah, it's it's not it, it's a little creepy, mm. but neat at the same time. Yeah. Um. Let's see. So, God, where are we? Uh, Winterbloom is upset. She says that these people are no different than the orcs and ants. Racist. Because the other the, the the boy tree is like, yeah, they the came in tree. those orcs. There was an army of them. They were burning and everything, and we fucking hate orcs because they kill us. Um, so they, they heard about um, the work destruction in the Southlands, and so they wanted to see what was up. Yeah, it, it might be worth pointing out that, yeah, there is actually a female, and there's an end wife in this scene. Like, that's supposed to be a big thing because the, the only time we've oh, ever yeah. encountered ends up until this point is that you know the ends are always searching for the end wives because the end wives left. Um, and like Tolkien says, it's never actually in anything he wrote, but he sort of said his theory for why they disappeared is that Sauron actually just burned them all alive. Um, but they're not really supposed to be together because the Entwives like farming and agriculture, and so they move away to stay in one place. While the Ents, who never, ever, ever lived in this part of the world, I don't think, um, <laughs> keep going over to the west and tending the big trees because they're more interested by those. Um, so actually, you know, seeing an Entwife is supposed to be a massive deal. And I saw a few people on Twitter saying, oh, this is like the most Tolkien thing ever. We finally got Entwives on screen. But it's sort of <sighs> not. And it's because they, they, they can't even make the Ents speak much like Ents. They speak very quickly. There's a yeah, weird vocal effect on them. Yeah. There's nothing massively impactful. Oh, they have a built-in reason to waste time, and they don't take it. Instead, we yeah. walk around in the desert for ages. Ugh. Ugh. Morons. Um, oh, oh, yeah, tree. so Winterbloom is the name of the, the Entwife, the, the, the girl tree. Um, she says that, oh, you're no different than the orcs. Uh, which is weird. I think she's just upset because of all the destruction the orcs have caused. Uh, which is weird. I guess the Ents don't know about elves, as I mentioned. It's it's strange that there's an elf here who's speaking Cinderin, and they even pause when they hear it, but I guess they don't know that elves are really chill about that sort of thing, and they're clearly not orcs, because you could tell by the way that they look and talk and act. Uh -huh. I um, think that's a mistake they've Arondir's... made, because uh, Treebeard doesn't know the difference tension? between hobbits and orcs. Uh, um, it might it. just be because hobbits are actually... They wouldn't have no idea what hobbits are, no, but no, I feel like no, the Ents no. should know no, who no, no, elves no. are. I'm saying, do you think they'd made this mistake as writers because oh. Lord of the Rings does that with hobbits Unironically, maybe. Yes. It like, could they, be. They only that are. misunderstanding. Yeah. Whereas Treebeard's misunderstanding was, like, understandable yeah, in a way. Yeah, his makes sense. This, this not. isn't. Like, he's clearly an elf. You should know what an elf is. Um... But yeah, um, Arondir says that they would seek forgiveness for the injury they have done, but I don't know what injury he's referring to. If he is referencing cutting down the tree in season one in the orc, like, tunnel, or the, the, the orc crevice that he was digging out, I don't know why you'd mention it to these guys, honestly. That would be really difficult <laughs> to explain, and it's a long story. 
and it's probably not something you want to tell them. They're like, yeah, I had to cut down this big ass ancient tree that had been there so long <laughs> and I cut it down, but I was justified because they just killed one of my friends, the orcs. Okay. So the orcs had us dig this tunnel. Okay. I got to go back further. And it's just a really complicated thing. I don't think there's that's a what he's there's here. a dam. It's, it's a really difficult yeah, story to try and sum up. At some point he's just like, you know what? Even... It's I didn't actually. I didn't cut anything down. Nothing to explain. I We're was good. mistaken. I, I think that's actually absolutely what he's referencing here because, you know, the writers knew, oh, we can reference this bit in this show here and, oh, mm -hmm. the, elves, the elves are going to be mad at him for cutting down a tree. Ooh, drama. But around yeah. here... I don't know why he says, like, he essentially admits, yeah, we've done bad stuff, but we're sorry for doing the bad stuff that you really hate. Um, we're really sorry about it. Because he's not he a liar. Why didn't he lie? Why didn't he lie? Why didn't he just... <laughs> uh, he, he's an elf. He elves don't lie. lie. Yeah, because I don't know what he's referring to. What has Arondir well, think... done that's so bad from the elves' perspective, other than now, that one specific thing? Yeah, cutting down the tree. But I don't, is that what he's referring to? Yes. That That's one tree, that, that one time, in that one place that he was yeah. forced to? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Yes. That's what he's referring That's, to when he's saying that he's... That's what yeah. he's talking yeah. about, yeah. Yep. Um, Winterbloom says, forgiveness takes an age, which is something a vindictive asshole says. I mean, that's an <laughs> interesting thing to say. Um, mm -hmm. Arondir was... By the way, we, from the first season, we know that Arondir specifically was a grower. He grew things. He knew about mm. the seeds, and he told Bronwyn about trees Not and sure. seeds and how grower. he would... You know, gr grow things as you do if you're a grower. Um, yeah. And I think it would have been interesting if he would have used that to appeal to Winter Bloom, who is referenced to be someone who grows and tends to the sprouts of her own. And uh, that could be like something that they share. Oh, I grow things too, and you grow things, and we both grow things. And isn't that great that it's something that we both do together? I'm 3,000 um, years old. I, I might have planted you for all you know. Yeah, yeah. that would have been. I'm your that dad, been neat. actually. But yep. they don't they don't play into his past and appealing to Winterbloom. Uh so yeah. he, there he he also know, promises like... to uh, like take care of the forest and make sure that everyone leaves the forest alone. And that forest will not that promise will not be kept because the Gondorians are gonna be here and cut down all the trees to Yay. make ships later on because this is right next to the Oopsie. big fucking harbor city. <laughs> But like you that promise. whole idea of Aaron Beer <laughs> Aaron Beer wanting to go up and like save the forest is they they draw that out of they basically draw it out of bullshit. Like, like Rex said, they could have gone with like, well, he's a grower and he has this deep emotional connection to nature, which we saw in season one. Um, and they, uh, the bit previously with the giant mud snake, uh, that there were a whole load of like trees that had been chopped down because this is where the orc army mm -hmm. has, has gone. Um, we didn't have any kind of like emotional response there where he was like traumatized by, holy shit, this is like really bad. I can't believe they've done this to the natural beauty of, uh, well, what will become Gondor, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. and then, and then he is kind of overwhelmed with grief here. And then he says to the Ents, like, okay, I've, I've got to put this right for you. Cause I feel so bad that this has happened. Like there's something that you can do there, but what they've done instead is it seems to be that he, he didn't recognize that any of that happened. And he's mm -hmm. now telling mm -hmm. the Ents, um, I will put this right. Please don't tread on my friends. Like it's very yeah. much a short term, like, please don't kill us. I'll, I'll go on and save the forest kind of, kind of thing. Yeah. Also, as uh, Shad points out, uh, he has wooden armor as well. Uh, yeah, true. <laughs> oh, that's true. Uh, and, and his bow and arrows, presumably, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. Many of your arrows were my friends. I hope the one that killed I hope the one that killed Bronwyn was one of my relatives. <laughs> <laughs> the, ar the armor starts to talk. Just kill me. <laughs> um, oh, so they go to Theo's cage and he's reunited and she talks about knowing peace and um yeah so that it just kind of happens in this weird edit where she's talking about like knowing what peace is and finding it and then they're just they go through the woods and they're with Theo now and he's free they get him out mm -hmm. of the tree. I don't know what's going to happen to the other guys in the cage. I guess they could leave whenever they want, but... Oh, they they go out, and one of them goes to yeah. Estra. Estra. One of them Estra. Yeah, very implausibly turns it's, out to be it's, the oh, yeah, one that's right. person oh, yeah, that's who actually right. means yeah, something yeah, yeah. to her. The likelihood she yeah. indeed yeah. did have a fiancé. <laughs> yeah. That uh, wasn't a lie. She truly did have a fiancé, Hagen. He's right there. She was um, about to make out Estrid, with Isildur. Estrid was yep. right about to kiss Isildur, and he just shows up at that moment. Yeah. So I guess Get her plan to Isildur. sort of 
<laughs> yeah, he go finally got. And he go paid to... for that three month membership, top tier. <laughs> he was like, finally. And then she's like, nah, my actual and husband he gets is what here. He fucking deserves. I also uh, think it would have been funny this, if. This pagan guy he... is the guy that said in. Sorry, go on, Mola, go on. I was just going to say quickly when he straightens her up at her head, you just hear like bones cracking. And so it's like, <laughs> oh, we did it. Just like, <laughs> I'm fine. Like... I, can't feel, I can't feel my legs. <laughs> Um, I was going to say that this Hagen guy is the guy uh, who was seemed to be in charge of the wildlings, and he wildlings, wild men, wildlings. and he was he he kind of heavily implied that he is absolutely loyal to Adar. Yeah, he says that that's not Adar's brand, <laughs> and then Theo says it's proof I've done more for him, and he's like, uh, whatever he says afterwards, it's like try us or something. Like, yeah, yeah. This this person is supposedly a follower of Adar, but actually, mm -hmm. no, because misdirection. The the scriptwriters fucking lie to us. I mean, he might still be, we don't know. Well, it'd be really funny, I mean, right? They be, reunite, but... everything's happy, and then uh, Arondia's like, so... Let's go burn some villages together. It was like, are you guys, uh, <laughs> you guys hate our people? And he's like, so... yeah, and he's like, sorry. And uh, aims his arrows. Uh, and he them all. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've been through a lot, but I mean... Yeah, I mean, I gotta kill you, though. I can't believe you're here. Yeah, me um... neither. Uh, yeah, and, so well, I and, guess, uh... and you're supposed to be feeling along with this Yildo, like, oh, that unrequited love. When I'm sitting no. like, bro, she's a disaster. Have you seen everything yeah, in the past three episodes? She's awful. She is awful. What she's a trying to kill you like character. three times. <laughs> yeah, like the fact go, that. Because so, this, this, this gives us extra context to what happened in the, in the previous episode when she attacked him and claimed that, she, oh, shit, I should, I thought you were an orc or whatever. No, she was actually trying to kill him. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then she noticed he was a Numenorian, and she's like, well, oh, this is my ticket out of the I thought she just Earth, failed. Like, what? she tried to kill him and failed. No. Yeah. So that's yep. what she claims, but she decided not to kill him before learning that he was a Numenorian. So what I think was probably happening there is that she's a, a wild person who's trying to find her fiancé. She sees a dude roll up on a horse. Is like, okay, I'm going to stab this guy and then take his horse. And then she finds out that he's a Numenorian after deciding not to kill him for some reason. And then figures, oh, okay, well, I can, <laughs> I guess, escape to Numenor. Do you think I, the writers want us to think she doesn't... actually thought he was an orc? Because that's so <laughs> well, stupid I think that, that like, I've, I've thrown it out as potential, but I'm like, oh shit, the writers might want us to think that. Mm -hmm. They're back and forth again in know. order to try and misdirect us. I don't know exactly what we're supposed to think. But the thing is, she already time. knows that the maybe, Numenor maybe they all left, know. right? Like, she, she already knows they cleared the ridge, the ridge line, right? So, I don't, what, what would, he do, yeah. I guess, maybe, just maybe stick around until they maybe awkward. come back for more people. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's possible that writers don't even know if she thinks he, he was an orc or not. They just, nah, th this is what she says. All right, let's move on. Well, because also, um, sorry, the the trap, uh, quote unquote, trap where she where he finds Estrid and the later trap with the wagon with the guy with the mark on him. They're pretty mm -hmm. much the same. Like she's hiding in there yeah. to lure someone in in order to, I mean, stabby, they stabby. could get his horse, mm -hmm. or, or yeah, at the very least, mug him and take his food and his wallet. You know. Yeah. Yeah, Estrid's a, a <sighs> cheating bitch, uh, and I fucking hate her. Hope she dies. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we're gonna see her again. Uh, well, she yeah, didn't... I don't think so either. It's, so. It's, it's just not very well portrayed because like even if she thought he was dead it doesn't feel that like the way it feels like the she's just doing whatever and he's back so like, okay, she got over okay. that quick um and you First get the orion she meets yeah you get the most uh generic sort of hello theo hello uh you saved me uh -huh. i did i did save you i said i would it's like thank you for saving yeah. me uh Thanks. It's such a, you know, you <laughs> could... You, That's like, like the blueprint, yeah, and then later you draft it to be like, what would humans say? This is just the basic information for reference, what we're yeah. trying to get off for this scene. Now, what would a human say? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't change the it's like, hey, notes, thanks yeah. for keeping, thanks for <laughs> keeping your promise, but now I have to keep another one, and I'm going to leave. You're now the lord of fucking Pelagir. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Fuck off, show. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, that's right. Arondir says he has to follow the orcs, and maybe he has to confront Adar, uh, Adar himself. And Dude. he says, hey, Theo, you can come with me. Um, and Theo says, no. Um, I am the. I have to be the lord of Pelagir. And I guess... <laughs> So because dumb. Bronwyn was, because you see, Bronwyn was the leader of the Southlander people because she just was yep. for no reason. Yep. 
And so okay, now he's in charge. You need him to go back. No one else would want to lead or be in charge. You need him to well, go back to go back famously this, something people don't just want. just get someone in the crowd be like, I didn't vote for him. <laughs> What's going I on? I didn't vote for the last one. <laughs> Why are we making no, a child the fucking leader? <laughs> Yeah, again, in universe, think, like, the the He's absolute monarchy of Numenor is actually more democratic than <laughs> this situation right here. Like, they've had more of a say over who is their king or queen than these random villagers have. Oh, I think also, the Pelagia is going to be our leader now. Okay, all of these characters, uh, in, all of the peasants in Pelagia, in, and including Theo and Arendir, they should all believe that the king of the Southlands was critically wounded and he was getting healed a little while ago. Is he coming back? No one has mentioned that. Uh, Forget no. about that. Sh shut up. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the show has revealed to us that he's obviously Sauron instead, so it's like, why would we waste time yeah. with what the characters know? It's just, you know... I don't know, maybe... Mm -hmm. Maybe they can tell... Yeah, they all, the they all forgot people. about him. Maybe they can tell the Pelagi people that the Eagle talked to Theo <laughs> and it's like, you're cool, you're the lord now, and they're like, okay, cool. A big eagle just shows up whenever someone needs to be in charge. An eagle just shows up <laughs> like you, you could you, you, you right you. there, yeah, you. Mm -hmm. Why you? And, and leaves. And Waldrick shows up and walks to watch the eagle and an or shield or shield for him, you know. Hell yeah! Come on, yeah. fellas, We're one so scene weird. left. We're nearly there. We can taste oh. it. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, yeah. fucking oh. taste it. Okay, Funny. so. Can I can I to, like just delay us very quickly from getting there because I'm yes, I, I like doing this to people. Just had a <laughs> yes. like a faintly faintly horrifying thought, which is um, Isildur's wife in canon. I don't think is ever named. Obviously, he seems to be shacking up with this Estrid woman. Aragorn mm -hmm. is a descendant of Isildur, so yep. are we potentially seeing like several generations back the origin story for Aragorn in this? Uh. Terrifically Please romantic don't. story we're seeing unfold no, right are now. You're saying that Aragorn, uh, Aragorn is not Aragorn does is not fucking mixed blood, right? Aragorn. <laughs> Aragorn is a different series. All right, we have to stop this. It, <laughs> it hurts. All right, Aragorn was one good book. You know what? I'm not even gonna give it that. Aragorn. Aragorn. Not you realize Aragorn. now that you've done this, I'm going to be pointing out every time you pronounce a fucking yeah. word wrong in Lord of the Rings, which you do all the time. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. It'll keep me sharp. <laughs> it's one thing to mispronounce, it's another to say someone else's name. Now, um, uh, Galadriel and Elrund are, uh, they're, they're in, in company. They're, they're marching around and they see a bunch of orcs. Orcs. Who are in Elven territory, and they're kind of going towards Eregion. They Whoa. suspect that mm. Sauron and Adar may be in league, or maybe they're not. We don't know. You mean um, Adar? On that line, Adar. <laughs> uh, like radar. Oh, when he asks that question, I'm, which is I'm a very fucking it. pertinent question, um, dumbass responds, "Well, we're all at war anyway." It's like, <laughs> bro, yes, oh, okay. obviously. I'm just trying to point out that it's really bad if these two armies are aligned, okay? God, I hate yeah. this. Have the Italians joined Hitler? Ah, uh, wherever We're all war at war. No, it. It's all a war. The Japanese, <laughs> it's just bad. Oh, war. Oh, war, it's war, I mean, the Italians are more of a hindrance to the Germans, to be honest. But... War, war, war. <gasps> so, like, a, a massive unanswered question which i am just waiting to see how the, how on earth they explain it is why has adar marched his army here because what what does he know from halbrand the king of the southlands has has sauron posing as anatar communicated with him did he call down a lightning bolt into mordor and give him a sign from the gods or something <laughs> this is a good <laughs> question i don't man. know we, we we don't we, we don't know we don't because know. he is sauron is obviously in eregion but as yep. far as I can tell, there is no possible way that Adar could know that. No, unless well, he, know, he knows that Halbrand is there, probably. But he, more well, than that, he doesn't. Best case scenario, like... if Halbrand, Halbrand, if Halbrand allowed himself to be followed, because we know that Adar told someone told one of his orcs to follow him. Halbrand is Sauron, so that orc is not following him unless Halbrand wants, unless Sauron wants himself to be yes. followed. Dude, wouldn't what it be mean? hilarious if that orc just went back to uh, Adar and was like, dude, he just fucking transformed into another person. Like, we <laughs> need to go there right now. Wait till I tell you what he did to this bridge. You'll never believe it. <laughs> it's crazy, fucking dude. nuts, man. We don't stand I had to a chance. Go through this, I had to go through the spooky forest. There was like ghosts. It was fucking insane. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm going to transition to like the mess hall or something because this is fucking I mean, nuts. If, I ain't going sees, out there. If he sees him fucking destroy the bridge and all that shit, he's probably going to assume that he's, you know, not some normal fucking king from the Southlands. We wouldn't see him destroy yeah, it yeah. because he did it remotely, baby. A lightning strike. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's at random. True. My joke doesn't make <laughs> any sense yeah. at all. Um, so the elves see all these orcs marching around. We came in search of Sauron, and instead we find Adar. Adar, Adar. Uh, could be that they're in league with each other. Or maybe they're not. I don't know. They still don't know what's going on between Sauron and Adar. Oh my gosh. Maybe they'll never uh. find out. Maybe they will. I don't care. Um, the important thing that happens is that orcs... Okay. <laughs> I'll just tell you what happens. Orcs are randomly funny. shooting at some horses. And then one of the <laughs> it's arrows... So funny. It's so one fucking of funny. One of the arrows <laughs> randomly hits one of the elves in their party. It's the same guy who almost got shot earlier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's just like... I, I'm not going insane. That's what happens in the scene, right? That's yeah, what happens in the scene. It is it's so a bad. total random accident. Yeah, yeah, I think when I watched it, there. I think I didn't even realize the first time I watched it. I was like, "Wait, hang on, did he get, did he get hit by a it's arrow?" So stupid. <laughs> and they that they're really so proud of their shot weirdly. too because they're like, "Look, it's in the foreground, and then in the background, rack focus, boom!" And he gets hit by one too. And you're like, "What the? F why?" <laughs> did you think like, "Oh, time for a fight"? It's They've been so spotted. It's like, no, no, just random. You know, random arrows. The elf. So much for that elf sight and elf hearing that is yep. so insanely selective. It's it's wild. They're just like, what do we need to have happen? Because the orcs could just be like, oh, elves, let's shoot at them. <laughs> but but no, it's just nope. it's an actual random coincidence. So random. The, this guy was that just awesome. destined to be hit by an arrow and fucking. He was yeah, just in the woods at the wrong place while the orcs <laughs> were randomly hunting oh. horses. I don't oh. know, man. That's just what they wrote. So yeah. Look how One far the, away the elf, that the arrow. Guy elf. Uh, both arrows were from that horse, by the way. Embarrassing. They're really <laughs> shit. Ex well, they weren't shit when they killed the one guy last season. They were really good shooting him. They were like, three oh, yeah. Three. yeah. The but it's one. really hard to take those scenes yeah. seriously because season one also gave us that slow motion shot of Arondir catching an arrow mid flight yeah. and firing it back. Like, once you've seen elves can do that, I don't think they have any excuse getting shot. <laughs> they, they can only be retarded if they get shot because they can catch them. They can hear it, they can see it, they can catch it. Yeah, I don't I can, know. I can accept that Map Guy would not be able to do that, but Galadriel should absolutely be able to do that if Aring Dick can. Mm hmm. Um, Elrond can do it. Map yeah, Guy is not Elrond soldier. smacks it right out of the air. Elrond's yeah, really good. Yeah, that's true, yeah. I love the. Uh, Maybe he gets like... shot, but he knows that they know he can't speak, so he's got to wait until we're done editing wise, looking at where the orcs were, them expecting, like, oh, they, <laughs> yeah. they don't know where we are, they were just shooting the horse the horse they, they do all of this like almost logistically and then they allow this mm -hmm. guy to have to recognize the situation yeah. you know like he has right this now. expression of can i uh, do i matter now they're like yeah you can matter now yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's okay <laughs> <laughs> he's he's again. no I one's noticed or paid any attention to him and so he's like well fucking guys i've been shot uh, I, I have been hit with I've an arrow i'll probably shot. die <laughs> can you help uh, how about if you're gonna make this retarded scene how about you make the arrow go into the darkness and then you hear a noise but no. <laughs> oh well. Yeah. Well, we need to establish something else. That's why. Well, we're I hope this. he. Um, yeah. I hope he's yeah, okay because yeah, yeah. he seems like a nice guy. Um. So. Um. We're gonna have to discuss what happens next because it it's kind uh -huh. of a big deal and it's sort of important. Uh, our poor elf guy, he gets shot and they have to be like, "Oh, quiet, quiet. We can't let you know that you've been randomly shot by this random arrow that they shot." So they hide mm -hmm. behind a boulder. And Galadriel's putting pressure on the wound, and she's got her hands down on him. And oh no, the orcs might have hurt us. Oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? Oh, it's very no. tense. And then they discover that Galadriel's ring has healed him of his arrow wound. <sighs> it the arrow just falls out of him. Falls out. Uh, yeah. Mandalorian season one, we did it. Uh... I, which I was not expecting, honestly. That was a bit of a surprise. Not me by surprise. <sighs> I'm glad he's okay, but what the fuck? I mean, that's uh, the only reason why it all played out the way that it did anyway, was essentially to show this, because I guess this is meant to be for, like, Elrond of, oh, you know what? Maybe the ring's not so bad after all, or something, even though it doesn't yeah, it mean anything yeah. about whether or not it's good mm -hmm. or bad that it can heal you. That doesn't tell you anything about its morality. 
Uh, fucking force it, healing him. After this scene, if you're Elrond, you you should absolutely be like, I am never trusting this thing. It is very, very clearly trying to trick me. <laughs> also, the power he, like, level is insane. He, we have no idea what this thing can do. Yeah. Yes, and I'm full. I am totally expecting that. I uh, my bet is on episode seven. I think that by episode seven, some injury will have been inflicted that could have been fixed by this ring, and it will not be. That many. Probably. Yeah. Oh. I'm saying it's definitely going to happen. Because establishing this in this setting is insane. And all of them There's... now know that it can do this. So yeah. do you think the only reason this happens is not to set up the way that they have to heal an injury, but simply a way to try and convince Elrond that the ring can be trusted? That's what I think. Yeah, I think that's yeah. part of it, but I also think that Elrond should be aware of that. I agree too. Yeah, it's yeah. he should be like, oh, this ring is... Because we don't talk about the conflict of, oh, the ring should, the ring very well might have a reason to be tricking me into thinking that it is trustworthy and good. Um, yes. I might be wrong in the sense that, oh, maybe it is just an okay ring and it isn't actually corrupt, but he, he has no way of knowing. And if you don't have any way of knowing, you have to suspect it. Well, to be clear, like part of why I think that he should be highly suspicious is because of the very next thing Galadriel does. Uh, Did the ring Galadriel... also make the, the arrow hit the madman, or no? I don't think it has that power. <laughs> sure, why not? I don't think it so. It has healing I, powers. I, I, I don't mean, think so. It has healing powers. Yeah. I think it's just an actual coincidence that this one guy got hit by the arrow. But sure. that's a writing mm -hmm. narrative reason to give an excuse I for I think it's funny either someone. way. But yeah. Well, that's it just a typical rings of power writing technique. And then this happens, so we can do another thing. Yeah, but don't mm -hmm. worry. We can take care of that left. problem. Nah. Uh... Galadriel decides she's going to go off to fight this little group of orcs that's approaching, and she tells them to go off. But before she goes, uh, so they can make their escape, she takes off the ring and gives it to Elrond. Oh, you can do that? So th did all the elves just die? So the surprises, <laughs> we just keep racking up those surprises. So she takes it why off. Why don't they all just leave? Says, yeah, all too. of them leave. Very good question. Yeah, I don't understand. You know that elves are way slower oh. than orcs? <laughs> and also, where, where, did, where did everybody think that they were going at this point? Well, they were supposed to be going where to a regular, right? Through. Yep. That's yes, where they're fine. supposed to be going. But well, at this so... point, I was like, dude, they're, they're going back to Linden, aren't they? That was what I thought. Yeah, there's so... an army of orcs marching to a regular, yeah. There was a line from Elrond where he says that we have to inform the High King before our yeah. fleet sails for yeah. Mordor, because that was set up in, in episode two. Um, so, yeah. By the way, what a fucking stupid, what a stupid ass plan. Let's just send everything we have to this one place so we can get infiltrated from any, any other place. Well, I mean, it, while we are, you know, like, have Sauron possibly in one of our cities. We, we have to warn the High getting, King or whatever, uh, and it's like, what about the other catastrophic existential disaster we're dealing with? You really gotta get to You could, uh, you could split up here. Right? Well, yeah, what they could have done is they could have had um, Galadriel say, I, I will go to Eregion, you go back and inform the High King, and maybe have the party yeah. split in half. Exactly. Um, yes. and, yeah, they could have done that, but they don't. The, the plan here is um, Galadriel is going to buy them time by fighting an army of orcs, a legion of orcs, <laughs> if referred to as in the next episode. Because it's bad um, well, I know that we, we don't see a legion, but they're all here. That's why she knows that she's going to get captured instead of killed. I mean, yeah. But like the, so the fact that she does this is also this should convince Elrond that Galadriel has been convinced by the ring to lay down her life to protect it. Because mm -hmm. yeah, she has just handed mean... over the ring and jumped into what any reasonable person would call certain death. It's a legion of orcs mm -hmm. that could take yep. Eredian. Um, Elrond should be like, uh, uh, okay, so this ring has just told my friend to go and kill herself. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait. Is could you, would this. you consider it suicide if she has napalm lanterns? <laughs> I mean, they didn't the consider shot, that the option. Shot where she takes the napalm lantern from the orc is yeah. so funny because he, so he's stupid. just kind of standing there, looking the other way, just like holding his lanterns, like, "Oh wait, give that back!" No. Oh, that whole one of the quote. shittiest action scenes I've ever it's, seen in it's my so life. Bad. It's and so that stupid. is a uh, high bar. You have um, 30, 40, 50 orcs just scene, you know? standing around and looking at her. Killing she, yep. whoever decides she to is, go up first. 
absolutely surrounded that. by orcs yeah. and some of them have bows and some of them are so good with their bow that they hit people by accident. And by no accident, yeah. <laughs> They're, they're also standing is, um, around waiting while they're having the conversation before as well. Like they're just like waiting there. They're not approaching or anything. Yeah, yeah um, it's one of the things that you can go back to about the first John Wick, the good one, uh, yeah, about yeah, how yeah. you can believe by the way that he's portrayed and moves around and acts yeah. and behaves and plans ahead. You mm -hmm. could believe that this guy is serious business. He is super deadly. You do not want to cross paths with him. The way that Galadriel acts in this action scene makes no sense. She's not making use of cover, <laughs> knowing that they have no. arrows. She's yep. closing the distance while using her melee weapons. She has plenty oh. of arrows, as, and she's moving closer as she's using her arrows. Um, she's not, like, she just approaches them. She mostly uses her And she doesn't, like, start shooting fight. them from a distance. It's kind of nuts. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you don't you want to... So, well, so she runs like in between a whole do. bunch of them, and she hops on a horse yeah. and just stands, stands there. And what if the Galadriel many, horse many stunts all the time? Those fucking stunts look so stupid. <laughs> I guess stupid she hopes to escape time. on the horse, but like it felt so odd. Yeah. Uh, well, she runs like right to him. Yep. When she gets on the horse, she charges right at all of the orcs before she gets chained, grabbed by Adar. But like, what was the plan? Is it just to like the, she acts like someone who knows they're way over leveled? Yeah, she and their knew. evasion yeah. skill is so high <laughs> she that she just cannot get in. Out. She doesn't do anything. Yeah. It almost did. Oh, oh like yeah, the, she knows. The she knows she can do whatever she wants. The plot will protect her. She does not behave like I would expect an incredibly skilled warrior to behave. They are not selling yeah. the idea that she is this deadly and dangerous, well, you know, <laughs> combatant. You know how you have. In Fellowship, especially when you don't, you have context for almost anything. You've lost Gandalf, and then you get to Amon Hen. That that scene is among mm -hmm. everything else is a fucking amazing scene. It's pretty tense in terms of like the more and more the Uruk, oh, yeah. especially for Boromir because he's the most likely person yeah. that's not going to make it. But like mm -hmm. a scene like this. <laughs> You'll be fine, you bitch. <laughs> like nothing's yeah. gonna happen to you. <laughs> Nobody, yeah, nobody's worried no for tension. you. You'll be absolutely. You'll be like, oh yeah. yeah, because you know that she. And I'm like, no, no. It's not to do with the fact that she's Galadriel. It's, it's. Well, it, it is to do with the fact that she is this Galadriel in this show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. My God, like it just the, sucks. Um... She could, she could assault a billion orcs. I'd be like, she'll be fine. She's gonna be fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the there's no connection between what we're actually seeing and what we would expect. It's all just what does the plot want to happen? Mm -hmm. That's what's going to happen. What we actually see in terms of logistics, positioning, combat, none of that That's matters. It just doesn't matter. Turn, dude. Fuck me. But yeah, the, the, the only thing that could possibly stop her is the sudden appearance of the big bad. And the only yeah. thing that could possibly result in her coming out of this alive is the sudden appearance of yep. the big bad, who's the only one with any motive to not kill her. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't know he's there. So but I, I can read and, and be charitable and say that I think she gives the ring over because the uh, top most of her mind is that she does not want the ring to fall into the hands of the enemy. That seems sane and sensible, but it does mean she has to expect to die. And that is not how she acts at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She would expect to die. I just don't know why they just didn't leave. They can outrun orcs. They're elves. This confrontation oh, yeah. doesn't have to happen. If they'd bought they their own horses, they'd have been fine. But they didn't mm -hmm. because they're idiots. That too, yeah. <laughs> they would have already been there at this point if they brought horses. She said, "Go back to the shadow." Do you remember when? Oh, fine. Oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> oh there's so many of oh. those. <clears throat> but why does she hesitate to shoot Adar? What's the idea there? I I don't know. Uh, she probably wants to fuck him, <laughs> 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 him as well. Wants to fuck him as well. Oh. That's it, right? Uh. That's um, it. Let's like... see. No, there's one more thing I have in my notes. Oh. Uh, okay. There's one last thing. The the ending credit song is really crazy. Yes. Yes, I have that too, yeah. Oh, I never listen to the oh. ending songs. I, I click it off as soon as I can. It's, <laughs> the, to the tone shift is so fucking sudden and weird. And uh, it reminded me of an episode in um, Game of Thrones. Uh, when they cut to the bear and the maiden fair after what? Jamie's hand gets chopped off. Yep. Yeah, what, what, guess... what is this? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, it's no, so I fucking weird. It, I just stopped, but like I'm just listening to it. What the hell is what, after hey, that on. ending? Now I, now I need to know. Yeah, it's a what very it? like this is the song. Looking at the the subtitles, it looks like it's kind of half a sing song, happy clappy lyrics. Is that what it is? No, it's a guy song. singing. 
this guy is singing like this what happy, cheerful song. And I'm like, what? Yeah. But she just got captured by Adar and everything. Yeah, it's and not right. Then there's this guy being like, oh, we're having oh, a great yeah, it's, time. It's and nature, and nature is love. Okay. Oh, nature is love. Is he, How can you get he's everything about Tom wrong? Bumbledil because he was in the episode. It, well, we should probably sense. pay attention to it because like the, the way this show works season four episode nine this will become a plot point like the hobbit song did earlier <laughs> so like we, probably. We, we, i probably really should go and listen to this mm -hmm. i didn't realize by the way the trees were jim broadbent and olivia williams both of them i quite like as actors oh yeah yeah oh well <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right <laughs> Uh, those hold on. Those are the two. Those those two have to be by far the two biggest name actors that have been in Rings of Power. It does feel kind of the, 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 the about well, that, because the yeah. only the only other actor whose name I knew previously was uh, the guy from Game of Thrones who, who played old. Oh, oh yeah, I knew Lenny Henry's name. Yeah, that's true. Mm. I guess it was probably him then, right? Well, Jim Broadbent like, is the probably the biggest name power? out of all of them. Then. Yep. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Like, who else is there? You've got the guy from Game of Thrones and. Lenny Henry, like that's it. <laughs> Everyone Lenny else is Henry, a TV actor. He fucking dead. Yeah. He out of here. He got stabbed. He was also he, he was also Caesar in Rome, which is a very good performance as well. Oh, wait, oh nice. god. So episode four, eldest. We got trees. We got Thomas Bombadil. We got um. No Waldrick. Gundabale. We no got Waldrig. no Waldrig. He's still bad news. Bad news. He, oh, wait, he's him. still missing in action. Remember, he's, it's just like um, never die. Waldrigs never die. They're only it's just like Otto in Hot D. You know, like when does he come back? We yeah, can... yeah. <laughs> Waldrig will be in that a prison. That would be hilarious if at the end of an episode, yeah, <laughs> he's gonna be captured off screen. He'll turn his head <laughs> when he sees someone approaching the prison he's in. Uh, maybe he'll be in one of the little ant cages with the wood. Yes, yeah, maybe. Mm. of course. But he has osteoporosis and he can't get out without hurting himself, so he has to wait there. <laughs> Give us Waldrick. Yeah. Do it Where's your coward. Waldrick? <laughs> he was so happy. <laughs> Welcome to Mordor. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, uh, I suppose it was mentioned before that is arguably the worst episode of all of them. Mm. How do we so far, how yeah. are we Pretty fucking awful. Episode five, I feel, is worse. I'll Ooh, tell you yeah. about that I, next week. They I blend a bit for me. Do you not, I kind um, of think they're all awful, you know? Like, there's no... Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. but I, 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 got, I got more mad at this episode than I have at the other ones. <laughs> yeah. Do you, I think were you madder so at this episode this. than episode one? Yes. Um, hmm. Episode I, one is it bungles the ending of season one, and it also spends so much time just doing the whole ring thing in a completely mm. nonsensical manner. Whereas yes. this episode feels like you're watching filler with bullshit that doesn't need to happen. I, think, I was slightly I, I happy at episode one with Chad Elrond and all that shit. But the yeah, thing I, is, I, season one in terms of its consequence, uh, episode one in terms of its consequences is uh, catastrophic. True. Um, yeah. In a way that I, might be hard for any episode to challenge. That's why I'm kind of thinking episode one of season two is still the worst of them all, but we're kind of at the point where they're all so terrible in their own way. It's basically <laughs> like, it's like, it's like when yeah, terrible that's... movies come out and we're like comparing ones and twos yep. or twos and threes. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's tough to kind There's of separate no them, but I really, because like, it's just such a, I find it so miserable watching this show. Like it is so it's, it's like, intensely boring and also very frustrating yeah it's, it's all like, of the moving parts are bad it. there's no episode where i'm like oh wow that's kind of like surprising in a good way hope never <laughs> nothing never gives you happened. hope yeah there's no, never anything that happens where you're like oh we we got it ever like you get like that twinkling like oh hey elrond did something that is is kind of good oh he's ruined oh hey maybe during a decent nope they're ruining those two all right yeah i think um, um it was said when we uh when we were covering i think it was said when we were covering season one that because season two was entering into production so quickly after season one that like it wouldn't mm -hmm. essentially be no any of the criticism direction. yeah exactly but i don't think it will ever change ever um at this point i don't know yeah. I, don't, I don't know if they'll ever change the way that they're doing things on this show you would think that just the simple fact that they're pl they've planned five seasons we're not even through the second season. Viewership is starting is is on a dire trend already. It's it's already bad <laughs> and it's on a dire trend. Yeah. There's got to be someone who goes like, like we're 
we're I mean, we got to we got to do they, something it's um, in the world that made sense yes but this world doesn't make sense it's it it might really just is, plow ahead i guess it is an yeah. imperfect metric to judge how successful or popular something is but when house of the dragon was coming out people were talking about it like yeah. just by and large it was being discussed in you know obviously the longer it went on the more that it started to get negative but it's like any buzz at all whereas with this show mm. it feels like it's kind of a, a vacuum right it's only the net it's only negative um coverage but in terms of like pretty much of just people on twitter being like oh man this really cool thing that happened it's just non-existent like so there, you guys... there are a few there are a few like bot accounts and shit like that <laughs> but, sure. uh, yeah but do, do you guys know anyone personally Sorry, after you. Oh, I was going to say, do you guys know anyone personally outside of like the YouTube, Twitter, internet sphere who is actually watching Rings of Power? No, I haven't I talked know. to anyone I know, since I know that came out person. that's outside of the sphere. I, I know I, one I, person I, who's watching it, yeah. like unironically, yeah. and he's also watching like content on it on YouTube. So he knows it's mm. not good, but he's watching it anyway. I know one person who liked the season one. <laughs> um, yeah, but I don't, I don't know anyone. Harrison I don't. Is kind of an instructive one, right? And I'm, I'm conscious this is going to seem like an ironic statement given we've spent eight hours talking about it, but what is there to talk about in Rings of Power? Like, in this episode, if you're not breaking it down uh, beat by beat, every single aspect, and actually, you know, pointing out all of the many things it, it does wrong, if you compare it to House of the Dragon, where a lot of the negativity comes around certain choices that are made, but choices have been made and the show has gone somewhere, like, most of the time that is progressing and it's progressing at a reasonable rate even season two which is criticized for being slow at times things are still happening it's a dense show but like the last mm -hmm. episode we've just done what's actually occurred in the third of the runtime of the extended edition of fellowship of the ring what's happened <laughs> we've got um uh, they, they, they went to rescue theo because they went to rescue a horse and they got him and uh a guy got shot by an arrow accidentally and then Galadriel got captured, and like, is there anything else? Nori, they set up, it's, it's they set up Shire, Shire, and they set up Bombadil. That's it. It's, know, it's set yeah. up. It's, yeah, it's interesting to say that though, because at the same time, it, it in in some ways it races through events that should have taken place over yeah. a much lengthier mm -hmm. amount of time, like the creation yeah. of the rings, they all of the that a lot. That are happening in Numenor, um, just even characters moving from point A to point B. It's like it's simultaneously backwards in terms of the amount of. And it's being that's quite relayed, crazy, but at the same time, it's really quick. Yeah, yeah. it's it's, I it's weird because I, I waste. Go ahead. As I started my rewatch of season one while uh, Hot D season two was uh, coming out, and I think I watched an episode of season one and then watched Hot D after the new episode, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Like when Dang when night. I thought we. When I when I thought I was like done with the hot D episode, it's like, oh man, so much has happened, man. I, then this is gonna be over soon, right? And then I move my mouse, or something, and it's like, oh, there's like half the episode left. <laughs> yeah, you don't want what? those episodes to end, and this is like, Jesus Christ, just be done already. I want to go. <laughs> do, I want to do, do anything something else. else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The 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 difference in what they do in an hour uh, between those two shows specifically is insane. I was like, man, you yeah. did so many things in an hour in Hot D, and here you did like, I don't know, like five things maybe that you could have done. I do find it like very funny like, yeah. as well that um, in episode three, because they did episodes one, two, and three all released simultaneously to, I guess, artificially inflate view time. But um, arguably, the two big kind of um, dramatic cliffhangers that it builds into is Farazon's taken over Numenor, and the dwarves are getting their rings made. Tune in for episode four when I <laughs> we don't none of that's in this episode. The dwarves, um, Eregion, Celebrimbor, nope. Numenor, none of that is in this episode, which I think is partly why this episode in particular feels like a complete waste of time. Yeah, we yeah. will fuck it, around in the desert doing bullshit, and that will take up yep. a huge chunk of time. But then we will completely skip past incredibly important mm -hmm. conversations like mm -hmm. Durin and the king, uh, yep. you know, and their reconciliation. Uh, potentially, and the decision to accept the elves' offer and all the thought process that went into that, these monumentally important character decisions and conversations, that just, yeah. do they get zero time. It happens off screen. It's not just also... around in the desert either. It's the fact that they had a set of characters who were going to be fucking around in the desert. And then they split them up. So now we've got two <laughs> plot lines of fucking around in the desert. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, they they need do. Extra yeah stuff. that was yeah. rude of them. They can't yeah. even expediently keep them together to waste time as uh, one unit. 
<laughs> Fucking hell, have, that's so we have true. To split up to waste time. Now yeah, we have the also, Thomas okay. Bombadil, and we have the the Stour Village. <laughs> with the yeah. way the plotline is forked. I al I also feel like this episode fucked more with the lore than the previous episodes in this season, at least. Uh, I well, get that feeling. Uh, Bombadil in particular, right? That that for yes. book fans, that's going to be a big hit. You had Bombadil, you had fucking weird crevasses in the middle of Region for some reason. And then you have, uh, uh, what more? Um, well, fuck, I'm too tired. <laughs> well, I was Me too. Yeah, that, on that no, name, I was going to try and, we got <clears throat> outros too, yeah. but we'll start with Random, because he can exit then at will. He's, uh, he's going to have to get up pretty soon after he goes to sleep, so... <laughs> what, what, what are you up to? Are you doing anything that people who listen to this might be interested in? Maybe? Maybe some kind of Ring of uh, Power related thing? Quite possibly. I might be doing... I made the silly decision to do what I did a couple of years ago when my channel didn't really exist. And to go through season two of Rings of Power, like episode by episode, and make videos on each one. Um, so I've got the first four out. Um, five I'm kind of partway through working on. Probably get five out next week. And then... I mean, we got six, seven, and eight. Where I don't know how long those videos are going to be, though, because honestly, I'm, I'm. They might be blue balling the hell out of us, but I'm expecting that it's going to be go, 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 and there's going to mm. be quite a lot that happens in the final few, uh, three episodes, I think. But we will have to wait and see. Um, yeah, apart from that, that's kind of all I'm doing at the moment. It's wow. uh, it's rings of power all day, every day. Wonderful. I'm sure your brain is still okay, good to go. You just got to survive past that finale, and then you can rest another few years probably well pretty much i'm going on holiday in the middle of october for two weeks so my intention is to get october, them finished before then that's where you choose oh, where will, holiday. will you be home for halloween <laughs> uh what date is halloween 31st i believe yeah <laughs> typically no i never i never pay attention to halloween so i know wow. you guys had the whole <laughs> christmas halloween thing i don't i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i'm not i'm not <laughs> yeah, to you, that's what like that's like saying what what date is Christmas, I guess. <laughs> um, no, I'm going to be in Florida for Halloween, so I won't be here for Halloween, unfortunately. Florida? Yeah. What's in Florida? Um, a whole Halloween? bunch of like... Halloween, <laughs> Halloween. Yeah, Halloween. Is in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I'm told I can find Halloween in Florida, yes. Well, I was in uh, uh, Florida a few weeks ago, so we could have met up, but we didn't organize it properly. So I guess... Uh, uh, Guess we'll never see each other. We could have watched Rings of Power in person. We could have, yes, the world we could have finally tomorrow. meet to watch Rings of Power together. <laughs> That's yeah. what you're gonna do if you meet up. What the fuck? Watch Rings. Yeah, of we, Power. we we of course we have to watch Rings of Power together in person. It's either that or Glass Onion. We have to do a drunk stream of it. We it's a tradition. Heavily watch Rings of Power. Oh yeah. Well, we incredibly Heck appreciate yeah. your time, sir. Thank you so much. And yeah, uh, for anybody who's not subscribed to Random Film Talk, you probably gonna enjoy his stuff especially if you enjoy oh, listening to this podcast and thank you awesome so much for joining videos. us yay thank you and you are uh, now yeah thank you for free. having me as always you may escape like a bird from a cage like rain from alien romulus oh, 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 rom I, uh, yes um i would stay to uh for the wind up but uh or wind up wind down but uh yeah i've got to be up in about five hours because i've got a day of uh warhammer crusade to do tomorrow it's like my day off out of editing so Ooh. yeah well like i said we very cool. much appreciate it you go have yourself a fine sleep maybe a long short one but uh, it's fine <laughs> you, yeah just go you go get it done so thank you so much Bye. Deep sleep. i will do my best thank you guys i'll see you later goodbye see you. goodbye see ya Bye. little platoon how are you doing on the Rings I did of not Power go to Disney World. coverage? What can, what, what can people find about you since last week? What's the newest update? Have you got seven videos out? Um, no, but I'm still doing season one, so yeah. <laughs> otherwise it's the same answer. Um, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that should hopefully be out next weekend. Like, seven days for copyright because it's going to get hit. <sighs> so my hope is... Oh, no, so not next weekend. The weekend after next weekend. Yeah. We then hopefully it'll be free of copyright and done. Make people very aware of that. The the work, the style of work, the way that uh, a lot of us edit oh. is... It's so... Like, you'll be like, what took so long? You're just like, I just went through a portion that's not going to mean anything to anybody. I just... 
re-edited <laughs> like a billion times over the course of two weeks for no reason. <laughs> like it, it could have happened Funny day one, but that. instead it does. Yeah, <laughs> I figure that's happening to everybody who does. I've actually, the I've actually left Streamlabs on record for the entire edit process from writing till the finished thing, just for one of the episodes of the big season one video. So I'm kind of tempted to throw that together as a kind of like, this is how it's done. And also, mm-hmm. this is how much fucking time it takes for like one eighth mm-hmm. of the entire mm-hmm. video. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then yeah, I might link, stick link that it on, like, every time channel. someone's like, "What's the next video? What's going on?" <laughs> it it takes fucking ages. Just... Nightmare. But yeah, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> Thank you as well, sir, for joining us for so very long. And uh, yeah, your 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 videos will be plenty uh, enjoyable for those who enjoyed this podcast, Rings of Power coverage. And I mean. Who in chat doesn't know who Little Platoon is at this point? Let's be honest. <laughs> mm-hmm. You guys should be subscribed by now. Um, I, I guess uh, Metal. What's uh, what 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 are, you, what are you up to? You haven't you haven't released any videos, have you? Related to Rings of Power, have, have you? I mean, uh, actually, oh I, I, I've already did three of them. Yes, I know. I know. Oh, I said it last holy last shit. year, last week already. I think this might be a surprise still to people. Like, I'm actually making videos right now. Mm-hmm. Like, it's been four years since the John Wick 3 video. <laughs> so Are you allowed to do that? To do something. Uh, so, yeah, there's, like, uh, I've got three episodes of Rings of Power Season 2 out. Uh, go check them out. I, I, I you know, uh, I'm a wage slave, so I can only work as fast as I can right now. So mm-hmm. I'm not at four yet. I'm catching up quite heavily, quite slowly, I should say. So, yeah, there's actual content on my channel now besides The Forges. Uh, Go check it out. I've I've been working tirelessly on these ones. And, uh, yeah, good good memes, good schlemes. Uh, I I opted to use some kind of copyright protection because copyright has been kicking my ass, basically. Uh, Odin made myself, uh, made me some... uh, Uh, a copyright commander, I guess. That's on episode three. It's, oh yeah, uh... that cursed fucking image. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fun. I like it, uh, and that that seems to work quite well to protect me from the evil copyright overlords. Yes. So uh, yeah, go check those out. I've uh, I've been having fun editing those, but it's also been a lot of work. And it's, it's, it's also for me, it's been from being able to stream more Star Wars Outlaws. Isn't that horrendous? Horrible. That's true, because my breaks are currently when I stream, and I stream Star Wars Outlaw still. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be finishing that. That's probably like going to be one or two more streams. Uh, so yeah, I, I stop my cringe with more cringe. Uh, yeah, but also, of course, uh, the Forge is still running. We're doing a Forge tomorrow. We're doing a Weep Forge, actually. We're talking about Chainsaw Man tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, I think we got uh, Mark planned this one mostly, so I think we got uh, Weekend Warrior on, we got Disparu on, mm. uh, we got Hyperbolic Ninja on, uh, and, and someone else I forgot, sorry, who, who that was, but yeah, Mark uh, got all the guests this time. So nice. yeah, should be good fun. It could be a longer one, actually, because it's like 12 episodes, it's like four hours of content, I don't know, I hope it's not going to be too long, because I'm still tired and i need to Perhaps do more rings of power it is worth but mentioning yeah. that uh metal is currently on 9.11k subscribers and he has since yes. years 9/11. ago i know right uh <laughs> promised that if he hits 10k he will do a complete playthrough once again including the dlcs of dark souls 2 scholar of the first mm-hmm. sin I'm very specific about that because I <laughs> w- opted to essentially join him whenever that happens. Now I'm not saying you can exploit <laughs> this in any way, shape, or form, but he is <laughs> intending to visit in how long is this? Three months now? Four months? Time is fleeting and not even that long anymore. No, it's it's like not even that three months ish. So of course, the mm. way it would probably work if we hot seat the idea and have drinks and play through the game together, the uh, it would probably be this year if. He hit that if. number. But if he yeah. doesn't, oh well, wink, it'll just wink. have to be next nudge, year, nudge. I guess. I, I guess so, yeah. Wither away from DS2, the better for me. But I think, you know, I'm just saying, <laughs> it, it, who knows if that happens? That would be crazy. It might, it might be entertaining for the peeps. You but, know. alas, you know, it's it's not going to happen unless that number ticks up to that, that 10.0. Mm-hmm. So we should be yeah. safe. We should be fine. A big That'll 10. Be, like, why would anyone subscribe Absolutely. to this channel <laughs> discussing media? But yes. What kind of long exactly. form as well? Are you stupid? Uh, why long, would you do that? Uh, gay. 
very yeah. but yeah tons of stuff coming your way i'm i'm just doing all kinds of things all kinds of content go go yeah. just subscribe and stuff so. Bump. noises i did it someone just said yeah. ds2 is underrated that's just just stop it unsubbed <laughs> <laughs> bam stop that right now have you considered not um well uh, uh goga thank you as well yeah. as a metal of course for joining us for the how long has it been? Nearly nine hours? Uh, God damn it. I yeah. said this one would yeah, likely be faster. I didn't believe yeah, Every time you. you say that, it's going to be longer. Do you think I should start? It's going it to be almost exactly the... Gonna be almost exactly the same time as the first one. Oh, really? Damn. Do you think yeah. I should start saying it'll be slower so I can curse us in reverse? <laughs> the time yes. gods yeah. will be like, uh, excuse yeah. me. Tell them we'll be here for... I mean, ages. We're really? gonna be here for ten billion years, and then we we literally go through one episode in ten minutes. And we're like, okay, oh. what? <laughs> What's <this laughs> what going on? Here? Happened? <laughs> but um, but we yeah, thank you power? for uh, thank you for inviting me. It's been a lot of fun once again. Uh, the war oh, arc yeah. is coming out, of course. The next yeah. one is gonna be Braveheart. Yeah. And if you haven't seen uh, In the Name of the King yet, I recommend watching that. Spent a lot of time on the What You Bring Me at the end. So mm. definitely go watch that at least. <laughs> definitely go watch that at least. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure yeah, they It's will. a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. It's kind of funny that you uh, mentioned Mochi Bring Me when I did the <laughs> when the Rings of Power uh, episode one thing I put out. I think the first thing someone said when it ended, where's the What You Bring Me at the end? <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, that's not, well now. I was like, that's not my thing. <laughs> that's the <an> EFAP <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's EFAP. EFAP oh, TV and EFAP movies, we we, just, like we to gotta keep it going long experience. enough that even our own fans start to forget. Yeah. <laughs> like, where did that <laughs> come from? It's, it's, very, it's very fun to have, like, you know, have your creating, creative ideas flowing in the in a little bit at the end there. Um, Always fun to come up with some different ideas for shit. Fringo, Regolius, is there anything you guys want to mention before we wrap up? Should have something out soonish, but I've kind of been um, a little under the weather uh, the last week or so. Uh, I got back from this trip and I caught some bug, and it has just sort of been lingering. Damn uh, but I'm feeling a lot better now. But uh, yeah, That's working good. on some uh, working on stuff. Hopefully soonish. It will be. It will be out. Uh, dungeon. I'm in the dungeon. The dungeon. <laughs> the dungeon. <laughs> the dungeon. <laughs> Uh, well, as oh. for myself, uh, completed the streams of Outlaws, if you want to see the full playthrough, it's filled with hilarious moments, because that game is a broken bug oh, yeah, and a piece of shit mess. I've finished it as well. Fuck that game. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> God, that game is miserable. Uh, uh, did, the... did you get the same ending for Inge yeah, Smaller? Did. He did, uh, yeah. yeah jo oh, wait. Oh, I was about to say it, but maybe no, I, don't should say. Keep it, um, I should keep it to myself. Yes, you don't specify yeah. what it is. Yes, if you, I, if you I, get the I same. got it, and it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, very um, amusing. Yeah, uh, I saw an EFAP highlight thing pop up that I think might give an inkling what ha what might happen. Oh. So I'm, I'm, maybe I'm not sure. Well, if that was the clip. I didn't watch it. So. It'll be fun to watch yeah, yeah. you suffer through the rest of Outlaws. We'll try and catch bits <laughs> and bombs. Yeah. I, on the other hand, did I think six hours of uh, Astrobot. I loved it. It's a game that's an easy recommendation oh, hey, to basically everybody if you just oh, want to have oh, charming, oh, wholesome, oh, platforming, yeah. collectible fun. It, oh, the game's primary goal for any <laughs> player is to have you have fun. That's all it wants. It just wants you to have fun. That's mm -hmm. it. It's not Mark like actually Battle played. Pass. Very oh, God, cute, it's... charming game. Yes, charming is the word. I will try and get another, well, the other half of it done, I guess, in, I don't know what day it'll happen. Mm. Um, but recently, we're completing work on the Halloween arc. The trailer is almost constructed fully, and you got your nine film arc is coming they're not even fully completed yeah. yet we're getting close but a lot of them are shaping up it's, it's, yeah, i think you guys are gonna like it you're gonna have some fun and then <laughs> some other projects there's like four or five major ones that i'm trying to work with and by major i just mean they are significant in whatever way that i decide <laughs> what that means <laughs> i just realized like wait i don't want to imply any particular thing okay so things are being worked <laughs> on all right and they're they're, they're tough, but they're coming along, and I'm excited. Um, yeah, that's that. I think that is about that. The only other thing I want to mention is uh, a friend of the stream, friend of the channel, good old Theo, you guys may remember, oh. finally released his controversial, his hated video. 
because it probably would end up being hated, where he criticizes <laughs> the Elden Ring DLC. Oh my god. I still need he to gave watch it that. such a sensational fucking title as well. The clickbait and little asshole. He called it Shadow of the Erd <laughs> Tree Critique. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> He's going to get so many hate clicks. He knew exactly uh. what he was doing. But Yes, um, I've not even been able to watch the whole thing yet because I've been swamped, but I'm going to, and he's going to Dude, talk about swamped? all the things like, that uh, he was... Like a Sildur? Yes. Uh, uh, this, this will be an expanded, yes. edited, well, beyond your expectations, written, gorgeous video for you to check out. I've seen a lot of it. It's, um, it's Theo just blasting you with information, okay? And uh, <laughs> I think this one is up to like 20,000 views already. He's getting into that. He's going to be... I haven't, I haven't spoken to him about it yet, but I assume it's been shared on a subreddit that doesn't like him. That's always the first step. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, I don't know about this. But uh, he is, uh, this is a, quite a hot take, so hopefully you guys give it a, give it a shot, see what you think. He's, um, who knows what's next for him and hot takes. That's what I assume the channel will be hot filled cake. with. I hope so. <laughs> Maybe hot cakes. Mm. <laughs> well, hot cakes. on that note, I think we shall uh, be jumping out. So, good yeah, night, everybody. We'll see everybody so later much. on. Why? We shall see you in the future. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye, 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 bye. Blue. Why? Blue. Oh, yeah, the name of the channel is Theo T Tree. Fuck. <laughs> 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 and, uh, I think James, uh, James put links in chat. James linked yeah, in chat. James yeah, James puts uh, I'll, I'll link, because yeah, yeah. this will be on the re upload. Yeah. I'll link it at the top. You'll The, the video will be very clickable. It'll be right there. You go check it out. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. <laughs> yep.